Good morning and welcome to Gatorback Cycle Park and our third day of racing here and of course the world famous 52nd annual Thor Minios presented by Pro Circuit. Today's coverage brought to you by your friends at Dunlop Motorcycle Tires. I'm Rodney Tomlin along with Mikey Waynes, also Megawatt Matt Watson, Wes Kane, and the voice of Florida Motocross, Dean Diaz. Right now, folks, as you look out on the track, yes, there are motorcycles on the race course, but we are wrapping up our uh, siding laps this morning. We had about four groups of practice after yesterday's uh, Supercross uh, finals were uh, uh, concluded. Uh, we came over, we started uh, practice over here on the big track and uh, we practiced right up till the edge of dark there last evening and uh, we had four more practices to go so we got up this morning we started those off at seven o'clock we ran through the uh, site laps here to give folks a chance to uh, well check out the course and refamiliarize themselves with that and make sure the machine and everything's checking out okay and we're gonna line them up and we'll get opening ceremonies underway here in just a few moments well mikey waynes i'll tell you a little different look to the uh, horizon this morning as we get set to uh, to roll into the racing uh, each morning uh, we've noticed uh, lots and lots of sunshine raining down on us not so much sunshine raining down on us no rain yet right uh, knock we, on wood we are calling for some light showers and that's what the weather forecast is uh, a 0 0.05 tenth of an inch or something like that i think is what it is so a half of a tenth of an inch is hey. that's that's a drizzle hopefully you know i was looking at radar it looked like some things were splitting so hopefully if all we get is some residual blow off of some storms passing or some systems passing through uh that will be fine but uh, the overcast skies in all reality won't be the worst thing in the world whenever we come down to it because what that will do is that'll allow the track crew to not have to uh, put the, the extra water and things like that down which will kind of speed up the process and you know keep the, the flow going as far as the racing and everything is concerned here in, at Gatorback Cyber Park. Yeah, it's going to be a good one. You're right. It's going to hold that moisture in the track. It's going to be a good day. And we get a little rain. I'm, I'm okay with a little rain. Not a lot of rain. I've had enough of that this year between uh, Loretta's and the three-day monsoon, between uh, DNCC. Every race was a monsoon, it seemed like. So uh, if we get a little bit, the Good Lord's water truck, I'm okay with that. The Good Lord's uh, water truck. Outside of that, no, thank you. I'm, I've had enough of rain. <laughs> but... We say that as we are comfortably indoors in the announcing tower as well. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and, and, you know, bring on the sun, bring on the rain, whatever. Yeah, we got whatever. AC, we yeah, got yeah. a cover <laughs> over our head, you know. No, it, yeah, honestly, uh, we, uh, you know, I, I don't expect anything, out, you know, out of the ordinary as far as, and I don't think anything extreme. But the one thing is, is that rain that was in the system that moved through last week has kind of set the stage for yeah. what uh, the Supercross track was like. Uh, and, and I really believe that we didn't have a lot of time for a lot of that moisture to be sucked up completely out of the soils over here. So I think we got already, we're starting with a deep-seated moisture content on the big track side of things. So. This track will shape up even quicker than it normally does, and uh, we're going to have, um, I, you know, you, you got to wonder, is it going to be really, really rough right. this year? Is it going to? I'm going to go. I'm going to opt on a rough side. We're going to see some roughness right. out there, as Wes Kane says, 20 miles of bad road out there, and that's what you know. There's sections we call that, but this whole track is going to be about 100 miles of bad yeah. road for some folks. <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. It, you, I love hearing the guys talk about it. You know, a little jawing back and forth. Uh, some friendly banter about we're taking it to the big boy track. We're taking it to the big girl track, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to be good. Uh, Supercross is fun. It's exciting. Uh, it's fast uh, with the outdoor track, uh, unlike the Supercross track. Hey, starts are always important. Uh, Megawatt will talk about it. You'll hear him complain and say, I'm sick of guys talking about I got to get a good start. I want to see a good finish. Okay, true. <laughs> starts are still, they, they, they have their role. I'm just taking shots at you because you walk back in. Like that. Uh, no, but in reality, you know, longer lap times. You've got a couple of minutes out there, give or take. Uh, so if you make that little mistake, you have a little bobble or something, it's not the end of your race. You've got time to rebound and, and move. And then lap traffic, it will become a factor, but not to the degree we see on the Supercross track as well. Absolutely. Wider spaces and, yeah. and, and you know, uh, just great track conditions, I think, you know, um, with this caliber of riders and this many riders like what we saw on the Supercross track and what we see at many of these uh, top majors and in and, and the amateur national championships so many lines develop you know yep. it's not like racing the local uh, uh, race courses back home where you get one or two lines and that's it uh, right. the, the, there's multiple lines within lines bun lines and uh, it's just really impressive 
how uh, these tracks uh, produce uh, great racing and, and, and what they're able to uh, to go through throughout the day. Checker flag is out again. You know, basically what this is is a full course caution. So the checker flag is out the entire siding lap out there, Mikey. Uh, if you don't know the way that it works, we have a uh, one practice day where everyone gets to go out and really learn the track. Uh, they have a nice long practice session, and then each morning before we get things underway, we have a full course uh, siding lap yeah. uh, with big bikes to little bikes. Everyone gets to go out. Uh, it's a full course caution, so uh, no one's really jumping or, or doing anything crazy. But, you know, they get a chance to stretch out, uh, feel the bike out, make sure that, uh, you know, it's running properly. Uh, nothing's happened overnight, whatever. Genies happen to pop along, <laughs> or whatever true. the whatever the case may be, or gremlins, whatever you want to call them. But you know, and, and refamiliarize yourself with the layout of the course, so you can take that back and and, and visualize what your your moto has coming up. Uh, obviously, we know with each passing lap, each passing race, uh, the course conditions change, but uh, the layout of the, the land is still the same. That. Taking a look at that race order, Rodney, once we get going on that, and again, we'll have some opening ceremonies. We'll have a live singing of the national anthem. Our prayer will get get things underway. But uh, the race order, take a look. We'll give you a little preview here. If you're watching at home on racertv.com, just tune in. It. We welcome you guys. I'll get to the racing here in just a moment. But race number one will be the college boys, 16 to 24. Race number two will be your mini E, 4 to 8. Race number three, the 85cc, 9 to 11 limited. Race number four, bet 35 plus, and race number five will be your 250C limited. Oh, we got our sheets. That's what Megawatt brought back. Yeah, see, he was, you, you're, you're dogging on him, and he's not doing great things I was things taking jabs at him. That's probably why he left. He got his feelings hurt. He's very sensitive. You know, I, don't yeah, I, I know, I know, we, and we got to be very easy yeah. with him. Yeah, it's okay, Matt. This is a safe place, a safe space. As he comes uh, back. Oh, crap, there he is again. And look, wow. he went back down to get the rest of the papers. I, you know, I'm talking a lot of smack for a guy that bought my dinner last a night. Absolutely, and I can't believe that. my own negligence. Number one. <laughs> on this whole thing i can't believe how quickly he got the rest of these papers man i mean uh, i don't know how many trees it actually too took. little too late there rodney <laughs> i don't know how many trees it took to print this paperwork but good lord there's a lot of interest 168 here. sheets right there rodney wow. Wow. that's so almost 168 sheets and mikey i've heard lots of words in terms of <laughs> describe me but never said so, uh, never, no 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 that was yeah really i gotta tell you man. Mega. that was definitely sarcastic i gotta tell you i, I didn't even pick up on it <laughs> oh my God. didn't even notice that yeah. whatsoever the sarcastic Brush right off your shoulder. As a matter of fact, Megawatt has a gray hair for every feeling he's hurt. On oh, yes. Else. I'd say Absolutely. That's probably more accurate. It's ran out of hair, so it went into my beard. <laughs> so I started using whiskers to count. Maybe that's my problem. I'm not, Heck yeah. I'm not sad enough. <laughs> You're not a bully enough. All right, folks, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with more action.
Something from nothing. That's what Nihilo Concepts is about. It starts with a spark, an idea, a concept, which leads to a design and finishes with engineered excellence with the highest quality products created with durability in mind. All our products are made in the USA at our state-of-the-art facility in Stewart, Florida. Whether you are a weekend warrior, ride for fun, or at the highest level of competition, Nihilo Concepts offers innovative titanium, aluminum, and carbon fiber parts for your dirt bike. We offer a wide variety of products that you can customize to your liking. Browse our site for foot pegs, brake tips, engine components, specialty tools, frame grip tape, lever grips, carbon fiber components, motor stands, our secondary on-switch plus much more. Head to NihiloConcepts.com and see for yourself why factory teams like Red Bull KTM, Rockstar Husqvarna, Troy Lee Designs Gas Gas, Orange Brigade, Club MX, KLM Gas Gas, and some of the fastest riders in the world choose Nihilo Concepts. kids, Hunter Lawrence here and Jet Lawrence here, sending you some high-flying holiday cheer this season and beyond. May your bikes always sparkle and your spirits always shine. May your celebrations be a blur of wheelies and roost with wind in your hair and dirt in your teeth. Happy holidays and ride red. the season opening action at Angel Stadium January 6th and returning January 27th. Get tickets at supercrosslive.com. minutes and two laps. Let's go racing. Welcome back to Gatorback Cycle Park here in Newberry, Florida for this 52nd annual running of the Thor Mini O's presented by Pro Circuit Live coverage brought to you by Dunlop Motorcycle Tires, Rodney Tomlin, Mikey Waynes, Megawatt Matt Watson, also uh, Wes Kane and Dean Diaz going to be giving you the call here this week. And of course, right now, yes, and of course, uh, we've got the opening ceremonies. The lovely Miss Kayla J will be here singing our nation's anthem here in just a moment. And of course, uh, the stage is being set, Mikey, as we've got uh, racing action about ready to get underway. I believe our college boys 16 to 24 will be our first race up. Yeah, nailed it, Rodney. And you can see if you're watching on the SLR Rifle Works Live drone here at Mini O's, they are getting the gate loaded here for that college boys 16 to 24. Give you guys a preview if you're at home or hey, if you're here on property, you need to know as well. Race number two, mini E four to eight. Race number three will be your 85 CC nine to 11 limited. Race number four, vet 35 plus and race number five will be your 250 C limited. But we're starting things off with a bang with that college boy 16 to 24. Absolutely, 42 entries in this one, only one division. So we don't have to, to qualify anyone out. Everyone on the gate gets to go 
show racing here today uh, and we get a chance uh, to know and, 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 and inform everyone once again of the fact that every time from this point That's on it. that you Absolutely. go on the racetrack, it counts toward yep. your moto scores, your overall scores. So a little different out, from Supercross. Yes, your uh, consolation race, if you finish in one of the top uh, you say 16 positions, depending on how they they break this down, or top 10 positions, or however it is in in your in your consolation or what would be Moto One Division races, probably what we should call those uh, Moto One Division. And uh, anyway, Division is one. Your division races will count towards your overall. If you don't make it in in your division, you go to an LCQ, then your LCQ score will count towards your overall. And then, of course, your second moto, every, we know how that all works. And again, as always, the second moto carries the most weight. College boy making their way down onto the starting line right now. We'll give you a quick lineup of who is uh, racing. Uh, our good friends... Uh, are in including uh, guys like the number five, Liam Bennett, uh, Cale Thorpe on the number 12, the number 14, Evan Snowden, number 18, Ronnie Orez, number 21, Logan Lesser, number 22, Matthew Kopp, number 23, Dylan Duclos, number 28, Joey Arrico, number 33 will be Josh Grady, the number 40 of Brody Slane, number 44, Noah Smurden, number 57, Logan Forward, number 58, Brecken Poirier, number 61 is Tommy Callow, Number 66 will be Ethan Commodore. The number 80 of Michael Cochran. The number 81, Daniel Borderland. Number 96, Skylar Shoot. 105, Josh Bowman. The 108 will be Jesse Wessel. The 116, Brent Burrows. The 119, Cody Slatterback. Number 134, Blake Hauser. The 145 of Randy Simpson. 173, Logan Downing. The 213 of Tyler Smith. Octavio Paz, the number 231. 233 will be Tyler Tiffany. Number 292, Peyton Morningstar. Number 303, Alexander Luger. Number 369, Jack N Nirona. The number 426 of Mason Pausina. Number 427, Matthew Stecker. 444 of Cody Cameron. Number 496, Canyon Trip. 511 will be Josh Clark. The 515, Jacob Henry. Number 620, Peyton Jackson. 831 will be Jacob Glenn. The 916 of Justin Petters. The number 944 is Austin Bear, and our field of 42 rounded out by the 955 of Evan Stewart here in your college boys 16 to 24 year old class. That's race number one. Again, no divisions in this, so all riders uh, will transfer right straight to the second motos. Want to take this opportunity to welcome you out on behalf of all of our great sponsors that help bring you uh, the 2024 edition of this. Thor Minios presented by Pro Circuit. Of course, our friends at Thor, be sure and stop down and see those great folks. They have got an amazing lineup of 2024 gear. And after talking with Nicole Brewer yesterday, it sounds like 25 is going to yeah. just be off the charts. It's going to be groundbreaking stuff. Uh, so I can't wait. Uh, already the 24 stuff is amazing, but the 25 stuff, when it rolls out next year at this time, I'm already expecting, I'm excited for that already, Mikey Waynes. Uh, so thanks to Thor for bringing that excitement and, and that passion to motorsports and motocross racing and to the amateur and the female level as well because yeah. they've got a lot of great uh, women's gear out there as well. Uh, thanks to our friends at, uh, of course, Pro Circuit. Uh, our friends down here taking really good care. Modifications from front to back, top to bottom, inside and out. Uh, they've got you covered at Pro Circuit. And, of course, Thanks to uh, Dunlop Motorcycle Tires, who uh, we remind you, bringing you the live streaming coverage of uh, all the action taking place here from Gatorback Cycle Park. And thanks as well to other great sponsors of this wonderful event. VP Racing Fuel, a great supporter all the way around. Scott USA, and of course, the Flying Machine Factory of Southern California, FMF Pipes and Silencers. And we also salute our friends at SLR Rifle Works, where you can experience the legendary quality of SLR Rifle Works rifle and pistol accessories. Choose from thousands of parts to customize your firearm exactly the way you want it. You get 10% off SLRRifleWorks.com with the mini O's 2023 uh, in the uh, codes there. And get this, uh, SLR now offers premium complete rifle stocks ready to ship. You can get 10% off of, of those at SLRCustomBuilds.com. Use the code MINIOS 2023 right up to December 31st of this year, 2023 itself. So, Mikey Waynes, mm -hmm. as we look out and about, uh, a beautiful day here today. We've got uh, a host of great folks joining us here this morning. 
Thomas is back with us this morning from uh, Faith Racers. And we say good morning, Thomas. I know that we've got a, a, a lot of great things going on. We talked about it yesterday, but uh, we had chapel services on Sunday night, but we've got chapel services again tonight. Yes, sir. Look forward to it. So uh, talk a little bit about that and uh, where are you guys going to be? We're going to be under the pavilion at 6 o'clock tonight and uh, going to be uh, speaking from the book of Ezekiel. And uh, I'm super excited for that opportunity and I uh, pray that the Lord, you know, just works in a mighty way. Absolutely. And were you guys, you say under the pavilion? Yes, sir, under the pavilion. All right. And uh, again, it, it, so uh, has Andre been out with you all week or has he had to go home and get uh, get to, to the real job this week? Yeah, he's, he's at home right now. Uh, maybe making a trip back out here over the weekend, um, but yeah, he's currently out. I got you. So, so you're kind of not like the new faith of base racers here for elite, uh, for for Gatorback and for uh, the Minios and everything. So the, yeah. you're the one that we really need to get to know and, and talk with a, a lot. And, you know, whenever we're walking by, you know, we're looking for the preacher. You're the preacher guy, right? We're looking for Thomas, right? Right. It's a, it's humbling. Uh, it's such a blessing. I'm thankful for it. Absolutely. And one thing I want to remind everyone: if they want a Bible or anything, you guys are are are, are certainly. Uh, uh, let folks, uh, you've got plenty of those on hand, right? Absolutely, yeah. If anyone's wanting a Bible, swing by our tent down uh, Vendor Row, and we have plenty for you. All right, man. Thomas, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, Justin uh, from uh, Scott USA joining us here. You know I was talking. All right. Well, <laughs> we got to get going, looks like. So uh, uh, we'll talk to you here in just a few moments. But uh, as we do get ready to, to get our race day rolling, once again, we say good morning and welcome to this 52nd annual running of the Thor Minios presented by Pro Circuit. And thanks once again to Dunlop Tires for bringing you this live streaming action from Newberry, Florida. And of course, this uh, 52nd annual running of the Thor Minios. Before we get the day off and rolling, we'd like to ask Thomas to please ask a blessing on today's race. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we pray that you bless today. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. and want to pray that you would just keep everyone safe through the day. God, help everyone ride to the best of their ability. We love you. We praise you and thank you for who you are. We thank you for the opportunity to come raise the cross, God. And we just trust in you. We pray this in Jesus' name. And now, ladies and gentlemen, if you would, please remain standing. Stand at attention. Remove those caps and cross those hearts as we honor the greatest nation in the world. The singing of our national anthem being performed this morning by the lovely Miss Kayla J. Oh, can you see by the dawn's what's so precious? And bright stars through the pale sky. Oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly Thank you, Kayla J, for that lovely rendition of the nation's anthem, the Star Spangled Banner. Is uh, sitting down here again, College Boys 16 to 24, getting ready to take off. Justin from uh, Scott USA here with us, and Justin, you know, as uh, these things, uh, this thing getting ready to kick off. I know that you guys 
want to take this opportunity to welcome everyone out and to come out and check out not only the the opportunity to defend your vision but all the other amazing products you guys are carrying down there right now yeah it's one of those things right it looks like we could possibly get rain today so you're, you're in between roll-offs tear-offs but luckily for us we have a really great product with ceiling tape for our our lenses so our riders are allowed to run, still run tear off with our ceiling tape because while dust and water get in between the laminates. So uh, we built some stuff this morning from our, from our athletes. We'll be running probably 21 tear offs today, if, depending if this rain comes or not. Awesome. If anybody's got a question, they can stop over and see you guys, right? Yeah, so we're hanging out. We got um, deals on all the stuff to help out the racers. You know, we're doing goggles for around 60 bucks. So huge help for the racers. We know this sport's expensive. It takes a lot to get here. So we want to help everybody out that we can. And, we got a lot of stuff, so please come by. We're down by Ethica, right here uh, in front of uh, Moto T. So if you guys need anything, please stop by. Yeah, right down by the posting board. Not hard to find. Justin, we're going to get to the racing, but please stop back up and chat with us. Of and, course, uh, we'll have uh, we'll have some fun and uh, talk about some uh, great things you guys got going on down there. I heard Boston for better. Oh, I like that Black Friday, huh, Mega What do you think? We got to maybe start to negotiate some Black Friday deals. But you boys have fun today. You do a great job, and uh, we'll see you throughout the day. Thank you all. All right, Justin there from uh, Scott USA and uh, uh, Megawatt, uh, Wes Kane, and myself, uh, Mikey Wayne, say, Di Dean Diaz all here, and the race is on. So uh, sorting this one out. I haven't had a chance to check what's going on up front yet, but here come our leaders as they are working their way into the uh, – Front stretch now down by the uh, Gizmo Mods uh, Tower. Here you know comes who? our leader, the 44, Noah Smurden, I believe that's who that may be. Yes, he had a lot of success in this class and the Supercross track and looking to continue the success right here. Yep, Noah Smurden, this is Nate Mason. I've battled with him a good bit and uh, I was supposed to be in this class when I'm racing ran across and focusing solely on Supercross and hitting some closest track. <laughs> I looked over and I thought, Megawatt, you certainly hit the fountain of youth someplace. <laughs> well, Nate Mason, welcome to the broadcast, man. So, uh, yeah, talk a little bit about this uh, right now. We'll, we'll sort these guys out for you real quick. We've got uh, Noah Smurt, Jesse Wessel, Peyton Morningstar, Tommy Callow, Evan Stewart, your top five, Daniel Borderland in six. Uh, we've got uh, Jacob Henry in seven, Joey Arico in eight, Jack Narona in ninth, and Evan uh, Commodore rounding out your top ten. Well, Nate, uh, talk a little bit about why aren't you out here? What's, what's going on, man? Uh, one thing was I didn't get signed up in time. That was my fault completely. The cap was a little, I guess there was the 42 cap riders on the pro class, but uh, I've been spectating and I obviously had the week off. So I'm coming down and go to Waldo and WW and just hit some Supercross tracks because I'm focusing on arena cross. So it's going to be a fun time. Got that coming up here close after pretty much we're going to leave Tuesday and head up to Idaho. Wow. So uh, looking forward to that. I, I, I know that Arena Call Series is really starting to get some legs again, man, and, and get pretty exciting. There's some big names and some big competition out there this year. Oh, yeah. Yep. You know, you always got Peters and uh, Bitterman. They're always going to show up and Isaiah Clark. And I heard we're going to have a couple new faces like Crockett Myers and uh, a whole bunch of people. Just it's going to be stacked this year for sure. It is going to be really exciting. So I imagine all the training and stuff. You probably can use this break a little bit just to watch a little racing, right? Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, I work most of the time. I'm, I'm a mobile diesel mechanic. And oh I, wow! Yeah, I am. Her Kayla J, her dad. I work with her, her dad. South Atlanta Diesel is the name of it. And uh, I actually, I work probably four days a week and rain, ride maybe once during the week and on the weekends at my buddy's house. But it actually kind of, I need to come down here and ride, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can see that. But at the same time, uh, what's wrong with watching a little bit? You can learn by watching as well. Exactly. I said that yesterday. I learned so much on the Supercross track. And I was like, I wish... I don't know if I learn more riding or watching. Yeah, sometimes you definitely learn more watching. It's I, crazy. <laughs> I agree. What do we got shaping up out there, uh, Dean? Yeah, looking at him, checking in for two. It's Noah Schmerda still leading out. Jesse Wessel in second. Peyton Morningstar making some moves out there. Daniel Bordelin, he's in the fourth spot. Fifth spot, we got Evan Stewart in sixth place. Tommy Callow, Joey Rico, he's moved up to the seventh place position. Jacob Henry in the eighth spot. Ninth spot is Jack Nerona. And behind him is Jacob Glenn in tenth. And he will round out your top ten. Nate, talk a little bit about some of the riders in this class. Um, what are we looking at right now? Yeah, I see my buddy Peyton Jackson down in 17th. I, uh, I know I, I know he's got more than that. I see him going off the second step up. He is definitely charging. Must have got a bad start. And that's uh, a big thing. A lot of riders do that. I mean, we've seen that so much in, in Supercross. I mean, even riders like uh, 
uh, Drew Adams, Christian mm -hmm. Gann. I mean, they get buried back there in that start. It's hard to work your way up through the pack at this place. Exactly. Supercross, definitely. Motocross, you got a little bit more room to work with and make some lines, but definitely Supercross, you got to get a start and make it happen. Awesome. So uh, as we check it out, uh, doesn't look like, uh, what's our gaps looking like? Do we have any real challenges going on? Well, if you right check now? out Racer TV, you'll see Jesse Wessel right now trying to really know Smyrna. He's definitely making a push right now, but Smyrna, man, he, like I said, he won Supercross, I believe, in this class, so he is looking to continue this tradition. He wants to take home the Olympiad here in this college 1624 class. Definitely. It's always fun to see whether they take the inside or outside there after that gizmo jump. A little bit of line change there. One rider going to the inside, one rider going to the outside. It's going to funnel into the inside here as they go down into the middle of the pit. And give us a top ten rundown out there. We got Noah Smurden, Jesse Wilson, Peyton Morningstar, Daniel Boring, Borling, uh oh, Evan Stewart, Tommy Gowell, Joey Arco, Jacob Henry, Jack Nagharo, <laughs> <laughs> number 369, yeah. and Jacob Glenn running out yeah. the top 10. Yeah, Nailed it. <laughs> It'll be so easy to jump on those guys for mispronouncing names in the future, huh? Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely won't be stepping on nobody's toes. <laughs> yeah, that last lap through, we see it again. Noah Smurden, Jesse Wessel, Daniel Bordelin, Peyton Morningstar, Evan Stewart, Tommy Callow, Joey Rico, Jacob Henry, Logan Lester, and Jacob Glenn. And I'm looking at timing and scoring, and I'm seeing Daniel Bordelon on the 81 machine. He ran a 147 that last lap through. That is probably the fastest lap of that uh, lap three right there. So look for uh, Bordelon to make some moves here late in this one. 148.877 was our lap time last time around for Noah Smurden checking in. 148.969. But check this out, a 147 for Bordelon, as you said, was making up some gains out there. And that's one of the riders that we're wanting to keep a very close eye on as we are working our way back from the back section of this race course. Looks like we got eyes right now on Morningstar and Evan Stewart as they battle through the rollers and make their way up to this spectator area right here. Got a nice little view for these guys all along the fence line. You see the golf carts pulled down. The people are stacked up and racked up and ready to go. It is the 2 and 92 of Peyton Morningstar who is in that fourth place position leading out the 955 of Evan Stewart. Down in front of the Gizmo Mods Tower as we check out the SLR Live Drone. Bound in front of our announcer's tower, dropping down into the Gator Falls. This battle wages on, and uh, white flag coming out this time around, so they got one more lap to make this happen in. Yeah, no doubt. Wessel just made a mistake right there, and that allowed Borderland to get right up on the rear wheel of him. This is the battle for second and third. A little 50 50 action up the hill. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. It happens. <laughs> happens to all of us. Been there, done that. <laughs> And Borderland is all over that rear tires. They drop down to Gator Falls now and check out the line choices. And guys, this is not gate pick. This is our first motor right now right. on our track. So this is important. That's true. Well, I always like to say you can't win an overall, but you could definitely lose an overall in the first moto. But you know, uh, the one thing that we can say in a situation like this, when these riders, the the, hev the more weight weighs in the hev in the second moto. So if you do kind of ease up on this first moto, you really got to get it done in the second moto. So it's best to go ahead and lay down the law <laughs> moto one if you can. <laughs> exactly, unless you're really good at math. Look at there, the pressure is on. <laughs> this again is Jesse Wessel who is trying to hold off Daniel Bordelin. This is a big, big, this big, big move right here. This second, third place going into that second moto. Fine choice, great view from high above there. Borderland tried, ooh, he gets the door shut right on him. Yeah, Borderland tried to thread the needle there, but the needle got shut down. It'll be interesting to see as they approach the split lane on which one goes left, which one goes right, see the change up out there. Or if they're gonna follow each other. You know, sometimes it's better to follow that line so much faster. Oh, to the split lane. Borderland's gonna go to the left side. And we see Russell on the right side. They're nearly side by side as they hit the gizmo tower. They're gonna make a way in front of us in the tower trying every line he can. Ooh. Yes, he is. One, two turns left to go to try to make this work. Daniel Bordelon trying to set himself up for the inside down in the gator pit. Not going to happen. He doesn't have the line or the, the he's not close enough, basically. Yeah. I'll tell you, Jesse Wessel's done a great job of defending here on this lap. And at the checkers, it will be Noah Smurden taking what seems to be an unchallenged win out there. He's got to be pre feeling pretty stoked about this Moto 1 win. Wessel and Bordelin go two and three. It is Stewart and fourth morning star in fifth. Callow in sixth. Henry, Lesser, Glenn, and Arico. Again, all riders will be transferring. This is uh, their Moto 1 scores there. And uh, we go 
next to uh, race number two. We've got some divisions coming up here, uh, at least two that we're looking at. And that is uh, correct, sir. Uh, we've got uh, Mini E, four to eight, division number one coming up. Uh, riders including Jackson Blow, Deegan Mullen, Armadio Gonzalez, uh, Michael Hall, Brantley Compton, Mickey Fluhart, Levi Meyer, Lorenzo Alves, also uh, Riker Fitch, Cruz, next Nadre. You know, I woke up thinking about this name for whatever no reason. No way. I swear I did. I woke up and that name came into my mind and I was like, I'm going to come across that name today. And I kept trying to say it in my uh, in my <laughs> in my head. I, pro I don't know if I got it right or not, but uh, sex Nadre. Uh, anyway, uh, we got Deegan Bartholomew, also uh, Jet Ross, Slade Anderson, Weston Anderson, May Mason Wheeler, Ryden Williams, Dylan Roke, Matthew Semino, Bryson Smith, Knox Johnson, Jarek Tensioner, Jaylee Osceola, Ben Johnson, Jacob Heiler, Weston Bass, Bryson Garris, also Chase Gleason, Robert Fender, Boot Lloyd, Mackenzie Manzer, Reese Max, Hudson Bolt, Brady Taylor, C Kate Swartfager, uh, Knox Locker, Connor Rodriguez, and Maximus Carr. Yeah, out there on the track right now, like I said, the Benny E class, and I know these guys from seeing them growing up. It was Levi Meyer with the whole shot. Looked like maybe the 72 Jet Round was up in the mix, but Levi Meyer able to get back into the lead right now and try to stretch it away with the rest of the pack. We'll have to see what happens now as they make the way in the middle of the track. They're doing a cut version of this race course out here right now. You see them, they're going to go into this little left-hander right here. They're not doing the gator tail, that whole back section. They're missing the rollers as well, but they're going to get back on track right here. Oh! Route with a little inside slither right there to try to make a move on the number 29 of Levi Meyer. It is a 72, so good. I'm, I'm not wrong on that one. That's a 72, a jet route. Getting the job done in the number two position. He tries to run down Levi Meyer, but Meyer, man, he's on that little KTM mini E machine right there, and the, he, that kid's no slouch. Wes Kane, what about your boy Levi Meyer out there leading the race? Nate, how old a fellow are you? I'm 20, 22, just Tw turned 22. 22. So, I mean, in, when you look at it from my perspective, that's not real far gone from a 50cc age, to be <laughs> honest with you. I know it, it's, what, been 10 years or better since you've been on a 50cc? Yep, it I is. 15 years or so. But yes, anyway, uh, when, you, when you look at this and you look at the progression of the 50s, I mean, you guys had top-notch cutting-edge technology whenever you're racing 50s. What are you thinking about what these kids are packing out here today, man? The electric bikes just blow my mind. I don't know if I like them or hate them. I can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> That's all of us. You know, uh, I think they, you know, I think they have a place. I, what I think I like, what I'm seeing is like, you know, there'll be a gas-powered national and there'll be an electric-powered national. And I think as long as you keep them in their same uh, the visions, yep, I agree. I think, we'll, I think it'll be just fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it, in my opinion, that way. And I'm kind of excited about it because I like the advancements of what these some of these machines can do, to be honest with you. Yep, it is insane, like the Stark bike, the new one that's coming out, the 80 horsepower one. That thing is insane. Yeah, it, it, and, it, it, and, and it's only going to get more insane as time yep, goes on. It is. It's keeping the uh, AMA very busy, of course, <laughs> trying to uh, figure out how to make them work in you know yeah, how to regulate them and yeah exactly so you even have a stalker mod class for these I don't <laughs> <know>. <laughs> exactly uh, yeah how do you modify them but anyway those are questions that they're working on answering right now we're working on watching uh, uh, Jet Ra try to uh, track down uh, Levi Meyer there the 29 machine in this uh, micro or mini E four to eight year old division one race this is the first of two divisions and uh, this one uh, again you know showing us the levels of competition, uh, it doesn't matter. It's, it, it's there no matter what you put under these kids. You can put pedal bikes under them right now. You can probably put push bikes under them right now, and they'd be just as competitive as what they are at this moment. Yes, sir. That's for sure. Coming around for two laps complete, it was Meyer, Rob, Max, Anderson, Sex, uh, Sex Nadre. <laughs> See, I'm telling you that. I woke up Sex Nadre. <laughs> Sex Nadre. And uh, see, I even got it wrong. Uh, <laughs> glad you had to say that, not me. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Matthew Simino in six, Mason Wheeler seven, Hister, Boone Lloyd, and Riker Fitch were your top ten at the end of one. At the end of two, it's Meyer and Ross still running one and two. Uh, they're about 2.2 seconds that separate those guys. But little guys like this, you know, that that doesn't mean much. Uh, Jarrett Tensioner checks in in the number three spot now. Cruz, Sexton Nadre. 
Now in the number five spot, Matthew Simino in sixth. Reese Max dropping back to seventh. Boone Lloyd up to eighth. Deegan Mullen in ninth, rounding out the top ten. Dylan Roy. Weston Anderson dropping back to the number 11 spot out of a, uh, I believe, top five position there. Yeah, and you got a couple kids. Look at him back there with the 204, another one with the 203. That's Michael Hall. He actually won a, uh, a championship over there on the Supercross side of things in the 46 limited class. So he's doing a good job in the 12th spot. Riker Fitch in 13th. Hudson Bott in 14th. But Bott, like I said, he's on a move right now. Running the 203 last time. 204 for Finn Johnson. He's in the 15th place position. Amadio Gonzalez Hadami. He is in 16th. Seventh place is a 17th place is Lorenzo Alves, followed by Mickey Fluhart on the number 14 machine in 18th. 19th is Connor Rodriguez, and our 20th place position belongs to Bryson Garris. That's your top 20 rundown out there, courtesy of Nitro Lubricants. We're looking out on the track right now. I'm trying to see what we got on screen right there. We got a little bit of battle starting to shape up, a little three way battle. I believe that might be for the 6th, 7th, 8th place position out there. So Cruz and Shex and AJ doing a good job on the number 44 machine. These little guys have such little numbers. I try to get any kind of piece of a number I can. Then I look at the time and scoring and try to make out what I can. That is a 44, I believe, that we're looking at right there. Yeah, that's Shex Nadre doing a good job there in the fifth place position. He rounds out your top five right now, but he has some pressure just behind him. Watch him now as he gets ready to make his way down into the pit and up to the finish line. And I'm telling you, these electric bikes, you run them in full power mode, they're going to eventually die a little bit in the last lap, especially depending on your size. Here we go, dropping into the pit and making the way. Look at those ruts already starting to form there down in the middle of the pit. And that's from the mini E's. <laughs> yeah, right. They did that all by themselves. I just prepped it. <laughs> Look at that 44 machine with some style, whipping that thing out. And I also think on these mini E machines, these guys are feeling a little more comfortable with tossing these things sideways like they're riding a bicycle out there. They that's seem like they'd be very light. That's what I was getting ready to <laughs> I, I think that they have to be a little lighter. So uh, it's going it, it's, it's to definitely change the face of racing, you know. And, and I think... Obviously, you're going to have to write it just a little bit different. But, you know, mm -hmm. especially whenever you start thinking about jumps and stuff, you know, because you, you use inertia and weight and different things like that. So it, I would think it would take some adjustment. But these little guys don't seem to be having any issues whatsoever with it. No, I think they practice 24-7 on the <laughs> track and off the track. <laughs> <laughs> and whether it's a toy or a bike, a bicycle, on the mini e-machines in the neighborhood. I was, yep. Yeah, <laughs> now that they got these things, they can ride anywhere in the backyard <laughs> or whatever in any city or anything. Meyer still out in front of this one, Ra, Tensioner, Shex Nadre. Did you get it? Yeah, sounded great to me. Sweet, man. <laughs> Thanks to Matthew Simonos. I'm not kidding. I literally woke when that was the first thing now when I woke up this morning was that name was on my mind. Uh, Matthew Simino, Mason Wheeler, Reese Max, Dylan Rope, uh, Boone Lloyd, and Weston Anderson. So some more changes. Boone Lloyd back oh, to ninth place. This is the battle for the lead right here. Yeah. Going down to the wire. Look at these boys. Yep, they're getting the white flag now. So the white flag is going to come out for Levi Meyer and the 72 at Jet Rao. This is the KTM versus Cobra battle, too. So let's watch this one right here as this one's going to unfold here on the white flag lap. Cobra a little bit later into the scene here with their e-bike. But, man, they've been putting a lot of research and development in it as it tries to run down that KTM. Now, Ooh, I'm not a bet man, but there we go. Yeah, I think we just <laughs> had the pass made. Now, my, my question here is... Uh, as we got a new leader, it looks like. Uh, my question here is, you mentioned that these machines, uh, the, the, the battery life and things like that, and as time goes on, I'm very, it, ooh, we got to pass back to the lead, it looks oh, like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Keep but, those wheels on the ground of that first step up, able to get back around Jet Rao. That's Levi Meyer on the 29 machine. He's looking over his shoulder. He knows what it's all about, trying to keep the number 72 machine behind him right now. But these guys got to remember, a first and second, a win's a win pretty much for them guys right there in those two positions. But if they make a mistake or take each other out, they might have a little bit of problem going into motor number two. But look at Jet Rao threading the needle there on the inside. Oh, no. Levi Meyer looking down on his bike. I think we have some technical issues here. He, I know he had a technical issue in his heat race yesterday no. that had a good main event. But, man, what a tough break there for Levi Meyer. We need a battery swap. <laughs> 
may have overheated. Uh, mm. I, I'm not sure how that all works, but Man. here, you know, and that was the question that I was, uh, you know, what about battery life? How long do these things, I mean, you know, does what kind of things affect them? You know, is does water affect them? Does uh, the heat affect them? Does cold affect them? You know, uh, does time, you know, over time, does the, the battery depletion slow them down? All the above, for sure. E every bit of that. So, uh, I mean, there's a lot to take into consideration. And, and looks like he got, got it going again. So it wasn't a dead battery. That's one good thing. It mm. may have been as simple as something. Maybe a clip came loose yeah, on Kevin the battery. Kevin Bailey said the rubber band came off. What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> it could. A oh, kill, kill switch, switch tether. tether. Oh, mm. that makes sense. Then. Jet Rao will come through and take that win right there, man. That was a tough battle. I know he doesn't like to win it that way, but a win's win, right? And yep. across. <laughs> there we go. Right her down in the hardest spot possible on the face oh, of the man. finish line. I've been oh. there too. KX60 going up this uphill over here. I had to turn back around and go back up again, <laughs> man. It's tough. I'm not sure if that was one of the riders there towards the front, but it may have been. Uh, it might be Meyer because Jeff. Oh, yeah. No, Meyer's the one that had the bike problem there. But Jared Tensher, like you said, he's going to come in the number two position. So yeah. awesome ride for Tensher there on the number 144 machine. Section 8 right now checking in in the number three spot. So I don't think it was one of our Mason Wheeler in fourth. Looks like Meyer just came through. Let's yeah. see where he is on the board. Levi Meyer does take fifth behind Wheeler. So that's yeah. good. I mean, to have that issue out there, I was a fifth is awesome. As yeah. long as he was, you know, kind of dead in the water there, uh, it seems like that was a very amazing finish. That, you know, it doesn't take him out of the running for the championship. No, not at all. Nope. Especially, especially in this class. Yeah. <laughs> Reese Max going to come through with a sixth place finish. Boone Lloyd in seventh. Eighth place, Deegan Mullen. Ninth spot, Dylan Roke. And Weston Anison will be in the tenth place and round out your top ten. Good, no. Top eight. Dalmatian jumping over the fence right here, trying to <laughs> watch the 50s. Hey, it's exciting. It's that exciting. Top 18 is what transfer here, guys. Hudson Bott. Uh, Riker Fitch, Connor Rodriguez, uh, Finn Johnson, Michael Hall, Mickey Fluhart, Matthew Simino, and Brady Taylor all in uh, qualifying positions. Again, if you're here, check the posting board. That is the unofficial results. Official results are what get posted. And right now we head to Division II of the Mideas as they make their drop down in uh, the Gator Falls for the very first time in uh, competition here in the four to eight year old Division II. We got uh, Levi Brace aboard the number nine, the number 10. Weston Brace, the number 15, Riley Gall, number 18, Owen Taylor, number 20, Dominic Steele, number 39, Rivers Rice, number 47, Andy McCauley, number 57, Ryder Cesaretti, number 80, Cole Colwell, number 87, Max Forrest, number 93, Jeffrey Sathoff, number 111, Cheyenne Hines, number 114, Ryder Drake, 123, Junior Giannetti, number 131, Colton Harper, number 145, Ella Crisp, number 152, Daxon Sledovnik, 170, uh, that was one, uh, 152 was the D D Daxon Sladovnik. 176 is Ryder Anderson. 180 is Dante Santiago uh, Gatti. Uh, the uh, 193, Jay Smith Huxley Nolan on the 212. The 222, Aspen Nolan. 310, Rowdy Keelon. Number 333, Tucker Chase. Number 405, Keha Wheaton. 418, Caden Wood. 423, Denby Wheeler Jr. Number 451, Colton Tubbs. Number 469, Levi Letty. The 4 567 of Wade Morris. 711 is Sailor James Meadows. The 726, Joseph Copolino. 753, Cameron Buckman. 769, Jet Scadra. 757, Jerry Urbanowski. And 910, Wayland Dunn. Sold. <laughs> Just messed with you, Rodney. You did a, did a good job. You really reeled that one off for sure, man. I like that. I like the style. We see Ryan Cicerelli speaking of style. Leading out looks like Riley Gall there in the second place position. She's one of our grill riders out there ripping it up. This is Cameron Buckman in that third spot. He rounds out your top three now as they make their way down into the pit. And that green flag waving. That's always the best sign to see out there on the first lap. I mean, everything is good to go. As I said, Ryan says it ready. He is your leader on the number 57 KTM. Riley Gall in second, third spot. It is Cameron Buckman. He's out there on a gas gas machine. 333, Tucker Chase. He's also on a gas gas in that third, sorry, fourth place position. Fifth place, Brian Top High, that's Cheyenne Hens, followed by Ryder Drake, Levi Letty, Ryder Anderson, Jeffrey Satsoff, and Dominic Steele. That's the top 10 for lap number one. Again, out on the track right now is Mini E4-8, division number two. Race number four, 85cc 911, division number one. You guys are on the starting line. 85cc 911, limited division number two in staging and in pre-staging. Believe it or not, division number three, 85cc 911, limited. 
Got some more battling on screen right now. A lot of action out there as I'm looking at this uh, tablet right here. Timing and scoring shows 6th, 7th, and 8th all within a second each other. So these guys literally riding side by side here as they checked in for number one. Oh, well, one of them slipping up a little bit there on the cut track as they're just behind Cameron Buckman. So that looks like it's Tucker chasing the 3 3 3 passing through there, making that little mistake. So, top 18 once again will be transferring out of this one, Dean Diaz. And yes. uh, of course, with that, hey, are, are you suffering from uh, arm pump? Or anything like that. Yeah, sometimes you know, I get to write with that pin out here on the sheets. And <laughs> <laughs> I do. You know, honestly, that's a weird thing that you bring that up. But that that's that happens. We're we're so used to typing and stuff. I've gotten to where it actually happens. I you, got know, you know what I did actually get on pump, and I'm not afraid to admit it. One time I had to do the head flagging job at our track one day, uh -huh. and the next day I was like, Why do I have arm pump? I was flagging. And there you <laughs> go. Well, Beehive Blend CBD featuring arm pump relief uh, is here with us. Uh, they've got a complete spectrum of the CBD products down there. Uh, they support pain relief. Uh, they even got dog treats. I mean, those Ooh. things work amazing. Time to get some of those for my dogs. <laughs> I'm telling mad anxiety. You, I know so many people that swear by the CBD. So, uh, and, of course, uh, CBD arm pump uh, information available for you down there. Just stop. It's Beehive Blends. I believe it. It's uh Pretty amazing stuff. I mean, amazing medicine, match natural medicines too. Speaking of amazing right now, sorry to interrupt a little quick, but uh, Cameron Buckman has made the move on Riley Gall. So Gall now in the third spot, but she is trying to rebound that charge right there and get back on the rear wheel of Buckman. Can you imagine what this young lady has for the future? Yeah. I mean, she's starting out right now, and this is only making her hungry. I mean, she gets and she knows how fast she is, and then whenever these guys start passing her. I mean, she's not gonna. She's gonna. She's not gonna lay down for this very long. She. I mean, she is gonna fight back, and it's gonna get. She's gonna train hard. This kid is going to possibly be one of the uh, uh, next premier. Exactly. Women, and women's if, class riders. If her parents can hear me right now, they, she needs to go get some pictures with all these women riders we have here because we have some great competition at women competition. You know. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. She is. Uh, and she's gonna. She's gonna. I think lay new groundwork. Yes, in, in, and women's in, motocross. Yeah, absolutely. This, just remember that name, Riley Gall. That's all I'm going to say. And here we see again Buckman leading out. But, oh, Levi Letty trying to thread the needle right there. He takes a different lane in the option. It looks like he's going to make a pass right there, and that's for that third-place position. So Letty now the man on the move as he sets his sights on Cameron Buckman. They're making the way in front of us here in the tower. Again, our leader, Ryan Cicerelli, second spot is Cameron Buckman. Just behind Buckman now in third is Levi Letty. And, dude, don't count out Riley Gall. She is, like you said, she's a competitor. She has uh, certainly got the heart of a competitor. Uh, her dad, Doug Gall, I, I remember him from District 11 racing over the years, and uh, he's, he's pretty stoked right now, I know. Now, Riley drops back to the number four spot, but, man, she's racing against Ciceretti, uh, Cameron Buck, and Levi Letty. That kid right there is just lightning on wheels. Yeah. Plain and simple. A lot of these ki kids are, but Levi is is one. He's starting to strike. Look right there. He is striking. He takes the outside. He knows the low, the wider line is better because he keeps those wheels on the ground. When you go up a hill, it tends to kill that battery life a little bit. And Letty knows that as he makes his way through. I've seen Letty in this mini E class a lot of times. You know that last lap, his battery starts to slow down. The battery starts to die, so he loses a lot of ground out there. But hopefully, he is conserving it right now. By, again, not going over the hump, going around the hump, I think that would help his battery life as he makes the pass on Cameron Buckman. Wow, you know, never even thought about that, that but there's probably a, a lot, lot of strategy. A <laughs> lot of strategy. You know, it may, it may cost you in the beginning, but save you in the end kind of scenario. Exactly, and watch him now as they do have three laps complete. Oh, I thought, I thought he was, I didn't realize I had to turn back so quick, but there we go. That's the cut track over there on the far side. Laddy is just... Laying down the lead without the fuel out there. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> and he's got, you know, you, you want to be a little comfortable right here. You don't want to push it and try to win this thing because you're in second place. You're in a good contention for an overall finish. Oh, yeah. So now it is all about saving that battery there towards the end. There they are in front of us. We see again Cicerelli leading the way out here. He has got out front and has not looked back. He's going to go in the white flag. One more to go for our leader, Ryan Ciceretti. 
This red doing a great job. I mean, look at the lap times. They're slowing down a little bit. He went 154 the first lap through, 155. Now he's at a 156. But look what we got here. Moving up into that second place position. And that second spot is Levi Letty with a 154 lap time. Unfortunately, he is too far behind. Ryan says ready to make anything happen. But I'll tell you what, that two seconds pays dividends here. But when you're seven seconds behind here, going on the white flag lap, you got a lot of ground to make up. Well, I can tell you, Letty's got his head down. He's going to be racing because you never know what's going to happen up front. We saw what happened in that yes. uh, first division there just a few moments ago. So, hey, uh, it could happen again. Cameron Buckman in the number three spot. Tucker Chase is fourth. Riley Gall now in the number five spot. Ryder Anderson in the number six position. Huxley Nolan in seventh. Cheyenne Hines in the number eight spot. Levi Brace is ninth. And uh, uh, tenth place is Dominic Steele. So, We've got two young ladies, at least, it looks like, in the uh, top ten right now in uh, Cheyenne and also uh, Riley out there with us. And there could be more. I don't know, you know. Yeah, like I said, Rodney, these mini e-bikes are really breaking down the barriers. So we're getting these girl riders on these mini e-machines. They're very easy to ride, getting in the sport, get them involved, and that's what it's all about here with the electric bikes. Yeah, and getting a lot of people involved. And, and it helps you, like, you know, so many people. So you can ride it in your neighborhood. Your neighbors are not going to be able to complain about the one. It isn't as loud as an electric weed eater, I don't think, you know. No, not at all. Or a, a gas-powered lawnmower as far as that goes. I mean, it doesn't even touch those uh, decibel levels. So, yeah, it's perfect. Um, I think it is a great innovation in our world. And obviously, it opens up a whole new realm of this type of racing that we're watching right now. With four laps down, this is ready, Letty. Buckman and we're working on that fifth lap. Checkers are up. Checkers. Uh, yep, coming out for Cicerelli now as he is down into the Gator Pit, making that final drive up out and through the pro circuit finish line. You can tell that machine is starting to wane on power <laughs> going up that hill. It didn't have as much oomph going up oh. that final time. Oh, Lady looking over. This is actually a lap rider, I believe, that was passing back five because his battery was so dead as he went up the finish line. That was, that I mean, was crazy. That, honestly, I think that length of the race is about the capacity of what we're going to be able yeah, to it's see. It's going to be interesting come yeah. Sakamoto with yeah. all these guys mixed together. Absolutely, Will. You know, it'll be hard to save battery life and let that guy go by you and watch him walk away from you whenever you're just trying to conserve, trying to use strategy. But, yeah, this is going to get interesting. Many E divisions one and two now in the uh, history books. Uh, Cicerelli, Letty, Cameron, Tucker Chase in fourth. Ryder Anderson in fifth, Riley Gall in sixth, Huxley Nolan in seventh, Levi, Levi Brace is eighth, Cheyenne Hines in ninth, Max Forrest in tenth, Jerry Sathoff is eleventh, Colton Tubbs in twelfth, Junior Chianetti in thirteenth, Wade Morris in fourteenth, Dominic Steele, I don't know if he might be having some issues, he hasn't checked in yet, he's dropped uh, several positions now, but uh, looking for Dominic Steele, Ryder Drake, and Owen Taylor to round out the top 18, there's Covalino, Owen Taylor, still no Dominic Steele. There's Caden Wood in 17th, and Ryder Drake rounds out your top 18. So. Takes that final transfer spot right there. Yep. All right, heading over to the 85, 9 to 11 limited. We got a couple of divisions here, Dean Diaz, as they are off and rolling now. Yep, gonna fire it up here with these, about to roll. these, these two about, strokes. Yeah. yeah, about to roll exactly. Yeah, I heard I heard machines, but then I looked over. But there they go. There they go. And we're gonna see out here on the track right now. It's 85 CC 911 limited division number one. The number five is Jeffrey Drysdale. The eight a crew car. The nine a Easton Edgar. The 015 a Gage Chiarini. The 21 a Sterling Zavitsky. The 29 a Brayton Craiglow. The 31 machine of Easton Graves. The 44 Nolan Ford. The 55 a Ada Adam and Graham. The 57 a Jacob Wheeler. The 62 of Jagger Edgar, the 64 of Nolan Murphy, the 74 of Tiago Gross, the 89 of Whelan Mallinger, the 94 of Jackson Wright, the 96 of Gavin Abound, the 98 of Luke Clark, the 110 of Gavin Reynolds, the 115 of Braxton Meese, the 118 of Storm Kelly, the 121 of Benjamin Bannock, the 122 of Chris Christopher Bannock, the 124 of Jay Seapree, the 125 of Donovan Way, the 126, a Jace Kekchatini. The 151, a Gage Miller. The 181, a Sawyer Geek. The 211, of Chad Prince. The 213, a Hayden Dupas. The 227, of Augustin Gonzalez. The 300 machine, a Hader Amatos. The 514, a Dylan Bach. The 515, a Daniel Hernandez. The 520, of Riker K. Austin Call the 611. The 750, of Grady Mansfield. The 810, a Tace Morgan. And the 816, a Trent Lloyd. All those riders out there on the track right now. 
As I believe Mikey Wayne's not going to tune in with us. I made it. I'm here. That's what matters. <laughs> I, I lost my hearing for a second. Rodney made a little adjustment. Now I'm okay. I'm going to survive. It looks like we see the 89 machine, a wheel and Ballinger leading it out, but taking a different lane to the split lane right there. I believe that's the number 031 making an aggressive, easy pass right there to the split lane, it looked like. Was Easton Graves, I believe, as they're making the way in front of the tower. I get a better read on those numbers. It is the 31 Easton Graves leading it out. Another KTM rider moving to second. That's the 44. I believe that's forward in the 44 as he gets around Ballinger as well as Ballinger slips back to that third place position. Oh, yeah, look at that sky if you're watching on Racer TV. <laughs> I think it's a little more intimidating on, on TV than it was in it than it is in reality, right, yeah. but it doesn't matter. We're still going to send it. Easton Graves with that lead after one under fire from Nolan Ford. Well, Waylon Ballinger third, fourth. Tace Morgan outside of that. Sawyer Geek in fifth place. Nolan Mo Murphy in sixth. Seventh place, Jeffrey Drysdale to second. Eighth place is Brayton Craiglow. Jace in ninth and Braxton Meese oh. all coming together and they're off the track. That was the battle uh, just behind them. Uh, like Deacon Ballinger, I believe. Oh, they're losing some positions here. Both riders back on their bikes as we're watching on Racer TV, the leaders, but a uh, little carnage back there. Was yeah. it Geek and Murphy? Well, I think Geek and Murphy, but it really looked like it, or was maybe ba it looked like Ballinger. Morgan. Oh, Ballinger. Ballinger. Oh, there's some more battling out there. I mean, these guys are going at it. It's hard to believe these kids are just ages 9 through 11 right now. They're going at it. They're being aggressive like they're pros out there. And like we have been saying all week, these guys here, this is a major amateur national. Sure. All these kids are pros. Oh, yeah. They, at, at their age. That's it. <laughs> I, we always joke about, hey, everybody's got a factory ride when you're that age because dad is your factory, if right. nothing else. Looks like we're watching Craiglow right now through the Gator Tails. He is trying to make a move up here into the pack. He knows how important this first moto is now as he makes his way through the rollers. Kids looking good, and it was uh, Graves and Ford who got a little, little bit of breathing room out in front. Watch it from the SLR Rifle Works live drone. We're on the big boy track now, Dean. I'm excited, man. Yeah, big things happening, big things changing. Might need some binoculars, but hey. We're getting it done here with Racer okay. TV. That's right. Craig Loeb now making that move right there. It looks like the left lane has been a little bit faster there going up to the grandstand jump. Love the diversity we get through there and seeing how the track continues hey, to develop. I thought you said Graves has some breathing room. Looks like to me has number 44 right behind him right yeah, there. Yeah, he does now for sure. No, no, no. Graves and Ford with some breathing room between the rest of them. Yes, Graves and Ford, they're pushing each other right now. Look at the time of scoring, a 158.9 for our leader and a 158.6 for our rider in second. So this battle about to get intense as he's only 0.8 seconds of a lead now. And we're going to check up for the next up here. Tace Morgan's going to check in, in the third spot. Nolan Murphy in the fourth spot. Fifth spot, Braxton Meese. Jeffrey Drysdale in the sixth spot. Seventh spot is Caccini. Sawyer Geek, he's the rider that went down. He's up to the eighth spot, or down to the eighth spot, should I say. Jake Wheeler in the ninth spot. Tiago Gross in the 10th spot. And like I said, Ballinger, he was that other rider that went down with Geek. So they found themselves uh, a little further back than they wanted to, Mikey. Yeah, they did. Getting uh, getting into it back there. Graves and Ford out in front. Ford still looking for some opportunity and some real estate to catch up. Had him reeled in, and I think Graves kind of feeling it. Finding another gear out there and putting a little bit of space in between them. Man, even our, our Racer TV screen is a little dark out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the cloud's definitely rolling in right now. Looks like the wind's picking up. So if you have a canopy or anything, yeah, make sure it's call. tied down, please. Batten down the hatches. Exactly. No, no one wants to call their insurance company. <laughs> Graves and Ford. One and two out there. And now I think you're right. Graves does have a little more breathing room. Yeah, just a bit. Uh, this lap kind of wicked it up. I'll tell you who doesn't have some breathing room, though. That's Nolan Ford because Tace Morgan, tiny and mighty, look at him as he goes to the right side of his foot lane. It's been a little slower, but Tace Morgan's like, hey, watch this. I'll make it faster. Yeah, gets a pretty good drive about right there. Buzzes past the Gizmo Mods Tower. They're going to go past the announcing tower, dip down into the Gator Pit. And Morgan is all over Ford right now. And if you're Graves, have at it, boys. Have some fun back there. I'm going to try and run away and hide right here. Yeah, you guys, you guys do this. You do your thing. I'll do my thing. And we'll make it to the checker flag. So Ford under fire for the two spot. Those top three have checked in. Looking for Nolan Murphy in the four spot. Braxton Meese in fifth. And it is Murphy checking in that, in that four position. 
Man, look at Tace Morgan running 156 that last time through. Oh, and here comes please. the rain. Oh, I told you guys it was getting look dark. at the people scatter out of nowhere. It's like somebody opened up the clouds and said, let there be rain. I've never seen people run for cover so fast in my life. Something tells me none of those people are from Indiana. We don't even use umbrellas. Well, they're not from Florida either. I'd just be standing there like, yeah. nothing's, nothing's changing. Yeah, was, <laughs> you know what, those, that was everybody from California. Yeah, just exactly. said, what the what heck is, is falling out of the sky right now? we got to run for cover. <laughs> Speaking of so. run for cover, head on down Vendor's Row. I'm sure they have plenty of ponchos, raincoats, I mean, umbrellas. Whatever you need, our vendors have it. So right now, the game changes. What we've seen for Grace, Ford, Morgan, Murphy, Mess, or Mies, throw it out the window. The rain comes mid-moto. Are you more nervous right now as the rain comes during the moto, Dean, or when you're sitting down there on the starting line going, I wasn't prepared for this. Either way, I'm from Florida. Let's go, baby. There you go. I love the rain. There you go. Rain's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Rain makes corn. Corn exactly. makes biscuits. You know, you know the song. Yeah. It's a good song. Yeah. But what's good right now is Easton Graves, your leader. We'll have to see what Nolan Ford and Tace Morgan can do. As the rain's starting to fall on these guys right here, like I said, Tace Morgan with a 56, one of our faster times out there, actually the fastest lap time of this moto that last time through. So look out for that number 810 machine. Scooting. Something tells me... Uh, Left times may have uh, dropped a little bit Great. or increased. Uh-oh, what happened to Morgan? Where is he at? Morgan was all over Ford earlier, has checked up, maybe had some trouble. There he is. He's still in third, though. He definitely had some trouble. Yeah, he was dropped back significantly. He was a half second behind. Now he's a little more than half second, I believe. White flag out. The rain has let up a little bit. Not a lot of it, but a little bit. Might just be a rain cloud moving through, and you can see it off in the distance now. Just uh, we're gonna leave the water trucks out there real quick. Water trucks to the sky. Right. Let's get the track a little bit. Hey, the good Lord. Rodney with your AccuWeather forecast is all over it. He's got the Doppler radar pulled up. It looks like a little cloud cover here, you know, a little, little sprinkle, <laughs> a little dribble. What's the weather forecast today, Rodney? It's gonna rain. <laughs> it's gonna well, rain. At some point in the of the day, it's That's gonna right. rain. We got it now. White flag out. Graves trying to do his thing. Ford trying to answer back. A little bit of separation. But we had a good one developing. And a huge shout-out to our cameraman out there in this rain right now. You know, tough in the doubt. Giving us a good picture on Racer TV as we're watching Graves right now. A rail around what we call the gator tail. The thing's going to slither all the way down and round up over this anthill into the roller section they go. And good. Easton's looking really good out there. And, you know, he's a uh, – Easton, where is he from? Louisiana. So he's used to this yeah. kind of stuff. That's for sure. Down in the bayou. He knows a few things about gators, <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, Easton Gray, he's been pretty sensational this entire race. Not wavered under a little bit of fire, but really it's been all him just hitting his marks and, and riding well. Yeah, he's been solid as we're about to see the checker fly fly here shortly. Great little mistake right there. We almost <laughs> jinxed him a little bit. He's able to use the inside lap right. Lap traffic right now in this weather really changes things. You know, you got to pull tear offs more and more as you approach more lap riders. And I look, it looks like the number 44 machine has made a little push right here towards the end of it. But unfortunately, a little too little too late as our leader and winner, Easton Graves, is going to take this first motor home with him in the rain. Nolan Ford going to finish up in the second place position. Nolan Ford on the number 44 KTM machine. Keeping pace there with Easton Graves late in that one, that's for sure. So watch that as they run into motor number two. Looking for Tace Morgan. Like we said, he dropped off a little bit. 13 seconds was that gap at the end of this one, but he was right there on the rear wheel of Nolan Ford. So obviously slipped up out there on the track. Nolan Murphy going to check in in the fourth place position. Fifth place position around at your top five. It's going to be Braxton Meese. So Meese with a good ride out there on his Husqvarna on the 115 Husqvarna, should I say. And check in that sixth place position. It is going to be Sawyer Geek. So Sawyer Geek, after going down there, he was down, but he's not out. Looks like Jason, the 126, going to finish up the 7th spot. 8th spot, Jeffrey Drysdale, Tiago Gross, he's going to be in the ninth spot. And let's see who our 10th place spot is going to be. It's going to be Hayden Dupas.
All right, so you are taking the top 12, so good news for Waylon Bounds. We had that issue earlier. He'll finish up in the 11 spot. Jake Wheeler in the 12th spot, and that'll be your final transfer spot. So good ride there for Jake. What do we got on the track right now, Mikey? Hey, 85cc, again, as you heard Dean say, we got three divisions in this one. 85cc, 9 to 11, limited division two. Uh, Grant Byrne, as well as the 13 of Mason Giles, the 15 of Carter Pilgrim, the 22, oh, 22, I should say, of Aiden Steffen, the 22 of Kelsey Harris, 25 of Cooper Coral, uh, number 30 of Brody Bersher, the number 33 of Braden Dorval, Mac McCauley on the number 34, the number 45 of Chase Rayeski, Number 47 of Colt Martin, 51 of Easton Kirby. Also got the number 58 of Bryson Woodrum. Out of uh, New Hampshire, I believe. Threw me off, saw Bryson Woodrum. I thought that was my buddy. Hey, he could still be my buddy. How about that? Uh, we've also got uh, the number 68 of Owen Pomero, uh, Nicholas Doyle, Bryson Howell, as well as Austin Fraley, uh, Kayak DePino, Jeffrey Roke, Lenny O'Toole, Alejandro Sanchez, Trip Glasgow, uh, Logan Lustig, as well as Hazia Easton Thompson, Brantley Fridley, or Friedel, Hudson Byrne, Austin Keller, Miles Duke, Colt Whitaker, Carter Hildebrand, as well as Carter Cook, EJ Dutton, Grady Brown, Bryson Locklear, Weston Crisp, James Gleason, and Reed Cohn all out there rolling. So if you haven't heard your rider in the first two divisions, don't worry. There's a third coming up after this. You're right about that. There is three, I believe, on screen. We're watching the number 47 of Colt Martin. So Martin now, the man on the move. Welcome to the booth, Wes Kane. Hey, I've been in the booth since 5.30 this morning. <laughs> He's been here. I wasn't calling here. you my, out now. My, my goodness. My welcome is never more out. Amen. I'm always in the mix. Yeah, it's good, man. We're making it happen. And, uh, yeah, you know what they used to say? Little Dean back in the day when the winter amps would come around and it would be rainy. They would say the wetter the better. The wetter the better. The wetter the better. I've heard that slogan before. Oh, yeah. Come to race in Florida. Sometimes you gotta get a little, gotta get a little wet, a little mud. But hey, you know what? That's nothing. Just like maybe watering the track. Right now. Yeah, for yeah. sure. It's gonna make it a little better. It's gonna blow out of here. And let's talk about the riders that are taking advantage of this weather right now. Colt Martin, your leader, Easton Kirby in second. Colt Whitaker in third, fourth spot. Logan Lustig, Bryson Woodman in the fifth spot, sixth spot. Owen Palmeroy, Grady Brown in seventh. Eighth spot is Reed Cohn. Trip Glasgow is in the ninth spot. Tenth spot, Brody Bircher. Eleventh spot, Kelsey Harris. Kiki DePino. He is in the twelfth place position as your final transfer spot. But there's gonna be a lot of things changing out here in the motocross track, and especially as this rain comes down. Ah, here it comes. Rain, rain, go away. Come again some other day. Yeah. <laughs> especially next week sometime. Or just don't come at all. Yeah. Well, you know. got to have a little rain. Hey, there, there, there's going to be some There's some it. guys out there that are loving this right now, guaranteed. Yeah, your Pennsylvania riders, your, yeah. your uh, <laughs> Northeast, your, your West Virginia riders. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're just like, okay, good. This Bring on the slop. Uh, Let's do it. Well, I don't, it's not sloppy yet. No, it's not. No, it's not. Not yet, but I'll tell you what. <laughs> West knows it gets a little sloppy out here. That's the best way to put it. Yeah. Hey guys, don't forget Dunlop. Dunlop, go spy and see MX Tire. Uh, Jeff Cernick over at MX Tire. They got all kinds of uh, specials going, midweek specials. Uh, they got it. Go see Jeff Cernick. He's got a store over there. He's got a lot of things happening. So go see Jeff Cernick over at Dunlop MX Tire. And he's got specials for you. Yeah, I'll tell you exactly what the specials are because he sent them to me last night, and I can't well, wait to announce this. Well, make Save happen. money, unbeatable Black Friday deal starting today. Up to $100 off Bell Helmets. New sizes arriving today, so make sure you get down there and check those new sizes out. Make sure they have your size. Fast House Casual Wear, buy one, get the second half price. Also, all MX pants, 40% off. Not only, but all MX pants, 40% off. Troy Lee, Fox, Alpine Star, you name it, they got it. And Alpine Star Boots, $100 off. All new colors just arrived today. So if you want any of those cool colors, Jeff Sarek has it down there at MX Tire. You can check them out at MXTire.com or go see them here trackside right now at MX Tire. They're hey, over by the Supercross track. Go see our buddy Foz over there at Ithaca. Sure, and yeah, I was Foz looking for my on. sizes over there. I said, hey, you got any yeah. large, any XLs? I said, you just got small sizes. He goes, we are at the mini O's. We're not at the large O's. I and got him. Good one. <laughs> but hey, he's got buy one, get one over there, guys. So go see Foz over there. They're next to Scott. Say hello to Primo. Go see the boys over there. Buy one, get one. It's a BOGO deal. And uh, now you're starting to see a little bit of a puddle up. A little bit of a puddle up. Yeah, it's the rain, puddle rain's up. starting to come down now. 
through on lap number two, we've seen Colt Martin. Colt Whitaker, look at Battle of the Colts right there. Team Colt Whitaker. Action. <laughs> They're running one and two. Easton Kirby in the third spot. Logan Lustig in the fourth. Fifth spot, Kiki DeVino. Reed Cohen in sixth. Seventh spot, Owen Pomeroy. Eighth spot, Brody Bircher. Ninth spot, Grady Brown. Trip Glasgow, he's in the tenth spot. Kelsey Harris. And 11th, 12th spot is Bryson Wood. And that is your transfer positions as they run right now. Looks like the 47 of Colt Martin is the man we're seeing on screen right now. He is your leader out there going through those rollers. Colt in a good spot right now out in front. Last time he checked in, it was about a nine and a half second difference. So uh, you got to think though, in these conditions, anything can happen. Just got to continue to hit his marks. Yeah, hit his marks. And I'll tell you one thing, that 47 machine, those Oakley goggles doing good right now. That FXR gear, Bruce, Pro Taper, Bell Ray, Tamer, 6D, FMF, and Factory Connection all helping him get it done out here right now in this division. Good thing they did seal the track off. I know I was talking about that earlier about how they sealed the track off in case they'd get some rain. They didn't get the rain in the morning, but hey, the rain's coming out <laughs> yeah. and the track is ready for it. It is, yeah. Track's still looking really good out there right now, so there's certainly no problems for that man right there. The 47 gas gas ride of Colt Martin about to bring it in for another lap completed. Goes back to work. Yeah. This man's waiting for the white flag right now, I guarantee Yeah, it. absolutely. <laughs> He's like, oh, come on, come on. Colt Whitaker back in the two spot. He might be under fire here. Easton Kirby wasn't too far off the pace in the three position. Yeah, and Wes Kane can vouch for this. You know what this is called out here right now? Motocross. It's called the odds <laughs> a level playing field. Yeah, yeah. definitely levels them out. It's a level playing field. Um, they're just, they're fine. Right now, it's in a transition spot to track. Now, it, it's just wet and it's good. But as soon, let's say it stops raining, the sun comes out, then it starts to harden up and then it gets real slippery. Then it uh, turns to a little bit more. Right now, it's not sticking to the bikes at all. Yeah. You know, it, it's just wet. But it's good. But I'm telling you, when it stops raining and we're about three more motos into that, then it starts sticking to the bikes. Then dad's got a lot of work to do. <laughs> a lot of work to do. Better have right those water, water bills filled up. Right now, it's a quick rinse. Quick yeah. rinse, love to see it. Colt Martin, you see him really slowing down to that section right there, so it's probably getting a little wet, I would say, through that area as he is making his way through the Gator Teal right now, that 47 machine. You definitely see him start to slow down out there. Probably riding a little more conservative. As we said, he's stretched out to about a 13-second lead now over Colt Whitaker, who sits in second. Easton Kirby in third. Logan Lustig in the fourth spot. Fifth spot, Keiko DePino. Brody Berger in sixth. Seventh spot, Reed Cohn. Trip Glasgow in eighth spot. Ninth spot is Kelsey Harris. And tenth spot, Carter Pilgrim. 11th spot, Bryson Woodman, and your 12th tri final transfer position this lap right here is Weston Chris. I believe we'll see the white flag this time around, maybe? Yeah, I believe so. I think five laps for these guys, so I believe that would be correct. Colt Martin trying to bring it out. We got one more division here for the 85cc 9 to 11. Coming up after this one. Say I don't, you say no? Um... <laughs> Yeah. We'll, get, we'll get more. There's more of those came from. There's more. More, more. Race number six coming up next. Yeah. Here we go. Cole Martin got both legs out to make sure he has the best balance possible out there right now on the racetrack. See a yellow flag flying. So one of our lappers having an issue out there. Hopefully he can make his way through. He does make his way through right there. He's going around off of the side of the racetrack. It is Colt Martin going around and getting the white flag. Huge shout out to all our flaggers, not only race TV, but our flaggers out there doing it in the rain. Yeah, These guys, yeah. the nitty gritty. Hey, they're prepared. You see them roll out those raincoats. Oh, yeah. They get that in their little lunch bucket, their little bucket. Here's your <laughs> raincoat. Here's your sunscreen. Don't forget your water. Hey, get it. I love it. And white flag out, a sense of urgency. Some of these guys. Uh, Weston Crisp looks like he's right on that 12th spot. Pharrell Keller, Brown looking for a way in. Hey, that's why we got consolation races. It's true. That's right. Some of these guys in here. So we got uh, three divisions 12, 12, 12. Yep. Is 36. Am I right? Yeah, that is correct. All West right. K. Hey, I, I passed 30. How did you do math on that? Because I did, I did 10 times 3 is 30. And then 2, 2, 2, that's 6. That's 36. I can't do the new math they've got these kids doing. <laughs> it's so strange to me. 12, 24, 36. Yeah. So well, he's, I, and he I, did it. I, I didn't do it like that. Yeah. <laughs> I pictured 12, 12, 12. Wes had his shoes off counting toes. He was carrying the one and the other. Carrying the one. 
We are going to keep hey, rolling. rolling. Okay, keep, uh, there was some. Keep going, guys. Spe Stay genie. Yeah, keep that's going. right. You know, the only thing that puts it to pause is lighting, and I don't no. see any lighting out yeah, there. Yeah, no, no, no. no. So we're we're going to go. keep you in the L word. Right now, we <laughs> are racing as yeah. the schedule is. Keep going. I was uh, already just, getting text. Hey, are we going to take a break? And I no, said, I ain't saying nothing yet. No, no, no. We're going to send it. Break because right now we're going to send it. This stuff isn't sticking to your bike. Just keep going. Yeah. It's probably the best right now. Yeah. Because like I said, if you take a break and you're waiting, you're just going to get mm -hmm. out there in big sticky mud then. Yeah. You know, and there's nothing really. What are you going to do to the track? You're not going to get out there and push anything away. No. You're not going to lose time. And you're all going to be thankful that we keep going come Saturday. Hey, Amen. Yes. You're going to be going, wow. 100%. Okay, uh -huh. let's yeah. go. We got through it. I we can't believe it. it. I was part of it. You so know, we're all moto people. We know what to have. Break out the mud boots. I yep. know you got them. You've been doing this for a while. Break out your, your baggies for your goggles. Uh, you know how to prep the bike, loosen the chain up, maybe add a little extra oil, put on the foam on the, on the, on the uh, radiator shrouds, and, and just prep your bike. I mean, we said yesterday it was supposed to get here, so most guys are, are ready to go. You got umbrellas. I know everybody back there's got two or three umbrellas. And uh, if you don't have a raincoat, break out that old hefty garbage bag. That's right. <laughs> We've been there, done that. Go to work. Yeah, the finest, the finest has raincoats, guys, hey. and umbrellas. So. You know who can take a break right now? That's number 47. She had a Colt Martin who takes an outstanding win right there in the rain, the mud, everything. He's got it on the number 47 gas gas machine. He's going to be taking a break right there and going right to get dry. That milkshake. <laughs> yeah, that's right to the milkshake. Hey, Colt Martin's milkshake brings wins to the yard. Yeah, it looks like no doubt. Hey, pressure wash my boots. I'm going to get a milkshake. Hey. Cole Whitaker doing a good job there. He's going to finish up the number two position. Two Willikers. Yeah, two, two of them out there. Then Easton Kirby going to finish up in third. Awesome ride for Kirby there to bring it in home in the third place position. Fourth spot going to be a Logan Lustig. Kiki DePino, he's going to be your fifth place rider out there on the track right now. Brody Bertrand in the sixth spot. And your seventh place rider, it's going to be Trip Glasgow. So Glasgow going to move up here late in this one. I'm not sure if a rider slipped up or Glasgow is just a good mud rider, but he's making it happen. Back to eighth is Reed Cohn. So Cole with a solid ride there, number nine, nine, one machine. Bryson Woodman in ninth. Ten spot is going to be Carter Pilgrim, number 15 machine. 22, Kelsey Harris. And your 12th place rider coming through. This will be your final transfer father to the Western Chris. And just outside there, we see uh, Cooper Carell, Austin Keller, Grady Brown, Owen Palmer. So a lot of heavy hitters there. Who we got the track? Division number three, they just dropped the gate out there. you got Alvin Jimenez, Samuel Huck, Max Daniel, Martin Aspina. William Fisher, Landon Cogno, Adian Kurtzy, Jeff Overstreet, Grady O'Connor, Eli Herrick, Bryce Danhauer, Jackson Vick, the winner on the Supercross, Braxton Roth, Howard Hood, Bryson DeJong, Tim Lopes, Nicholas Guzman, Joey McCarvey, Colin Vasquez, Luke Roach, Maximino Ramirez, Tyler Fitzgerald, Hudson Short, Agarissa Soraya, Jaden Johnson, Emmett Johnson, Tucker Donato, Kieran Basario, Caleb Broth, Ryder Dorigo, Tucker Choet, Mason Murdy, Brody York, Waylon Murphy, Brayton Willis, Trenton Foot, hey, oh foot back there. Chase McDonald and Jackson Donato, lap number one. Underway, loading the gate. Hey, we're on cruise control road. Keep That's loading it. that gate. Keep those motos going. We're on 85, 9 to 13, bet 35. The, you should be down in staging. 250C limited in staging. 85CC, 12 to 13. All in staging. All in staging. We're on a third division. How about that for the 85, 9 to 11? Let's go. Let's crank them out. It's a good problem to have. Yeah, let's go, man. We're moving right along. This is going to be nothing. Nothing like a little bit of a rain and down. I'm not, I, I'm not saying it's letting up because last time I did that, it started downpouring again. So I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let it ride out. It's gone when it's gone. You know what? We're, we're in it now. Embrace the suck, right? We're in it. Embrace it. Embrace it. Be happy. We're Love here it. with our friends and family. That's it. Bottom line is everybody here could have been somewhere else. And they said, I want to be at Minio's. Yeah, and for that, we thank you. We love That's it. That's it. There's our guys taking that high line up there. You want to start changing your lines up a little bit. Now's a good time for that background. Slip oh, heck yeah. Uh, Slip slide in the Jackson Vick in that two spot under a little bit of fire from the 85 Tim Lopes. 
I got back in third. Firing off over here, leading this thing out. Heck yeah. Ryder DeRigo, Jackson Vick, the usual suspect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up front. Rigo Vick, Lopes, and then Hawk. Sam Hawk. Did a little bit of winning up there at the Baja Raw this year. Nice. So you got Rigo Vick, Lopes, Hawk. There's Hudson Short back in fifth. Mark Espino in sixth. Joy Vicar, seventh. Rice Roth, eighth. Guzman, ninth. Overstreet, tenth. Dijon, eleventh. Choke in the twelfth. And that's the transfer spot. Brady O'Connor, Fisher, Dowen House, and Johnson Hood. They got a little bit of work to do, but they do have a, lo a little bit of time. And like we said, this right here kind of evens out yeah. the playing field. Uh, there are some guys that are really, really good in the mud. You may see a little chain of events out here, just like at Loretta's. I mean, we had some yeah. a lot of weather, and a lot of guys came up from nowhere and grabbed them some titles. But what I loved about it was, was like the diversity we saw in results throughout the week. And, and maybe we get a little bit of that here this week as well, as if we got some rain in the forecast today, where you saw guys that may have had like a, a one through a five finish, and then they came out and they had like a 13th through 15th. And it just it scrambled everything up, and it made for some interesting results by the end of the week. So maybe we get a little bit of that. We get some uh, some diversity in those uh, those results with some guys that are better in the mud or maybe had some bad luck in the mud, whatever. Well, you take Avery Long. He's got two, sport, mm -hmm. two pro sport championships here, and it looks like Ryan Holiday and him are back prepping. Maybe it'll be a turn of events for Drew Adams, Christian Yannick, and, and guys like that to say, hey, you know what? You might have got me over there and pulled a big snafu on me, but I got something for you over here, and if the rain has to be their advantage, they're going to use it. That's it. How, how many of the kids out there right now are, are, are saying, you know what? Hey, I did well at Loretta's in a three-day hurricane. I'll be fine in Florida. This hey, ain't nothing. Go, man. We're not this stopping. Nothing. No. Why would you stop for it? Speaking of hurricanes, lost in the hurricane with a cell phone. We found that cell phone. That cell oh. phone can be picked up at rider registration. Whose cell phone was it? Hurricane. We didn't even have time. That was a uh, hurricane. Yeah, I don't know. Hurricane. He said it was a hurricane. What's going on? Rain, oh. going, everyone's running everywhere. <laughs> Somebody lost their cell phone was, out of the pocket. Chaos. Everyone from Southern California. They were scrambling. They were scrambling. Ran. And when someone was scrambling, they lost their cell phone. That cell phone has been turned into rider registration. Looking for a tasty and one delicious one. monster energy. Left. The drink. There we the go. The drink, the monster. I don't know what's in here, but it'll be enough. To I think that was Rodney's <laughs> spittoon. No, oh, no I'm really? kidding. <laughs> I, I took fine. a drink out of my drink over there at Supercross. There was a big old bee in there. It oh, happens. I got, I got I stung spit right that right. thing out. I didn't get that lucky. You got me in the lip. Anyways, out of the track right now, 85 CC 911 Limited Division number three. Three of these guys, man, that's a big gate out there. Ryder Rigo, your leader, Jackson Vick in second. Tim Lopes in the third spot. Fourth spot, Samuel Hawk. Fifth spot, Hudson Short. And behind Short, we see Martin Ospina. Ospina on the number 11 machine. And looking for our seventh place rider to check in with us. It's going to be Nicholas Guzman. So Joey Vicar going to fall down the order a little bit. Let's see where he checks in at. He is going to check in the eighth place position. Tucker Coet, he is in the ninth spot. He's going to move up out there. Bryson DeJong, he's in the 10th spot. 11th place, Jet Overstreet. 12th spot is Braxton Roth. And that's the top 12 as they run right now. We're taking 12 of them out of this one, Wes. And uh, hats off to Ryder Dorigo. He's still going out there fastest lap time at a 2.21. Wow. Got a eight tenths of a second gap going out there. So uh, he's making it happen. Uh, do want to say... We're getting listened to in Texas. Zach Mashburn over there. Oh, boy. Plowing a field in a tractor. Heck, yeah. And he says, I'm listening to you guys, man. I get the AC cab going. Uh, watering, uh, I guess he's watering the track, he said. So uh, hats off. He spent a lot of time here with his boys. And they all want to know what's happening over here at Gatorback. Well, it's raining right now, but we are smooth sailing ahead. We're on course. And this is 85, 9 to 11 limited division number three braxton ross now looks like he's going to jump there a couple spots dropping down back in 11 but i'm watching foot back in 22nd dan hauser brower and wills roach curtsy herrick come on eli you're in 16th you need four more spots to make that transfer spot you can sleep a little better at night when you make it here in the, in the second moto in there man he can yeah. get in there for sure there's eli no eli herrick it. man he hung around the podium a lot, and I'm like, who is this kid? He's visualizing. All of a sudden, he was like always over there, hanging out like a couple years ago, and now I know who he like. He's gonna, he's gonna manifest I that. He's I gonna know. will it. To hey, he's got a fast sister too, Mayla Harry. Mm -hmm. Doing a great job. I with sure. Do it <laughs> <laughs> I finally got on a podium one time. I go, you're Eli. You're, you're Eli Harry. Yeah. Gotcha. 
<laughs> That's too funny. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, a lot of guys gingerly down to Gatorback Falls, you know, they're just, let's get around this thing. Yeah, and I think that's why this uh, Gators Falls is a little more gradual because you remember back in the day, like when it was straight drop off, it'd be gnarly in this stuff. I mean, you can see if you look at the track where it was, how it was, and it's changed a little bit. So. Right now, Dorigo looking good. Vic, Lopes, Hulk, short in the top five. And then yeah. Guzman, Vicari, Choke, Dazong in the top ten. Still on that button right there is Roth, Overstreet, O'Connor, Hood, Johnson, Still having at it. And Vet 35, you guys should be on the gate. Vet 35 on the gate, 250C Limited in staging. 85, 12, 13 Limited in pre-staging. Uh, keep it moving, guys. I want to say keep it moving. I think they might do a little bit of touch-up after this moto right here. A little pause for the cause. As it looks like the rain has so, sort of subsided a little bit. Out of track for lap number three, coming to a completion. Rodrigo in the lead, Jackson Vick in second, Tim Lopes in the third spot. Fourth spot, Samuel Hawk. Fifth spot is going to be Hudson Short. Sixth spot, Martin Ospina, Tucker Coet, man, moving on up out there in the seventh spot, showing he's a mud rider. Joe Vicari in the eighth spot. Ninth spot, Nicholas Guzman. Chet Overstreet in tenth. Eleventh spot, Bryson DeJong. And Braxton Roth is your twelfth spot. Look at your boy, Eli Herrick. He's in thirteenth right now, but making some moves. Yeah, Herrick's now working his way up in there. Good to see that. You got to get moving. You want to get in. Roth, Herrick. Herrick's got one more. You know. Where are we at? Pick him up. We're good. We're looking on Razor TV, man, you can really see this track now. Yeah, it's starting to get, it, it's, it's grinding <laughs> in there just a little bit. Uh, wind current is prepared. I see a little bit of the machinery moving around. I, I, I do believe we're going to be, uh, yeah, we're going to take a 30 minute pause yeah. for the cause. We'll pause for the cause. Clean up a little bit of stuff and then get back out there. So we're going to take, after this race, a 30 minute pause for the cause. We're going to reboot, touch some stuff up. As you know it, you saw it on Supercross. Wind current and staff want to give you the best racing opportunity, the best track they can give you. So if it's 30 minutes, you know, we go, go, go. But this is the time where we're going to take 30 minutes and we're going to start touching this thing up a little bit. Move it a little bit here. Move it a little bit there. Speaking of moving, checking in for the last lap to get the white flag is Ryder Dorigo. Dorigo getting the job done. You can see him on screen. Also out there in the second place position, Jackson Vic, Tim Lopes. Our Frenchie out there going to move into the third spot. Uh, Samuel Hawk in the fourth spot. Hudson Short in fifth. Martin Ospina in the sixth spot. Tucker Coet looks like he's going to check in with us in seventh. And get that white flag as well. A few of these guys are making their way through here a little bit slower than others. And it really, I mean, it, it's a game changer if you're a mud rider, not a mud rider. Again, Tucker Coet going to finish that seventh spot. Looking for our eighth place rider to make his way through. We should see Joey Bakari. Bakari, Guzman, Dijon, Jet Overstreet, he's going to fall back to 11th, and now in 12th, the final transfer spot here on the white flag lap, we yeah. will see Braxton Roth on the number 07 center. All right, all right, all right. Where's Eli Herrick at? Let's get a look at him. He's on the radar screen. I mean, that, you got the race up front. Dorigo, Vic, Lopes kind of got that locked in and your top 10, but the the race I'm watching right now is 11th, 12th, 13th, and 14th. Can any of those guys change up the guard right there, get in, make something happen? It's gonna be tough. I mean, anything can happen, but you look there, you see Eli Herrick is about 10 seconds back from that 12th place position. Yeah, he worked his tail off to get up into the 13th spot. I mean, he was out there. Hey, he was back in 15. Look at the bright side. He's got, he's got I think, third gate pick going in the LCQ. The there you go. Race. Go make it happen. Or he may, he still got a little bit of this last lap left. Yeah. He know. may be able to sneak up in there, given I mean, the conditions. All it takes one guy to go down, have a little trouble, and he's in. You know who doesn't have one lap left? That would be our leader, leader, and first place finisher, Ryder Dorigo. Getting right. the job done. Dorigo's going to drop in there. He's going to grab those checkers out there. We're looking for Jackson Vick. I believe Dorigo done pulled it. All right, guys, we'll be right back. Uh, we're going to go to Racer TV. We got some commercials, guys. We'll be right back in just a moment.
Something from nothing. That's what Nihilo Concepts is about. It starts with a spark, an idea, a concept, which leads to a design and finishes with engineered excellence with the highest quality products created with durability in mind. All our products are made in the USA at our state-of-the-art facility in Stewart, Florida. Whether you are a weekend warrior, ride for fun, or at the highest level of competition, Nihilo Concepts offers innovative titanium, aluminum, and carbon fiber parts for your dirt bike. We offer a wide variety of products that you can customize to your liking. Browse our site for foot pegs, brake tips, engine components, specialty tools, frame grip tape, lever grips, carbon fiber components, motor stands, our secondary on-switch plus much more. Head to NihiloConcepts.com and see for yourself why factory teams like Red Bull KTM, Rockstar Husqvarna, Troy Lee Designs Gas Gas, Orange Brigade, Club MX, KLM Gas Gas, and some of the fastest riders in the world choose Nihilo Concepts. kids, Hunter Lawrence here and Jet Lawrence here, sending you some high-flying holiday cheer this season and beyond. May your bikes always sparkle and your spirits always shine. May your celebrations be a blur of wheelies and roost, with wind in your hair and dirt in your teeth. Happy, Happy holidays, holidays and, and ride, ride red. red. season opening action at Angel Stadium January 6th and returning January 27th. Get tickets at supercrosslive.com. 30 minutes and two laps. Let's go racing. Welcome back to the 52nd annual Thor Minios presented by Pro Circuit. And if you're just tuning into Racer TV, hey, we've got a few in the books, but an absolute monsoon came through. It has pretty well moved out, but uh, Win Kern making the executive decision, uh, like Wes Kane was saying, we want to make sure you guys, Win wants to make sure you guys have the best racetrack possible. So took the decision to take uh, 20, 30 minutes here, clean up the track a little bit, and uh, make sure it's dialed. And we'll be back with uh, some Vet 35 Plus. That'll be race number seven. Uh, Dean, we just wrapped up our third division of those 85s, a top 12 out of that one advancing. Uh, who's moving on? Yeah, we got Ryder, Ryder Drigo taking the win out there. Jackson Vick on the number seven, going to finish up in second. Third spot was Tim Lopes. Samuel Hawk on the number three. He's in the fourth spot. Fifth spot, Martin Ospina. Sixth spot, Hudson Short. Hudson Short, one of the sharp motor riders out there. Seventh spot going to be Tucker Coet. Eighth spot, Joey Vicari. Ninth spot, Nicholas Guzman. Bryson DeJong in the number 81 in the 10th spot. 11th spot, Jet Overstreet. And Braxton Roth, he will hold on to it and take that final transfer spot in 12th. Man, look at some of these names we get to see in the yeah, Constellation race. Eli Herrick, Jake and Johnson, Luke Roach, Brayton Willis, Bryce Dianhauer. Man, we got a lot of them that are going to be out there in the Constellation race later. Hey, how about the next race on the gate right now? Sitting there in the chute. 
in the chamber ready to go. Yeah. Now the SLR starting gate, his bet 35. You got a lot of good guys there. Also, hey, head over to Dunlop. Yep. Now's the time. Yeah. Now's the time. Now's the time. Team, swamp them up, guys. Head there, see the MX tire. Get the deals down there that MX tire has, and Dunlop as well. Is hey, you might want to switch out. Like Sel Ross said back in the day, break out the mud tires. So you want to break out the mud tires? Go get them. Also, SOB Ryan needs. Hey, he needs a mechanic, guys. He yeah, told me he's gonna start up. somebody off at 43k a year, five days off, and room and board and free meals. Mm. You, you had me at room and board. You need to go down there. Well, I could turn some wrenches. Get on down there. Get on down there. And I don't know if I'm their guy. i got to be honest <laughs> with you. Well, you're, you're up there a little bit. But, hey, you can see him now working on the track. The bulldozers are out there. Uh, be patient. Bear with us. It's for your benefit. Sure. That this gets cleaned up a little bit. And it's probably going to happen a couple of times. Maybe not 30 minutes each pop, but I think they need 30 minutes right now to really get in there and move some stuff. Maybe later on, four or five motos, maybe 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah. You know, just start, hey, strategically, when knows this track, he knows where the effective places would be right now. Of course, getting up out of the pit. Yes, yeah, so scraping off some of that greasy stuff. Yeah, now's when it turns greasy. Start pushing it out of the way. We're out of the trees, but not out of the woods yet. <laughs> That's just it. need to start working a little I, bit on this track. Huh? I was, no, keep going, keep going. You're good. Yeah. You're rolling. Yeah. I, I was just shocked. I, I kept waiting on this slicker than a mayonnaise sandwich. <laughs> we are slicker. Uh, hey, you know who was slicker than a mayonnaise sandwich? Ryder DeRigo. Yeah, he was. Yeah, man, he was, slick. Man. He yeah, had man. a fairly clean bike, the cleanest bike out there. He is, but then he's cool right now, cooler than the backside of a pillow. Oh. Yeah. He was so fast, he was about to pass his own shadow. Man, that's fast, fast. Faster than the hiccup. Last night in the RV, he clicked the light off. He was already in bed before the light went out. Before the light went out. Hey, right float hey. like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Hey, <laughs> that's what it's all about. So it's floating like a butterfly right now is these tractors. We got three tractors out there working in the same section right now, so they're really going to buckle this track down. I tell you, he's working out there. Foz from Ithaca. What's he, he got going on down there? He says, come on, BOGO. I mean, we've said it before. I was already digging through his pile over there. Yeah, I'm looking for XLs and larges. Yeah, yeah he right. has no West Kane. I don't have no large sizes. We are at the mini O's. I got the mini sizes. Yeah, I got oh, small and medium. What about me? I'm a medium guy. He's got some for me down there? Yeah, he's got oh, some. Let's check it out. That's medium. <laughs> <laughs> medium. Yeah, you want to roll that on. I'm not there. quite in that medium. Yeah. And while, anyway. you're, while you're down there, you go check out uh, Scott. You know, yeah, there. next door yeah. neighbor. Hey, now's division. the time to get those goggles, those roll offs, those lenses. Let's get it dialed in, guys. Yes, absolutely. Get it all figured out. Stop by Vendors Row, shake a hand, make a friend. Uh, they've got all kinds of stuff. Go see our good people at Pro Circuit. They're over there. They're ready. They got horsepower in the box. All our OEMs are open handed. They extend their hand of hospitality out there. Dean, you got something to read off over there. Go ahead and pick that up. Saw the Alpine Star guys this morning yep. batting down their hatches. One of their tents was tipped over yesterday. Oh boy. They were out there this morning super early going, we got to lock this thing down. What do you got over in that book, Dean? Yeah, we just seen them out there, the 85 CC 911 Limited Division number 3 and Alpine Star. They're all about youth motocross. Once again, with 60 years of a motocross history and protection, Alpine Star not only supports and develops their product for the fastest riders in the world, but they also take that product knowledge to the youth riders of today. Check out AlpineStar.com and explore their extensive youth and kids riding gear. Alpine Star, you know what they do? They protect. So make sure you go on down Vendors Row and check out Alpine Star. Also, MX Tire, he's probably got some uh, Alpine Star deals down there. Also, guys, don't forget about Cobra. Cobra, attention all Cobra riders. Factory Cobra Moto is in the house with all your parts and service needs. Champions start with Cobra. Defiance, we were blowing them up earlier, you know. Defiance Lifestyle, they got it going on down there. The leader in custom trackside apparel. They got jersey lettering, custom hoodies, t shirts, jackets. And you can check out the all new 2024 team brand stuff down there at the trailer with the newest items in the industry. Tons of specials on hoodies, polos, and or located on the front side of Vendors Road. Defiance Lifestyle is your trusted go to for everything custom. What if they have a custom poncho down there? Could come in handy on a day like this. Speaking of coming on handy on a day like this, is Dirt Care. One of the newest uh, cleaning products on the market. Dirt Care is with us this week. They specialize in motocross maintenance products. Their Dirt Wash Cleaner has been developed by and for motocross riders. This cleaner is simply amazing. It is the ultimate cleaner for any off-road vehicles. It includes 
dirt bikes, side by sides, whatever you need wash, dirt wash can do it. They don't require scrubbing as well. I heard Rodney and Moth I were freaking out about that. No scrubbing at all for this dirt wash cleaner and dirt care. You just spray it on, wash it down, no scrubbing needed. And you heard it from me, no scrubbing, low pH levels, so they're safe for any components on your dirt bike. It is biodegradable and it smells good. Yeah, you heard right, it smells good. Go see the dirt care team under their tent. Let's not forget about EBR, EBR Performance in the house. You can go by and see the guys at EBR Performance. They offer engine and suspension services as well as complete race bike builds. That's right, race bike builds down there at EBR. Ask them about their race support for 2024. They got a great race support program, so you can ask them about it. They're in it to win it, as Wes Kane definitely likes to say. In it to win it. You got to be in it to win it. Pin it to win it, in it to win it. EMT Racing, they're in it to win it. Come on down and see the NT EMT Racing trailer. They're authorized Cobra dealer for all your trackside service needs, offering trackside support and rider support as well. That's because we've been touching them, been hitting them. You know, this is the mini O's, not the large O's, but this commercial pretty straight to the point. Go buy some stuff at Ethica. Ethica's where to get it. EBS, EBS Sports, the original protection company. So if you want anything original, go on down there and see EBS. They'll get you protected originally. Also down there, we have FMF, FMF House of Power. FMF Racing is dedicated to support the grassroots of motorcycle racing. From the weekend warriors to all the amateur racers that line up each weekend on the starting line and give it their all. FMF Racing, they're pleased to be a sponsor of the 2024 Unlimited Sports Mini O's. Again, come stop by the FMF House of Power Rig and high five our amazing crew today. I know I was in there a couple of days ago, gave everybody a, a high five. Got to see Kyle and Joel down there from FMF. Also in the house, Future MX. Future MX is a Florida based motocross team with the intention to help riders grow and develop to have their future in the sport that we love. They also have a podcast. You can check them out at Future Motocross Radio and YouTube channel. So make sure you check them out online and here on the track and also on the social media platforms. That's Future MX. GPF with us here at Georgia Practice Facility. You can check them out at gpfmx.com. Also Hilton Co. Hilton Co. Happy living the now. You heard that Hilton Co. They're in the middle. They're in the moment. They're in the now. You guys are feeling a little down in the dumps today. This weather's got you down. Drag it out. Go see Hydropower. If you're feeling drained after a long day of riding or a long day of rain, you go on down there to Hydropower and get yourself a, do they have samples going on down there? Even helps with arm pump. You heard it right, arm pump. If you have arm pump problems, go on down there and check it out. They're packed with carbs, electrolytes, and vitamins, all the, all the formula to enhance your, uh, your performance out there on the track. It also reduces fatigue. Check those guys also at drinkhydropower.com. Got Minton Cycles in the house. Minton Cycle, they're your uh, uh, elite Cobra dealer. They specialize in AMA legal Minton Motors for Cobras. They have exceptional trackside performance and service. They bring all the years of experience. That's Cobra parts on hand they have down there and everything you will need to stay out in front with Minton. That's Minton Cycle Cobra. They're 20 years strong in the industry. Also in the house, Moto Tags. Christmas is coming up. Once again, Christmas is coming up. There's no doubt about that. You can get your loved ones some customized titanium jewelry and pet ID tags along with tree ornaments and home decor. Nothing says I love you like personalized gift. Gold titanium necklaces are now available for those who love the finer things in life. Go on and check them out, that's Moto Tags.
Once again, for those of you who tuned in to Racer TV, we are in a hold right now. Getting the track all uh, shaping back up here after this rain. The uh, skies definitely gave us a little, um, little bit of love out there. And once we get back to racing, I'll make sure I'll let you guys know what is going on. Speaking of going on, Mun Racing got to go on. Mun, Mun Racing is here to help all KTM, Husqvarna, and Gas Gas riders. You see them right there when you pull in. That's Mun Racing. Make sure you check them out if you are on a Husqvarna, Gas Gas, or KTM machine. Olin Suspension is here with us here, uh, this week as well, so make sure you check out Olin Suspension. Olin Suspension is the Swedish gold. That's what they like to call it, and it is simply clever. PR2, PR2 is with us. They're with us at most of the majors. Actually, probably all the majors. PR2 Racing is trackside in the vendor's area. They'll service all your suspension needs, so stop on by and see PR2. Look at you back on track. Speaking of on track, on track schools. What on track provides is full teacher support, single subject credential teachers, a personalized and educational plans, graduate path graduate pathways monthly community webinar events and monthly parent connection events so make sure you check out on track so they can get you on track definitely want to touch this one right now power sports right now power sports got it going on right now power sports is your mx headquarters we are having a blowout an mx gear sale with up to 80 percent off brands like leah fox o'neill all those guys out there. Also, if you need something for the track, we have tear-offs, bars, levers, chains, and service maintenance kits. Also, 7S, 7S in the house. 7S exclusives are Moto Option clothing. Also, some 7S sales going on. 100% umbrellas, 20 bucks. If you got, forgot the umbrella, you know where to go. That's over there to 7S. Get yourself a 100% umbrella for only 20 bucks. They also have a large selection of casual wear, some casual payload down there, 25% off. Also got some deals on bike stands and MX gears. I believe that's 25% off the MX gear as well. Also some star hoodies. That's pretty sweet right there. Yeah, full-size bike stands, 550 bucks, man. That's a steal right there because I was shopping around. I actually ran over a stand in somebody's truck, so I was shopping, man. I'll tell you what, I definitely didn't pay $50 for a stand. Make sure you get on down and get one of those large bike stands at 7S. And that's not that crap you get at Freight. Yeah, exactly. That's not the Harbor Freight. It's not going to be 100 pounds. This thing's going to be nice, lightweight, easy to use. Speaking of easy to use, Star Hoodies. Star Hoodies, get your youth rider a Star Hoodie for only 25 bucks, man. That's a good Christmas gift right there. Also, T-shirts and hats. T-shirts down there available for 10 bucks and hats for 15 and, and Dean, that's something you got to remember. Christmas just around the corner. Yeah. Uh, you know, I know we, 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 we dropped some coin to be here and all this and that, but now's a great time to take advantage. The upcoming spring racing season, Dan, uh, Dean, uh, we, we talk about the Christmas season. We talk about uh, qualifiers already. Now, now's the time to get the gear for that. Now's yeah. the time to pick this stuff up. And then you keep all that fresh 24 stuff as we move a little later into the season. But now when you can get things for 40% off, 50% off, uh, that bike stand for 50 bucks holy cow there's three people off the christmas list right now for 150 bucks yeah exactly <laughs> and don't be that guy you know oh i'm gonna look on amazon oh after this i'm sure there'll be a black friday sale this is race pricing this is special event pricing right now out there in the vintage row area and you're not doing anybody any favors by doing that. You know, uh, un unfortunately, I, I watched not long ago, I watched a lady and her kid come in, and they, 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 they annoy me anyways. Uh, just, uh, they're regulars, they annoy me. Uh, they're, they're just, they're, they're brand new experts. Okay, so they come in and they try on uh, a couple pair of Alpine Stars, and she literally goes right online, and when he says, yeah, the nines fit best, boom, she clicks it. So I walk right up to her, and I said, you know, ma'am, I, I said, uh, you know, I appreciate you stopping in on a regular basis and giving us all the advice that you do. But if you're going to use this for a fitting room, I'd prefer you leave the store immediately. Yeah, you're 100%. Okay, right. you come in, you try my helmets on, you try my boots on. If she would have simply asked, is that the best you can do on that boot, I'd have made her a deal. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, absolutely. But now, uh, you know what, I was standing there hoping, Dean, that she got a size 8 in red. Okay, instead of that white one in nine that they ordered, because then she had nobody to go to. Yeah. Then she had nobody to add. Then she had nobody but a phone 
to deal with. So you remember when these folks are out here to race doing this and providing these sales, and you go back to their showroom, listen, talk to them, deal with them, uh, you know, make a relationship with them instead of shopping every dealership in a 50 mile radius for five bucks. Yes. Okay, make relationships that count, build relationships, and do business with people that want to do business with you. Yeah, you're 100% right. Support the people that support you. Like, you know, I'm a motocross track owner. We have a, a motocross yes. series. You know, we have a lot of people that sponsor our series and stuff, but people, they're searching everywhere. If they can find it somewhere else, they're going to they're gonna get it. They save $100, but they don't realize who is supporting what they love. The car dealership that sponsors your track is where you do business and send all your friends. Yes. Exactly, you're 100% right on that Okay, where do I buy a truck, Dean? Off of my guys. Yep. That's where you buy your new truck. Uh, and, and that's, I, I've made a li uh, lifetime of it, dude. Okay, I've made a living and a lifetime. At 56 years old, man, I started making relationships, uh, you know, in my early teens. And uh, the loyalty, uh, you show somebody respect, uh, you, you give them just a little bit of a consistent business, okay? And you'd be surprised how far that'll go behind the counter in the parts department. I agree with you. There's a, there's a hunt. No doubt about that one. I don't want to say no doubt about it. They say I say no doubt about it. But hey, you're right. No yeah, doubt yeah, no, a, 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 absolutely. Uh, and uh, you, you're keeping guys working. You're keeping guys in the business. You're keeping uh, tracks like this alive. Yeah. So speaking of keeping alive, these guys right here, Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Yeah. Rocky Mountain ATV MC, and they're 100 100 percent employees. They're owned and operated. They have the largest selection of dirt bikes, parts, apparel, and accessories. You can visit their website today at Rocky Mountain ATVMC, and that's where it's okay to go on the website. And you know why we can readily support that? Because they give gift certificates and sign-ups at different events all over the place, okay? Yeah. They do free returns, free shipping. Really? All right. I had no idea. At a certain, at a certain do uh, dollar amount, certain you're going to get your free shipping, but the return's free. If it doesn't fit or they send you the wrong color, they're going to swap it out for you, That's okay? Right you get a customer number there. They start tracking the business. You get updates, notifications. But I promise you, when you subscribe to magazines, when you go to events, when you go to uh, special promotions, you're going to see Rocky Mountain ATV mc.com contributing yeah they're definitely giving involved. giving you your money back basically i've seen them give 25 dollar gift certificates when you spent 19 bucks yeah exactly <laughs> okay and then, there, and then there was no minimum on the 25 dollar gift certificate and no things way. like that oh yeah so that's when it's okay you know and there again that's a whole company committed to what we do and you're keeping those people working yes that's what it's all about you know we're all family here so you want to support the people that support you Dean, uh, just walked back just a second ago across the infield, and already puddles drying up. Uh, no, no real, you know, standing water on the track that we see. They've uh, driven most of the equipment through those holes, so I think we're going to be in great shape. Small delay here today, but I think uh, payoff's going to be huge. Yeah, definitely payoff's definitely going to be huge. Roddy, you chiming in with us? Well, just for a moment, anyway. You know, I'm looking at this track, and I, I, I know I, I date myself when I say this stuff, but. Whenever you I took yourself on a date. <laughs> Absolutely. Where'd you guys go? <laughs> well, I went back to the uh, early 90s <laughs> when, um, when I was working in uh, local District 11 motocross. You know, I look out at this track right now. We didn't have the luxuries uh, at the track and the promoter that I work with. We didn't have water trucks and things like that. And even then, they were rather elementary on, on, on that level. So, you know, when we would go out, we would water all night. And our goal was to achieve what this racetrack oh, yes. we're seeing right now. Yeah. <laughs> no question, Rodney. Yeah. And, and, and you know, you, the muddier you got it in the morning and the muddier it was in the practice, the longer it would last throughout the day. And then maybe you might have to take a tractor out and disc it or, or plow it or something and get some of that moisture back up on top. But, uh, yeah, it, it just takes me back. I was thinking about, I can remember uh, Kenworthy, as a matter oh, of fact. Man. Oh, wow, that's worst. a throwback. <laughs> that was yep. one of the worst as far as mud goes. But, man, I tell you, it produced some great racing. That's in for sure. in your yeah. memories, do you remember the uh, pumps running out of gas and you had to fill the pumps back up and the fire hoses blown oh, apart yeah. because, oh, yeah. because we had to use fire hoses yeah. from the fire department. Yeah. They donated us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. How about that? Hey, you yeah. know what, memories? That's good stuff right that there, is. isn't it? Absolutely. You know, yeah, rubber drag band starts. Drug and drag and hose. <laughs> <laughs> Dean's probably never been. You've never been I've on never a rubber band, have you? Oh, yeah, I know. Now, now, go by where they out, outside of a fair race. Outside of a fair race, yeah. Oh, okay, great. Good for you, Dean. Yep, awesome. <laughs> awesome. I actually had a track. I did a, I did a race one time when the rubber band started. Uh, people actually kind of liked it. So yeah, it's different. It yeah, it is up different. a lot. 
my first track, Pyramid Valley, a uh, local track four or five miles from the house in West Virginia. These guys rigged up two by fours and four by fours with garage door springs. Oh, no way. No. Now listen, you crank this thing down. You, you got a couple 300 pounders and you crank this thing down and you set the hook. And we had pennant banners, just carnival pennant banners right across you. <laughs> and, you know, awesome. some lucky dude got to pull the pin oh, man. <laughs> and make sure you were clear and your fingers weren't anywhere near those garage door springs. And yeah. that thing come up at about 300 mile an hour. Wow. I went and, that, and that was our start. <laughs> That's so funny. You know, it was awesome. I went to track a little while ago, and they, uh, I think it was in Arkansas or somewhere, but they had forward falling gates. It's like, oh, what's this? This is crazy. But then I found out that back in the day, there was a lot of forward falling gates out there. Uh, I hate to break it to you, Dean, but the first gate ever was forward falling. <laughs> <laughs> As a matter of fact, the modern gate, uh, where's that guy at? Is he at Redbud? I think he might be right down the road from Redbud, the guy that invented oh. the, the modern gate. Uh, I'm trying to remember what track he's near. Uh, as a matter of fact, we paid tribute to him at the Nationals last year. A uh, great innovation, uh, you know, uh, an advancement of the sport. And uh, kind of changed the game if you want to know the truth, truth about it. So um, I, I remember my, my first... Uh, experience with a forward falling gate was at Honda Hills in uh, Oh sure. Yeah. yeah I, just I, outside Marietta. Yeah, uh, yeah I had never seen that and uh, uh, I thought that was the most peculiar thing in the world, man. And did you go to any of the uh, trans no, events I, and stuff no, over there? It, no? it, 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 it was it was just past its prime whenever I had Okay, it, I was it, wondering cuz I know yeah. I know about how long you've been in. I'm like, yeah. "Well, wait a minute, Dick, Ronnie, Dick did Clampeth, you catch the, Yeah, Dick Clampeth, the, the Clampeth family had sold Honda Hills. Not Chad. <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> but uh, Dick and and those folks, and uh, I think Scott Caldwell had bought it at that right. point. And then, um, obviously, with time and just different things, uh, it kind of dilapidated things, you know, uh, happened. And I understand that it's reopened, or they're in the process of trying to reopen it, uh, open it anyway. I haven't had a chance to get up there and check it out. It's not real far, maybe a couple hours from my house. Yeah, life. it's about an hour and a half from me. Straight wow. down 50, get on 77 there for a minute, and you're you there. Maybe closer to it than I. Uh, I, I don't West know. Virginia, that's wild. Davey went over there a couple years ago, Dean, and uh, you know the tower, the 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 uh, uh, the bridge, not yeah. the tower, the bridge over the track was falling in, and yeah. still had uh, signage on in the vines. And sure enough, uh, they've got new interest over there. They've had a couple events. They had a reunion event, that type of thing. And uh, Rodney, I think you and I should get together and go over there uh, if would schedule great. would allow. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, wow. we'll go over there. I'll ride uh, the old guys' class, and we'll just chill for the day. And Absolutely, that'll be a lot of fun for sure. Yeah, absolutely, maybe I'll get on a microphone over there. <laughs> I, I, you know you I will. I'll down your race. You know you will. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But All right, Dean. Looks like we're getting this equipment moved around the track right now. It's very encouraging to me because, like Rodney said, you know we spent <laughs> years trying to make tracks look just like this. Yeah. And uh, provided precipitation holds off the rest of the day, Dean, this, this is going to turn into true outdoor motocross. Okay, this thing's going to get choppy, ruddy, rough, bumpy. Uh, any adjective you want to use, that it, it's going to get there. I can tell you. Yeah, I agree with you. Definitely having this moisture in the ground. Going to get some more brake bumps going to the corner. Rut's going to be a little deeper. So line choice is going to be a big thing. And also a big thing is if you're in the pit area right now, I encourage you to get up here and watch the work these guys are doing the track right now to give you an idea of what they're doing. Right, yeah, and you're going to see where it's been touched up, where it really hasn't maybe been touched, that type of thing. So uh, a little bit of information by coming up here and taking a close eye, as Dean said. You know, looking at radar, I see nothing. I, this band of showers, at least right now, unless something else develops, there's nothing way out in the Gulf Coast, nowhere in Texas, nowhere to the south. Everything looks like it may have moved out, so we may be... Uh, so everything basically going northeast of us, Rodney? Is that what, yeah. what it is? Yep, it's uh, coming. Awesome. Back. Yeah. So uh, hopefully... We're, we're at that marker there, that black marker? Yep, right there. Okay, awesome. Yes, that's what I like to see. Wow, yeah, that does look good, man, all the way to Texas. Yeah. <laughs> so we're in the clear, as you could say. Yeah, man. At least right now, unless something develops. I mean. It is Florida. Don't put it past it. <laughs> I was going to say, there's that's, that announcer's curse, though. Yeah, that's what I, that's what I was trying to reiterate, you know. Uh, uh, any, like anywhere at wait 15 minutes, things can change. Whoa, you know? These days. Yeah. Change in a hurry. Yeah. On the starting line, though, they're in no hurry. It's their Bet 35 Plus class. That is a race number seven on the line. I have to tend to think there's somebody that's in a hurry. They want to get out <laughs> here and get into this stuff for some reason. That guy, who, that, that known mutter, Dean. Yeah, exactly. That guy whose reputation on the line because he's a mutter. Grinning <laughs> ear to ear right now. <laughs> he is. 
I, I don't know who that would be, but we're, 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 we're going. We're about to find out we are. for sure. Yeah, and down in the staging area, bearing with us is Division One of the 2BDC Limited and Division Number Two of 2BDC Limited down there in the pre-staging area. Dean, what was your mindset? You said you love the rain. Uh, so cow guys do too. You know, it's uh, 300 and. Oh, we'll say 340 days of sunshine out there <laughs> a year, okay? O honestly, I'm not being funny. Uh, and, and when it rains, man, you, you, you just head out to, to Beaumont or Dumont or somewhere, and they call it Velcro. Uh, it just really puts the moisture to it. It soaks in quick because the ground is parched and dry, and, and they just look for it. I mean, they do a rain dance out there for sure. But how did you feel about it? When the rain comes down, I, I was one of those guys that's down on the lineup, he's grinning ear to ear because I was one of those riders I wasn't scared to let loose, you know what I'm saying? If you're comfortable getting a little sideways in the corners, you know, and yes. you're banking off things, this, yes. is, this is your type of riding right here. And it, it was just funny to me how, how it did affect so many people. It just rain. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, okay, now you waited till right after the rain at home to go practice. And that kind of thing. So it's rain, yeah. you know. And uh, other guys like like myself just embraced it because on a, on a dry track, I was I was not going to be anywhere near the front on a dry perfect track, but on that muddy track, I was about as good as any of my buddies. <laughs> you know sure. for sure, the definitely great, the great equalizer as they call it. Going to say good morning right now to Mr. Mike Burkeen. What's up, Mike? Good to see you, buddy. Oh man, another day in paradise out here. It's. Uh little rain it's it's uh ken farrell up at first year you say it's just a dry drizzle i <laughs> can't like love that day. guy yep love ken yeah. farrell for sure so what what's the skinny what's the load down here this morning what's uh, what's on your agenda uh you know really today just kind of watching some racing and it's uh you know you come to minios and and once you get through supercross everything slows down and gets uh gets a lot easier to manage man what those what Wynn and his crew do over on that Super Pro track is nothing short of amazing. Absolutely. Now, hey, Mike, we know uh, we got the holiday right now, but we also know as soon as we get past Thanksgiving, man, it's pedal to the metal for you. Yeah. I mean, you, you've got so many aspects and areas that really have to be polished or revisited for 24, things that you notice, things that you really want to do amend or do or this or that. Now's the time that happens, correct? Yeah, we actually, I mean, kind of don't really have a break as far as the racing goes. We The week after Thanksgiving is the AZ Open out in Arizona. Um, then that's also the kickoff of the arena cross season. Right. I'll be sitting down with uh, the guys at MX Sports next week to talk about classes of mm -hmm. Loretta's mm -hmm. and uh, everything that we're doing there. We got the Loretta schedule done. It's about to be announced, I think, here in the next day or so. Um, and then off-road starts up in January. Oh, it, it's yeah. unbelievable. It's, it's I mean, it is. I, 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 I got the schedule from Cotter the other day, you know, the prelim and all that. Um, yeah. are, are you coming to the office next week? Uh, no, are you going to be in town? I think we're doing it soon. Okay. Because okay. yeah. you were coming to the restaurant and eat. We were, we were going to dinner for sure, dude, if oh, you were going to yeah. be in town. For sure. Yeah, Mike Holtz here and I want to get up there at some point. But, you know, it, with it, COVID was a gnarly thing, but we did prove to each other that we didn't necessarily have to spend thousands dollars to all get in one place to get things done. Now, I'd, I'm a firm believer in being face-to-face -face with people, um, you know, but I think if you use a combination of both, you know, AMA, if we change the way that we do the AMA Congress, we used to be once a year in October, we do a whole year's worth of business in eight hours. And now we have like four commission meetings before we get to October. So by the time we get to October, it's a foregone conclusion. You know, we already know what's going to pass and what's not going to pass, and then it's a matter of just voting and um, getting the rule changes to the board. And cool. So, yeah. There, there's, there's always a reasonable happy medium, wh whether it's the meetings, whether it's the travel, yeah. whether it's the schedule, whether it's this and that. And uh, what, what's been very cool is uh, we, we've got some of the best thinkers in the game, whether it's yourself, Mr. Cotter, uh, Kerry Joe Coombs, uh, all, all these people that are involved, Jimmy Perry, all these people, Roy, the, all, all these people that are involved, uh, these people process information very well, you know, very clearly. Uh, they're, they're focused on that particular task, and they can move to the next one cleanly. So uh, it, it really helps uh, when you work with a team like that, and uh, uh, you are a big part of that team, no question. And I'll tell you something that, that's a little bit surprising, all of those people have, have different experiences. 
Absolutely. You know, Roy's had his experience, Kerry, obviously. Yep. Tim, all the things they've done, the things that I've been able to do. We're on the same page about 95% of the time. Listen, you know Roy and I couldn't be more different. Yeah. But we're best buddies, and we see the sport and the game the same way. Yeah. Okay, for sure. And I, I appreciate what you said, Ray. I like that. Yeah, for most sure. of the time, I mean, they're very, you know, there are a few little things, and um, the partnership with the Mex Sports for the AMA to come in and help with the Outdoor Nationals, um, you know, I, I, I wasn't involved in that, but I watched from down the hall, watched Mike Pelletier, and, you know, same thing. At the end of the day, we all want the same thing. Absolutely. And uh, maybe there's some little tweaks one way or the other as to how to get, get there, but... You know, it's it's been a breath of fresh air to work with all of those people because, you know, I'd, I'd heard in the past, like, oh, when you go to MX Sports, you <laughs> job. And, yeah, man. You know, and, uh, uh. and I've, I mean, I've been involved with those guys since 2003 when I worked with Cobra mm -hmm. as a vendor. And I've never had, I only had one bad experience ever, and it was all on me. I, um, I signed up Ryan Schaefer's kid, Austin. Uh, so Ryan uh, didn't uh. stand in line. But I had a guardianship, and I'm going to leave it nameless on who ratted me out because she's <laughs> one of my buddies now. But, uh -huh. but I got I bet out, I know. And, uh, <laughs> and they called me up there, and uh, I got my hands slapped. But literally, you know, over all these years, that's, that's the only time. So and, I, and I'll that's care that's if somebody's got you, your back. You know what I mean? It, it, it's Tim. It's Carrie Joe. It's a, and, uh, you know, you and Mikey P make a great comment. I love Pelletier. Uh, such a great guy. And another one of those guys, Dean, he processes information quickly, clearly. No gray area with you guys. You know what I mean? It is what it is. This guy lives by the rule book, and, and I love it, okay? There, there's no question. That's a, exactly how it works. Yeah, well, we came out of COVID, and um, you know, we lost Kevin Crowther, mm -hmm. and... You know, the decision was made that Mike Peltier was going to take over as director of racing. And, um, you know, he kind of said, hey, I'll do that, but you got to promote Burkina to deputy director because I need help. Right. I can't do that in Supercross by myself. And and I, I'll be honest, and I've told Mike this many times, I was like, it's like 32 years old. He's never managed people. This is a really big task for him. It's going to be a big mountain for him. And I'll be dang if he didn't just charge right to climb right up <laughs> yeah he's absolutely killed it on on all of those fronts and he's supportive of what we do on the amateur side he's a great boss in that he kind of lets me do what we do you know we don't have a ton of same thing we don't have a ton of disagreements we're on the same page most of the time and and then there are also opportunities when we don't agree and we agree to disagree and let's move on to the next thing it, it, it's a common interest it's a respect Okay, and it's a common goal. So uh, that that's how that stuff works, right there. Yeah, it's uh, it's actually been just so much fun. Um, it made it worthwhile for me to move to Columbus. You know, the opportunity for Mike and I to kind of have um, a blank canvas on the racing department, and build it the way we wanted to build it, and um, you know, we built it, and then part of it <laughs> part of it broke off, and and uh, we got a few things so. While everyone's listening, if anybody knows someone that's well-versed in off-road, wants to get involved in the AMA, I desperately need an off-road manager to, to pick up the slack on the 10 or 15 off-road events I have to go to right now. So, Wow. Did you, did you hear that, Dean? I mean, I right, right there it was, was open resume invitation. Yeah. Uh, I guess I got Mike Burkeen. Is it a part-time job by any chance? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 <laughs> Mike Jolly uh, is doing it part-time right now and is – been an unbelievable help. And that's the problem. It is full time. You know, you that that's why we need a person in that. But that's why you need the help. Yeah, the, the part time stuff that Mike does helps me tremendously. But the problem with that is that the rest of that job is falling on me right now. And I kind of have two jobs anyway, with the deputy director job and the motocross um, department. And uh, you know, so if there's you know someone out there that's uh, that's Tough part of it, you know, it's a great job, it's a great position, lots of fun. Got to move to Columbus, Ohio. Yeah, right. Yeah. It, it, exactly. My brother lives in Columbus. Yeah, my brother, he's been out there for years. It's a pretty cool place. Uh, grew, yeah. up, grew up right there in West Virginia with his stuff and uh, works sure. for the gas company. But uh, now, AMA hat off, dad hat on. What's up with Matt? What's going on with him? Saw he's touching base with you there a second ago. What's, what's on the program with him right now? Yeah, he's, um, you know, he's knee deep in his YouTube channel. <laughs> right. <laughs> content and um, 
He just, I think he just had an MRI on his shoulder. He's waiting for the results. His shoulders bothered him all year, last oh. year. And, um, but I, my wife just called me this morning and said that uh, he's coming into town for, for Thanksgiving. And she goes, we had to move everything around in the garage because I guess he's racing that weekend. <laughs> <laughs> so he's going to go out and race the Victory Sports the door. Oh, cool. I love it. Yep, I love yeah, it. And, uh, and then figure out, you know, what's up with the shoulder. And, yeah. Um, that's a tough one, Mike. Uh, everybody talks about knees, but almost every one of my buddies that's had the rotator yeah. has had it done twice. Well, you know, no matter what surgeon did it, it's just one of them things where we all get back at it a little early or you don't mean to, but you raise it above your head, and it, it really takes serious rehab, that shoulder does. Yeah, he, he had the other one done. He had the labrum rotator cuffs. And Any of issues with it? Uh, no, not really. It's Good. It feels better than this one. They think it's <laughs> it feels better than the bad one. <laughs> yeah, so they think it's a labor room, and that's a better, a better way to go. And uh, you know, it's a funny thing. So when Matt was younger, you know, we were just like a team, me and Matt, with the track, and no one really looked at us as anything. And then I sort of worked for Cobra, and it was like, oh, you know, they'd say to him, "You're Mike Burkeen's son," and. Uh, and then he started getting a little better, and then it became, yeah, you're Matt Burkeen's dad. Right. And then it went, I went to south of the border. I'm there for eight years. And, uh, and then at the AMA, and then Matt was like, yeah. Everybody's like, yeah, you're Mike Burkeen's kid, right? And then the YouTube thing blows up, and I can't count the number of people. Just yesterday, Josh Grant's little guy was, was uh, over at Dunlop, and uh, Jeff said, you know who that is, don't you? And he goes, who? And he goes, that's Mike Burkeen. He goes, Oh, you're Matt for Keen's dad. No, <laughs> That's awesome, dude. So yeah, and when killer I get, stuff. When I get called to sure. the office and, and people hear my name, literally probably half the people say, you know. So he's really blown up with the YouTube and the two-stroke thing, and you know, probably the most famous uh, 35th place kid. I love it. Exactly. <laughs> Hey, side note, man, uh, finally, I've been waiting. There, there, there was a change, and you'll appreciate this. Finally got my lifetime status. Okay. Uh, now, when I was a kid, it was Matt Watson, Route 1, Box 180B. Uh, moved down here for a while. Uh, had a little gap, but when I moved back, different address. That Route 1, you know, they took rural routes away. They wanted everything street addresses in the 80s and that yeah. type of thing. So had about three different addresses. So the years didn't carry over after a, a, a gap about a year and a half. I just kept saying, oh, it's, I ordered it. Remember back, everybody would say, I ordered it. It's in the mail. You, you couldn't check. You couldn't go online and call me a liar. Right. So <laughs> anyways, uh, sh that showed up the other day. I've been, been excited because I, I met the qualifications a long time ago, but one was Matt, one was Matthew, Route 1, blah, 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 and all this stuff. And I was super pumped uh, to get all my stuff to, uh, about a week ago or stuff for a uh, lifetime. Loved it. Let's get that. Uh, that means you can vote. For uh, absolutely. Campaign. Yeah, it killed me that I couldn't couldn't uh, go in and uh, vote for Rita, uh, Barry, you know, and all those folks uh, last year. It killed me. My vote, my voice didn't matter until this year, and I love it. Yeah. So if you're listening and you ever have an opportunity to go to the Hall of Fame induction, the Hall of Fame speeches make you laugh, they make you cry, they make you smile. It's it's the most amazing thing. You went from, you know, Barry Hawk was. He was pretty, you know, laid back in his speech. But he's got a great story to tell. Absolutely. And uh, Carrie, how can you not? I'm uh, not Carrie. Read it. Yeah. How can you not love that story? And uh, and then we saved Travis Pastrana for last. Sure. And I mean, I'm still laughing. He took shots at Roger. He took shots at everyone in the room, as only Travis can. Oh, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. I had the pleasure of going uh, and sitting with Ron Lachine. For his and Dr. Bidas. Okay, yeah, Amig, Bidas, all of us are sitting at the table. And you talk, like you said, uh, for, uh, the young lady, the pioneer of uh, uh, motocross, or not motocross, but motorcycling, she was an uh, educator and all this kind of stuff. I can't remember. She was inducted at the time. And it, it, was, it was a pretty good group of people that night. And, of course, Lachine, they save him for basically last. He comes up. And he talks about all the kids from El Cajon and, and all that kind of stuff. And like you said, uh, uh, just a full range of emotions, a very special night. Uh, and the uh, education, the things you're surrounded with, and uh, the memories of an event like that are, are something, if you're in position, you really need to check out. Yeah, and I, and I don't know how many of you guys know Grant Langston very well. He's <laughs> one of the inductees. Grant Absolutely. Was to the point where he could not speak. I mean, he just... 
he had to stop seven or eight times in the sink because he was so emotional over it. It was, it was heartwarming. That's what Rob said, and, and, and we do spend time with Grant. Grant's a buddy of ours from Brothers Broadcast, the race yeah. days. When, when the rear wheel came apart at Steel City, yep. okay, we were there with Grant, you know, and he's one of the, about that. And he, I guarantee he did. I'll promise you did. And, and him and the old man, they're grateful. They came over here with a dream like so many guys. Okay, the GPs, whatever. No, I want to go to America. I want to be the best. Okay, I want to go over there live the live the lifestyle. I want to give back. And that's exactly what Gerald and, and them have done. They've got a beautiful dealership. They hold events all year long. They support riders. They support racetracks. Okay, and Grant, I, it doesn't matter. If you would ask that guy to come to any track in the country, if his schedule was open, he'd be there for the day. You know, he, he's that guy. And uh, to hear you say that, Rob commented on the same thing, and that shows what that, that night's about and what that achievement's about. Absolutely. And uh, for next year, let's start thinking about next year. I am working very hard to get Bud Mamoni on the ballot. Sure. Uh, the Godfather. Absolutely. And, uh, there's absolutely. Build a bike out of necessity. Yep. Built one in his garage, and it started a revolution of what we have today in the 50 plus. I guarantee you. First it started to fight, then a revolution. <laughs> okay, first it started to fight. Uh, the guy said, I can build a better mousetrap, didn't he, Mike? He did. He was on his way home from Loretta's. He called, uh, I think it was a towel jet. It said, Ab absolutely. Hey, here are the problems with this bike, and we need to fix it, you know, so we have a good bike furniture. And the guy's like, I sell all the one the importer. He said, we sell all the one we can buy. We're just going to go in. But so I'm going to build a better one. At the time, him and Sonny got home in the motorhome, they had a business plan written out, and uh, it wasn't six months later that Bud had a prototype. No question about it. That guy put it out there. He made the dream happen because it was so easy. Okay, the, nobody, nobody else did it is what blows my mind before that because the idea was back in the day in 1974 with the Honda MR50, it was a two-stroke manual clutch three-speed. Yep. It looked just like a CR 125, didn't it, Mike? I got I got a half a dozen of them sitting in my garage. I had a couple of them myself. I got I got them sitting in the garage now. And 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 the idea of that machine, give the child this big machine in a smaller package. This is what he's going to be riding later. So, hey, Bud Man, you're famous for an MR50. And then the magazine, I've got the article. Uh, we're talking about uh, Bud Mamone and the Cobra, how we wanted to make a small bike a big bike. Well, the MR50 was the same thing. It was uh, three-speed, manual clutch, two-stroke back in the day. And as a matter of fact, you couldn't even touch the ground on the bike. No, I couldn't touch the ground. Uh, my dad just had to hold me up on the starts. Hold me up on the starts. And uh, he, my dad used to actually have to run around the track, too, in case I fell. <laughs> yeah, that, that's all in the story. And, Going a little further, then you actually had the low boy pipe that was right. that bad boy. C C CMS, Cosmo uh, Cosmopolitan Motorsports, and those guys were the very first to make a cone pipe yeah. for the MR50. Then Harry Clem come along. So Bud Mamone said, you know what? Why can we not make a, why can we not make a modern racing 50 like these 85s we're looking at? He said, we're only a couple classes away, and, and you look at a CR80, uh, you look at a YZ80. They're all water cooled. They're all ready to go, and with just that thought, Bud, Bud changed the game. Yeah, I mean, um, the, the evolution of everything. I mean, it's crazy. Like I remember when uh, that old Yamaha that had the, the the radiator on the front number. Eighty two. Eighty two. Yeah, that thing. Forks got hotter. And <laughs> firecracker oil went away. You know, mm -hmm. but that's what it took. Yeah, absolutely. That's that's what it took to finally figure it out that it can't go there. We need to put it. <laughs> Here, right. Uh, and and what would it take, Bud? Ninety days? No, uh, a little more than that. But six, months, him, yeah, tops. six months, tops. Right, right. for and sure. The, the following year, he had, depending on who you speak with, he had a hundred, and he was following. <laughs> 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 he, he, they went one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> they might have counted a couple of them bikes twice, huh? Clearly, way before my time. My understanding is there may or may not have been. A few empty boxes on those <laughs> ballot, ballot racks with, with uh, just the front number plate and the handlebars sticking out so they could see them through the thing. Oh, uh, I love it. And then the, the other thing was dealers and all across the country. That became the birth of the daddy dealer. Mm -hmm. You know, guys like Darren Courier, um, Blake Green's dad, Darren, Darren Green, and uh, Mike, what's his name? Uh, the guy that owned AC Racing. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> but, you know, that was the birth of the day. Put us on the spot. I, I, know, I, know, I, know, I know exactly what you're talking John about. John Starling down here in yeah. Florida was one. And uh, so then, you know, that was his way to get dealers in all regions. Right. He had dads and the kids who were racing and sell another one to a guy. was a genius. Guy. Yeah. Okay, the guy was a genius. Yeah. So they protested Brent and, on his thing, and it took four or five months to finally get that thing resolved. There's a great article somewhere. I read a couple years ago about how all that went. Was sure, yeah, it, 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 was, it was a great article. Yeah. And, and the game changed that day. It literally changed that day. There was, we had for, and I say we because I worked for him for five years. Um, so once Brent got his within a couple years, 100% covers on the line at Loretta's and sure. places like this. Right. Um, then KTM came in with their um, liquid cool bike and Sean Reif won Loretta's. Yep. I think there's only twice that Cobra hasn't won the 7 8 at Loretta's in the last 25 years. In my opinion, Bud Mamone, uh, he forced KTM to go away from the Moto Marini and bring it in house. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, that Moto Marini was a nightmare. Clutches need adjusted and shimmed every Moto. If Dad rode the thing to the start, the clutch was done. Uh, I heard it's all about the clutch pack with those. Oh people. my gosh! Dude, listen, in the day. You you better have a micrometer in your back pocket and a handful of washers if your kid was going to do anything on one, and maybe a spare ignition too in your pocket because yeah. it, it was probably going to take one of those by the end of the race. But that really changed the game. And you mentioned they they come out with the liquid cord and all that. But by Bud doing that, look at the options now. You know, look at look at what these children are riding. But it kills me. Uh, last year I had to set somebody straight here. I'm walking by, and I see him drop a $8,000 Husqvarna on the ground and call it a piece of... Mm -hmm. And I, I just stepped right over the banner. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. You've ridden the TM-75, have you? <laughs> uh, yeah. I've never ridden a TM. No. I looked at the kid, mm -hmm. and I asked him, you've ridden it because you don't know what a piece of crap is. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Right. Since you've been alive... There hasn't been a piece, piece of, of crap, crap on yeah. the showroom. Yeah, very you true. You can go in and buy one based on your favorite color, but forget brand. I like blue. Great, it wins. I like white. Okay, it wins. Red's my favorite color. Good, you can win on that. Yeah, all they always do a <laughs> okay. great job nowadays. Before sure. it was uh, kind of yearly, right? Yeah. This three year package, maybe Honda had a better right. one, or Suzuki, or Yamaha. And it's all in kind of a sequence at times of, of what year they're coming out with a newer version of of the greatest thing, right? Yeah, and, and I look at this kid, I say, you gotta be joking me. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm looking at this almost Rockstar Edition 105 laying on the ground yeah. because he didn't get to jump. Because, you know, he couldn't bring it on the white flag lap. The bike was a piece of crap. And in his mind, and all you kids out there, listen to me closely right now, you've never ridden a piece of junk. <laughs> all right, you may have had a used bike somewhere along the way. You may have something that gave up on you somewhere. But there's not a piece of junk on a modern showroom, buddy. Yeah, you'd have to go back at least, what, 15 years? Right, longer tell than us, that, Mike. Yeah, longer, seriously, yeah. tell us. What's your opinion? Oh, exactly. So we, I, I see it at Vintage Motorcycle Days every year. We'll have kids. I'll give you a good example. Casey Cochran came in and rode a 74 TM 125. Oh, For years that, he did yeah. his, pop, his pop's bike, yeah, grandpa's grandpa, bike. Grandpa. Yep, and he, yeah, you know, he killed everybody on it. Oh, but it but his comments, when he got off, he looked at me and he goes, Mr. Keen, how the heck did you guys race these things? Yeah. Right. I thought we raced them because we were racing against other ones. Yeah. Exactly. You know, if you had to race it against yeah. today, you're you're dead in the water. But we're all racing the same bikes back then. And uh, even though that first RM was a carryover TM, the reason <laughs> you had a modern RM, guys like Roger and Garrett, they broke the TMs in half. Yep. Okay, the, from the a frames lot. to the cases <laughs> to exploding wheels, okay? Guys like Brad Lackey and Magoo, that's why we walk in to the showroom today and you can't essentially pull the crank out of one. Yeah. You, can't, you, you, you can't explode the wheels, basically, on one. You don't have frames that flex <laughs> and stretch and not fit in the jig after the race anymore, yeah. buddy. How many campers could you go to and they would actually know who Brad Lackey was? <laughs> uh, mo most of the guys that paid the entry fees out here, no. Most of the grandpas and the dads that paid yeah, the entry fees I'm and bought the these riders, bikes. They, yeah. The campers, the riders. They, those, they have no idea. They, they have no idea. Magoo. Yeah. Magoo. What? You know. But, Heike but, Mikula, but like, they need to know because they're riding a bike. Heike I think Mikula you need took, to know, need to know where you're coming from. Year. Yeah, you're exactly right. Heike Mikula took one year to build the YZM. 
Okay, it was a three-year program. They gave him a Yamaha. We're going to build the bike. We're going to develop the bike. Then we're going to go win the championship. Uh-uh. I remember all <laughs> no, those that, guys. That's not how that went down. One year, the Fierce Finn built the bike, dialed the bike, and beat the world on it. Those are the guys that, like you yeah, said, they need to know. It would yeah. be nice to, like, I haven't seen it, but put together some sort of package where these riders can actually go through the history of it. Like, you... Like, you can go certain places and figure out the history, but it's never been, like, right in their hands. Like, oh, exactly. Uh, you know, like I, I, exactly. This, that, and the other. And it, it's crazy because I remember watching some of those old GPs uh, with Lackey and, and then Thorpe, Dave Thorpe, um, the, all those guys. And, man, they it was just impressive to watch. But um, the tracks they rode, you know, the hills and uh, just – crazy and insane and now you see a modern track and it's like hey can i do that triple over there can i yeah. do that step on step off that they have or the, or you, the six you, and, you and i watched up. 50 autos doing that that's what's crazy the, the 50s that did the triple on the supercross track though okay which makes me think the electric bikes can possibly make it too but. <laughs> <laughs> hey so here's how out of touch these kids are with the, the history and even the Mm -hmm. Recent history. I took a girl 75? to line up Loretta's a couple years ago, who was her her and her father were having a little issues. So I said, "Come on, I'll I'll take you to the line today." And uh, so I see McGrath standing over there, and uh, I said, "Hey, Jeremy, can you go give this girl a little pep talk? She's really had a rough a rough morning." So Jeremy goes over and talks to her for like five minutes, like way more than I you know ever expected. And uh, so we he walks away, and I walk over there. And the girl looks at me and she goes, God, that guy was really nice. Who was that? <laughs> she's like, I have no idea. She's talking to one of the greatest in the history. Of Absolutely. The sport. It's very true. But like in, in other sports, let's say stick and ball sports, like they all know, like a baseball guy knows who Mickey Mantle is, you know, knows, you know, all these big figures, right? Football, the same thing. Um, and our sport is like, Maybe all our kids are just that self-centered that it's only about them, but there really is a whole other world of, of how this sport generated, why they're doing what they're doing now, and, and who came before them to set the, set the bar and it, have it, it roll the way it, it does. It, I think it's very important. I catch heck for it all the time because people say, what you do? these kids don't know who you're talking about. No, but their granddad does. And, it, and, it, and if you pick up any of these coffee table books that are out there, there's some wonderful coffee table books that, that have the history of motocross uh, in it. Uh, you, you, you talk about, you know, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson. People know who they, they are because that's where we got LeBron from. That's where we got whatever from. You know, so they relate to that. And uh, I do my best, bud, man. I don't want them to forget that some kid that couldn't touch the ground on an MR50 <laughs> loved it that much yep. that you fell on your head ten times. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Kept going. And, and you were going to get back on that bike because that's what you had and that's what you loved. Mm -hmm. And uh, thanks to you, yes, sir. we had guys like Rudy and Dean Dickinson. Oh, yeah, those guys are great. Yeah. They said, listen, this kid showed me something. I don't think that stock RM makes enough for him. <laughs> so you guys took it to the next level. One of the most powerful teams before satellite was ever a thing. That's crazy. R and D. You guys were incredible. Name some of the dudes. Holland. Kia. Name some of the dudes. Keo was a Yamaha guy at the time, but George Holland, yourself. Uh, oh, Scotty Burnsworth. I Burnworth, think. the yeah, burner. Burner came through there. Uh, Mike Healy. Um, Shoot! How many uh, of the Larry, things? Larry Brooks came Larry, through there. Larry Brooks, man, um, one, of he, most, one of the most I famous still, mini bike guys ever. I still remember a photo of him in motocross action. You know, for nose wheelies, were nose wheelies, <laughs> right? And he's got an open face helmet on. With his glasses. Yeah, he was yeah. before his glasses. Oh. My dad said that. Uh, my dad always told me he goes, once Larry got glasses, he slowed down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> he could actually see the bumps, but yeah, uh, he could see. Yeah. <laughs> but Larry, I mean, it's just iconic. Like that, that photo still sticks out in my head. You know, it was awesome at the time. You know. Right. You know, all that started with Jeff Ward. Yeah. Okay. He's basically the godfather of modern mini bike racing. Mm -hmm. No question about it. Honda built the XR75 as their first, but even before the Elsinore, the XR75 was the first yeah. dedicated machine in 1973. It was, 19, first race bike. It, it was a modified SL basically. Now for '74, they said, let's slim this thing down and make motor. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Let's change it up a little bit. I did ride an XR75, so. Many, yeah, you did. Mm -hmm. many, many of the things that, that Rudy and Dean did, that Dave Miller did, showed up on production bikes 
the next Harry couple Clem of years. Too, Listen, like, yeah. a DG, Harry Clem, he, dude, that guy built the world's most exotic MR50. That thing was crazy. Snake pipe, big foam, XR75 wheels and suspension on it. It, it was ridiculous. But the point is, all of these things lead us to where we are. Absolutely. Okay, like, CMC races. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, well, CMC Golden States, like, that, that were huge back in the day. And right. The cool thing about that is, you know, the pros would race the Supercross on Saturday night and show up for the Sunday race at CMC. That's just the way it was. You know, it was about making money. So they knew they could make their purse on Saturday night and still go get a little little cheddar on Sunday as well. Yeah, you guys are showing up. Wait a minute, there's Glover. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Glover, what, 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 what's uh, going on? Lachine's here. Did, didn't he race last night? Yeah, yeah, he did, as a matter of fact. Johnson, I remember being at 395 and uh, Lachine and Johnson getting after it and after the moto. Uh, Ricky Johnson flat punching Ronnie in the face. And oh, yeah. It, it, this is the day's open face, so it yeah, really stuck. Matter. Pictures of it. Yeah, there's still pictures of that yeah. one to this day, dude. To yeah. That stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, and Good then, stuff. you know, obviously, like, also back in that time, too, they used to run the AD experts sometimes during the Supercross. Oh, yeah. And so now seeing that process come back around a little bit in the SMX. Right. It was amazing. The 65s at uh, Charlotte. Oh, uh, Jaden Smart, first guy. Man, and then, you know, the, the Super Minis, too. It, it was just, it was great, you know. So that's the way that. You know, that evolved there, but took a little break, but now it's coming back around, and, and then the futures, and that just helps all these kids gain more experience of what it's all about. But it all came from that MR50 and the XR75 and the Jeff Ward and everybody that set the, the bar. To JWRP. Come, you know, yeah, yeah, all of it, you know. <laughs> and going back to Rudy and Dean Dickinson, like, um, you know, had a pretty successful amateur career, Dude. and a lot of that came from what they did to the bike. My bike was just that much better at the time as well. Obviously how how old are you, it, buddy? But, you know, I'm 50. You're 50. Mm -hmm. Okay. Your bike was so much better, you just said, and there's no question about I that. It. Yeah, I knew I, it too. I'm 56. I'm a little older than you and was still kind of in touch, was moving on to 125s or this or that, but that stuff was so exotic. Oh, yeah. You know, how, how old were you when you got your first R&D machine? When I first got my first what? Your first R&D ride, your first R&D bike. I was... 10. When, 10. when 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 they handed you that 60, jersey, so I'd have been 12, 11, 12, 11, 12. Sorry. When they handed you that jersey, oh, when I handed the jersey and I got that Simpson helmet. Oh, I love oh, the Simpson oh, helmet. Dude, oh, that, that, the, the, in your mind, that was better than any and they, factory they used ride. Fox it was gear back oh. then. You know, it was great, and they had the stripes down there, and everyone. You had that big R and D. You know. That, yeah. That, that badge of honor, so to dude, say. The guys like guys hey, we wanted to be George Holland. Yeah. Oh, Absolutely. Believe me, dude, he's a little older than you. He come through a little before. But w when we saw that, dude, that to me, that was as good as the red, white, and blue Honda jersey. Oh, yeah, for that, sure. That, that was as good. If you rode sure. a mini bike, man, and, and you were running nose collars or, or a DG bike, yep. uh, you know. Yep, and, and the cool thing was is Rudy and Dean, they always had great stories about the guys, the kids that came before you and what they did. I had to hear the story how George Holland rode with no gloves and his hands were pickled and he didn't need yeah. gloves. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? Holland, great story. And folks, for those of you just joining us home, we're talking to the Bud Man right now, Buddy Antonez, uh, mini bike legend, uh, innovator, uh, the, the guy, uh, arena cross champion, uh, motocross winner. Yeah. Uh, uh, pro it, you know what? Griff Cotter got your back, man. Our producer said probably the goat of Arena Cross. Oh, that's buddy. awesome. And, and Kyle's, buddy, Kyle's chipping away at me, though. <laughs> i got to keep an eye on him. <laughs> for, for, for the people that are listening at home, uh, your MO, tough guy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, there may have been guys that were faster. There may have been guys that maybe had a little more talent, natural talent, when they threw a leg over a bike. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line was they weren't going to out-heart Buddy Antonez. That's right. They weren't going to outwill Buddy Antonez, and you weren't really going to go to the inside of him. <laughs> right? You know, I, I tell people that all the time. Like, you know, heart's a big part of anything, any sport. Like, you got to have that ability to dig deep and go where sometimes you don't want to go. You and know? you were known for it, and, and yet that should make you very proud. Yeah. You know, yeah. That, that, yeah, that, and, that, and that's how guys like me, who, who are the biggest fans of the game, looked at you and remembered you and knew everything about you riding an MR50 on out yeah. and could appreciate the story. Yeah, yeah, and it's all about tenacity and, and never giving up too. Like if, if your goal and dream is to become a professional motorcycle racer, like you have to give it everything you can. You have to apply every piece of it. And, and in today's world, like you can't miss a step, you know. Back in that day, you know, you could 
get on by on a little little less at times, but today you got to be on it. So uh, the cool thing is too is like I tell people at time too, watching that some of the last chance qualifiers that go on sometimes, and you see this person like there is some slamming, but you know it, that's that time to go and. Uh, you know, I said I would take out my best friend or anybody to, to make it to the main if that was. And, and we respected that. You know, listen, we weren't PC back then. Oh, you know, I uh, did <laughs> rough riding, uh, you know, rubbing, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Listen, okay, if the line was open, one line, two bikes, somebody loses. Somebody loses yeah. every time, yeah. Okay. Anymore, you're just going to get a tweet about it afterwards. <laughs> For sure. Back in the day, everybody, you know, worked it out. Uh, you're going to have one coming back, you know, yeah. and, and usually it's what happened. Okay, you're 12 years old. You've had the uh, ride for a couple seasons. Who was the bad dude? Mouse McCoy, Mike Healy, Holland. Who was the dude? That, who, okay, game over. When you guys showed up, you know. So those guys are a bit older than me. Uh, so that's why I'm asking Mouse in your time. Mouse McCoy is who I he was love awesome. to watch. That guy yeah, was incredible. I, I, and those DMC bikes that Dave Miller built for him. And Art. He just had style, and, uh, you know, I just loved watching him, him ride. He went on to do stunt work, stuff in Hollywood, yep. I believe, was what Mouse did. Uh, it, it didn't matter when you saw a, a dual sport in an action scene or you saw the guy going down the steps or you saw the fake chips bike running up. To, that was probably Mouse McCoy or one of his team. Possibly, yeah. And there are a few guys that have crossed over into that uh, stunt world. Uh, Dave Castillo who, yes. uh, was a great rider, you know, but just, you know, faced that, you know, time to get into that main all the times that he maybe should have, uh, whatever the reason is. But then he rolled over and having a great stunt career. If you look, at, I did this one time, I looked at, you know, the, the movies he's in, and I was even blown away. Like, I knew a few of them, but it's crazy. And so the crazy thing is in the stunt world, you got to really hit your marks, you know. And so guys coming from the moto background, if they can break in it, it's one thing that we're really good at, you know, is hitting your marks, doing the same thing. And, and, and you have to be repetitive in that uh, sense to be able to accomplish anything. Michael remember this and you might. Um, ABC used to have oh, yeah. a stuntman competition. How oh, Needham, yeah. one of the greatest stunt, stunt guys of all times, loved motocross. Uh, as you know, Steve McQueen mm -hmm. was a motocrosser, w wanted to do a lot of his own stunts. So he, he was one of those type of guys. And uh, it was important to the industry at the time that they had people who could ride motorcycles. And if you could ride a dirt bike, uh, on, on a specialized track where you could ride anything. Mm -hmm. And uh, so many people, but Hal Needham, one of the most famous ever, oh, yeah. was a huge racing fan. Yeah, and I, I mean, I can remember back in the day, and I'm a huge fan, buddy. I could listen to Thank him talk you. all day. But, Thank um, you. And, uh, but, so I'll, I'll throw that out there to you. I think you probably, probably heard that <laughs> in the thing, but... And, and we got to know uh, one of your teammates, Denny Stevenson. He oh, yeah. Was a Smith rep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he was a Smith rep for my son, got to know him. Uh, he's good friends with Chris Riesenberg, who's mm -hmm. one of my son's best friends. Absolutely. So I see him every year at Loretta's, get to hang out with him. Right. Talk a little, like we're getting ready to race, but talk about being teammates with Denny, because he was a wild man. Being teammates with Denny was always interesting, and uh, you never knew what you were going to get from weekend to weekend. And uh, the great part is, 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 uh, his ability to win those dash for caches, you know, if I'm going to say something like he believed he could run with anybody for four laps, you know, what I mean, anybody in the world. And that's, that's, that's saying something, you know, and he just believed it. And that's what happened. He said he couldn't go the longer mains, but he can go with anybody for four laps. And the Timberland and Flannel was your thing. <laughs> no. That was never the button man's love no. Timberland or Flannel. No. So no. I, I can appreciate that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ago. Oh yeah, and uh, he was out hunting with his dog. Oh, yeah. <laughs> dog anybody, he couldn't find so. that dog. Oh. Yeah. Hey, well, thank you, All Bud right, Man, yeah. Buddy Antonez. Action back on the track. Little trip down memory lane right there. A little history lesson. Had Appreciate a blast, you, big guys. Guy. Yep, Let's get back sure. to some racing. You know it. Oh, big crash on the second straightaway. All right, big crash on the straightaway. As Burkeen said, let's see here. Action all over the place now, yeah. Rodney. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Looks it like is. rubber and steel everywhere. Now, if you're wondering, race 30, uh, uh, race 7, 35 plus, the bet 35 plus class is what we have on the track right now. And if I'm overdriving that, let me know, guys. 
anyway, uh, Bet 35 plus class as we uh, check it out. Mike Brown going to be one to uh, watch out for in here, as we well know. But man, he has been seeing a lot of competition, at least over in the Supercross. And uh, we've got other riders like, have you guys ran down these riders yet? Uh, we did not. Okay. Uh, Aaron Conier, uh, Kenanier, uh, Louis Grena, Giovanni Perota, also Chris Nesborski, uh, Michael Klinger, Hendrick, Alberts, Brent Gitz, uh, Geisentanner, Jesse Gossi, uh, Matthew Dome, Josh Inman, Chad Wages, Anthony Capelli, Juan Manuel Costa, Jeremy Parsons, Gabe Fernandez, Scotty Hill, Joshua Clark, Ryan Robertson, Michael Carter, Brian Cornier, Diego Mediola. Mike Judge, Renee Gothier, Louis Bonney, also looking at Michael Stevenson, Brandon Hughes, Jose Jr., Jeffrey Doan, Cody Miller, Adam Chatfield, Jess Burgess, Nick Covert, David Ferraro, Aaron Smith, Rodrigo Galeano, Steve Roman, George Baker, Lucas Pad uh, Padrut, uh, Cody Willis, Jeff Kozaka, and Nathaniel Kronk as we are off and rolling and wrapping up lap number one. Our leaders now making their way by the finish line, and Steve Roman had gotten off to a great start, and uh, when he dropped down in the gator pit, he was running in the number two spot as they headed out back. Oh, well, they check in. Roman out front. Chad Wages in second. Jeremy Parsons in third. Michael Stevenson in fourth. And Michael Carter rounding out the top five. Then it's Nathaniel Cronk, Adam Chatfield, Juan Manuel Costa is your eighth place ride. Uh, ninth and tenth, Aaron Conier and Gabe Fernandez rounding out the top ten. Uh, again, like we said, you know, conditions a little bit different. The track crew did an amazing job turning the racetrack around. But Absolutely. there's still some mud out there. And some of these guys might be a little anxious, uh, overly anxious might have some anxieties because maybe they're not the best of mud riders so it'll be interesting as this track shapes up throughout the course of this moto what kind of changes we may end up seeing well i can tell you stevie roman's not going to be affected by it coming out of export pa this is his kind of conditions right here he's at home in this uh did a great job over in supercross but as you know that guy's an outdoor rider and we'll let the bike move around go to work out here get up in fourth gear and Roman, and Roman right now working his way through the back. It looks like he's opening that gap just a bit, Rodney. Absolutely. And, you know, you, you watch him ride on the Supercross, and, you know, it may have seemed a little over-aggressive, but he's um, uh, not necessarily aggressive, but it seemed aggressive, let's put it that way. But that's just the way he rides. And, yes. and it's just the reason it may have seemed maybe uh, extremely aggressive at times is because he attacks the racetrack, and he's used to being out on these bigger tracks. And it, it's an, a different, a diff and he rides them both the same way, just as hard as he can. Yes, sir. And where that comes from, Mike Brown squeezes the bike extremely hard, rides uh, the center of the bike, uh, doesn't let the bike move a lot. Well, let the bike move a little. Roman, the opposite. Roman lets the bike move and, and, and adapts to that. He lets the bike kind of almost dictate where we're going to go, and then he properly waits and guides it. Well, making our way around wages has gotten around on the 45 machine as we drop down into the gator pit for lap number two complete. My big question right now is, is where is Mike Brown in this one? Did he elect... Uh, Maybe not to run this one, or did he not get off to the greatest of starts out there? Look through the field. Uh, he may have opted out of this one. <laughs> Unless maybe he have been one of the people that went out on the first lap. Good to see Mad Mike up in the tower. Mike, we'll catch, we'll catch up with you when Steve's not racing. When you got time, you coming all right, okay? All right, thanks, man. Of course, Mad Mike Jones, father-in-law to uh, Steve Roman Partners in the Jones Roman MX School. And let me tell you something, they freed him tough out of that one. Oh, that right now. Great looking team. You know, we talked about that in, in Supercross. Uh, I seen those guys over there. Uh, and I first looked at them. I mean, just a, a great group of kids, clean cut. Looked like almost like a soccer team over there in a way, the way they were, uh, you know, they were uniform, dr uniformly dressed and getting their, their team photos, if you will, down here in Florida at, the, at Gatorback Cycle Park. So such a, a cool uh, opportunity for that whole family. And Stevie Roman uh, leading the uh, charge from that uh, school, obviously, right now, and uh, trying to make uh, things and continue to make things happen here. You asked Hanson as about tough guys out of arena cross. He's going to turn around and point to Mike Jones. <laughs> I can guarantee it. Absolutely. In any realm Mike Jones was in, he was a tough guy and a tough competitor. You know, the guy the guy did outdoor national. He did freestyle. He did arena cross. He was an international rider. I uh, swear I saw wages by in, in leading last time they came around here. But See, I was a little confused. I, I, I kept my mouth shut when well, they I come by. It might have been like a number 
number 45. Maybe it was locked out. A yeah, I was 45 confused, or something to be honest like that. But you. there was a 45 that was ahead of everyone there, and that's what kind of confused me with the whole thing as well. But evidently, hey, it's not that way. There's Roman out in front, and man, it is sloppy out there in some areas, but still very traversable, no doubt about that. As Roman is still on point. My apologies, Wage is still in second. Parsons, Carter, Stevenson, that was your third, fourth, and fifth place riders. Rodney, we talked earlier, you know, if you guys in the, in the back, you want to come out and even look at the equipment. You yeah. Know, to see what's done. We look down there, we see Christian Yannick, we see Drew Adams. Uh, we see several of these guys out here. They really want to see what the track looks like, where the damn spots still are, where the good traction is. And that's a guy who's doing his homework. Absolutely. Okay, you're out here watching that vet rider just because they're the first uh, class back on the track. Chatfield up to the number five spot now as he gets around Stevenson. Carter in fourth. Parsons still in the number three spot. As we said, Stevenson dropping off the sixth. Nathaniel Cronk holds steady in seventh. Juan Manuel Costa in eighth. George Baker in ninth. And Lucas. Hadrid in the number 10 spot. Kronk sponsored by one of my buddies this week. Kronk riding my buddy's bike. Oh, nice. Yeah, I gave him some wheels to come down here and uh, put on a good showing. Lucas right. Hadrid on his way up to making uh, some passes. Keeping an eye out back there outside the top 10 right now. The 121 of Diego Mattiola. Looks like he's on a charge. He might be a bit of a uh, Sloppier conditions uh, might even the sure. playground for him, and he's uh, laid it out the law out there today. I tell you, we see just a little bit of clearing, and your radar look right, Rodney. As, as we look at the skyline, uh, both directions, see a little bit of uh, clearing, clouds starting to move out, and your radar showed nothing behind us. <laughs> so that that was a good indicator. I could tell you that that would be a great plan for the rest of the day would be zero rain. Most definitely, things tightening up here, trying to work through some lap traffic. Michael Carter challenging, being challenged. I believe that's Chatfield working his way up on the 407 machine now, trying to make his way into the number four spot. As I believe they may have caught up with Parsons now. The okay. 78 machine. Let's see as they get a little closer. They're coming down now under the tower here pretty soon. There's Chatfield. He's made the pass now into at least the fourth place position. Let's see if he's gotten around Parsons too. There's uh, Roman. Uh, we, I think I've seen uh, Parsons go through. We'll see if he checks in at the finish line. There's four laps Did. down for Roman and wages. White flag is out, by the way. Yeah, Chatfield in the third. Yeah, good call, Rodney. Carter in the number four spot. Stevenson back up the fifth. Parsons drops off the six, so uh, he he must have laid it down out back someplace. I must have missed that one. But uh, Chatfield on his way up. We look at lap times and gaps right now. Probably reached the limit, but a 14 second gap between second and third place. But a great push by the 407. Carter back in fourth. Stevenson, Parsons, Nathaniel Cronk in seventh. Manuel Costa in the number. Eight spot, Lo Lucas Pedru in the number nine, and George Baker in 10th. Mattiola not able to uh, break the top 10 just yet, but uh, maybe on this lap, let's see. No, nah, he's not. Yeah, he did. Diego up to 10th place now. Wow, good deal. Yeah. That's, you know, and that's, again, big bragging rights. You know, uh, we put a lot of focus and a lot of attention on those top three, four, and five riders, but big picture here top 10 is an amazing feat whenever you come to an event like this so that's why standing on that stage like last night at supercross awards why there's such prestige in that that's right you know i tell everybody here in the ranch uh everybody oh i'm gonna i'm gonna podium i'm gonna do that i'm gonna do that so many guys that should have went one 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 at the ranch come out of there and eight right so a top 10 to me here at Dominia, who's a top 10 out of full gate here a yeah. top 10 at the ranch yeah let me tell you that's a podium anywhere in my absolutely book. i mean so many things the talent so deep that is one thing but the pace at which we are are, are competing down here uh the number of guys are so many things aren't that don't happen on a regular race and likely they are the best competitors in that's the it world. it's the best of the best period across the globe uh, there might be one or two guys out there that might not make it to these events that might be you never know and we, we may never meet them But 
we may see them one day but right now these are the fastest people in the world on the racetrack and today uh, Steve Roman is the fastest vet 35 plus class rider here at Gatorback Cycle Park uh, in moto number one with Chad Wages in second Adam Chatfield I'll uh, finish up in the number three spot Michael Carter in fourth Michael Stevenson will cross the checker flag in the number five position then it's Jeremy Parsons uh, we're looking for Nathaniel Cronk Lucas Petrut uh, Juan Manuel Costa in ninth and Diego Matty Ola who actually may be up to at least a ninth place position after this he had a uh, three-second gap and about a seven-second faster lap time last time so we'll wait on Josh Kronk and coming in in that seventh place position we're going to be going to the uh, 250c limited division one here in just a moment Kronk is in in seventh and as we wait on eight nine and ten to check in let's see how that's going to stack up as uh, division one is off and rolling now hey Rodney if you're having trouble with your uh, Wi-Fi or light feed guys uh, Gordon everybody available there right over near the team green pits uh, just to the say left if you're at defiance they'd be just the left of defiance right in front of team green so Gordon and his entire team are over there on hand to get you helped out if you have problems with that connection by the way Costa and Mattiola rounding out the top 10 250c limited division number one including writer Dakota Greenwell Drew Embleton and Robert Weiss Baird Bates Dylan McDonald Braxton Cranenbring uh, Logan Blanchard Dawson Baker Austin Shields Carson Hall Ryan Sampson Kyle Paliogos Lane Kestner, Ethan Evan, Trey Romaine, Jack Dawson, Everett Shiel, Tony Davis, William Barrett, Dominic Garcia, Chance, Chance White, Todd Harberstock, also Charles Brown, Stanley Smith, Giovanni Gray, Ryder Saffron, L Landon Ballou, uh, Brighton Ricky, also Colton Selby, Jacob McPherson, Gavin Covert, Zachary Flanders, Brock Desarote, uh, uh, DeRosa, I should say, and then uh, James Teague. We're also looking for Michael Gilbertson, Gavin Fortner, Blake Thomas, Carson uh, McCallmey, and uh, Nolan Smoots. And that is a field of 39 riders, uh, two divisions. So this should be the top 18 from each one that we're transferring into Moto2. Again, uh, even in these division races, uh, your first Moto scores count toward your overall. So there'll be two firsts going in, yeah. two seconds, two thirds, and so forth. And uh, even if you don't make it in, your LCQ will count for your uh, second or your first moto score if you don't make it in through the division races. And uh, that is, of course, 250C getting set to wrap things up here on lap number one. The 19, or is that the 18? I did this the other day with that rider, uh, with the, the 18s and the 19. So I want to make sure that we get the uh, right numbers coming in on this one in just a moment. Could be the 180. Uh, anything at this particular point too but as they wrap up 90 so that was even completely off of that uh kyle paleo goes uh william barrett robert Meese now in the number three spot blake thomas uh, braxton cranenberg in the number five spot dakota greenwell is six drew embleton in seventh Drew uh, dawson bakery in eighth Dylan McDonald in ninth, and Ethan Evan rounds out your top 10 again top 18 transfer so after one lap this is the way things are looking Hey, buddy, we need to get off the fence down there. Ding, 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 ding. Hey, off the fence. Hey, if you're sitting on top of the fence with your legs hanging over the fence, thank you very much. You need to be in behind the fence, guys. Safety first. Safety first. Don't want you falling off, rolling down there. And, uh, yeah, safety first down here, bro. Thank you, bro. Yep. No problem, bro. Brian Ricky <laughs> in the number 12 spot. Oh, we got to speak his language, man. Carson Hall in the number 13 spot. Tony Davis, 15th. Everett Shield, 16th. Stanley Smith, Colton Selby in 17th. The Chance White rounds out the top 18. Again, that's after the wow first lap of racing. Wow. Yeah. Thank you, moment. Julian. Yeah, thank you. Hey. She Woo. always does this up right. Thank man. you very much. <laughs> thank you. Oh, well, it's looking good out there, Rodney. Absolutely. Uh, I'm watching. There's Barrett out there, 250C. There's Pelagos, Weiss. I saw, saw some packages for Weiss in the package room. Oh, yeah? Weiss. So if you're out there, you're listening. You got top 18 positions they're going, Rodney. Yep, yep. So you got to watch Shelby, White, Shields, and Gray. That's the area right there. Any of those riders could transfer in. We're on lap number one lap number two so things are going to ah, shut down see there's the 19 i saw it was on the back of his jersey the number 90 of kyle paleogos in the number one spot william barrett 
Running in the number two spot at the end of that first lap on the 155 KTM from Blue Ridge, Georgia, still holding steady. Weiss, as you said, may be having some problems. Blake Thomas, Braxton, uh, Kranigberg, or uh, Kragenberg, uh, Kragenbring, uh, back there in that uh, number four and five spots. We'll see what kind of shakes out of this one. Barrett still in that number two spot behind Paleo Logos. Uh, Weiss in the number three spot. Then it's Blake Thomas now fourth. Uh, they're holding steady back there, but they are gaining on Barrett. Dakota Greenwell moves up a spot. It looks like uh, Craig and Bring it may have dropped off a couple of spots. Drew Embleton now up to sixth. Craig and Bring in the number seven spot. Dawson Baker holds steady at eighth. Ethan Evan now up from uh, a couple of spots into the number nine position. Dylan McDonald drops to the number 10 spot. And watching very closely, some of those riders 10 through 18 still trying to trade positions, but top 18 get in, Rodney. So that, that position back there, 70, 18, 9 to 20, is definitely shaping up. We're looking up there at our SLR live drone, and Rodney, I'm telling you, the track looks really good. That 30 minute break really was the right call to make. Absolutely. I mean, these guys are lap times are, I mean, the fast lap time yesterday was 150, 151. Uh, we're at 203 with some of these guys, and that's a C class. So. Blake Thomas now trying to put the pressure on Weiss. Weiss back there on the Gators tail, and oh, Rodney. Red is the needle right there as we head back home. And big question, is he going to be able to hang on to it? He may have caught him off guard right there. Hey, he was on guard, right guard, off guard. He could be right, could be wrong. Look at him jousting for the proper line. But uh, that rider out there took over that position and now starting to pull away, Rodney. Yeah, Tom Blake Thomas, I believe that uh, is on, if I'm not mistaken. The, eight, 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 the 88 three machine, he was on the podium. We got him a championship over there. So these guys are collecting those points. They're collecting, they want to be in the uh, Olympiad. Olympiad down yeah. at the bottom. And I think these guys may be fighting for that Golden Goggle Award in some of these classes here. So it's going to be interesting to see how this shakes down. Like I said, this mud, this rain, this loose track condition creates a level playing field because they all got to ride it. Well, let's see. Ra lap number three, lap wrapping up right now, Wes. And I want you to keep an eye on the 883 that we were talking about. We saw him go by for the number uh, three position around Weiss. Now he's into the number, he's <laughs> yeah, got his sight set on. For sure. 2.02.8 and a 2.04.2. So just a little over a second and a half or so faster than William Barrett, at least on that lap. Uh, he was about four seconds behind checking in Barrett. But I almost have to tend to wonder right here, the little three air ahead. Could we see that gap shrink up a little quicker? Oh, and definitely. With the lap time there at 2.02, there's, there's two seconds. You know, he's got he's got four tenths. He's got four tenths right there behind our, our guy in uh, second. So maybe right now Blake Thomas is the fastest. And he's going to have a great, great gate pick. But Rodney, this battle for that transfer position in 18 has changed a little bit. McPherson. Go ahead. Knock. Sample. And Davis and Sheol all trying to work up in there. I mean, there's a white flag, a sense of urgency if you're in like 17th, 18th, 19th, and 20th. I think you want to get done with it. You don't want to go back out there. I know you got other motos, but Concies, you want to chill. You want to be done. You want to have your game plan. And by the time Concies start, possibly tomorrow, late in the afternoon, traffic will be different. Absolutely, it will. Uh, and it, it, I mean, it's going to go one way or the other. And, and the way the weather's looking, it should be completely straightened up. But yeah, Blake Thomas did have the fastest lap in this uh, 250C limited division number one. Uh, trying to work his way up through the pack as uh, we know the white flag is out right now. Does that mean surrender or urgency? What is well, it? What it, do you mean, think it dictates for it, some of these it guys? It means urgency in motocross. Now, in well, war, maybe it means uh, surrender, but in motocross, it's a sense of urgency. I don't think Blake Thomas is going to pay attention to surrendering urgency. He's on his own mission. He's making making hay with it. Sun's not shining. <laughs> and he can get better. He's making hay, day. man. That's yeah. all he's doing. Yeah, he's just making hay. Get out there and get it done, boy. Paleo goes around for four complete now. As we said, that white flag comes out. Thomas up the second now. He did get around Barrett. Ah, it's closing the deficit. What do we got two, now? So Barrett oh, must have made a mistake. He drops up to a 2.10 lap time that time. Whoa, seven seconds and oh, seven. Uh, yeah. three seconds faster. I doubt he's going to be able to bridge that gap. But hey, 
with lap traffic, lap final lap jitters. Who knows what's going to happen in this 250C limited class? Well, that's why I call some of the back markers landmines. Uh, we want to be respectful of that because you never know when one might just go off and ambush you out there. And it could help Lake Thomas in this charge to the front. Paleo goes well, in the number one know. spot. Here comes that second place position, the KTM of Blake Thomas now. As we know, we know lap times are signifying the fastest rider on the racetrack, but uh, has Paleogos been challenged just yet? Could he rise to the occasion? And I don't know that Thomas is going to be able to bridge that near seven second gap that we were looking at, just over second, seven second gap we were looking at when we headed into this final lap or not. But hey, again, time tells all stories. And if you look back there, not a lot of gains being made yet. But as we also think about this big picture, again, twos are good as ones. In oh, uh, motocross, in Moto One, all whatever. Blake Thomas yep. has to do is get in that main event and get a good gate. Him and uh, Peliogos are going to have it out. Oh yeah, and in 19, he's 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 in there. I think he's one of the riders that is cresting to move up into the B class. Joss Woods up here checking me out. Got to make sure I'm okay. Tucks me in at night. Make sure the AC's on. Plenty of hot water this morning and the water tank full. I'm just waiting for the air to come out. <laughs> and, and he tells me no, it's full. <laughs> I just want to say I surround myself hold on Meg I surround myself with good people I surround myself with good people yeah checkers are out and Kyle Paleogos takes the Moto One win in the 250C limited here at the Thor Medios presented by Pro Circuit Race number eight now in the history books for your first and second place rides. A 202.9 pulls to within three and a half seconds. Blake Thomas given another lap. This could have gotten very interesting. Thomas is going to be one to watch coming up in Moto2. William Barrett finishing in the number three position. Looking for Weiss, Drew Embleton, Dawson Baker. Ooh, Wimbledon up now. Uh, uh, he gets around the number 16 machine. He drops the fifth. So Robert Weiss now. In the number five spot, uh, then it's uh, sixth place Dawson Baker, seventh Braxton Krangenbring, eighth place the 28 Dylan McDonald, Ethan Evan rounds out ninth place Dakota Greenwell in tenth aboard the 006, eleventh place then will be Carson Hall, Nolan Smoots, Colton Selby, Ryan Sampson, Stanley Smith, Chance White, Jacob McPherson, and Ryder Saffron. That again unofficial top 18 as Division Two now off and rolling here in 250C limited racing action. And you see that deficit did close with Blake Thomas. He gained like four seconds out. Right. So when that track's right and they get out together, it's going to be a, yeah. it's going to be a who done it. That's it. Who do we so, got, Rodney? So there's Sophie, your, can, can, uh, your, your race orders for 250C limited. That was Division One. This is Division Two. Alexander Anderson, Mason Grover, Brett Ferry, Dylan Morris, Brennan Rodecker. Owen White, Tanner Price, Chase Iglinowitz, uh, Caleb Herlong, Ginger Osgood, Seven and Henderson, Gavin Pettit, Ryder Vitro, David Canfield, Seth Putnam, Seth Moran, also Michael Thompson, Tyler Lynch, Sawyer Sumner, Jason or Jonas Allo, Kellen Sampson, Nathan Snellgrove, Tucker McCormick, Robbie Goat, Cody Munch, Wyatt Crisp, Daniel McDonald, also Nathan Ruff. Aiden Roth, uh, Rothfuss, Connor Summer, Santiago Ramirez, Xavier Davis, Landon Hoog, Jazzy Easton Thompson, Trenton Wood, Adam Spub, Jamal, uh, Jamal Wa uh, Watson, Donald Adams, and Braden Lock, uh, Locklear. And that is your field of 39. Again, top 18 will transfer from this one as well, Wes Kane. And here we go out there. Gate is down, and we are going, and we're going to see what goes on here as these riders now soldier on. Rodney Tomlin stepping back, Mikey Wayne jumping into the fracas here. Let's do it, baby. Hey, we're banging, we're, hey, they're banging bars and banging elbows down on the track, and we are doing it up here in the announce booth. Buddy Anson is watching closely as he sees these young gladiators now work their way. Is that, let's see, is that the lynch mob out there? The one, two, three, let's double check. I'm looking for the lynch mob, and it is the lynch mob out front. Lynch mob with a whole shot. Gets around that turn, lickety split. It's the lynch mob. Hey, down into the gator pit they go. Going to come up the face of the finish line jump, being challenged Whoa. a little bit. Oh. Ooh, go See get how it. they dip that foot coming off there? That's the one they had to sew back on. That's the, the Lord. Yeah. 
Lord help, that scares me to death. Hey, he's good, man. There he is out front. Bionic man doing it. That's Tyler Lynch. <laughs> there he is. Dylan Morris in the two spot. Connor Sumner in third, at least for the moment. Starting to reel him in a little bit. Fourth place is right there as well. That's Seven Henderson. We saw Seven last night. He was seven, moving seven, the golf seven, cart, seven, baby. Woo. Trying to get mom out of here so they could go eat some dinner. Megawatt was like, who's this kid moving this golf cart? And then he goes, hey, Megawatt, what's going on? He goes, oh, hey, hey, buddy, how are you? Yeah, Megawatt, yeah. <laughs> hey, Megawatt's your first line of defense. But That's we're it. watching here, Tyler Lynch Mob, the Lynch Mob, the Lynchster. He's doing it for the Swingster. I love it. Lynch Mob out front. You got Dylan Morris, Summer, Henderson out there in four. This is only first lap. McDonald six, Camfield seven, Summer eight. Wood, Trenton Wood, not Tiger Wood, in ninth, and Lahoetz in tenth. Had to shit a layer, West King. I know. I felt an elbow across my shoulder. I was nervous. Uh, Sid Putnam in 11th, Thompson, Sampson, and Pettit, 13, 14, 15. Rockter, Anderson, Easton Thompson, and Jonas Allo. We are taking the top 18. Let's see if the Lynch Mob. You know the Lynch mob, he's got the big orange day glow helmet on. Here he comes down in front straight away. He's going to do a little hand salute to the gizmo mods. Yeah, buzzing past Watchtower. Them. Negative Ghost Rider, that pattern is closed, but not for the Lynch mob. Here he comes. He rolled up in there and they go, oh, is that Garth Brooks in that bus? <laughs> it might be. Yeah. GB. Oh, thanks, Big John. I love a man with some firm hands. Going, oh my. <laughs> amongst my shoulders. And it just got weird. <laughs> Big John, the man. I know, man. You're going to strangle me. When you're getting a back massage and you turn around and John, you just have to accept it. Yeah. Like, you can't Lean get up into and say, it. don't do that. Lean into it. Lean into it. Lynch turning another lap, two laps in for him, a 205-387. He was about a second and a half up now. He is a 3.5 up, but it's the man on the move is Seven Henderson, the number 34. Turning and burning, a little bit of space in between him and third place rider Connor Sumner. Danielle McDonald in the number four spot, Braden Locklear in fifth, and things changing up like crazy outside of that. Sixth place. David Canfield, Sawyer Sumner picking up a position. Chase Ingowitz in the number eight spot. Trenton Wood in ninth and Sid Putnam rounding out the top 10. Yeah, you better look out for that transfer spot in the top 18. Morris, Allos, Nelgrove, and Rod Decker. And there's your guy, Tyler Lynch out there. You remember Lynch? Can I stay in C-Class another year? You know, the emails and so forth. Hey, he gets a bye, but I think yeah, it's about time for him to go. He's out winning here. Mike Burkine's watching very closely. And uh, Tyler Lynch out front. And Mike Burkine's like, okay, got you, bro. All about the system. And you know how to work the system, so. That's right. That's right. And here we go. We are looking for those riders out there. Lynch. Henderson, Summer, McDonald, Locklear, all in the top five. Oh, here he goes. Mike Burkeen, go. Hey, if you're sitting on the fence, I need you off the fence in the team green shirt. If you're sitting on the fence with your child, move him back, please. Right in front of the announce tower. Thank you, sir. Nope, no, no, he went back the other way. You need to please remove your child from the fence. Thank you. Thank you guys, safety first. Gotta have everybody behind the fence. A fence must be between spectators and the racing facility. Thank you. He's like, ah, let's just go back to the truck, look. That's old grandpa. That old guy up there. All right, he's looking. Hyper King. Lynch, Henderson, Summer, McDonald, Locklear, Canfield. Hey, Tyler Lynch, congratulations. You're going to the B class. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. In January. In January. Watch it, Seven Henderson on uh, racertv.com. He's trying to keep pace with Tyler Lynch. Well, Lynch, you know, he's good. He's running at 204, but he Lynch Been consistent have his hands right there. Full. When Lynch gets up there and he's got to battle Blake Thomas and those yeah. other guys, Polagano, it's going to be a good one. Polygago. Seven. You got a Polygado. Hyper King, what are you looking at me like that? He's out there. McGlenowitz. McGlenowitz is out there. McGlenowitz. But in the other one, it was Pelego. That's 
That's one of the names you've got to look at it, look away, and then say it. Because if you try to look at it and pronounce it, you're, you're donezo. Englowitz. Oh, he can stay forever. He's a young man. He's doing well out there right now. He's back in the sixth Tyler spot. Bowers wrote B class in A when he was 15. <laughs> I'm calling the facts. <laughs> if you're that good, embrace it. Amen. Here we go, guys. Looking good. Next up on the gate is 85 12 13 limited division number one. How many divisions we got in that? The I'm first 85 class, we had three. I'm doing not one, not two, but three. We I'm took, what, the top 12. I'm West Kane's looking. There's at least two of them. At least two and of them. And that's it, just yeah. the two. Just a little checkup from the neck up. 85 12 13 division one, division two, division one on the gate, division two ready to stage. And on the track is 250C limited division number two and the lynch mob from Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, out front. Out front, he's uh, rolling down into the Gator Pit right now, looking good, getting into a little bit of lap traffic, going to check in here, and is it the white flag? Yes, it will be. Let's do a style check on the Lynch Mob. Good. Oh, well, a little sailorish. A business. Yeah. It, it was a business move. Yeah, he didn't He didn't put no fluff on Nah, that. he will, if he can bring in that checkers. Yeah, here he goes. Down in the pit, your leader. Henderson now checks in. Summer, McDonald, Canfield, Eglatowitz, Putnam, Thomas, Wood, Samson. I saw a man, Eglatowitz, without his hat and his sunglasses. It totally looks like a different guy. Englowitz. Yeah. Who are you? Englowitz. Englowitz. We got it. Englowitz. Danielle McDonald's checked in. I, what? A Glenowitz. A Glenowitz. A oh my God! Okay, I got it. Now. We got to have it by now. We've only it's said it a thousand it's times. It's been a year now, so we got it. Mercy Eglunowitz. sakes, alive! Trenton Woods checked in. Eglunowitz. Sid Putnam. Thank you, Mike McCain. That was called <laughs> announcers <laughs> for dummy. Dummies for announcers. <laughs> <laughs> Announcing pronouns. For I mean, dummy. it does. In your Whatever. defense, it yeah. has all the letters of the alphabet <laughs> in there. Hey, I mean well. But he's doing well, so we'll get it dialed. Yeah, he's in there. Eglunowitz. Eglunowitz. I think every time he hears it, it it's West Kane's a parrot up here. You hear the name, you got to say it. I want to give it a shot. And Glenowitz. Glenowitz. See, told you. <laughs> Tyler Lynch doing Lynch. his thing out front. Here goes Lynch. Lynch, He's Henderson, Summer. Who's on the bubble? Snellgrove, Davis, battling 18 to 19. Who's going to go to do the concy and who's going safely to the main? Lynch, Snellgrove, Davis. They're jousting like gladiators in the square octagon. They're rolling, dude. Pretty big separation out there for these guys. Our guy, Chase, I'm going to use his first name. I'm not, because you'll just keep repeating it if I say his last name. The number 20 on the KTM. That's my excuse for saying I've forgotten Chase how to pronounce Inglewitz. it. There you go. There it is. He's on the move trying to Take catch up with, with David Ganfield to move up into a five spot here before we see a checkered flag. And we're knocking on the door of that. Here it is. Checkered flag. Oh, it's the Lynch it's Mob. Just Fires business. out of there. Let's I out. thought I thought we would have you know put a little hot sauce on it. Uh, maybe a hill clicker. But uh, that's okay. Something. That's okay. Maybe a knack knack or a, a candy bar or, or a who's it. your daddy? Who's your daddy? It's one of the favorites. All right, uh, here we go. Lynch, Henderson, Henderson's Summer, in. McDonald, Canfield, who's Connor, six? Connor, Summer, uh, and Glenowitz. Hi, <laughs> Glenowitz. And Glenowitz. I'm going to say that in my sleep tonight. You know, we get sandwiches seven. up here from them. We'll really miss say it really good. That's you always, time. you are a businessman, always selling. I love it. Buy, sell. Agrees. We've got cookies now. I know Sid, he does. Sid Putnam in eight. Things mixing up a little bit. Trenton Wood picks up a spot, as does Sid Putnam into the seven and eight position. Michael Thompson picks up one into eight. And our man Chase, I think we got in his head. He dropped back to ninth, uh, uh, West King. So he finishes in the ninth spot. Kellen Sampson. Rounds out your top 10. And here we go. Let's talk about the 85 12 Let's do it. division number one. The number seven, there's Tristan Pruitt, Hunter Carlisle, Colton Menard, Ari Fontaine, Ryder Wren, Levi Holston, Christian Humphrey, Dylan Richards, Alexander Patterson, Shaq Davila, Justin Subs, Tony Hudman, Colt Lackey, Logan Ford, Hudson Beagle, Marco Torillo, Francisco Capelli. Cash Anderson, Chase Dashiell, keep an eye on this guy, the 196. He's getting really good. So Chase Dashiell doing good. My name is Laura. Justin LaFleur, Antonio, Antonio, 
There's Bryson Snellgrove, Sam O'Leary, Levi James, and the boys, Benji Harris. Willie leaves Rocco Barone, Andrew Johnson, and Caleb Likens in the 85-12-13. Division number one, Little Dean checking back in. Yes, sir. A full rundown right there in the 85 CC 12 13 limited division number one. Look we'll here at time of scoring last about your boy Lynchbaum got her done out there, huh? You know Lynchbaum better than I do. I mean, I know him. He's a good guy. His dad's great, John TJ Lynch. Uh, but you've seen him more around Florida. He's a Florida guy. And uh, he, he dabbles a little bit. And, uh, you know, when he gets out of state. But he's had some rough goes. Yeah. Uh, didn't know if he's going to be able to race again. And he's got to feel pretty good. They got to be pumped going back there, getting a a win. And uh, T.J. Lynch's head must be as big, bigger than Mike Burkeen's. It will not fit underneath the Dunlop arch. <laughs> it's probably that big. So they're pumped back there. Good for him, man. Absolutely good. Good first moto for him. Yeah. Good. I mean, that you you get in there. It looks like Dylan Morris transfers in. Davis Hodge. They all got to go to Conti. And they're a tough break right there, but hey. Tough break, tough customers. It's one, of, it's one of those things. They probably would have been there. They probably shouldn't get the best star. Had some things happen there during the moto, so they, they didn't look out in that situation. Yeah, we're going to make sure these guys get up and come around, and here comes our leader. And you can almost, let's just see if Christian Pruitt has the same luck. Well, there's oh. a 312 coming around, so we'll check him out. 312 looking good. That's Sam O'Leary. Let's yeah, see Tammy. where Pruitt is. Pruitt's in second right second now. Right in. But hey, Pruitt knows the game. You gotta get up there when it's main time. These are the hors d'oeuvres, the appetizers. I love to settle into the main course. Sure. A nice steak and potato main event run here. I'm into it. Yeah. I'm right into it too. I'll tell you who's into it right now. Sam O'Leary, man. He's got out front and has not looked back. He is a good mud rider and showing right now as he's navigating his way through this course. Speaking of mud, guys, I was up here in the tower and I seen the rain. It's like, oh man, that looks pretty bad. I went walking on the pits. It really rained hard out there, man. It poured. Yeah, it definitely poured. And a huge shout out to whoever turned the charm in. That was uh, Joey Vicari's charm. And it has a special little charm that his mom wore right next to his cross. Man, she's Ooh, in tears man. getting that thing back. She's so happy about it. Good, good, good. Chase Daschle in the three spot. Jack the Via in fourth place. Marcus Trujillo in fifth. Christian Humphrey sixth. Seventh place. Justin Schuff. Andrew Johnson eighth. Ninth or eight? Yeah, excuse me. Eighth. Francesco Copetti in the nine spot. And Chase Anderson. Cash Anderson in the number ten spot here. 85 CC. 12 to 13 limited. Two divisions in this one. All these names just starting to run together, aren't they, Mikey? <laughs> it's getting there. It is getting there. Trying to get there, though, is number seven. She and Tristan Pruitt have both legs off the bike right there. Just really trying to navigate through these ruts. These ruts are getting pretty deep. Track is looking like I mean, this is uh, some conditions where you really see the true racers. You know, they find their line choices ahead of time, looking way ahead, planning their attack. And Sam O'Leary is still your leader, but we got our eyes on Tristan Pruitt. Can Pruitt do what it takes to run down our leader, or can O'Leary keep a nice, clean racetrack in front of him? We just got to wait and see. Check it through, as Mikey just said. Chase Dash, you'll check in the third spot. Davilia in the fourth spot. Tregilio in the fifth spot. Humphreys, Schuff, Johnson, Capetti, Anderson, Hudman, Patterson, Harris, LeBeau, Antillian, Vigeli, Ford, Lefleur. and Rives. It's LeFleur. LeFleur. Fifi LeFleur. If you're sitting on the fence, guys, in front of the announce tower, you have a pink helmet on and blue helmet on. I need you in to inside the uh, spectator area. Oh, see, you almost knocked your guy off. That's what we don't want. We want you inside the fence. Yes. Thank you, guys. Mom and Dad, if you're down there, you help help us out. Keep those youngins off the fence. If it is a, a safety precaution, and we need it followed. If there's not a fence separating you and the track, you better find you're, do, one. you're doing something wrong. Yeah, you need to find one. Um, big shout out to our guys at Moto Triple X. They're listening. Those guys are amazing. So, uh, you guys. Uh, they're listening in California. They know what we're doing here. So uh, hats off to Moto Triple X, and we are doing it for the Swingster. Tristan Pruitt on the move now after yeah. two. He was, what, about four seconds back after the first lap. Now just a little more than a second. They're firing out of there. He's finding his groove now. Yeah. Sam O'Leary, look out. He's about three seconds faster than yes. the last time by, so we're going to see a battle here very shortly. Well, he's a second point two off. Let's see what happens. That's a deficit, and he looks like he's on his well way to make it up. you got to find your lines out there. you got to find your groove. Your, yeah, get your sea legs under your, or your mud legs. And once you get them in there, then you start planting and start moving some real estate. 
Yeah, Tristan found that groove, I think, in lap there two. Watch him now as they make their way up the hill and around the gator tail. Sorry to run, Mikey. This one's just starting to get really good out in front. You see it now, drag racing their way across mm. the tail. They're going to come over this anthill and straight into that roller section. That roller section, that's where things get tricky, especially after all this rain. Very tricky, very tricky. There we go, guys. Steady as she goes now. Cut off 18. Oh. So you got Logan Ford, Wiley Rivs, Wren, and Richards now. Rocco Barone back there looking to soldier on and get in that top 18. Pruitt looking for opportunity, taking the long way around right there, trying to find some speed. Into the split lane, though. What's going to happen here? He's oh, side by side. He finished. knocks on the door. He goes inside. Not not knock it. on the door. Sam O'Leary. It's Tristan Pruitt makes the pass. I'm going to tell you guys right now, that doesn't happen very often. Those two just mm -hmm. pass each other in the split lane. They're in the same split, and yeah. they made a pass in the same split. Hey, well, Tristan Pruitt's got a lot of confidence coming off that. He's been working real hard. He had some good runs. Uh, at Ponca, you had some really good runs at the Clash at Gosford GPF race last weekend, and they brought that confidence down into here. And it's paying off in huge it, dividends. It is. I mean, confidence takes a minute to build, and once Ooh. you get it, you can tear it down in a, a matter of moments. But once you get on that roll, you got to really, you, that's when you start playing chess. Yep. Everything has to be perfect. You got to eat right, sleep right, train right, race right. Everything has to be perfect. Pruitt's still turning and burning, man. He had about a 2.13, then a 2.11, and he backs that up lap number three with a 2.099, and with clean air out in front of him. He's getting that clean air. He's He's hey, a little visorizer over the dinner table over there. <laughs> up on a gator back he goes. He's on full sin mode. Says it right on his crossbar pad. Love it. He looks down at it. He gets his notes, and it says what he's done. And that, that means don't forget what you've done, where you come from. I love that. Add to it. Yeah, look at his crossbar pad when he comes up on the That's podium. Cool. Says all his, all his uh, confidential notes that he needs to, to keep him pumped. Love make that. It, make it feel you know? motivated. You know? I talked to one guy, and he's like, well... No, dude, you won Loretta's, man. That's a big feat. Oh, that's right, I did. Or you <laughs> forgot about that's it. That's right, I did. Yeah, yeah, you can't. No, you got to keep and build on that stuff. There's that fine line of, you. hey, I don't want to live in the past too much, but yet you got to recognize you what you've accolades. done and where you've been. That's yeah. right. That's exactly right. right. And you hold yourself to that high level. Very good. You, you, you roll those shoulders back a little bit, you know. Speaking of high level out there, doing it now at a high level in this 85 to 13 limited division number one, race number 10. Tristan Pruitt, your leader, Sam O'Leary in second, Marcus Tregilio, Chase Dashiell, Justin Schuff in fifth, Francisco Capetti, Christian Humphrey, Stoney Hudman, Hudson Vigeli, Jason Lebeau. Le Fleur. Le Fleur, Le Fleur, sorry about that. Fifi Le Fleur. And then we got Cash Anderson dropping back to the 11th spot. Jack Davilia, he's out there in the 12th place position. Andrew Johnson, Ryder Wren, Logan Ford, Alexander Patterson, Benji Harris, and Rocco Barone is the man right now in the final transfer position as the checkered flag flies now for our leader and winner, winner, winner. Chicken dinner. Oh, no, no, white flag, white flag. Hey, well, that's one, one more to go. Yeah. Uh, big shout out, Casey Henson and company listening back in the uh, – California Fresno area they're doing it for uh, they're doing it for Johnny they said hey we're doing it for Talon Henson keep up the good work love when people check in with you you know yeah it makes, it's makes cool you, makes you feel special you know well no it, it just lets you know they're listening yeah and they, they're really paying attention to what's going on here Henson and, and them couldn't make it this year they're gonna try to make it next year and uh, you know you gotta you gotta plot your, your path here a little bit so I checked with them beforehand, and they are going to come back. They're going to come out here next year. Wow, swinging. Yeah, I love it. White flag lap, Tristan Pruitt doing his thing out in front. He's checked up a little bit, but that's okay. He turned to 214. He's still got that four-and-a-half-second lead over Sam O'Leary. Sam O'Leary after the strong start, hanging on to the two spot. Marcus Trujillo in third, what? fourth, Chase Daschle in fifth. <laughs> Justin Schuff, what you got, Wes? Well, I know why Dean said winner, winner. He's looking at his computer, and the guy's waving the checkered yeah, flag. Okay. But you look over there, there's the white flag. Oh, so technology little, little, has betrayed you. Little smoke screen over here. The guys are still rolling on Somebody race for TV. Somebody tells me we're not 
live on that feed over there. No, definitely not. <laughs> but we are when we we're, we're, yeah, the track's okay. Racer TV is okay. We're all right. Yeah, we love those guys. We're okay. Yeah. Maybe that's in the future. Maybe we are in the past. That's what I'm wondering right now. We've I'm trying to see who's on the Matrix here. Well, folks. Barone makes it in from Cairo, Georgia. He was running about, you know, 20th, 22nd. He dropped the hammer. Logan Ford, you made it in, too. Colt Lackey. It's not Brad Lackey. It's Colt Lackey. It's Colt, yeah. And he's not lacking because he got in there and get, making it happen. That but who true. do we got on the track now? We're going to wait for that gate to drop. One more to go. And we've got division number two, and it's going to be a barn burner. Heck, yeah. Yeah. Keep our eyes on that 85 Club of 13 limited for, for division two. See if anybody can best that Tristan Pruitt 209 972. Yeah. That's that was That's moving. Impressive. That was moving. Let's we'll see what he does this time around. He's making it up the finish line and to take the checker flag. It is going to be the number seven machine of Tristan Pruitt. Pruitt said, just do it. And he did it. Yeah. <laughs> Put on cruise control on that lap. Two, two yeah, 19. he's in. There's the checkers. It was Chase Dasher, though. He's going to move up into the number two position. That's going to knock Sam O'Leary in the third, Marcus Trujillo in fourth, Justin Schuff in fifth, Francisco Capetti in the sixth place position. And then finishing up in your seventh place position, we have the number 47, I believe. That's going to be Christian Humphrey. Humphrey looking good out there, 85, 12, 13, limited division number two. I've got Gage Dunham out there, Landon Walters, Grayson McClug, Quaig Edwards, Gabriel Morales, Ryder Stetic, <laughs> Stesick, Blake Frost, Jacob Allen, Cole Betts, Cooper Johnson, Colt St. Clair, Chase Monahan. Jackson Nguyen, Frederico Romo, not Tony Romo, it's Frederico, mm -hmm. Sebastian Grella Vasquez, Anthony Pasella, Brady Landon, Vincent Sevich, Kate Pedigo, Guillen Bolani, Levi Grower, Ryder Bloomquist, Emmett Baker, Wyatt Grant, Miguel Boer, Brock Lamb, Tanner Comage, Jackson Pierce, Cameron Nichols, Jason Watts and Landon Palmer, and that gate is dropped, and they are racing down and headed to the switchback. And the gator back falls. It looks like an orange green rider. Looks like you might have the point out there. And it's 85. It is Gage Dunham. The column. Yeah, old Gage. He's locked and loaded in that SL Rifle Works. Fires right out of that chamber. And the number five out there with the start. We got our eyes on the number 72 machine in the second place position. That's just Chase Moynihan on the number 72 ride. Doing a good job out there. And while these guys make their lap through, I'm going to give you a transfer spot here for the 85 limited division number one. Again, we see him through it. Take them in. Dashio, O'Leary, Tregilio, Shuff, Capetti, Vigeli, Hudman, Humphrey making a mistake that last lap. He's going to slide back to the ninth spot. Ten spot, Cash Anderson, Jason LeBeau, Jack Davila. And then we got Andrew Johnson, Ryder Wren, Colt Lackey in 15th. Alexander Patterson, Rocco Barone, and Logan Ford coming through to take that final transfer position in division number one. Keep your eyes peeled, guys. These guys are turning and burning. You've got some really good fast guys out there. And, hey, you're going to throw these guys, like you said, the simple math. You're going to throw them in there with division one, and it's going to make for a great main uh, second motos. Yeah, second motos are going to be huge. Here he comes. Gage Dunham out there by the road through the twisties. He's going to work his way around. We're going to watch him as he hand salutes the Gizmo Mods. Observation deck, and here he comes, number five of Gage Dunham. Hand salute, just like Buddy Antonez on his fifth Arena Cross Championship. He hand saluted, won that, and headed to Anaheim one. Him and Denny Stevenson. Denny told me some good stories of him and Buddy out there. They would ride together, they would pit together, and then Denny said one time we started scuffling out there. I ghost rid my bike right into his, into pits. Beautiful. And he goes, we started brawling, and then we still had to ride together back to the hotel. Awkward. Pier 6 brawl. Awkward. <laughs> I mean, there's it's like when Daddy's yelling at Molly at the dinner table for Thanksgiving. They're brothers. It's awkward for everybody. They're brothers, man. The stories <laughs> are that. great when you catch Denny. And he would do anything for Bud Man. Gage Dunham out in front. Chase Monahan in the number two spot. Landon Walters on the charge. Look he out. Can throw a blanket over all three. Selmick's cavalry. Love it. Emmett Baker in the number four spot. Wyatt Grant fifth. Briar Stesic in sixth place. Quaid Edwards seventh. Eighth is Jacob Allen. Colt St. Clair ninth. And rounding out the top ten, Brady Landon. Well, we're watching Gage Dunham now. He rifles out of the Gator pit up on the Gator's back. And there he is, hops, giving a jumping. And, and the reason they call it Gator Back, if you really look at the mm -hmm. track layout, 
you've got the when they come out of the pit that actually the dinner table would be the gator's head mm -hmm. and then the tail goes around and it swings out by the road pardon me for 20 miles <laughs> i mean it's a big gator it's a big, it's a big gator. gator yeah I, mean, and, uh, I remember back in the day you know you said the legs used to go back and forth up and down it really yeah. did look like a gator yeah and uh the tail is out by the road that sweeper out there would be the gator's tail mm -hmm. so they are up when they come out of the pit it's over the gator's head which they call it the dinner table the step over and then you get up on the gator's back and then down around the road would be the tail a little history for you guys a little knowledge check out your aerial drone shot and you get a look at it yeah pretty right good. now we're watching gate dunham done from the gator's tail but he better look out Let he has got right. monahan out there monahan might want to put the gator bite on him Arr, chomping at him hey no gobble gobble there Gator bite today. Gobble, gobble. Gator wants some walking around money. There he is. Hunnam, Dunham, Monaghan, Walters, Baker, Grant, Stesick, Edwards, Allen, St. Clair, Landon, and Lamb in the top 12. Right there at the cutoff point, you can see him. Anthony Pasella and Frederick Romo, Cooper Johnson, and Tanner Brumley. Those guys are the ones. You know, I, I like to take those four guys. Who's which one is going to stay up in the cutoff point and get 18? That's very important right now. And we do know Cooper Johnson, man. He's a heavy hitter. We've seen a super cross track hit. It's, I think the top five rides out yep. there. So look for Johnson makes some moves. Well, he didn't get the start he needed, but the needed the, in need right now is those guys just to make it to that next evolution. Gage Dunham with a 212, 191. Chase Monahan in the two spot. Now about two and a half seconds back. Seeing some separation from our leaders. Landon Walters has checked in in third. And we wait for the rest. There we go. Emmett Baker finally checking in. Briar Stesick on the move. Gets around Wyatt Grant this last lap around to move up into the five spot. Women 12 and up Division One. I just love, let me just make sure there are two divisions in here. I mean, that women's class is growing. Yes. So there is two division of women's racers. Uh, it's good to see that. It's good yeah. to see that. Full gate, ready to go. We have to have two divisions. Uh, big shout out uh, to uh, Greg Dion and family. And the Dion family, they were fixtures here for many years with Andrew to Spain, and they are listening at home. Tune in, tune it in. Yeah, I did notice that, yeah. Wes, that the that, um, Dunham is Dunham's a little off the pace. But, hey, it's only lap number two. This is only the, this is really only the first lap time we've had right here. So look for Dunham to find some good lines, you know, and chip away at that lap time. Yeah, lap times are important. you got Dunham, Monahan, Walters, Baker, and Stesick out there in your top five. Yeah, Pruitt turning that. Uh, it was a 209.972. Gage so, Dunham. So a 210, essentially. A 210, essentially. That's right. Um, so Gage Dunham, he could do it. He certainly can. Listen, Gage Dunham is that kid from Colorado. He He's won Loretta's, so he's got that notch in his belt. I've seen him do an enduro cross in, in uh, Joaquin, Washington. I've seen him do arena cross. Mm -hmm. And if you really want to get with him on arena cross, that guy knows how to turn and burn. I love it. He can go through the whoops. He can ride outdoors. He's winning a heat race here. And he can also hop up here and take any one of our jobs. That's true. Any announced power. Yeah. I mean, that's, he pushed Rodney into retirement. He, he did. He did. He oh, is. my God. And you know, when I ask him on a podium some things, I'll tell him a little bit. I'll whisper to him short and sweet. Short and he sweet. will let you have it. Sometimes I have to step on his toe. That's a little the bit old like, announcer trick. Like, like okay, da Gage. But uh, he's off. He, he's the gifted. He's gifted. Yeah, he is He's a good special. kid. Gage Dunham. Uh, he's a very, very good kid. Very well respected. Yeah, yeah wicking it up a bit. He turned to 11. He's finding a little hammer. more speed. Don't count it out. He, he doesn't, don't want to push too much. He's got a decent Listen, lead right now, right? Some people play checkers out here. It ain't all, I mean, chess. It ain't all about winning and slam, 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 triple. I got you. A lot of guys like Tristan Pruitt, he's creeping. He knows he needs to be at the end. Yep. Get the job done. Gage Dunham could be in there, too, for the overall. He's made the podium in Supercross. He's winning a, a, a heat race here. So, you know, you got to attack it. Sometimes patience is the best policy. That's true. Very, very true. At the end of the day, if uh, Tristan Pruitt comes out of this one, he's got a one. Gage Dunham, if he comes out, he's got a one. Got a one. You know, Whether it was four seconds, five seconds faster, slower, whatever, they both got the one. It's all about collecting points and being there at the end. You know, strategies do work here, especially when, it, when it's – 
raining like that a little bit, you pull your rider in and you discuss a few things. Yeah. You know, don't go out there and get crazy and toss it away. You know, be cool, calm, and collected. Loving it. The three C's. Cool, calm, and collected. C, C, C. Okay, I was just double checking. I wouldn't have said it if it was right. How, yeah. <laughs> Had me nervous. I believed you. <laughs> I believed you. Chase Moneyhan in the two spot. Landon Walters in second. Briar Stesic in fourth. Wyatt Grant back in fifth. Right, I got my eyes on. What? Brady Landon turning a 216. A little faster than the guys in front of him, but pretty decent gap back there. Everybody kind of on an island right now. Well, Romo still in 17. Palmer 18. Yazanik 19. And Pedigo. See what happens there. Still got some laps to go. It's on lap number three. And we're going to make sure these guys get in there. And who's going to make that final transfer spot? Women up next. Going to be a good one, guys. Jordan Jarvis looking for a little redemption out there. Let's take a little peek. Where is the machine out of Jordan Jarvis? Yep. There's Brooke Whipple. The 401 is definitely going to be one to be reckoned with on the outdoors. I think over in... All right, here we go, guys. Hey, I want to say happy birthday to Eric Steinbrecher, the old, old man. Eric Steinbrecher, happy birthday. You are 105 years old. Congratulations. You are still kicking it. Here we go. Dunham, Walters, Stisic. Palmer now still running 18th. He's got the spot. He's got to hang on to a white flag as they come through the stripe. Yeah, don't look at that. I look at the screen and I see the checker. All right, here we go. Watch him now. Our leader goes down. Those guys are trying to make it happen out there. Don't ruin that computer shot, Dean. And when I touch computers, things go haywire. All right, here we go. Watch our leader. Dunham, Walters, Stisic, Grant, Monahan. Tough break for Monahan. He was all over Gage Dunham. Like gravy on some hot mashed potatoes, but it ain't happening this time. Walters jumps up there. Landon Walters, Stisic, Grant, Brady Landon, and Monahan now drops back to sixth. Palmer still in 18th. And Old Corp. Romo looks like he's going to get in. Stasic and Pedigo. Loving it. Getting interesting. Things getting wild. White flag comes hey, out. Man. Anything can happen. You got to hang in there. Gage Dunham with some troubles. And suddenly yeah, a brief, still out freeze front. Let's see what Yeah, happens. a good recovery, too. Monaghan, the one that had the trouble, too. I mean, he was in second, and now he's back in six. Yeah, no good. You know, and then you're watching Dunham. He's running a 212. A couple of, you know, seconds faster than the rest of the field. So it's going to be a good matchup. I, I still say nobody's safe. Sure. I mean, nobody's safe yet. Until I see <laughs> the checker, right. nobody it. is That's safe. It. you got to hang in there. Yeah. When Especially I get you back in those transfer spots I'll right now. Get you on that podium and throw that medal around your neck. Now we can do some chatting up there. That's it. You know? Yeah, baby. Right now, don't clear your trophy shelf off. Not don't yet. Don't do it. Uh -uh. Uh, it's not going to be good. Don't count your chickens before they hatch. Don't eat your muffins. I like the way these muffins come up. They're already peeled back. Yeah. The, yeah. the, the wrapper's already off of yeah. them. That's kind of like. That's, that's the worst thing about cupcakes. Have to peel off the wrapper. Hey, well, that's how we get them. We get them like that. Next thing you know, we'll have some green M&Ms only coming up here. I Somebody will separate. Through. How are we getting barbecue today? Uh, we so are. Hooked on Q, hooking it up down yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Right. Hooked on Q is going to be bringing up. I, I hear that we're getting a smorgasbord, mm. and uh, we're getting ribs. We're getting Ooh. bark pork. We're getting chicken. We're getting brisket. We're getting it all. Well, I know Gage Dunham, Walter Stisic, Grant, and Landon rolling your top five. Dunham safe. Women 12 and up Division One. Sage Tanger. Sully Tompkins. Madison. Kylie Stallings, Ballard, uh, Haley Boslo, Regan Durrell, Tiffany Finnena, they have Reds, Daniel Ellerman, Michaela Thomas, Morgan Johnson, Regan Davis, Kaylee Hayes, Josie Sub, Riley Tur Turney, Jenna Sulchies, Atlanta Folk, Kylie Inman, Gail Kopik, Ann Stavia, Brooke Whipple, Sophia Holery, 
there we have it. Yep, uh, Dern out front from the Netherlands. There's Curtin, Wolf, Costa, Pulaski, Green, Hunter, Raw, Phelps, and uh, Latour, La Sheehan, Kayuk, and Elliott. And yeah, we're watching a lot of Van Drunen out there leading out Kylie Stallings, but Stallings now, she's putting a little bit of pressure on Drunen. You know, Stallings like, you know, I've been here before. I know this track a little bit better than you, so I'm going to put my work in right now and try to reel you in while I can. Going for it right now, right up the inside is Stallings trying to make the pass. Ooh, how about that? Getting close right there for hey, sure. Hey, you know what they said? Wheel. Catch me outside. How about that? How about that? Ooh. That's what Stallings said. I'll catch you outside. I'll get you. She's going to have to go back to work, though. Here we go. The 401, the Netherlands. And Mike Burkeen is pretty pumped on this rider here. He got the Supercross points going in. Stallings now, they probably re-huddled re up back there. They're regrouping. And they're like, you've got to get this done. You've been here. This is kind of maybe your home track. You've been here. Oh, look at there. In a switchback. I love it. Stalling Dobbs outside. Dernan now looking to get that first lap underway. Maybe once this thing opens up here a little bit and the pressure's on, Dernan is going to drop the hammer. But here comes Stalling now in front of the announce tower. And they both kind of drop into the pit together. You're watching on Racer TV. This one here is shaping up to be a dandy. Here they come up the face of that finish line jump. Both riders with a little dab right there. A third place rider going down right there. Uh-oh. Let's take a peek. That's Brooke Whipple out there. Brooke Whipple's no pushover either. She's a brawler. She can get it done. Dropping in again and put down is Van Gernan on the 401 NSA Yamaha ride. And looks like now they both get a look at the track. What line not to take? What line to take? Kylie Stallings is, is, is learning right now. Hey, you got something over here. I'm going to save it. Maybe go this line or not. But both of them on top of the gator back. And uh, Durin's, Durin, Stallings, Basio, Wolf, Whipple, Schultes, Hunter, Shuff, Folk, and Kretz round out your top 10. There's the bubble right there. 18th. You got Johnson and Cork. See what happens there, little Dean. Absolutely, I gotta pick that one up as they make their way back around. I'll give you a full rundown of the qualifying positions that last lap through. A lot of Andrew out there leading it out. Kylie Stallings in second, Haley Basalo in the third spot. Brian Rihanna Wolf, she's in the fourth spot. Brooke Whipple, she's gonna fall back to the fifth spot. That's a little tipple down there. Jenny Schulte, she's gonna be in the sixth spot. Seventh spot, Cheryl Hunter. Eighth spot, Josie Shuff. Elena Folk in ninth. Nevaeh Gretchen tenth. Harley Wood in the eleventh. Twelfth spot, there's Michaela Thomas. And behind Thomas, we got Kylie Hayes. Hayes in that thirteenth spot. Tressa Rao in 14th, 15th is Sophia Hulori. China Greenwell in 16th, Riley Turney in 17th, and that cut off right there, Morgan Johnson, and just off the bubble is Cox. So Cox trying to make a move out there. Plenty of time to do it. Drunen out in front, and I tell you what, so far after a, a almost two laps of racing, it has been the Drunen show, and Kylie Sullins got to start throwing everything at her with the kitchen sink if she wants to get up in it. Do we have an international rivalry forming? Why not? Yes. I'm going with yes. Okay. Stallings normally it's our in job control to drama. all this. Right? Right. Yeah. And uh, Jordan Jarvis said, hey, don't count me out. Hey, also, got, hey, Hannah Hodges. Hannah Hodges is watching right now on that gate going, okay, we're going to deal with this. Better watch the lap times. Drennan with the 204, Stallings with a 205. It's staying right there. It's kind of evenly matched right now. It is a little evenly matched. We see Van Drunen starting to pull away just, just a little bit. You know, maybe a bike length here, bike length Ooh. there. It's adding up. Wow. You know how it goes. One just plus curious plus two, to see. Two plus two is four. Curious Man. to see if we see her come back over for uh, maybe some spring races. And uh, let's see if we see her areas regionals. Then you know it's on for Loretta's. And that one, you know, never disappoints, Rodney. Sure. Loretta's, the third moto's, the charm, you never know. <laughs> and, and, and like these riders have won championships. And if you bring Van Brunen in, could that be the upset? Yeah. Never been there before, but I want to win here. You call what it is. Like we talk about minios, it's, it's the, at the end of the year. But really, this is like the preview no, this for is 2024. The this yeah. is the opener, this you know. This is the season so. opener. 
side of that boys. That's what I tell you. Kylie Stallings. Oh, wow. Putting the hammer down she, right there. That was a yeah. down right across the track. She almost hit oh, out and hit Andy no. Armedic. She's on a charge right now. She is on a tear. She wants to really reel in a lot of Andrew. And, she, and I think she knows what this is going to do for her resume. I know it's only the first Ooh. moto, but if she can get out there, put some pressure on, potentially make a pass on Van Drunen, hey, she's going to put her name out there. A sure. shot well, in the chin is a shot in the chin. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 it's their race right now. Drunen and uh, installings have uh, up on third place by about 39, 38 and a half seconds. So it, it's these two. It's mono a mono right now unfolding here on Racer TV. They're right here in front of us as they drop down into the Gator Pit. Line for line, Stallings picked up the pace a little yep, bit. Yep, two bite links separate them. You can look at there, they, uh, they're 205, 204. A little bit of a gap right there, but What's gonna if happen? you slip, Stallings grips. There it is right there, 203. Drunnen drops it down. Oh, oh, Stallings. Stallings picks up that second. And she's wow. Second and a half behind her right now. This is oh. going to be a good race. Hey, like Tim Cotter says, it's shaping up to be a dandy here at <laughs> The Minios, 52 years in the making. Tell you what, Lottie must have some good lines back there because she definitely gained some ground on Stallings. See, she has a little bit of a lead now, but Stallings catches her back in the Gator Tail section. Hey, the line in the sand hasn't been drawn. It's the oh. line in the mud has been drawn. Oh, a little mistake, I think, right there by Drunen and Stallings. Oh, boy, look around. out. She's around the outside. Around the outside. Here we go. Stallings drops to the inside. They drop down in hill. It's going to be Drunen and Stallings now as they work their way down through the twisty. Stallings goes outside. Here goes Drunen now. Hop, skipping and jumping now. They make the right-hander and they head up out. They disappear out of sight. We're watching on Racer TV. It's Drunen. Stallings now with a good line. Stallings now watchable on the tree line. They're going to head down the Gators tail. It's going to be Drunen out front. Here comes Stallings. If you can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen. Here comes the back markers and ingredients for a disaster or ingredients oh, for man. something good to happen. Right into the uh, lap traffic they go. Drunen's still out in front. Stallings in the two spot. Stallings reeling her in now oh. as Drunen stays on the outside. Oh, that's a very oh, far outside man. line. Right Stallings, Stallings went way out. Now got to make that up. White. This one here's a nail biter. If you're watching this one at home on Racer TV, you paid for the coverage in your seat, but right now you're only on the edge. Yes. Ooh, and Stallings got to check up right there around the lap oh traffic. So Drunen gets a little, little bit of help. Here comes Stallings firing back at her right here. They're gonna buzz the tower. Negative Ghost Rider. That pattern is gone. Look out! Bumper to bumper. Here they go. The oh avenue is packed. Stand back. If you're Danny Lewis, oh. you got a little quiver in your knee as they Drunen fire her down. down. Oh, here comes Stallings. Side by side, they fire out of the Gator Pit. White flag to go. The battle is on. Oh, Stallings now. Oh, did you Stallings yeah. did you step over? That was an awesome move right there by Stallings. Oh, boy. She wants this win more than anything right now. Ryan Holiday's watching. Danny Lewis is watching. Ed Torrance, and they are watching a show. Come on, rivalry. The flag is here. Bam! Oh, look at these riders. Look at these lap riders. Might mess her up on the step up. The landmines are out there. You got to maneuver. Oh, Stallings splits the middle. You oh, oh no! Goodness. Jumps over two Kid riders' heads. Oh my gosh! This here is we a go. Wild race right here. Look at the fence line. Spectators everywhere. Oh, look out! Stallings back fires to the inside. There's Drunen. Oh, Drunen drops in. They thread the needle. Oh, the lapper. Oh, Stallings has the lasso out. You can see the crowd in front of the announcer. All attention is to our leaders. This is a great race right now between these two tough competitors in this women's class. Katie better barn the doors down on this one. It's going to be a barn burner to the checker. <laughs> Here we go through the gate of tail one last time. Oh, lap oh what a, a line. line. Van Duren had to pop out of that rut, uh -huh. change the line, and here they go along the gator tail. Oh, Van Duren oh. checked up to the inside. Hey, if you slip, Kylie Stallings is ready to grip and capitalize on any miscue by our leader. Uh, you watch it on the SLR Live Drive Run Rifle Works. Oh, Van Drunen, a little side swept Mikey Wayne. Hey, looking beautiful right now. Drunen getting in the groove, and I think we're done with lappers for the moment. So it is, ooh, starting to stretch it out just a little bit right here. Stallings oh, threw boy. everything at her but the kitchen sink. We put it in the universe. Is this a rivalry brewing? Yes, I love and it. I think yeah, it is. It's not going to be that down to the wire finish like we saw unless something happens here. But nonetheless, this was sensational. I can't wait for the next division to take the gate, and I can't wait for the main event. The women's racers never disappoint. Not here they long. go. Watch them, Dean. Bring us home.
Green Hub, yeah, we see Stallings make a few mistakes there on that last lap, but they're gonna come through and take the checkered flag. Lonnie Van Jr. gonna get the job done there, finishing up in second. Kylie Stallings with a great ride out there to keep pressure on Van Jr. in that whole moto. She's actually gonna fall off pace, lose a couple seconds there on that last lap, but man, she's gotta be feeling good going into moto number two. Well, I tell you who's gotta first. be feeling good, these riders on the gate out there. Who do we got? We got Shauna Burton, Casey Keehan, Sheehan, Madison Kazmir, Brittany Moucher. Hannah Cole, Ginger Osgood, Piper Carver Coons, Caitlin Lane, Bailey Long, Alicia Goggle, Vivian Contreras, Lillian Pettis, Maya Molly, Taylor Evans, Cynthia McComb, Brianna Sheltema, Mayla Herrick, Yelan Bozer, Hannah Hodges, Emerson Judge, Daniel McDonald, Brittany Gag, Yankee. Jordan Jarvis, Lena Obrey, McKenna Hayes, Shelby Rowland, Alyssa Meyer, Heather Moore, Mia Kramer, Melanie Pickard, Reagan Vaughn, Trini Leganis, Kylie McGraw, Leanne McDonald, and Sutton Suckress. And I can't wait to see. We're going to compare lap yeah, times. Huge. So we got I already took, I already took a picture. We're good. Stalling running the 202. Well, best lap of 202. Let's look. 204, 206. We got it right here. Jordan, a 203 was the best lap time. We're going to compare, yeah. and we are going to instigate, and we are going to set the stage a for a battle royale amongst the women. We gotta, we gotta create the drama. Wanted to give a quick shout out there to Danielle McDonald, rider 16 years old. I think she's might be an AMA 15 year old, but nonetheless, she was on the ISDE team for Australia with yep. Taylor Jones, yep. uh, doing some great things out here this weekend. And she is a youngster. We got a medalist there, here. So a medalist. Yeah, absolutely, uh, really cool. All right, here's the town, the thunder, and the gate is down, and it hits the ground, and here we go. Who's gonna pull that whole shot and lead this one out? Could it be Jarvis? Could it be Hodges? Ah, could it be Alicia Goggle on that chipmunk ride? Let's like take a peek. I'm gonna say that might be Hodges. Could, could be Hodges. Could be Hodges. And Hodges. It is Hodges. Look at it, stretch it out right away, right off the bat here. As there goes Jarvis. Jumping Jay. Jarvis, yeah. Just, like, Jumping Jay says, I got this. Let me get up in there. I've been sitting on the gate. I've watched that. I've listened to it. For it. I don't want to hear anymore. I'm going to the front. Holy smokes. You don't think that. Uh, Talk she to listened to that last race. I mean, yeah. Look at the, oh, yeah. the start. Oh, fired Jordan Jarvis up. She, yeah. I'm Let's excited go. to see the lap times. Wow. Speaking of lap times, I'm going to run down qualifying in that last women's division. We got a lot of Andrew to take them in. Kylie Stallings, Brooke Whipple, Haley Vasallo, China Greenwell, Brianna Wolf, Josie Shove, Jenna Schultz, Emma Folk, Cheryl Hunter, Nevea Gretsch, Addison Elliott, Riley Turney, Tressa Rao, Morgan Johnson, Tiffany Fanala. Kylie Hayes and Caitlin Pekzowski gonna take that final transfer position right there in division number one of the women's 12 plus class. Can you cut that up into four ways? <laughs> they call me tater so That looks delicious. We just got brought half a chicken. I don't know what we're gonna do with half a chicken. And one scoop I'm of gonna eat it. something <laughs> with the four or five of us up here. Mm. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's watch Double J and Hannah Hodges go to work. You got a fork? Hey, double H, double J, first and second. We're yeah. here. H squared. <laughs> well, let's watch them. Interesting to see where these lap times are going to be. Yeah, we see Jarvis really pulled the rear wheel of Hannah Hodges. Hodges is definitely a tough competitor out here in the women's class. She always has been sort of a staple, I would say, in the women's class. Hannah Hodges and Jordan Jarvis, obviously. A little international flavor this year with a lot of Ann June and Ann Kylie Stallings, one of our younger girls in that first division. So, I mean, look, we had the younger girls going out in division number one. Now we get the little older girls going in division number two. Think about it. Yeah, but you got uh, Michaela Herrick, Mayla Herrick out there. Yes. So there's Hodges. Double J fires out of that pit, drops the tear off. Who's our third place rider is going to be Danielle McDonald okay. straight from yes, the ISDD. Girl. Hey. You got those moto medals. I got this one from the Yeah, that one, I mean, that's pretty daggone cool. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Rihanna Buchanan hit us up from Australia on Supercross nice. and said, "Hey, talk about my my uh, country country person, my countryman." <laughs> oh boy, Double J looks for a way around. Challenge it now. Jarvis was looking forward to this too. She said, "Yeah, how the Supercross go?" She's like, "I'm I'm ready for the other track." So yeah, she's been chomping at the bit for this one, and now starting to show. Stretch out oh, flex, side by side. I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell you something for the new new people here. There is no love loss between those two. Nope. None. Zero. It will nope. go tooth and nail. We had them on the after show, me and Megawad, I believe two years ago. 
And if you thought Cole Trickle and Rowdy Burns had some issues, hey, man. those two right there will never ride in the same rental car to breakfast. Holy no, it is ever. not going to happen. Uh, uh, as close as you're going to see them is, is probably right, right now. about now. <laughs> and, and I don't know if you can ever, like, make that amends. I mean, yeah. sometimes uh, the, the Jarvis, that's what sorry to interrupt, boys. Jarvis to the inside, or trying to push her out right there as we speak. Oh, oh boy. Jarvis got the move made. Jarvis is hot right now. Yep, got it. Jarvis the takes over the point. Here comes Hannah Hodges. Hannah Hodges with fire in her eyes wants to retaliate on Double J. That's it. Jordan Jarvis letting her know, hey, <laughs> I'm still here. And we're going to check a lap time here because those two are going at it. And they're, they're going really fast so there's not going to be no like uh this maybe not a legit lap time yeah where i mean where we saw grunin turn in a 2037 i mean that was she had a pretty good lead was hitting her marks right now you've got hodges and jarvis really pushing one yeah. another so they, so they just might be in that ballpark if not a little faster they could be a 201 or a two flat let's see jarvis down and watch our third place rider out there mcdonald is close She's no joke, that's for sure, on the 261 machine, stand right on the rear wheel of our leaders. There goes Jarvis, bow, right out of the pit. We'll get a lap time on that. Mikey Waynes is watching very closely. Jordan Jarvis checking in at 205-395. Hannah Hodges checks in, second lap completed at 208-7. Danielle McDonald, though, at 206-5, so she's a little faster than Hannah Hodges in front of her. And her see right how yes, she, yes, she is. Here we go. Trying to throw that needle right here to the inside of Hodges. Hodges still has that inside line taking control. Hodges has got multiple bogeys. Got Jarvis in front. You got McDonald coming up in third. So Hodges is in like uh, the fire pit right now. Yeah, she is. Uh, she needs to get up back in the battle with Jordan Jarvis and McDonald all over her six challenging. I wouldn't count out Contreras. Yeah, back Vivian in the fourth Contreras spot. Contreras is sitting back there in fourth. Uh, all these riders we've seen in their different disciplines of regionals and areas and stuff, they've established themselves as quality riders yep. to get it done. And everybody here on that gate is who's who right now. Yeah, hey, man, like from, from first back to 41 in both divisions, they are pretty bad. I Mayla mean, Herrick. bad is it good. That's like, good. yeah, don't mess yeah. around. Yeah. Mayla Herrick back in the seventh spot for now because she turned a 211-7, and that is a wow. full seven to six, eight, nine seconds faster than the next three in front of her. That means if we shoot, we shoot little Dean up and Mikey Waynes, they're going to take your lunch money. You're darn right I they're am. They're taking your lunch yeah. money. I'm just giving it to them. I'm going to concede <laughs> and not sign up. <laughs> I'm out. I'm wow. like a Doberman. And here McDonald. we go. McDonald around Hodges now. Oh, boy. You, you don't want to talk to Hannah Hodges when she comes off. Not going to be happy. I'm really surprised that Hannah decided to take the same split lane. That right side must be just that much faster right now. It's, it's looked pretty good from the bird's eye view, at least. Absolutely. As we're watching now, McDonald is. Oh, whoa. You see that little line change? So now Jarvis is in trouble. Whoa, whoa. Jarvis is going down at the bottom of the gator pit. McDonald is right there. And let's see if Jarvis can take this over. Oh, oh McDonald, McDonald with a big bobble. And the white flag is. Not yet. Wait a minute. Well, no. I don't think. He's it's reaching for it. No, no white flag yet. No white flag yet. Check It'll it. be on the next one. So let's see if McDonald now. Could close the grip like a shark in the water. Honestly, I, I think she's got a little overexcited there. It's like she's seen, she's seen Jarvis make those mistakes. Like I can do this, I can do this. Then the next thing you know, she slipped up, and now she's feeling some pressure by Hannah Hodges. Well, I I, I think McDonald's going to rise to the occasion. Aussie, 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 and going to roll up in there again. McDonald with the fastest lap time oh. there, at 2:07. Yeah, but watch Hodges. Hodges You're right, the water. <laughs> yeah. Hodges says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back at you right yeah. now. And it's a mathematical equation. She knows how bad she needs this number two position right yep, now. Yep, for sure. Uh, Hodges has been here for years. She knows the drill. Mayla Herrick, by the way, picking up a couple more positions. She's running a 208. Viviana, a 213 and a 211 for Hannah Hodges up in front of her. But pretty good gap there between uh, fourth and third, 13 seconds. But Mayla doing her thing out there. Yeah, they got Mila Baltic in the sixth spot, Brittany Gagne in the seventh, Brianna Shelton in eighth, ninth spot is Shelby Rowland, Regan Vaughn in tenth, Lillian Pettis in eleventh, twelfth spot is Brittany Major, Caitlin Lane in thirteenth, fourteenth, Cynthia McCowan, fifteenth, Lillian McDonald, Bailey Long's up to the sixteenth place position, Hannah Cole falls back to seventeenth, and Casey Sheehan right now is in that final transfer position. All right, here we go. McDonald, Hodges, Jarvis, watch him now. Jarvis almost got the bite. And here we go.
Let's watch them now as they come through. Looking for that white flag. Jarvis now coming through the switchback. Out front, Double J. Smooth sailing ahead right now. Smooth sailing, but there are some lot Priders out there, some landmines as you call them. Hey. There's Hodges, close to the tower. McDonald now a little bit closer, Rodney. Mikey Wayne, what's your assessment on this on the white flag? Uh, Jarvis right now needs to just continue doing what she's doing. It's working. Uh, feeling comfortable out in front as the white flag comes out. McDonald and Hodges, that's the one I'm, I'm enjoying watching right now. What happened? Hodges kind of fell back. So yeah, Hodges a little bit. had some issues out there. And it's a little bit better, better breathing room for McDonald. Well, I mean, Jarvis, like she was saying, hey, I'm looking forward to, to switch to the outdoor track. I'm ready for it. And obviously, I think judging by this ride to this point, those weren't just words. I think she meant it when she said it. Looking stellar out there right now. It's a stellar performance by all these competitors here. No rain, no sunshine can hold them back. It's like the United States Postal Service, baby. Hey, rain or shine, we're going to deliver. And that's what Jordan Jarvis is doing that's right, right now, delivering the mail. Heck yeah. It's uh, all the way from Newberry to Alachua. Here we get there. <laughs> I am. I'm also ready for this. I'm ready to watch Stallings, Drunen, Jarvis, McDonald, Hodges. Throw Mela Herrick in the mix. Why not? If you had to pick pick one, who are you taking? We'll leave it. We'll leave that for later. But wait, there's more. Don't no, go you away. You might get jumped out there. That's true. There's too much time in between now yeah, and the next photo. Don't, don't put yourself the there. Don't do that. Look at a lot of times I have assumptions, but you can't go off assumptions. <laughs> don't yeah. go off assumptions. I, I see say. a lot of that <laughs> when I watch when I watch some of these guys they they assume a lot They assume a lot well, especially gotta, on the pro yeah, side yeah, yeah, and yeah. I can't even gotta, watch it I can't watch it. I, have I to mean it you off. gotta create a little narrative. You gotta create a little drama Yeah, you know what well you, yeah. you mean to tell me every time you say something West Kane you mean it Yeah <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought I don't know Hey and I start seeing some of the people that assume what's going to happen. Well, you know what they Actually, say about the assuming. Then I believe. You know what they say about you can assuming. assume because you're here. It makes an out of you and me. It makes a butt out of you and me. Nah. We got to church it up. It's almost Sunday. I'll leave it. At least it feels like it. No, what's about it though? Jordan Jarvis going to come through and take this win right here. Should I feel pretty good about it? Let's go. Right. So Jarvis with a little style check Ooh, coming out of the yeah, yeah. tail there. Got to believe that was a wild little noodles move. And noodles. That was a a, a, a visor riser. Come come with a a, a a whip and all that crazy mm -hmm. stuff. Hey, I heard Rich Jarvis actually racing motocross too. So we need to see who has the fast lap. Rich Jarvis was Rich. suited up yesterday. I had to do a double check. Suited it was a, a double check in Double J's pit area. So again at the line, Jarvis, McDonald, Hodges, Herrick, Baltic, Contreras. Gagne, Sheltima, Vaughn, Roland, Pettis, Major, Lane, McCowan, Long, McDonald, Cole, and Sheehan going to take that final transfer spot, I believe, as long as everything stays the same. Oh, wait. One second. I got ahead of myself. I just got to go down right here. Looks like the 523 machine, possibly. Maybe. Having some trouble getting back on her bike. 923, going to make it happen. No problem. Oh, another guy, another girl going down out there. So a little bit of shuffle here on this last lap with a few more corners to go. Yeah. Four announcers. We got one chicken leg and a little scoop. Of, I don't know what happened. What happened? We didn't get no more up here. Mikey Wayne is tearing it up. I want the drumstick. Yeah. Just give me some of the skin. There's more. Oh, I didn't oh, see. Hey, hey. Uh, what am I gonna do with that? I'm a, I'm a meat and potatoes guy. All right, little Dean. The rest is yours, bud. Oh, thank you. All right, Masters 50 plus out there on the starting line. And this one we have James Dobbs, Mike Brown, Javier Cabello, Jim Nagy, Larry Bank, John Major, Mike Hodges, Matthew Kempa, Gabriel Catala, Charles Hawk, Brian Ascender, Francisco Rosario, Barry Carson, Sidney Sartori, Kyle Bowie, Jermaine Mendez, John Gruy, Keith Goet. Troy Collier, Christopher Obliger, Todd Chu, Nathan Miller, Rick Barrett, Gabriel Granado, Steve Nagy, Charlie Pausini, Gregory Paymar, James Max, John Meyer, Ed Brethauer, 
Richard Todd, Michael Keller, Blaine Armbruster, Tressa Rao, Jeffrey Pape, Greg Simmons, Robert Zelinski, Raymond Bergeron, Joseph Turnell, Mike Fair, and Galen Dixon all out there on the track right now. Little baby Galen Dixon. Yeehaw. Out there making her happen. Masters 50 plus. First time around. Kevin Bailey over here looked like a cannibal on those ribs. Looked like Logie Bear, Logan Best in the house. Didn't you have a cast on the other day? I did. We got to cut you, off. Did you go soak it off? No. Huh? No, did you soak it off no, yourself? No, no. I did peel a little bit of it off. Said no. I knew you couldn't resist. But we did. We did go to the doctor's yesterday. Got some X-rays. Everything looks good. So uh, should be should be on the bike in about a week or so. Really? Awesome. Yeah. yeah so every everything everything's on schedule. Everything. Perfect. Yep, perfect. Perfect. Good. perfect. Uh, Doctor Burke said it might be a little bit sore when I get back on the bike, but you know. Sore is something you can deal with. Yeah, and you've been there, done that. Uh, it's not your first injury, uh, by any means. Uh, you understand the timing of it. Uh, how many guys have we seen just went full bore back on the bike day one, hurt again instantly? Uh, unfortunately, guys like Porter, one injury after another, one injury after another, that type of thing. So, uh, not his fault, you know, that type. Uh, incident's going to happen, but with you, uh, you're very calculated. You understand where you're at in your progress, where you need to be, and you're you're very familiar with the timeline. You know where you're at in your schedule. Yeah, definitely. Uh, <laughs> they say everything happens in threes. Um, <laughs> I did, I did uh, both my scalp boys uh, right. this year, and then now my hand. So it was kind of a bummer that I was having to miss this, and I was I tried the best I could to at least race motocross, and. Um, Bird shut it down, but uh, we always have next year. We have, you know, 2024. Yeah, it, you know what? You're here chilling. You, we, we found out the good news while you were here, so you know that is good news to us. That you're you're on schedule, you're ready to roll. What uh, what what, what, uh, what are you looking for out of this pro sport class? What uh, we got Master 50 Plus out there. We'll have pro sport later this afternoon. What, what are you looking for? Uh, well, obviously, you know, we have uh, Drew Adams, Avery Long. Uh, those and Christian Janik. Those Absolutely, are, uh, yep. That's an amazing top three right there. I mean, obviously, you know, we're going to probably see some pretty good battles. And with the rain, um, track conditions are obviously going to play a role. Some spots are going to be soft. Some are going to be slick. Some are going to be perfect. So uh, definitely looking ahead is going to be going to be key. Oh, for and, sure. Um, yeah, I think it's gonna make some good racing. This tends to suit you, these type of conditions. You 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 tend to excel in these conditions. Yeah, my like I love when it's cloudy, overcast, and soft. Mm -hmm. That's that's when I do the best. Right. Um, I don't know what it is. It's just that's my cup of tea, and I I enjoy it. And that's always a good good combination. I mean, I like the overcast. You know, I mean, the moisture's in the ground, the sun's not blazing on you. And, I don't know, just more fun to ride yeah, that definitely. way. And with the track being softer, like we said, you know, you got to be a lot more calculated. Um, I'm more of a rider that's not just going to throw it out there. I'd rather right. you know, know my next move before uh, before I get to, you know, the next turn, next jump. That's obvious. Yeah, there's no doubt when we watch your style. Taking a quick look now, Mike Brown out front leading the way, of course, coming to us out of Bristol, Tennessee. John Gruy in that number two ride. Barry Carson stepped up into the third position. And uh, what is that? That's going to look like uh, Paymart. Yeah, Frenchie picking up a couple that time around. So number 444, Greg Paymart. MKS shoe guy making it happen there. Yeah, it's certainly crazy looking at the lap times, huh? <laughs> it yeah. is, isn't it? You go from uh, 201s to 211s to 216s. That's a pretty, uh, pretty dramatic gap in yeah, the row. <laughs> I mean, even between Barry and uh, Paymart, you got sure. three seconds. I mean, that's yeah. And, and when you talk about uh, Brown, Gruy, Carson, Gruy's uh, Gruy's the odd man out right there. Brown and Carson, uh, veterans of the Nationals, veterans of uh, GPs, veterans of every type of racing you can imagine. Uh, Gruy, stellar career. Grew up, I believe raced some pro. I believe Gruy did, but uh, big difference when you start looking at uh, Brown, 
and, and Carson and all these other guys that just really didn't go to that pro level were great riders, great A-level riders, expert riders. But you know the difference. Right, definitely. Yeah. I mean, even us B riders, we may be, uh, you know, faster than, than the Carsons and the Grueys, but uh, they still have a lot of technique stuff. That you Man, I you, mean, just you better believe it. Yep. I mean, that's something that you're, you know, you're not going to get overnight. And like I said, even though you may be faster than them, like, they're still going to have tricks up their sleeve that you won't even know about until you get, you know, older. Hey, all, all you got to do is ask a couple guys at Loretta's two years ago when Heath Harrison and uh, an off-road guy brought it to him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, when you're when you're 16 years old, that's not supposed to happen. Right. <laughs> even, if, even when we talk about, you know, muddy conditions, obviously, you know, Loretta's this year was a bit of a catastrophe wow. with, with uh, rain. I mean, this is, um, that's all stuff that they're going to, like I said, they're going to have tricks. They're going to sure. have, uh, you know, all types of stuff going on um, that you're not, you're never going to know about until you get to where they're at. You're not going to out mud Barry Carson. Definitely. <laughs> it's not going to happen, Big Dog. That's not going to happen at all. So what, uh, for, for you, does light riding now uh, next week, uh, going to do some light riding and then just start working back into it? I, I know you've already been working cardio and stuff and all that. You've stayed on track with that. So uh, you're, you're chomping at the bit to get on the bike. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, honestly, you know, when you come back from an injury, a lot of people just focus on turns. Turn track is, you know, you're never going to forget how to jump. But you can right. always... Uh, can always forget on you know proper feet placement and you know stuff like that that's stuff that can just get away from you without you know when you don't notice it and you don't pay attention to it a so, few weeks uh, off easy to let that leg drop yeah definitely <laughs> corner, right definitely 100% <laughs> so um yeah I'll probably just you know a lot of turn track stuff from uh for the next week or so whenever I get back on the bike um I'm going to be moving to uh, Sandbox area, too. Oh, so okay. So that's going to be kind of a, it's definitely going to be a whole new, uh, you know, experience, a whole new program. So that's going to be another thing um, that, that's going to be different. We're going to see anything new on social media. Uh, you, you do such a great job keeping everybody informed where you're at. Uh, you put together very cool pieces, man. I watch them all. Uh, any change-ups there, or just going to keep the course? Uh, no, it'll probably be uh, same stuff. I don't know. I, I guess I need to start posting some more start videos, because that, that's what gets all the views. I have no idea why, because um, you would think, you know, going through a turn or something like that would make a lot, you know, a lot more sense on, on getting more views. But, um, yeah, no, I think it's definitely going to be good to have a different uh, background, obviously. Being in the Tallahassee area, you spend a lot of time at Southern, GPF, yep. MTF. Yep. Um, and, you know, to some people that might get a little stale. But, sure. Uh, so definitely having a newer background is going to be going to be good. I like it. Well, white flags out, Logie Bear. Mike Brown, John Drury, Greg Paymart, Barry Carson. Now, Paymart was able to pick his way past Carson. Look at that. Yeah, I was going to uh, say. Max, like, uh, yeah. Sorry about that, spot. Frenchie. We didn't notice that one. Sorry, our apologies yeah. there. So white flag continues to fly less than a lap to go in this one. The number three machine going to be coming around, Logan, and uh, a guy that everybody can learn so much from, Mike Brown, so good on and off the track for our sport, has done so much. The guy said, you know, Mega, I said, I, I just love it, and I'm going to ride till I can't throw my leg over the bike anymore. And uh, there's not a day that I don't go out and think I don't want to ride. You know, when Mike Brown says that, that's pretty That's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, uh, Mike's obviously a guy that, you know, we were talking about tricks up his sleeve. Um, you know, obviously Mike has insanely good form. Um, you know, when, even when it comes to little stuff like jumping bumps, and like those are all things that you can learn from those guys. Exactly. And they're definitely not the type of, you know, Barry, Mike, you go up to them and you talk to them, they're not going to be like, oh, get away from me. Right. Right. They're, oh, they're, no, they're yeah. going to want to have a yeah. full-on conversation. If you have questions about something like that, like those are the guys you definitely want to go to and ask. Any of your buddies want to get in a ring with him? 
Probably not. <laughs> Guaranteed, <laughs> dude. Absolutely. So you, you on, on the track, one thing, huh? Yeah, definitely. So you might be able to handle him on the track, yeah. huh? Definitely. I love it. Now, you, you <laughs> might have a chance on the track. I heard he is a pretty gnarly cyclist, is whatever. He, dude, the guy's insane. You, what you won't do, Logan, is make him tired. No. That's no. not going to happen. His threshold for pain is extremely high. Uh, his ability to suffer. It is, is incredible, dude. You know, it's funny you say that. Every time I look at Mike Brown and you see him, if you ever see him outside of his riding gear, the guy's built like David Goggins, like Absolutely. ultra marathon runner. Yeah. Like he oh, yeah. is the moto version of David Goggins. Absolutely. No question. When you when you look at that guy, you know exactly what his program's all about. Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I certainly hope I look like that when I'm How about it? When you're almost 100? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Okay. Megan can say that. I, I can say that because I'm almost 100. Yeah, yeah so. well. I wouldn't have to go that far. <laughs> I know you were. Uh, I wasn't going to let you take the fun of it. There you go. DJ oh. Judd just chimed in and said, David Goggins wishes I love he it. could be Mike Brown. I love it. Good stuff. Good stuff. Well, Logan, appreciate you, man. Thank you so much. Uh, come up and see us the rest of the week and uh, keep us informed of what's going on. Best of luck. Stay healthy, bro. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. <laughs> awesome. Heck yeah, Logie Bear hanging out with us, Logan Best. I'd honestly, Meg, I'd rather see him out racing. But, absolutely, hey, is All what it long. is. Yeah. Always have a blast when he comes up, hang out. He, yeah, he, good, he, good, he, good he, young man. Uh, bottom line is, he's a realist. Yep. Okay, he's not out here. He's not beholden to somebody to say this, to say this, to say this. We yeah, ask sure. him, we ask him, and he tells us. Yeah. You know, and I love it. Checker flag out as we heard. Mike Brown, John Cruy, Frenchie Paymar, Barry Carson, James Max, for top five. We've got 250 Pro Sport coming up next. Oh. Unless I missed one. Is that correct, Mega? Is that uh, what we got? Pro Sport's up. Yeah, Pro Sport's Sweet. up. And on the starting line right now here in race number 15, the number seven machine, Ronald Johnson, 10, Gabriel Andrigo, 18, Ronnie Orris, 27, Christian Yannick. Colin Allen on the 35, the 44, Noah Smerdin, the 50, Austin Jones, the 61, Brandon Ma, Jackson Paxful. He's on the 74, Michael Corcoran on the 80, 084, a Callan Young, the 84, Wyatt Creighton, the 105, a Revan Gordon, the 108, a Jesse Wessel, the 132, Ty Casey, the 138, a Dylan Remble, the 145, a Randy Simpson, the 172, a Hayden Hoover, the 174, a Trevor Collum, the 188, Ashton Arruda. The 213 is Tyler Smith, Rodrigo Borges, the 221, the 232 of uh, Jeremy Wong, the 263 of Avery Long. What do you got, Wes? I tell you what we got there. We got a, it looks like Zach Harrison out there. Here comes a Kawasaki rider out there with a good jump out of the game. Avery Long's got to be somewhere out there watching him back in about fit. Let these guys get sorted out. Who else is out there? Yeah, you said it first, 263, Avery Long, he's out there. 300, Drew Adams, Ronnie Stein on the 318, 369, uh, Jack Nerona. Andrew Wallace on the 371, 372 at Wyan Kaniger, the 414 Russell Buck Cherry, the 515 at Jacob Henry, the 605 at Blake Broderick, the 620 at Peyton Jackson, the 680 at TJ Squibb, Alex Rinke, he's out there on the 799 machine, 800 at Preston Miscanangelo, 809 machine that's Braden Ellerman, Jake Blinn on the 831, and Shane Kehoe on the 927. All right, here we go out by the Gator Tail. Shocking for position, watch him now. It's a Kawasaki rider out front. Let's see what he can do. You got to get on your horse and ride now because you got some bad dudes in tow. One slip up, and they're going to capitalize on that. And they're going to just, like I say, Ooh, three shoot, wide. shoot, shoot. Avery Long in there threading a the needle. Going to find his way to the front. It looks like Revan Gordon on the 105 machine. Is that right? It's up there. Revan Gordon out there. Make, hey, got on the podium yesterday. So a little bit of confidence. Here comes. The NSA Yamaha rider Donnie Luce back there at Glamis listening closely as Avery Long back and forth looking to make some moves. We'll pick him up at the base of the tower, and it is Gordon. And then 174 B pick him up. Noah Smeared it. call it, man. It was a good start out there. That was Noah in there. Gordon. Hey, look out. There's the 300 to Drew Adams, the 108. Hold on, look out, it's gonna be a good one now as Revan Gordon leads out lap number one with a quick snap out of the gate. He leads the charge. 
Trevor Kolop going to be in that two spot. One second back. Noah Smurden in third. Fourth place, Avery Long. Drew Adams out there in the number five position. Rodrigo Borges in sixth. Seventh, Jesse Wessel. Christian Yannick, eighth. Ninth, Jacob Glenn. And rounding out the top ten, 74, Jackson Pascal. Here goes your leader right now, Revit Gordon, putting a high rim on as he's done his homework. They worked on that machine late last night under the lights. And they are starting to pay off in huge dividends. Gordon now riding the ride that dreams were made of here at the 52nd annual mini olympics down here in the beautiful city of newberry florida the rain hasn't slowed him down Reverend gordon oh, oh what do you see mikey wait mistake by smurden i see a pass might be making made right there avery long avery making long, some moves yes. out there all right well here we go chippers are flying fist the cuffs are everywhere now as gordon now call up smurden, smurden. Hold up to it. you better look out here they come avery long now dives to the inside he's bringing along the 300 the youngster from the dog pound drew adams out by the road they go. You're watching on the SLR live drone. SLR leader, rifle leader. works. Too wide to go. You better look out. The pass is in May. Bada boom, bada bing. Now, Colop now moves up on point, but here comes Avery Long around Spearden. Nothing like a four way battle early in this one. Call up the man out front. They're not wasting no time, guys. A pure six brawl. Fisticuffs are erupting in the front four as they work their way down through the twisties. It's Honda, Kawa, Yamaha, KTM. The bike manufacturers battle it out right now. Trevor Kopp, the man on point. But Revan Gordon, he's the man under pressure. Avery Long looks like he's got a move right here uh, as he goes to the inside by the tower. Here we go, Avery Long now making quick work. You got to move fast here. You don't oh, want the Revan deficit. Gordon. Long, there he is. Pull up, dives into the defense. Oh, look out, Spearden. Spearden now goes around the 105. Wow, a battle royale. Here they go. Spearden. Who's going over the top rope first? Avery Long, you better look out. Here comes Noah Spearden. And Trevor Call is showing you right now. He's been putting in the work. He's got to open that gap up to about two and a half seconds now on lap oh! two. Avery Long almost tossed it away there. He's feeling the pressure now. Like a slippery eel. Here goes your leader. Pull up. Dives down to the gator back balls. And he's trying to get away from the carnage behind him. It's going to be long now. Here comes Spirited. Look out. The 300 of Drew Adams has got his team green machine. Let the good times roll as he moves up a position. Drew Adams with a sight set on Revan Gordon right now as Smurden tries to work with Avery Long. And if you're Trevor Kolop, run away and hide. Yeah, yes, exactly. a, quick game of hide, a quick game of hide and seek is being played now by the Honda Rider. Here they go. Watch him now as this one here starts to unfold. They are full. The, you can feel them now. The electricity out there in front is like sticking your finger in a light socket. Oh. There's so much going on here in these opening laps of our 250 Pro Sport extravaganza. Smurden trying to take different lines to stay on the rear wheel of Avery Long, but that is allowing that Kawasaki rider to get up behind him right there. Watch now as it goes all the way through the gator tail over the sand hill into that roller section. That roller section has been playing a huge factor out here today. As we take a look at our battle uh, unfolding out in front, Drew Adams with a 158, the man behind him, the 27, a Christian Yannick with a 156, second fastest lap time in lap two. Keep your eyes on the 27 machine if he can get up in this fight. Right now, three sheets in a win, and uh, here we go. It's Colop now. Colop now. You can watch him now. He's strong. Almost a big Whoa! get off. A big get off. Avery, Avery Long, Long could not save it. He dived down. The front end twisted on him, and now he is back there with Christian Yannick. Oh, we saw it. I thought he pulled it out. Yeah. I blinked, and he was on the ground. So there's your leader again. It's going to be Kolop. Long's going to shuffle. The deck, the cards are shuffling here already on. There's Yannick now paddling his way through that turn. He's got a breath of fresh air. As they, he's still up in the mix. It's Kolop. Smeared it. Gordon Adams. Long. There it is. Kolop now. No, Adams, Adams now. Adams, Adams goes yeah. from about a fifth place start. Yep. Jumps into second. Can the man from the dog pound. I know the Morris brothers, they're tuned in somewhere watching this now and listening as their guy, Little Debbie, now works his way from fifth all the way up to second. West Cannon looking at Christian Yannick right now. He's back in the four spot. Inching up toward Noah Smurden in that three position. He's still consistent. He's right there with Drew Adams in that 156-7 range with your leaders. So let's see if he can catch up, get in the fight. Trevor Kolop, man, still doing his thing out front. And all this chaos, look at that, four and a half second lead for Kolop out front. Yeah, but you better watch Drew Adams now. He's running, he's running a 1.56. It's almost the same lap time, but I'm telling you, one little slip up like long, and it's going to yeah. pay off in huge dividends. Yeah, and that heated battle there through the split line section, man, getting the best of Avery Long. You know he's going to regroup, though. 
looks good. Machine looks fine. He'll be back in it. Yeah, he's long right now. He's in it to win it right now. He's trying to make some positions up because he knows that what a big deal this is. Being that this is the first motor right here. He's got a pressure on Yannick. What's Yannick going to do to answer back? As we see Avery Long dive to the inside into those rollers. I was telling you guys, this roller's been playing big dividends for some riders. It's going to play big dividends for Avery Long now as he makes a move on Yannick. Knock, knock, knock on the door, Christian Yannick. It's Avery Long, and he fires through that door with vengeance as he knows that big mistake could be costly here at the end of the week. And Trevor Cullum now as he hand salutes the Gizmo Mods Tower, but he's bringing along Drew Adams, and I really think if you guys look, yeah, it looks like Adams is starting to close yeah. the gap. Definitely tune in the time of this morning right here to see what's going on and who's who and who's doing what right now because we're only checking in for the last number four here and what is a long motor in the Too Many Pro Sport class. Here they go to the bottom of Gatorback Falls. Cole fires the Honda out. David Eller's got to be happy there. Heath Harrison, the lone Honda rider out front. But here comes Drew Adam Smeared it, and Yannick. And what do you see? I see Adam it. drops it down two seconds. Yes, long 154. These guys are moving right now. Hey. It's shaped up to be a dandy here. Avery Long picking it back up. He had a 154.9 in that one as well. So him and Adams hustling. Uh, different situations. So you got Adams trying to track down Cullum. You got uh, Avery Long after the mistake trying to make up time and get back in the fight. But the man that has the lasso out, he's got the lasso out and he has attached it to the back of Avery Long's chest protector is Christian Yannick. Yeah, he's, he's not letting back. him he's off the hook. He's coming back. Hey, he fired back out there. Back on his feet was Avery Long, but here comes Christian Yannick, not letting him off the hook. And Yannick now, he probably got a breath of fresh air. Yannick's the push right now. Yannick is pushing on oh, Long. This line here. here we go. This one here is going to be hot. He can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen. Christian Yannick now looking for any way he can to revive himself from that yesterday over at Supercross. Here we go. Kid okay. riding hungry now as he is riding the rear wheel. Avery Long, like I said, we've seen Avery pass Christian, but Christian Yannick has definitely turned it up now. Even if he's got to ride up a little bit over his head, he's got to do so to stay with Avery Long and move forward. I watch Avery Long again just drop that yes. front end and kind of bury it down in there. He's a big guy, and he's up over those bars, and he's just diving that front end, and that's what's, that's what's kind of messing him up a little bit. He's got to get that rhythm, got to get his balance right. Get under, get those legs under him again, and get focused and get back in that fight. Yeah, nailed it, Wes. And Avery certainly pushing it right now. He had reason to with Yannick all over him. Now he gets a little bit of breathing room for a second. And he gets past the he tower. Gets breathing room. He started to put a little pressure on Smyrna right here. Well, do you think Yannick maybe just said, "Hey, you know what? I know I can roll up on him. I got time. Let me catch my breath." A lot of guys play that strategy now. But this one here. With, with the pace like this, Wes, I'm not sure. <laughs> While it's unfolding now, we redirect our attention to your leaders, oh, Cullum and Adams. Adams is right there. Does he have Cullum set up this lap? Well, if you don't get him this lap, he's got time. The white flag's not up yet. We just, he's just opening laps of this one here. It's Cullum riding out there. Is he whistling, Dixie? I don't know, but the board <laughs> says you better go because he's. Oh! Hard. Mike goes flying. He's okay. He's trying Avery to get back Long. up on his bike. Avery Long has been ejected off his trusty steed. He has been thrown to the ground, back to his feet. He's firing that bad boy up. Yeah. He's pushing it to the oh side. Boy. But that is that that could be a big factor right there toward the end of the week. Yeah, like you say, saying, maybe have a little bike issues okay. out there. That front end. Yes, drop a couple line. of positions. You know what they say, it's the dog days of summer. Well, it's not summer, it's winter here at the video. Avery Long finally able to get that machine fired back up and going and nursing it right now. Let's see if he gets back in the group and lost several got positions. He's got his hand up. He's like, hey, guys, I got to get my stuff together here. I'm on the side of the track. He's moving, but it was a pretty tough get Man. off there. They were at warp speed when he got ejected off of that one. Speaking of warp speed, look at 300 machine. Drew Adams pick him up now as they're on Racer TV alive, making the way through the race course. I believe they're going to make their way through the front right here. Up to that split lane and gizmo jump. Watching Ryan Holiday right now, wherever he is, he's got to be chewing those fingers down to the nub. It's a real nail biter out here. He's going to give Ryan Holiday an ulcer before this one's over. <laughs> I think he looks calmer than you. Calmer than you are, dude. Yeah, definitely, definitely calmer. <laughs> here we go. Watch him now. Adams now. The dog pound's got to be cheering for this guy. You got to feel the vibe down there. Here he is, call up. Ride the ride for dreams were made up, but Adam's ready to come in there and be the spoiler and make it a nightmare. We'll get to see what he does with the pressure right now as Drew Adams really starting to make a push here on this lap. Well, but there he is. It's call up Adam Smeardon. Long's going to shuffle back. Yannick, Gordon, Russell, 
Rimble Borges. We're going to see where A.B. Long finally ends up. There he is, limping his machine down. Yeah. That could be the heartbreaker for the end of the week. Oh. Of the lap. oh, no. Man, hate to see that for Avery Long. That gap between Adams and Cullip out front, second and a half when they checked in as Adams goes back to work now, tries to reel him in. Oh, what a line there. Good. We can't go into the rut. I'm just going to chop my turn, cross rut it, and go after him. Here they go, you're watching on the SLR Live Drone, SLR Rifle Works here at Dominio's in Newberry, Florida. It's a dog fight out there right now between Cullum and there's the hunted and then there's the hunter. Yeah, the hunter, he's a crafty hunter. I think he's sort of just settling right now, right behind him, you know, watching his line, seeing where he could possibly make a move because like we said, the white flag is still not flying yet. You need to get out there with everybody parking alongside the road and watching yeah, and check it out. put wristbands on them because there are <laughs> They're watching this show right here, and they need to pay for it. <laughs> here we go, guys. Call up. Drew Adams now. Oh, Red stands it up there. a little bit. But I think Adams has paced himself. Yeah, I agree. Adams He's is back using studying. the calm and collected move. I don't want to cha 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 and get it over with. You end up ejecting yourself on the ground. Slowly, meticulous, a Darcy Lange type attack. Making things happen where, hey, I'm going to be here. I'm going to whittle you down. He is and, and, and be there. You can hear him now. The board's got to be out. Drew Adams, he, you're going to hear him as he start barking. And Colop, we're going to see what he's made of. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Colop's done a fantastic job so far. I don't think I've seen him look over the shoulder once. Racing the track in front of him. We're going to get into a little bit of lap traffic, i got to think, on this lap. We've gotten around a few lappers now. See how that plays a factor. But, boy, Colop has been stellar. Adams, like you said, Wes, he's been patient. Does he have a spot picked out? We're getting down to the nitty-gritty in this one. Seven laps into it. Hey, here we go. You're watching now. Drop down Gator Mac Falls. It's going to be Cullum and Drew Adams. Yeah, I'm watching Trevor Cullum, like he said. He's starting to look ahead, watching that racetrack in front of him, watching everything unfold, and not paying attention to what's behind him. That's very important to do right now. Drew Adams right now trying to reel him in, pushing and shoving. I think he's starting to pick up the pace. This thing must be over halfway because he is definitely pushing the envelope a little bit. He's been riding the same lines as Colin, which has been very interesting to me. Mm -hmm. Not really changed up his line at all. He knows if he stays right there behind him and rides his line a little bit faster, he'll be able to inch up on him, maybe put a little pressure on him, and push him into a mistake. Drew's right there right now. He, you know that Colin is hearing Drew Adams at this point behind him. And the sense of urgency in Colin right there, trying to find a little speed. Here we go, into some lap traffic now. Drew Adams scooting. What do you got, Wes? I call outside. the landmines. You better watch it here. This is where you got to be meticulous. You got to. Oh, 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 that could. Right there. This is going to be bad for Cullum. There goes Drew Adams. If you got a camera, use it. Because in the same picture frame, you see the Honda and you see a little bit of that green fender start to come oh, into see, the shot. You're seeing a lot of it right now. He's photobombing side side. He's photobombing them all yeah, over the is. place. Here he goes. Drew Adams flirting with the lead right there, flirting with it. He's on the outside right got here. It. Got it. Does he have a good enough drive? Yes, he does. Shuts the door on him. Oh, wait Spin a minute. Section. Wait a minute. Oh, here man. we go. Could call him fire back. Oh, he sees Drew Adams, and he's like, oh, I heard him barking back there. But, hey, Colop's still in a good shot. Yeah. There they are. They're going to fire. They're, gonna, they're buzzing the tower right now. They're dropping in the pit. Katie hasn't marked the doors down yet. It's not over with till somebody sings. And, and like you said, Wes, he trains in the dog pound. So watch this. I guarantee you, Drew Adams, now he's in the lead. He's going to put a couple sprint laps together now and pull away from Colin. That is his goal right now. Those guys back at the dog pound already take the TV. They've already thrown something at it, <laughs> jumping up and down. No problem. If you can go buy that new Rolls, you just get another TV delivered for the next moto. That's right. The Lord's <laughs> brothers ain't playing. Hey, Flex, big guy. I love it. Hey, here we go. Flex those guns. Shoot them out of our apartment building, but you bought the roller. <laughs> All right, here we go. It's going to be Drew Adams now leads the way. A changing of the guard has happened here in a 250 Pro Sport. White flag will be coming out the next time they come through, so we're down to the nitty-gritty. Drew Adams certainly waiting for the right time to strike. <laughs> And that he did. I mean, he went down to 155 that time. Obviously, as fast as 154, but I guarantee you now he's got a, well, not a clear racetrack, he's a lap riders, but he doesn't have anybody to battle with. I expect those lap times to go down here. Top 10 look like this. It's going to be Adams, Tullip, Smeared, and Yannick, Gordon, Wessel, Rimko, Pascal, Enrigo, and Colin Allen doing a great job on that EBR team. There's Jones, Creighton, Borge, Henry, Massangelo. Massangelo's no slouch. You see that guy in the Canadian Nationals, top three, top five, any day of the week, down here now, testing his skill. Love it. 
We're here for it. Drew Adams working his way around the lap. Traffic now looking good. Just tiptoeing around it, now. Hey. Don't throw it away. Precise. You did the work. Big Ronnie, wherever you are, you're going to be happy with this one. No stammering off the side of the track. Give your boy a hug. He did his job very well, but it's not over yet. White flag's going to come out, but believe me, Drew Adams is has got the intensity just he does to, he does you know you got to have all disciplines it's, of it and i and you know drew after the supercross side you know he's coming out here on the outdoor side and saying okay i got to keep this up the rest there of was the mistakes now. made there over there he couldn't over help there. it that's right he couldn't help it he said a couple landmines were out there got somebody over there we're checking out white flag out now drew adams does he get the board let's call it i think everybody's pretty much well settled in their pace out there right now yeah you know uh, maybe a couple of people still jockeying around by there if you're adams call up smeared in yannick you kind of gapped out a little bit where you're saying okay i'm gonna cruise holiday looking good he's pretty happy with his soldiers on this one they worked hard last night i think they were the last last camp in the pits to shut the light off they're going through Drew Adams' bike. They're going through Christian, uh, Christian Yannick's bike. They wanted to make sure everything was good. They had everything. All the bugs worked out, all the kinks, and they're back out there, and it paid off. A little late homework sure. paid off in the end. A-plus for those guys. A-plus, A-plus, plus. Hey, you get an A-plus on your side of the protector. We don't grade on the bell curve either, baby. Nah. Straight up. Drew there Adams doing his thing. He's doing it. ching a ling ching -a ling it's going to be Adams, Cullen, smeared it. Get it done. Adams, true form there. He's out by the road. He hand salutes the guy in the minivan. Hey. <laughs> hey. Enjoying the show, bud? I got this thing. Nice to meet you. I'm Drew Adams. Wow. Getting the job done out wow. there. Wow, some hey, healthy Drew food Adams. coming up I'm here. I'm into it. Pistachios. <laughs> I love oh. the cheese. There's Georgie down there looking around. How you doing, Georgie? The snack pack. That pat baby, looking good. Top ten again as they came through with the white flag. Drew Adams in the lead. Trevor Call up in second. Noah Smirton in the third spot. Not too far behind him is Christian Yannick. But Yannick making a mistake on that last lap and probably going down there. a bit. A little tip over, but he's still in that fourth spot. Revan Gordon in the fifth spot on the 105 machine. The 108 Jesse Wessel in sixth. Seventh spot Dylan Ripple. Eighth spot Jackson Pascal. Ninth spot Colin Allen and tenth spot running in top ten of Gabriel Andrigo. And that's the way they went on the white flag lap. There he is, Drew Adams coming up the face of that finish line. Jump, bang! Checkered flag flies, and Drew Adams will hang, hang on to first place. He was patient. He was methodical, and it all paid off for him, grabbing a first place finish. Call up will finish in the two spot. Five seconds behind Drew Adams. Noah Smurden expect to check in in the three spot, and he does. Yeah, man, Dean, that, that was fun, that dude. That was a great race. That was good fun. I love calling it with you. A good ride there by Trevor Call. You know, he was in the lead there for a long time. Going to finish up in the second spot. Noah Smurdick going to come through, and he will check into that third place position. Fourth place position going to Christian Yannick. So Yannick with a good ride there. Keep him inside the top five. Speaking of the top five in your fifth place position, we're going to look for the number 105 of Revan Gordon. He's out of Marietta, California. Good ride for him. Man, I do got to say, though, what a tough break for Avery Long. The man was yeah, that, yeah and, and you hope he's all right. Obviously, the machine got a little mangled up there. Hopefully, he's okay. Uh, they'll get that sorted out. But, yeah, uh, you know what? At that point, it's kind of like, hey, go play spoiler now. Go out there, do it to it. Well, after the barn burner that was the 250 Pro Sport, we reset the deck, and here we go. 250P Limited Division 1. Welcome back, Rodney Thomas. Who we got out there? Well, we got uh, 37 of some of the fastest 250B limited riders on the planet, and they include riders like uh, Bentley Good, Kale Thorpe, Dawson Cobb, Juan Ignacio Salgado, Logan Lasser, Octavia Paz, Jacob Lasco, Kate Dudney, Justin Parrish, Jonathan George, Gabe Schmidt, Will Campbell, Deacon Bloomfield, Tristan Dalton, Kyler Rome, Gavin Templ Templin, uh, Kai Gentry, Brody Bowmeister. Also, Logan Hale, Grayson Fair, Gavin Thurgood, Felipe Quirno Costa, Logan Mortberg, Kai Burge, Bradley Bullis, Lucas Seelman, Grayson Watkins, Diesel Thomas, Carson Cahill, Brent Unzer, Ryan Hadley, Alan Atkins, Reese Wheaton, Tyler Watson, Christopher Schroeder, Victor uh, Quinu, and also Braden Carpenter. That's 37 riders, division number one. Again, a couple division. Uh, of these riders uh, coming at us, and that means that the top 18 will be transferring. Again, we uh, 
have 42, I believe, gay positions on the uh, starting line available. 40. I know we had some a class earlier with 42, so there is at least uh, 42 gates on there. Is what I'm saying. Looks like uh, we're taking a moment to get this gate loaded up. I don't know uh, what the uh, hold up on this one is. Probably a little maintenance down there. You know, with that rain earlier, I'm sure that there's been uh, some uh, uh, less than favorable. Uh, conditions developing behind the starting line as much as anything. Definitely a lead now. Oh, there they are. I'm sorry. I'm just <laughs> I'm like, gate drop. No, I had to call the names. I understand. I'm doing Yeah, I was looking at the wrong way. Thank you. Thank you, Griff. <laughs> Griff's like, what an idiot. I'm like, well, I don't see anybody. I didn't hear anybody. And yep, okay, that's why. The Duke -der. Looking at K. Dudney Dawson Cobb in that second place position. <laughs> Checking into that third slot. Looking good out there as Logan Mournberg. Grayson Fair in the fourth spot on the 186 machine. The 734 Reese Wheaton. He's your fifth place rider of the 524. Diesel Thomas. He is in sixth. Seventh spot, Juan Ignacio Salgado. Eighth place position, uh, number 96 at Tristan Dalton. The 519 at Grayson Watkins. And the 809 at Christopher Schroeder. He's in that tenth place position. Of course, we're going to take top 18, so I'll give you an update who top 18 is right now. Kai Burge in the 11th spot, John the George in 12th, Justin Parrish in 13th, 14th is Gavin Templeton. And 15th, Alan Ankin, 16th, Braden Carpenter, 17th, Deegan Bloomfield, and Logan Lester takes that final transfer position as they run right now. Hey, uh, I'm just going to uh, classify this as food coma. I'm coming out of my food coma. We just had a great smorgasbord from our friends at Hooked on Q down here. If you haven't tried it, I've had the brisket, I've had the ribs, I've had the pulled pork. They've got amazing pulled chicken as well. They got a barbecue pasta salad. They got uh, macaroni and cheese, baked beans, uh, coleslaw. My gosh, it's so good. Uh, Hooked on uh, Q is right here next to uh, the Gizmo Todd. Uh, that's Gizmo Mods Tower, and between that and the uh, uh, announcer's tower, actually right down there, uh, not far from. Uh, the Nathan Hall Memorial booth as well. So stop down there, check them out. Good food. Thank them uh, very much for uh, uh, providing lunch up here in the tower today. And out on the racetrack, we've got uh, Dudney, Cobb, Morgan, Mortberg, I should say, Fair and Wheaton up front. Still looks like the 40 of Kate Dudney. Yeah, definitely hooked on cue, hooking up with an entree sampler. There we got a little mm. bit of everything. The best in the business. Best in the business right now is the Monster Energy College Saki rider, Kate Dunny, doing a great job leading out this 2 b limited class. Absolutely. Cobb still back in the number two spot aboard the 15. By the way, they're out of Tampa. The uh, hooked on cue, they do catering as well. Uh, get for your next event. Uh, Dudney, Cobb, Mortberg still one, two, and three as they crawl their way out of the Gator Pit tier. There is Cobb, the gap now, 2.7 seconds. 159s, both in the 159, sub two oh, minutes. yellow flag, I'm not sure who that was. That might be your leader, let's see. It was Cobb, I believe, in the number two position. All right. Comes with a bigger lead this time around. Yeah, so .723 was about the difference between those two in their lap times. We're watching this battle for Logan Morberg in second. He's starting to feel the pressure by a few of our riders just behind him. That Kawasaki rider, Reese Wheaton and Grayson Bear on that KTM. Looks like Bear's gonna move into that third spot, but Wheaton back at the fourth spot. Riders top of the Gators back now, making their way down. So Cobb, once again, your second place rider is the one that went down. I think uh, Dino caught that. And uh, so we've got uh, all riders moving up. So uh, this battle uh, likely for the number two spot now between Mortberg, Wheaton, and uh, Fair and those guys as they get it all sorted out heading out back now, Dean. Yeah, looking out back right now. We're watching the battle start to unfold here. That's the 186 of Grayson Fair, who's actually made a move on Logan Mortberg. So Mortberg going to fall back to the third spot. And Fair, I believe, is our rider going to move into second. I know you look on over the time and scoring and stuff and where everybody is right now, it looks like that, but that is not the case right now as we did see Dawson Cobb go down at the end of that last lap. Or the start of the new lap, should I say. As we watch Grayson Fair, Logan Morberg battling it out right now. Morberg is not done with Fair. He's trying to make a push back. Let's see what happens. They make their way to the split lane. That split lane, you know, it's always a fun section to watch because everybody can say passing isn't good, but split lane changes things. Oh, I tell you, the, the, the passing opportunities, I don't want to say endless, but are multiple definitely out here. And, uh, yeah, some lines are better than others, but there's opportunities out there if you're willing to hang it out there and push the envelope just a little bit. It doesn't even have to be too much of a push. we got some pushing going on right now, though, as these riders are nearing the completion of uh, lap number three now. Dudney has uh, opened up uh, a rather 
large lead after the misfortunes of Dawson Cobb just one lap ago, and that has brought Gate Grayson Fair up. Logan Mortberg has, uh, well, he was up to second, now dropped back to third, but uh, Diesel Thomas in the number four spot. Reese Wheaton drops to the number five position. Dawson Cobb now in the number six position, so he's back up and rolling. Tristan Dalton, Juan Ignacio uh, Sal. Gatto has dropped off a few positions. So Dawson Cobb in sixth and is Kai Berg, uh, Tristan Dalton, and there is Salgado and Logan Lesser now moving into the top 10. But again, it is the top 18 that we're going to be watching out for and watching out for this up on the screen right now. As you see, once again, the battle is waging on here. Yeah, it's been a good one this whole moto. Like Caden Dudney, he knew what he had to do, get out front and set sail, and he has done just that. The last time through, he was 12 and a half seconds ahead of our second place rider, Grayson Fair. Mm. Oh, that's Diesel Thomas there, <laughs> making a crafty maneuver on Logan Morberg. Yeah. Morberg trying to make a move back on him. He's got the inside set up on the sweeper. What's going to happen as they make their way through the gator tail? It looks like Thomas now going to maintain that position, and then Morberg's going to fall. Oh, oh Thomas making a big mistake right there. Morberg getting back by. Reeton caught up with him as well. So we and he's going to get caught up and lose at least oh, one or two man. positions. But that's good news for Logan Morberg. Morberg, Morberg has a lot of breathing room. Yeah, good news for uh, Cobb as well. Dawson Cobb might have got by there, depending on how far back he was. So we'll reassess it when uh, we get a, uh, a better look at that. But wow, what a big change of events here. Uh, Dudney again, still out front fair. Mortberg and Thomas, as we said. I mean, all this uh, Wheaton, I should say, uh, a lot of changes we're going to see the gaps and see exactly where they do fall how many riders that got by them were they lap riders or were they riders on the same lap yeah exactly Burge, right. I Burge, think Burge, Dalton. yeah he's gonna move out of that fourth place position after that mistake by thomas and we can get him to the back of him it, was, it wasn't even Wheaton's mistake it was thomas mistake right he's got involved in it well i'm gonna say at least Cobb has gotten by because he was only about four seconds behind that battle so i would almost have to imagine he's gotten Jason by right thomas, sorry Jason thomas down again right there so he's gonna lose a couple more positions before the end of this lap Maybe I'm wrong there. Yeah, there's Cobb. Cobb is in fourth place, so uh, he did get the uh, gimme kind of on that. And then Reese Wheaton, and uh, he said Diesel Thomas down, going to lose a little more turn uh, time there. Kai Burge moves up. Tristan Dalton now into the number seven spot. Diesel Thomas drops to eight. Logan Lesser, another spot up in the ninth place position, so he's trying to better his gate picks. And not only the gate picks, but overall, again, remember, every time you're on the track this time around, every position, uh, every every time you're out there, it counts towards your overall score, I guess, is probably the best way to put that. Tough break for Christopher Schroeder. We've seen him up in a, a really good qualifying position, almost up in the top 10. He's going to find himself back there behind the qualifying spot. Now he drops yeah. outside the top 20. Yeah, I was going to say even further than that. Uh, Victor Quinneau is 14th. Braden Carpenter in 15th. Deegan Bloomfield 16th. Tyler Watson 17th. Gabe Schmidt now rounds out the 18th place position as they all uh, moved up one position on that last lap around. Four laps down, working on lap number five. You know, I can't wait to see what division number two has because division one, man, it's been a Dudney show for sure as he has a 14 and a half second lead now over Grayson Fair on the 186 machine. The 186 Grayson Fair in second, Logan Mortberg, he's a third place rider. He rounds out your top three. As we're watching Dawson Cobb on screen right now as he tries to reel in the number 317 of Logan Mortberg. Mortberg now getting up over the gizmo jump, going to make his way through here by the tower. Mm. And then we see Cobb there not able to hit that jump due to some lap traffic. So lap traffic definitely been playing some factors. Obviously, Supercross track lap traffic is a little bit uh, more common, but still seeing here in the motocross track. Absolutely. So Dudney, Fair, Mortberg now all through with three. Dawson Cobb through with fourth. And little lap times there, Cobb is two seconds faster than Morberg, so he might have just enough time to make something happen here. Speaking of lap times, look at Dudney's lap time. Yeah. 157.8. He's showing you guys he can compete with the A-class out there on his TBDB stock bike, that Kawasaki running good out there, that Monster Energy Kawasaki. He found some speed, no doubt. No? What's, what's your name, man? Eli? Eli what? Herrick. Eli Herrick. What you doing, buddy? How's your day going? Good. Good. So did you race already? 
Yeah, I race I race the eighty five nine to eleven limited, right division three, right when I was touring. <laughs> so you got you got to, to to experience the the kind of the worst of it. So what was your your race like, your moto like? I mean, honestly, it was my first mud mud on the eighty five ever. And how did you like it? All right, did you have any problems? Yeah, I mean, I was doing good. Awesome, man. That's great. I, I had like a fourth place start, and then uh, I got hit, and the bike and slid out because it was very slick. Mhm. Mm yeah. So did did you get did you get qualified then? Ugh. I don't know. I was only one spot out. Oh, so we'll be looking for you in the LCQs coming up, but uh, sadly, uh, sadly. So uh, obviously, this is probably not your first trip here to uh, the Mini O's, is it? It's uh, I think my third, second. Awesome, man. So what are you thinking about this year so far? Good. Weather could be a little better today anyway, couldn't it? It wasn't that bad. <laughs> Practice was like the same deepness and stuff. Nice. Practice wasn't even that bad. I'm, I'm joking. It was. <laughs> so uh, where are you from, Eli? I'm from Thornton, Colorado. Wow. So uh, is the track different here in Florida than what they are in uh, Colorado? I'm sure a lot of differences. But you yeah, do a lot of traveling, lot. though, so you probably get to see a lot of different tracks altogether, though, don't you? Yeah. I train in Oklahoma most of the time, so I'm not really with those Colorado tracks that much. Well, that's cool, man. So you got any big sponsors or anything like that? Fox and Dunlop. Cause I don't know. I can't quite remember. <laughs> every time I'm on the podium, my mom has a whiteboard with all my sponsors because I can't remember that well. <laughs> Well, at least you're honest, but I tell you, that's one thing you're going to try to remember who those people are that are behind you, man, because without them, you wouldn't be achieving the, the great goals and the great things that you are. Yeah. Eli, really nice to make your acquaintance. Uh, what we got happening here, I know checkers should be flying here pretty soon, or we no, we still next, got... Yeah, we got the white flag coming on next lap, and this lap through has been Kate Dudney, Grayson Fair, Logan Morper, Dawson Cobb, Reese Wheaton, Tristan Dalton, Diesel Thomas, Kai Burge, Logan Lesser, Juan Ignacio Salgado, Gavin Templeton. Templin, sorry, Grayson Watkins on the number 519. Victor Quinio, he's in 13th, 14th is Braden Carpenter. Gabe Schmidt, Tyler Watson, Felipe Cuerno Costa, and it looks like coming through is Deegan Bloomfield as Jonathan George is dropping off the map. There you go. So uh, tell me, Eli, you got any words of wisdom or advice to anybody out here as they hit the track today? Oof. I don't quite know. You don't quite know. Just dig in deep and ride with your heart, right? Mm -hmm. All right, buddy. Give well, it sit, your all. There you go. Give it your all. Uh, and, of course, uh, Eli, uh, 85. What are the classes you ride besides the 85cc uh, class? I'm riding 65.79. It's my last 79 race before I move up 10 to 11. But I'm doing 79 limited. It's my next race. 7 to 11 and then 79 mod. Well, er Eli, we will be watching out for you, Eli Herrick. And uh, sit right here and, and keep an eye on these races. Maybe keep us in line because I don't have the best of eyes out there. <laughs> <laughs> right now on screen, we're watching the number 40 machine, Caden Dudley. Sort of put on a show out here, I believe. He has about a 28-second lead over Grace and Fair. That's pretty impressive. He's been keeping it in the 50s this whole moto. Grace and Fair is your second place rider, Logan Morberg, in third. That's the one we're going to watch right now as Dawson Cobb has caught the rear wheel of Logan Morberg. Reese Wheaton, he's in the fifth spot and rounds out your top five. Sixth place position is going to be Tristan Dalton. He's on the number 96 machine. Then we'll see Diesel Thomas. He's right ahead. Some mistakes out there. He's in the seventh place position, so doing a good job out there in front of Kai Burge. Kai Burge in the 381. He is your eighth place rider. Ninth place rider. We're looking for the number 21 of Logan Lesser. As we see Lesser make his way through, he is your ninth place rider. The number 19 machine, Juan Ignacio Salgado. He is your 10th place, and that's your top 10 rundown, courtesy of Thor. Parts Unlimited. Man, speaking of which, can't wait for Thanksgiving. Well, I can wait because I hate to wish my life away, but uh, I'm excited about uh, Thursday night's Thanksgiving feast, courtesy of our friends there at uh, Thor and Parts Unlimited. And, uh, hey, speaking of nighttime, don't forget coming up tonight, it's Disco in the Dirt. It's uh, the uh, dance for our kids from uh, uh, on-track schools. And then uh, not only that, it's brought to you by our good friends at Moto Tees, which I was down there. I hate to say it, they're already running out of certain sizes, colors, and styles and stuff. So uh, hats are getting thin, kid sizes are getting thinned out there. So if you're if you're hoping to get something, you need to get down there ASAP, my friends. Caden Dudney taking the checkers here and the win. He had opened up an eight and a half plus second lead over the second place ride of Grayson Fair.
Actually, he had a 28-second yeah. lead. Who it's had gonna, an eight-second lead? At the end of this yeah, week. and then he had an eight-second lead back over uh, Logan Mortberg. So as tight as things were, Dean, in the opening laps of this, uh, those little miscues and those issues really opened things wide up. Yeah, it did. And, and I'm watching this battle like you're talking about Logan Moorberg and Dawson Cobb. Cobb is right on the rear wheel of Moorberg watching as they come to the finish line. Second spot going to Grayson Fair. Holding on the third will be Logan Moorberg just behind him in the fourth place position. Dawson Cobb. So great round with Dawson Cobb as we wait for the 734. Reese Wheaton to make his way through the number 734. will take that fifth spot right on the top five. And who do we got going out on the track now, Rodney? It's the 250B Limited Division number two. Absolutely. And uh, here we go. And uh, another thing, you know, you have to wonder, had Cobb not had that issue there in the uh, second lap, uh, what the, that one could have bared. Anyway, here we go. Division two. Well, the Kawasaki right with the whole shot of some 18. Uh, Landon Gordon out there. Max Shane in second. Landon Gibson in third. So, man, this one's going to shape up to be a good one here quickly. Out of the track, though, right now is the number five, Liam Bennett. Michael Nussbaum in the number 06 machine. The Bobby Gravel on the number 7. Lance Geis on the 14. The 17 is Seth Eubanks. 18, Lana Gordon. The 26 of Harrison Bates. The 49, Alicia Goggle. The 51 of Jaden Searles. The 54 of Talon Stanley. The 62 of Clark Robbins. The 65 machine of Christian McCauley. The 72 of Gavin Betts. The 77 of Jaden Wolf. The 91 of Mason Call. The 95 of Adler Cottle. The 97 of Noah Stevens. Jose Miguel of Nevada. 108 machine is Dylan Sullivan. The 111 of Connor Rosiak. The 127 of Seth Creedy. The 141 of Brandon Mead. The 150 of Chase Lawton. The 154 of Kate Ferry. The 179 of Max Shane. The 182 of Clayton Stockstill. The 211 of Wyatt Bass. The 259 of Jacob Solomon. The 404 of Riley Bussey. The 411 machine, that's William McCure. The 523 of Nolan Riley. The 621 of Braden Sampy. Jai Cornwell on the 682. Landon Gibson on the 723. And Jaden Palmer on the 804. And last but not least, don't forget about the number 928 machine, Mason Middleton. Well, I'll tell you, Gordon has certainly had his share of uh, challenges on this first lap and opening lap of racing here in 250B Division II, the limited uh, class uh, 250B riders. And as we wrap up this first lap of racing, as he drops into the gator pit, you wouldn't recognize the... Uh, amount of pressure that was being applied to him by that uh, second place rider 723 of Landon Gibson. Uh, both are Landons again uh, rising basically to the top of the, the pack in the Supercross portion and here they are once again basically running one and two once more and uh, we'll see what happens here on lap two. Gordon and Gibson now the separation about two seconds but uh, they were, they were really pushing each other there on that first lap. Lap two, getting ready to get underway. This could get interesting. Noah Stevens back in the number three spot. Shane and Stevens battling on that first lap. They had an exchange out on the Scott Highway, the Gators' tail. Uh, Bobby Gravel in fifth. Oh, we got carnage down in the Gator pit. Yeah, trying to get eyes on that number, Rodney. He was definitely one of those riders towards that top five position. And he was a Yamaha rider, so that might have been Gravel there, finding himself on the ground. Well, we'll uh, make it unofficial, but uh, Gravel would have been in fifth, and it would have been Chase Lawton in sixth, Lance Geis in number seven spot. Then it's Jaden Searles, Riley Bussey, Nolan Riley in tenth, Wyatt Bass in eleventh, Clark Robbins in twelfth, Liam Bennett in thirteenth, Dylan Sullivan in fourteenth, Adler Cottle in fifteenth, Jaden Wolf in sixteenth, Braden Sampy in seventeenth, and Harrison Bates in eighteenth, your final position. Attention, number 16, Lorenzo, you need to get off the fence. Nobody is allowed to sit on the fence. If anybody can hear me, please get those kids off the fence immediately. Thank you. Once again, would someone tell the kids sitting on the fence to please get off the fence? Thank you. Lorenzo. Thank you. <laughs> All righty, so working on lap number two now, Gibson and uh, our Gordon and Gibson, they're uh, dropping down into the gator pit now. Uh, uh, 2.071 seconds was the gap whenever they came through. Are there microseconds that Gibson might be making up out there, and will it add up over time? And what will we see at the end of the second lap now as Gordon checks in a 159.445 and a 159.034 for Landon Gibson. So Gordon, uh, 159.444 Gibson. 
the 159034. So 1.5 seconds now separating them. It's uh, uh, only four tenths of a second that was made up, but that's nearly a half a second. And uh, after a few laps, that uh, three laps actually would put them wheel to wheel. So uh, we might see this battle shape up quicker than expected. Stephen Shane uh, is uh, third and fourth. The Chase Lawton now in fifth. Lance Geist, Wyatt Bass, Jaden Searles, Clark Robinson, William McClure. Round out your top ten as we watch our racer TV coverage right now. See how things are shaping up there. Yeah, it is the little number 18 machine to land and Gordon lead out, but I'm telling you, you've seen it. Gibson, oh there, big mistake by yep. Gordon, dabs his foot. That's gonna allow Gibson to get right up on the rear wheel of Gordon. I'm not even gonna say these guys' first names. I mean they both landed. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> Well, you can say land and, and you're going to get it right regardless. That's the one beauty, uh, beautiful thing about it. Yep. Gordon Gibson. Lynn, what, These guys even share initials. Yeah. Like LG. But go life, ahead. Life's good. What was you saying? It's funny. Uh, it's Landon and Land and Landon. Landon. Yes, exactly. I, I noticed. Both, that, yeah, one of them's Landon and one's Landon. So Den and Don is what we're doing. Good, good eye there, Eli. <laughs> hey, uh, I, I, I caught that too the other day. He's yeah. not the only one with a good eye. <laughs> and you know, after Gordon made that mistake. He has definitely turned it up a little bit because Gibson is right there in the rear wheel. But look now, you can see that Gordon is starting to inch it back out on Gibson now as they make their way through to complete lap number three. Absolutely. Down into the Gator uh, pit once again. 1.5 seconds separated them a lap ago. It was just over two seconds the lap before. So as we wrap up this third lap, what's the deficit? As we said, small increments are going to pay and we're now under a second one wow. five nine eight two one five nine three another half second point nine six one so in this theory uh we should be about a half second less than a half second but uh, <laughs> i think uh, there's blood in the water at this point and the sar uh, the sharks are circling is the way it's starting to look here in that battle for first you know, Rod, if you really watch these two riders both riding really well gordon is riding solid but gibson man He's riding some smooth lines. He, he does a little too much, I think, scrubbing here and there, throwing his whole body into it, wasting energy. But he has some good lines out there. So next lap, we'll be at the halfway point of this battle when we reach the next time around. So there's still plenty of uh, time to go for Don Gibson. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, that'd be Landon Gibson, obviously. But uh, uh, I, I tell you, he looks like he's a, he's trying to strike while the iron is hot. He's trying to heat that iron, if nothing else, so he can get get that strike in. And here we go off the Gators' tail, the Scott Highway, as we say, over the big jump and back down uh, 20 miles of bad highway. And if you guys aren't tuning into, the, into this thing live, you need to tune into our Racer TV right now in your pit area because I'm telling you, Gibson has some really good lines out there, and that's some of these riders need to pick up on. And that's the beauty of the SLR Rifle Works drone. That gives you an opportunity to look from high above as well to see what some of these lines are. So that, that's the beauty of this these kind of events. And here at uh, Gatorback Cycle Park, you can watch those and maybe have yourself kind of prepared when you head out there. Here come our leaders. Not well, yeah, a little bit closer this time around. It, I, wow. Yeah, definitely closer. I say we're right <laughs> at half second. Let's see what the. Oh, oh no. no. I've seen a mistake by Gordon, and Gibson just washes the front end out right there. Man, tough break for him. He's going to oh. lose his spot. There goes Steven. Ends up the number two position, so Gibson able to get back up into that third spot and try to catch back up to Noah Steven. What a heartbreaker there for Landon Gibson. Yes. Uh, Peachtree City just. We just heard a big just like, oh, Man. just like what we made right there. But he's back up. He's in the number three spot. He is now 1.37. They call it nearly eight seconds behind. And it just became the halfway mark. Yep, so the halfway mark. Now the question is, will Landon Gordon relax any up front and allow Gibson to make up that uh, basically eight seconds of time there? That's that's going to be tough. So three, four laps still to go with this one. So maybe. I'll tell you what's going to be tough. It's going to be tough for Stevens to keep Gibson behind you because Gibson's oh. fired up right now. He almost made a pass in the lead but found himself hitting the deck and into the number three position. He's going to make a hard push here into the second yeah. spot to set himself up better for an overall. Absolutely. So here they head back into the back stretch once again. And if you're here on the hill watching, it's going to disappear out of sight for just a moment. And 
if you're missing it, it looks like he's going up on the inside as we drop back down on the tail. And it looks like Gibson has, ooh, he, he almost looks like he, he's got caught in a deep rut out there and can't get the drive, but at the same time is still able to maintain just about a bike length uh, distance ahead of Stevens as they headed in that next turn and up 20 miles of bad road and now back into second is Landon Gibson. And I agree, Rodney, as you've seen in those inside ruts to that gator tail over there getting pretty deep, so they're hard to navigate through. And this is a big bike out there, so it'll be interesting to see what happens as our other motos are coming out there. We're gonna get back to the smaller bikes after a few motos. Stevens made a little mistake back up there before that little table table. Did he? Gibson to pull away a little bit. Oh, wow. Thank you for that update, Eli. The real heavy hitters I see hitters in this class I see is definitely like on Super Minis, Gordon, Dudney, Gibson, and Max Shane. They are all just pretty fast in Super Minis, and out now I see they've carried those speed from yeah, Super Minis that, up to 250. Making that transition. Absolutely, they have. You know, you see that a lot. You know, these kids, uh, the super mini, some of them may even been outgrowing them. You know, they get to, a, they, they, they get big enough, they get strong enough, they get fast enough. They need that little, and, you know, the graduation to the 250 like this is uh, the perfect fit for a lot of them. And then, you know, it, 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 you even see it a lot of times in the 250 class. Once those guys get so big, uh, they, they really mature into, uh, and I think Jet Lawrence might have been one of those uh, prime examples when they put him on the 450. I mean, he really shown, uh, I mean, we knew he was fast but who would have known that fast you know yeah. and that consistent yeah a little more power i think actually helped him out so that's what's helping out landon gordon right now as he leads this thing out on the 18 kawasaki of course gibson able to move back in the number two spot noah stevens he's in third max shane in fourth fifth spot moving on up through the ranks is clark robbins sixth place chase lawton seventh spot wyatt pass eighth spot Jaden Searle. adler Cottle. he is in the ninth spot tenth spot lance geist 11th william mcclure oh What'd you see? Adler has caught up a lot, the 95, Badly Cottle. Yeah, last, time, last time we checked, he was in 16th. Oh, so making some big moves now. Wow, he's up to nice ninth spot. now. Yeah, he's he is making some big moves there. 201 in amongst the traffic. Good eye, Eli. Then Lance Guy's behind him in 10th. Like I said, William McCurr, he's in the 11th spot. 12th spot, Bobby Gravel. Riley Bussey in the 13th. 14th is Gavin Betts. 15th, Brandon Need. Mason Nettleton in the 16th. 17th is Dylan Sullivan. And that final transfer spot right now belongs to Nolan Riley. But he better get going because point six behind him is Jake Wolf. Wolf's making some moves. He wants to get a transfer stop before this is over. All right. Well, after lap five, we saw Gordon. Uh, I, I wondered if he would relax any, and he did relax a little down to a two-minute, basically two-minute point three. He's picked it back up to a 159.8, back up another half second. Uh, Gibson, on the other hand, was uh, at eight seconds behind, 6.1 seconds last time. He was only able to make up about four-tenths of a second that time, maybe five-tenths of a second. So the gap now, 5.6 seconds between first and second and time running out you know i'm still not going to say that there's might be an opportunity for a battle still to develop for the checker flag landon gibson i know if he has anything to say about it we'll make that happen but i'm sure that gordon is getting the pit board to let it roll well we will be getting a white flag next lap so that will be at the end of lap seven an eight lap race is what we're going to turn into. So, so basically two laps and 5.6 seconds is what Gordon ha Gibson has to, to work with there. And Gordon has that cushion. Speaking of cushion, the rider was not cushion right now. Number 150 of Chase Law. I'm not sure what happened to him, but you see him now on screen starting to drop off outside, maybe even possibly outside the top 18. He is outside the top 18 now. So yeah. big trouble there for the number 150 machine. So, uh -oh. uh oh, yeah, he fell. He's moving down a lot. Adler Coddle, uh, Coddle, by the way, up to eighth, so he gains a position at the uh, misfortunes there. Oh, yeah. Number 150 of Chase Lawton did fall because he's been falling a lot. <laughs> Where would he fall? Then? Thank you. For there's that. a lot of there's a lot of real estate out there yeah, Eli, for sure. for him to to, to find to, to fall in. That's for sure. Super Mini One, by the way, coming up next. It's race 18. We've got the first of two divisions in that one. Uh, after that, it'll be 51, seven to eight, limited to Division One. Race number 20, and we'll have a second division of that in race number 22. So. 
Uh, loads of little guys coming up over the course of the next uh, few races there, Dino. And uh, we are white flag out right oh, now. Checker flag. Oh, checker flag coming out next time. No, white flag, white flag. Right next time around, checker flag. Yes. Got ahead of myself. Look at these lap times as I'm watching now. Two minute flat, but a second faster, almost a second faster than Lana Gibson. So Gibson, he's on the prowl right now. Yeah. Uh, yes, he is. Uh, still right at five seconds. Five seconds going to be tough to make up, but last lap. Uh, you, I, you just never count it out, you ne you, and you know that's why you never give up. You never know what's going to happen from the, from trying to claw your way from behind, and you definitely don't want to let your guard down if you're racing up front. So, a lot of variables going on out here on this final lap, as Gordon trying to take that Team Green Kawasaki and to you know the uh, first win of hopefully he's thinking two and a championship here at Gatorback Cycle Park. And you know how it goes towards the end of these motos too. You're still passing lappers, but as you're passing lappers, the lappers are getting faster. Yes. So it's a little more difficult to navigate through. That is true too. We'll go ahead and give him a shout out too. All righty, Dino. All right, making the way around. Like I said, the white flag, Lance Geis. He had some issues out there. He's going to fall back to the 18th place position and find himself on the bubble. And like we were talking about up here, anything can happen. But looking to make it happen is the number 18 machine. That is the number 18 of Landon Ford doing a great job this whole moto getting out front, just like his teammate Kate Dudney. So Monster Energy Kawasaki got their hands full here in the 2DB limited class. Also, after this moto, they're going to be a little bit of track prep. Nice to hear. I love that. Who doesn't like a little bit of track prep out there? Oh, yeah, especially right now. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that the rain, yeah, that the rain made it really rough. It did. And plus, we've got uh, Super Manis coming up. We've got 51s coming up. So, yep, uh, track uh, uh, maintenance and... Uh, Work will certainly uh, be a, a good move here. Well, checkers are out. Yes, they are. Landon Gordon does take the win. I tell you, we've got some really good battles ready to wage, I think, for moto number two. Uh, Landon Gordon and Landon Gibson, uh, I've, I've been waiting for these guys to, to go at it uh, head to toe, uh, nose to uh, toe to toe, I guess is the word I'm looking for. And we get those little glimpses of it, but one day we're going to get a full uh, full moto of that. Well, folks, uh, we are heading into track maintenance, and uh, we're going to take a uh, break here, and we'll be back. And, of course, want to say thanks to the many fine folks that have tuned in along racertv.com, all of our fine sponsors, and a tip of the hat as well to our good friends at Dunlop Motorcycle Tires for uh, bringing you a live coverage of this 52nd annual Thor Mini O's presented by Pro Circuit.
something from nothing. That's what Nihilo Concepts is about. It starts with a spark, an idea, a concept, which leads to a design and finishes with engineered excellence with the highest quality products created with durability in mind. All our products are made in the USA at our state-of-the-art facility in Stewart, Florida. Whether you are a weekend warrior, ride for fun, or at the highest level of competition, Nihilo Concepts offers innovative titanium, aluminum, and carbon fiber parts for your dirt bike. We offer a wide variety of products that you can customize to your liking. Browse our site for foot pegs, brake tips, engine components, specialty tools, frame grip tape, lever grips, carbon fiber components, motor stands, our secondary on-switch plus much more head to nihiloconcepts.com and see for yourself why factory teams like red bull ktm rockstar husqvarna troy lee designs gas gas orange brigade club mx klm gas gas and some of the fastest riders in the world choose nihilo concepts And we're back here at Gatorback Cycle Park. It is the 52nd annual Thor Minios presented by Pro Circuit. Live coverage brought to you by Dunlop Motorcycle Tires as uh, we are getting ourselves prepared. Looks like uh, still a little bit of equipment out there on the racetrack right now, Dino. And uh, uh, I'm enjoying a uh, great muffin here, thanks to uh, Julian. And Kind of got caught off guard with that commercial <laughs> coming to an end like that. I was expecting it to be a little longer, but I know track maintenance is still underway, but we're nearly complete with that. A lot of work has been uh, done on the track, uh, but again, quick turnaround. You know, we talked about that, uh, you know, on the Supercross track. Um, those guys did a great job. They didn't do too much. They did just enough, you know, and that's one of the things that you can do. I mean, you can go out there and, and there's a number of different things you can do. You can say, I'm going to get rid of all the moisture and I'm just yeah. going to shove it all off. And you, can have, you, can, 
you can go and do something like that, or you can go work certain sections of it, pull just parts of it off, reface the jumps, you know, kind of like what they did out there. And it, it's a science. It really, really is. And, and, and you know, it, it's hard for individuals to go from place to place to place. But uh, these uh, folks that work these uh, racetracks here in Florida, they know the soils. They know the soil here at Gatorback Cycle Park. And, uh, uh, you know, when, like you said, you know, he's been here since uh, the early 2000s. And, of course, uh, he's uh, uh, he knows it as well as anyone. And I know Eli here pointing down here. And we just got done talking to Jimmy there just a minute ago. Just want to let everybody know, M MKS Black Friday sale coming up t uh, tomorrow. Well, I guess today and tomorrow and Friday. 30% uh, off MKS products, all of them, and you get some, uh, come get your kicks uh, while the supplies last. Uh, MKSmoto.com for those of you uh, want to know more about them online. Born and raised in American motocross, that's what these shoes are all about. They've got reinforcements where normal shoes don't have them. They're, I'm telling you, if you haven't checked them out, MKSmoto.com, uh, order you some and um, maybe drop them a note that... Uh, that you heard about them right here at the Mini O's. Come exactly. get your kicks. Come get yeah, your come kicks. Moto kicks at that. <laughs> yep. Yeah, moto kicks. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually getting some. Like I said, uh, I hate you know I hate to be that guy, but I'm getting a pair just like uh, Megawatt Scott, man. I, I mean, nobody ever see us together. Maybe I just won't wear them <laughs> at the track the next time I come. No, uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to trying to answer some questions uh, on some of the live remotes that I do at the radio stations and stuff. People will be like, where'd you get those? And I'll be like, yeah, check these out. You know, they got this reinforcement. All right, uh, what do we got? Wait, we got Super Minis coming up next. Super Mini 1, 12 to 15. We'll go ahead and give you a rundown of the riders that we can expect to see. You want to do that, Eli, do you? You, you seem to know these guys pretty good, so why don't you give us a rundown? I only know like one. You only know like one? Well, give me the paper then. How do, you, do I read it like this? Just no, you read it. Read it. Let you read it like you normally. Are, is that? Did I not teaching you kids how to read these days? <laughs> I do online school. Yeah, yeah you go to night school. <laughs> oh, online school. Online school. No, they teach you to read the same way. No, yeah, you read it just each name, you know, and go down. Yeah. We have the number nine of Boris. Flores, is that how you say it? Yeah, well, maybe I better take hey, over there. <laughs> <laughs> we, know, we know Colby, of course. Yes, you know Colby. Lesser, right? Is that, is that yes, the, yeah. Lesser. All right, so. Colby. Colby Lesser. All right, we'll go ahead and uh, give you the rundown. The number nine, Boris Flores. Uh, number 11, Colby Lesser. Number 17 will be Fernando Garcia. Number 20, Caden West. Number 24, Brian Stasek. Number 25 is Jackson McCarty. Number 36, Bentley Murphy. 40, Jeremy Strider. Number 43, Maddox Percue. Number 50, Lincoln Bartholomew. Number 050, Jack Smith. Number 51, Inaki Arbuzwa. Uh, number 53 is Ryden Ramos. Number 68, Josie Shuff. Number 76, Lillian Pettis. Number 80, John Duell Carino. Number 91, Austin Meads. Number 94, Tanner Dorman. Number 099, Parker Shalosky. Number 105, Rossi Shoemate. Number 112, Cooper Craig. Number 117, Blake Mara. Number 124, Austin Gore. Number 157, Tom Laurent. Number 191, Austin Camden. Number 251, Gabe Clark. Number 282 will be Grant McDonald. Number 319, Benjamin Moya. Number 326, Austin Phelps. Brian Amancio, the number 360. Number 377, Joel Newcomb. Number 414, Caleb Wood. The 444 of Wyatt Duff. 555, Ethan Abels. Number 626, Carter Dreschel. Number 808, Maverick Gold. 910 is Oliver Camp. And the number 930 of Seth Dennis. Quite a few players in this first uh, in this first division. I do want to point out my buddy out of New Milford, Connecticut. He is a factory KTM uh, Moose Racing A&E Racing back rider. And he is an off-road racer. He is actually a, a top GNCC racer. May have uh, been vying for the national championship this year. And even I didn't get a chance to follow this year. But I know Ryan was uh, uh, an amazing kid to watch growing up through the ranks. And, and, and to see uh, him here today at, uh, at the... Uh, you hungry? You want some? It's yours, buddy. <laughs> but uh, anyway, Ryan is... Uh, Certainly a, a great kid, a great personality. Uh, he and his dad race uh, together. They travel all over the eastern United States with the Grand National Cross Country Championship Series. And uh, uh, they, uh, 
uh, it, it's great because Ryan would race in the morning and and his dad would race in the afternoon. Now I think they're both maybe getting ready to start racing in the afternoon. Uh, Ryan's getting a little bit, well, he's still on the Super Mini, so he's still a morning rider, I guess, but it won't be long before he and dad will be racing at the same time. And uh, I think that's neat whenever, uh, I love that style of racing with GNCC, the, the woods racing like that, and, and, and that aspect of it is, is pretty cool. By the way, speaking of racing, didn't we have the Jarvises up here just a few moments ago and they were saying something about one wants the times compared, the other one doesn't want us to compare the race times. Jordan and her dad were up here. Really? I didn't hear all <laughs> no, that. No, you didn't hear that. <laughs> I thought you were up here. Maybe yeah, it's Megawatt or yeah. Wes Kane. We'll have to talk about that one and, and just look. How was that? Were you eating pistachios? Pretzels. Pretzels. <laughs> You're going to West Canis now, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Just shut, just shut it off. Yeah, just shut that off, man. And yeah, you, but, uh, yeah, by the way, I, I'm not sure who brought those up, but we got a nice little cheese tray with pretzels and pistachios. Yeah, we got some healthy stuff. Super we do. I think that might have been Brendan Harrison, oh, 904, that brought that stuff up. Oh, that was great. And then uh, also thanks to uh, Hooked on Q, uh, their uh, catering company out of Tampa. They're right down here by the fence, uh, not far from the tower. Uh, in the food court, yeah, you can't you can't miss them. Yeah, I don't know about you, but I'm hooked on Q. I'm hooked on Q as well. Uh, Chris and the whole the whole gang down there, man, doing a great job. They got great sides, and uh, they fed this old boy right here. You know, I, I may not look like I eat a lot, but uh, yeah, I I, I I I pack on a lot uh, over the course of time. So I've been nibbling all ever since we got that plate over there, and I've dared anybody to ta taste it or try try that one i said uh, yeah i'm gonna share this with everybody i lied <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding i didn't lie i got ribs we got brisket it's all good yeah all right. you got it all we didn't get anything chopped liver that's all we got <laughs> chopped liver well that's good <laughs> Let those guys smoke, and it's going to be real good. Oh, yeah. Hey, KTM is proud to support the Mini O's 2023 with contingency for all KTM riders. Uh, riders visit KTMcash.com to learn more about their contingency program and how to get started. And if you get into a pinch this week, KTM is offering trackside support for all of their riders. And if you're looking for some good deals on KTM soft goods, the folks at WMR are here all week as well. Uh, be sure to ask them about their special Orange Friday deals on a wide range of KTM, Husqvarna, and Gas Gas motorcycles. I like that orange Friday instead of uh, Black Friday. So, again, uh, they and uh, Husqvarna and Gas Gas all out in uh, full force. All riders and all brands come have fun. Have some fun and enjoy all the great stuff. I know they had the cakewalk there on Monday night. Uh, we're getting the uh, Wind them up signal there. So it looks like they're wrapping things up. Uh, the dozers are starting to make their way off. It's like a symphony out there. We need we need to put this to music. But uh, uh, well orchestrated orchestra of uh, track maintenance taking place there as all of our equipment makes its way back into its holding positions. And a stage is set now for some of our minis. We start with super minis and go from super minis. Uh, we got two divisions at the 51 CC 7 to 8 class riders and again gate is ready to drop on this one. We got Rossi Shoemake, Cooper Craig, Blake Mara, also uh, Austin Gore, Tom Lawrence, Austin Camden. Am I on the right class? I am on the right class, right? Yeah. Gabriel Clark, uh, Grant McDonald, <laughs> Benjamin Moya. Whoa, who? Uh, number 444 of Wyatt Duff. Got the whole shot. Really? Oh. And then number 11, Colby Luster snuck by. I call Wyatt Duff the Wildcat. He's out of Lexington, Kentucky on a United Motorsports Fox Racing Power Band Suspension KTM. And he's definitely going to be a force to be reckoned with, if not the guy to beat in this class, possibly in the Super Mini 1 Division 1 as they make their way over the back of the gate. And oh, already challenges being made up front. 17. Oh, yeah, Duff's going to get back by Lesser right there. So some quick action to this one. Like he, um, our buddy Eli said, looked like Duff had the whole shot, made a little mistake there, gave it to Lesser, but Duff there to take it right back. You guys remember um, last year when Deegan, uh, like, wadded on that roller after the finish line? Oh, yeah. At, like, late day? <laughs> uh -huh. Hey, I'm going to give you guys a West Kane. 
<laughs> guy's got jokes up here. Yeah. Where, where's Megawatt at? I hope Megawatt was listening to that. Oh, sure I'll tell you what we're watching right now. We're watching the number 444 machine on screen doing a great job leading out the number 11 of Colby Lesser, Lesser, number two position. Here's my impression of Wes Kane. <laughs> if he only knew. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, we're going to pick them up now. They come by the tower here. Your leader is still the number. Four, four, four. Oh, my head up. Get a little running heavy there. Second spot. Colby Lester, number 11. Then we got number 51 behind him. Mm. That 51, is that Gabe Clark maybe on the 251? Nope, it's Anaki Abruzwa maybe yeah. from Chile. Arbo Ar 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 How do you say that? Arbuzua? Abarzua. 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 We'll get it there by the end of the week. Yeah. He is your third place rider. Austin Cannon in fourth. Fifth spot, Seth Dennis. Cannon Dorman in sixth. Seventh spot, Graham McDonald. Eighth spot, Oliver Camp. Tenth spot, Rossi Shootate. Abarzua. We need to see his dad or mom or come, his mom to come up and yell at us a couple of times, and that'll definitely drive it home. That's <laughs> But he's looking good, man. Uh, we got uh, Camda back there in fourth and Dennis, as you said. Uh, are, yeah, are we looking? Yeah, this is a qualifier. This is uh, two divisions, so top 18. Maverick Gold rounds out the uh, top 18, or did on the gas gas number 808 there. Riders still very closely knit together, nose to tail as they came through on that first lap. It, you know, sometimes shocking how close together they can be on that first lap and then on the at the end of that second lap how uh i guess settled in the pace and place they are at that particular point a lot of changes go on i, I know with a lot of passing you know some riders not getting the starts they're looking for on that first lap so this is where it gets interesting on lap number two is things start to sort out now Yeah, we're watching some battling going on. Looks like Lesser is a man under pressure right now on that number 11 KTM. Let's see what they do through the split lane right here. Looks like the ride is going to change. Of course, taking the right side is going to be our leader, Dub. And Dub doing a good job in the 444 KTM. Stretch it out now on the rest of the pack. The rest of the pack includes riders like the number 11. Of Lester, and here comes Seth Dennis. That's the runners on the move. The number 930 machine is Seth Dennis. He's going to lead out the number 51 by the A Barzua. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do A Barzua. A Barzua. That's a lot easier to pronounce that. Oh, it is. I like <laughs> that. All right, A Barzua. And that's probably the way to say it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Mom, come up, yell at us. Let us know. How do you say it for sure? Or dad, or aunt, or uncle, cousin, brother, sister, somebody. Somebody correct us. We need some help up here. Duff, Lester, Dennis. A Barzua in the number four spot. Austin Camden in fifth. Uh, Tanner Dorman in sixth. Grant McDonald seventh. Oliver Camp eighth. Rossi Schumade in ninth. Austin Meads. Caden West in eleventh. Lincoln Bartholomew now up to twelfth. Blake Mara drops to the number thirteen spot. Jackson McCarty in fourteenth. Briar Stesick in fifteenth. Uh, Jack Smith having some issues. So a few riders moving up, including uh, McCarty, Stesick, and Caleb Wood Smith get back up in the seventeenth place position. Austin Phelps passes his way now into the number 18 final transfer spot there after two. Still a row to hoe there. It's not over yet. No, definitely not over yet. Speaking of passes, Seth Dennis is able to get around Kel Colby Lesser there. And Lesser, I thought he was going to be able to bounce back, but it looks like Dennis, he's setting sail right now and starting to put pressure on a leader. So what's Wyatt Duff going to do now as he starts to feel some pressure by the number 930 machine is Seth Dennis? Wow, great work. Look at Dennis out there going through these rollers. Dude, we'll see what happens. Except Dennis cranking out 155s on like lap number two, uh, the second lap. 157.7, 157.2 for wow. Duff and Lesser. He was basically a full two seconds faster than both the front runners, at least on lap number two. Yeah, keep in mind the track's been smoothed out and they groomed out, so it's a little bit better, but that is impressive to say yeah. the least. Yeah. Watch now to make their way in front of the gizmo jump and here by us in the tower, your leader. It is still the 444 wide up. Wow, what happened there? A lap rider slipped in the deck right there. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, whoa, we got a real battle right <laughs> That's here. That's what I was thinking. Where'd that guy come from? 555, that was Ethan Abels there. 
having some issues obviously in the early laps of this moto over the line here they come 157 for tough and 155 again for Seth Dennis. So he has definitely put the pressure on Colby Lester. Like we said, falls back to the third spot. He's going to run 157. So all these guys in the 150s. I mean, Anaki, Abar Zula, he is there in the fourth spot. Fifth spot, Austin Camden, Grant McDonald, 157 as well in that sixth place position. Back to seventh is Tanner Norman, Oliver Camden, eighth, ninth spot is Rashi uh, Shumate. Austin needs a tenth. What do you got going on, Rodney? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm just watching their side by side drag racing across the tail of the gate or the back of the gator right now. Duff under all kinds of pressure on the inside to the outside. Slingshot and around the 930. Seth Dennis seals the deal on it and takes the lead. Awesome ride there for Seth Dennis. Like I said, he came not from way back in the pack, came from the fifth, sixth place position, but made some passes quick and early. And that's what you got to do out here, just attack the racetrack. As soon as you get out there, whoa, Duff with a big mistake right there. Almost loses the bike, but he is able to stay on it. He is still in your second place position, but now still feeling a little more pressure from Colby Lesser, our third place rider. Here they go through the rollers now. It is Duff and Lesser are running second and third. Seth Dennis, like we said, with those 155 lap times, he should be able to pull a little bit of a lead. Yeah, absolutely. So this would be interesting to see this battle shaping up now for the second place position. Lesser may be smelling blood in the water as well as he is circling the boat a lot tighter as we pass the Gizmo Mods Tower now down in front of the announcer's tower ready to drop into the Gator Pit. Yeah, you're right about that one. There's nothing like seeing it live. You know, we see it on the drone shot. It looks pretty big, but then they come by in front of us. And man, he is all over the rear wheel. Yeah, it, 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 in real life, it looks a lot tighter than it does on that drone for sure. Maybe we got uh, some riders, it looks like maybe on the move. Let's reassess this as we check in with lap number four complete now. Dennis Duff Lesser, obviously the change is in the lead there on that lap. Uh, Lesser has uh, closed up quite a bit to 1.3 seconds behind. Oh, sorry, Dennis almost lost it there in the, in the pit. Abar Zua in the number four spot. Austin Camden in fifth. Grant McDonald in sixth. Oliver Camp in seventh. Tanner Dorman in eighth. Rossi Shoemate in ninth. And Austin Meads in the number 10 spot. Bartholomew McCarty, Caden West, Caleb Wood, Blake Mara, Jack Smith, Briar Stesic, and Austin Phillips round out your top 18 after four laps of racing. We're going to take a picture of this right here. That 153 just ran right there by Seth Dennis. That's the fastest time of this moto here on lap number four. Wow. And on, oh no, Colby Less with a big mistake. It looked like he had false nudes right there as he had to dab the foot and shift back down. He was starting to really apply the pressure on Duff, but that's going to allow Duff to get away. Of course, Duff is your second place rider right now following Dennis and third spot running at your top three is Colby Lesser. I'm sorry, I'm turning into a race fan. I'm <laughs> <laughs> gonna be a good race. I'm with you on that one. Just kind of sitting back and, and, and trying to watch it all unfold. Right. What's crazy about this, this is just division one here, the Super right. 21 class. So we've got a whole other division in the staging area, 51 CC 78 limited in the pre-staging, 51 CC 78 limited division number two. We got three divisions in that one, then we get going into the four to six class. So we got the little guys coming out here shortly. Here they come across the line. We'll check and see what they got for lap time. I say slowing down a little bit, but not really slowing down. Only dropping a second. The 154 out there for the 930 is Seth Dennis. Wyatt Duff, a few ticks off. He is your second place rider with the 158. Third spot running your top three is Colby Lesser. He had that mistake out there. He's still on a two minute lap time though. But here comes Abar Zua. Abar Zua is about four seconds back right now. He's going to be three seconds for that time. So hopefully we don't see any mistakes out of Lesser before this moto is over. Fifth place is Austin Camden, Grant McDonald in the sixth spot, seventh spot, the 9 10 of Oliver Camp. Tanner Dorman in eighth, ninth spot, Rossi Shoemate, 10 spot, Austin Meade. So Meade's looking to make some moves out there. Lincoln Bartholomew, he is in the 11th spot, 12th spot, Jackson McCarty. So McCarty also finding himself behind a great find there. Kate West in the 13th spot, Caleb Wood in 14th, 15th is Blake Mara, 16th, Briar Stesic, 17th, Jack Smith. And our final transfer position right here, right now, going on the white flag is Austin Phelps. I ah, see my little buddy Ryan Amancio outside qualifying top. He's back in 20th place spot right now. So 
not bad from a boy for a boy from Connecticut that races in the woods I guess not bad at all coming out of the woodworks <laughs> Looks like we got our next division already fired up down there on the starting line, trying to get these motors out as quickly and safely as possible. So five laps deep in this one. White flag is out. Dennis really taking command. Yeah, I mean, it was, I mean, he's still turning in the 154s. I think his fastest lap was a 153.4. So he's only a second different. I mean, he's only slowed down a, a whole second this entire lap, and it's been consistent lap after lap for Dennis. And, you know, he was even turning lap times like that, working his way up through the pack to get to the position to, to start making these the, the passes that he had to make to get out front. So Dennis takes the checker flag of 156, slows down considerably there. Still probably faster than everyone on the track. Uh, 7.1 second lead is what he had at the end of that uh, uh, fifth lap. At the end of lap six, 12 seconds. And Kobe Lesser, what happened there? Duff must have slipped up in the last lap because he got a 203 lap time. Three seconds outside of that two minutes. So I'm guarantee you that he maybe tipped over in a corner or something and lost that position. To. And A. Barzuwa is in the number four spot. Austin Camden in fifth. Grant McDonald in sixth. Oliver Camp in seventh. Rossi Shoemate is eighth and ninth. Tanner Dorman in tenth. And Austin Meads. Lincoln Bartholomew in the number 11 spot. As we check back to 12th place and changes there, Caden West will move into the number 12 spot. Uh, Caleb Wood in 13th. Jackson McCarty. Drops to the number 14 spot, but holds on to, uh, well, he gets to go to moto number two. Briar Stesic, Blake Mara, Jack Smith, Austin Phelps should be checking in right now. And uh, let's see how they check in with that. It is Stesic and Mara, no changes there. And I guess that would be Smith and Phelps coming in now. That is Smith. So there you go, your top 18. Phelps does check into that one. Amancio up to 19th, but not able to make the grade for the cut. All right, race number 19, Super Mini 1, Division 2. Yep, uh, Super Mini 1, Division 2. We got riders like the number 2 of Colton Lake, the 7 of Tristan Pruitt, the number 12 of Christopher Harris, the number 18 of Carson Adams, the 22 of Jace Wolf, the 27 of Vincent Way, the 29 of McCabe Fitch, the 37 of Cannon Hargroves. The 46 of Matthew Williams, the 48 of Jaden Riley, the 54 of Ryder Scadras, the 57 of Aiden Bassey, the 59 of Tommy Doble, the 83 of Brady Rodecker, the 92 of Christian Nyman, the 127 of Tristan Lucas, the 160 of Colton Waits, the 171 of Vincent Shake, the 182 of Kane Markham, the 194 of Cash Bollinger, the 199 of Jacob Hawk, the 209 of Preston Ross, the 223 of Jaden Cumbrian, the 224 machine of Ethan Pagnini, the 226 of Jonathan Bergeron, the 250 of Leon Gomez Cortada, the 258 of Cade Martin, the 260 of Carson Wood, the 314 of Kane Bolasina, the 327 of Wyatt Grant, the 418 of Cruz Martin, the 451 of Colt Slane Claire, the 482 of Aiden Fo Foist, the 550 of Max Giberson, Rocco Brona, the 833, the 8940 of Blake Rayeski, and the 998 of Caleb Likens. Well, looks like Matthew Williams may have the early lead in this one on the 46 gas gas machine backed by Pro Circuit Motorsport and Arcus as well as 100% out of Powhatan, Virginia. Powhatan, Virginia, I think that's maybe how you actually say it, but there is lap one in the history books for that gas gas rider, Division Two. As we check back second, uh, it's McCaden Fitch followed by Kane Bolasina and Chase Wolf in the three and four spots. Cannon Hargrove in fifth, Carson Wood in sixth, Colton Legg in seventh, Colton Waits in eighth. Tommy Doble is your ninth place ride. Then it's Vinny Way, the number 27, all the way back in tenth. He's uh, got some row to hoe there, I guess you could say, to get up closer. It, but again, top ten. Nothing to shake a stick at. Carson Wood. Jaden Riley, Christopher Harris, 11 through 13. Preston Ross in 14. Jacob Hawk in 15. Brody Rodecker in 16th. Ryder Scadras in 17th. And Colt St. Clair in 18th. Speaking of their last moto about off-road racers, Christopher Harris 
Now, he never was a national GNCC racer, but he was a uh, Texas off-road racer and was actually a Texas state champion as an off-road racer before he made the switch a few years ago uh, to pull on motocross and has uh, fared very well uh, in, in his rise through the ranks, I guess you could say, but uh, keeping an eye out on that number 12 of Harris opening up that first lap in the 13th place position. Welcoming back to the microphone, Mikey Waynes and Matt Watson. And I don't know, were you guys, did you guys have to be on there just a few minutes ago listening to uh, Eli Herrick? Yeah, we're, we're toast, Rodney, is, is what I gathered from well, that. We're toast. Well, that, and did you hear his West Kane impersonation by any chance? He, what do I, I did not. I didn't catch that one. Or let me see something. I'll, I'll show you his West he goes, he goes, I'm going to do my West Kane impression. And he ate into the microphone. <laughs> I don't know if that's a West <laughs> or a Rodney impression. Well, he took it from West Kane. I went with him. Right. All right. I, I'm going to say that's applicable to several of us. I think so, to, too. To be quite honest well, with when you, he, that's but it was funny. to all of us. It was funny. I was just like, yeah. He, I mean, he, he, he jumped right in, man. I mean, he got right into it and, and started to cut right off the bat, man. I thought that was great. That's when you <laughs> know you're going to be, if you can start taking jabs at each other as an announcer. All right. So you, mean, you've got your final merit badge. <laughs> you know, Gage Dunham put you on notice. Oh, yeah. He did. And, uh, now Harry's up here trying to shove people around. And, uh, <laughs> the new generation's coming in, man. Is. Yeah, you're out. And, uh, <laughs> See you guys. Yeah. Go get something to eat. <laughs> okay. Uh, wow. I'm headed down to the hooked on the queue. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, here we go. Line uh, us out. La lap number two. Uh, this is our second division. Had uh, quite the race in Division One. Uh, things shaping up as well here in Division Two as Fitch uh, has pulled to within uh, just microseconds oh, of there. Williams. Jumps back to the inside, trying to make a pass right here for the lead, and he does. Gets it, makes it stick. Down the Scott Highway, a.k.a. off the Gators tail now. As uh, Justin was saying there earlier, the Scott Highway, the freeway of vision there, no shortcuts. Mm, the freeway of vision. No shortcuts, of course. That's, that's their slogan there. So I like it. Yeah. Wow, Fitch starting to open it up just a bit right now. And found I, a couple good lines through there, had a good flow, and that's all it took. Yeah, he pulled the trigger, and whatever uh, whatever he's got, it juiced up, and it, it's going. You're right. He He's found the line out there right now. And, there, the and grip, Wolf's dude. coming after Fitch. We were seeing uh, lap times, uh, one, what was it, 152, 154s, 150, yeah, down below the 155s. We were getting kind of low there just a few moments ago in Super Mini 1, Division number 1. I'll be interested to see where we're getting at now. Uh, McCaden Fitz turned to 157 as he was battling, trying to play catch up there on Matthew Williams. At the pace he's going right now, I have to wonder, what did he turn that time? Actually, he slowed down a little bit as fast as he was, a 158.7. Still ah. still pretty uh, fast and uh, comparable to uh, Division One as well. So it's Wolf in second, Williams in third, Kane Bolasina in fourth, Carson Wood in the number five spot. He's making some gains out there. Yeah, he turned a 158.3 compared to the 2.0204 ahead of yeah, him. He, so. he should be making some uh, yeah. passes here in a few moments on his Kawasaki, Cannon Hargrove, Vincent Way moving up a couple spots. Uh, Colton Waits, Chris Harris, and Colton Leg. I think the, le the race that we probably ought to be watching, the 260 of uh, Carson Wood, yep. and that rider on his way up, uh, 314 of, uh, of course, Kane Bolasina, his next possible victim coming up there. Williams was on the move as well on that gas gas, the number 46 machine. He was trying to pull up onto the rear fender of Wolf. Matter of fact, looks like uh, that action's going to tighten up here in just a minute. And Wolf, now he's coming back up to the rear fender of Fitch a little bit. Well, dab right there by Fitch keeps her yeah. going. Oh, another one, oh. and that's a pass right there. Paddling. <laughs> oh, did he just kill it? Stalled it out. Something happened there. No, that wasn't. That's that Williams. was Williams. That's Williams oh, on the okay. gas gas. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. So that was Bolasina that made the move. Yeah. Bolasina went around, uh, went around Williams. So things happening quick here in our Super Mini 1, 12 to 15. 
Fitch made a good move uh, about a lap and a half ago, put himself out front, Rodney, and immediately started pulling away. Yes, absolutely. One Take of my favorite break. camera shots right there. When they drop down in and then you watch that big roost and they come back out, that's a great shot. That's my son doing that too, by the way. Oh, is that? Yeah. Chance is over there? Awesome. Yep. Well, great follow, Chance. What was that? I don't know. That hurt my ears. The crowd goes wild. <laughs> I don't know what that was. <laughs> we'll take it as we regroup. So four laps deep. Kate Fitz, Chase Wolf, Kane Bolasina, Carson Wood, Matthew Williams, your top five. Again, top 18 transfer in this one. But we're keeping an eye on these battles up front right there. There's Fitch. Fitch has a three and a half second lead. And he's just working right through the lappers. Yeah. I mean, he has no problem working his way through the slower riders whatsoever. Chase Wolf back there in the number two spot, enjoying a three second lead over Carson Wood. Wood about two and a half seconds over Matthew Williams now. So, really, the next rider on the move is Vinny Way. He and Hargrove battling back there for the number six spot. Hargrove on the 37, Way on the 27. And calculations may actually have any way out into the number six position if uh, um, score if well, I don't know, man, both of them turning 158s, eights right there. So that's looking for that battle wow. myself on the track. You, all you got to do, I think, is find two guys that are riding basically stuck together right now. And that's the battle that we're probably looking for. Yeah, this one's any anything but sorted out like to your point. One, two, three, four, five guys out there under two minutes on the lap time moving. And I think is white flag coming out. We're four in, so yeah, right. Next time around, there it is. Five, 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 five. Yeah, yep. white, white flag. flag six calls it. White flag flies. Here we go. Fitch out in front, leading the way. The number 29 Husqvarna, Jace Wolf in the two spot, turning a 156, two and a half seconds back. Uh, one lap left to get the job done. Let's see in third, boy, big gap between second and third. Kane Mullacena yeah. finally checking in right there. Still turning a sudden uh, two minute. There's Vincent Way. Vincent Way is the man wow, on the move. Wow, up to four. Yeah, seven seconds up to Mullacena. But he was running seventh yeah. the last lap. Yeah, yeah. Cameron Absolutely. Hargrove with a pass as well around Matthew Williams. Yeah, Way found some speed. Not sure what happened early in this one. Uh, whether he just got smothered off of the start, maybe shoved out a little bit, but he was able to pick his way through, found some real good speed, and uh, got a big task ahead of him right now, but obviously on the gas. Uh, yes, he is. Something happened to Carson Wood as he... Oh, good observation. Yeah, Carson Wood dropping Did off the radar that. right now. Yeah, still has not checked in. Didn't see him out there. Showing him in 19th right now, but only 14 have checked in, so interesting. Yeah. So anyway, McCaden Fitch is on his way home to uh, Checkers and what has seemed to be uh, somewhat of uh, an easy ride for him. But man, he didn't, he's ridden hard. That's what you yeah. can say. I mean, he's yeah. put in those 157s consistently, lap after lap after lap. Jace Wolf putting in a 156 that last time, but he's still point two point seven seconds down. So the consistency of that 157 pays bigger dividends than one faster lap at the end of the race. Oh, sure. And what, what caught my attention, Mikey, was when he closed the gap and got up onto the rear fender, he was able to make the move and just proceeded forward. You know, didn't get locked in a battle, uh, wasn't having to fool with anybody, was able to make the move and move forward up the track. Yeah, that was to you, Mikey. What's that? Well, uh, you know, Wes came, yeah. sent us a picture, said the dream team's working right here. Uh, I, yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I get it. So, yeah. Checkered flag w is wake, out. wake up from your dream. <laughs> the dream of the yeah. dream team. Fitch takes the win yes. after six. Wolf it finishes in the two spot. And Kane Bolasina hanging on for a top three. Vincent Way working his butt off in that one for a fourth. And Cam yeah, Hargrove did. rounds out that top five. Christopher Harris picking up a spot around Matthew Williams, who finishes in seventh. Then as we check a little further back again, remember the top 18 going to be checking uh, into Moto2 straight from this uh, first Moto. Colton Waits, Carson uh, Adams uh, in the number nine spot. 
so then we got Colton Legg, Jaden Riley, Preston Ross looking for Brody Rat Brady Rodecker, Wyatt Grant, Jacob Hawk, uh, Kane Markham, Ryder Scadras, and Leon Gomez Cortati to round out the uh, top 18. Again, that's unofficial. Official results are what will be posted on the posting board, and they're online. Make sure you check those and double check them again right after you check them that time. <laughs> Super, <laughs> Mini two, Super Mini 1 Division 2 now in the books as we go to race number 20. This is going to be our first of two divisions of 51 seven to eight year olds and uh, we got race 20 and 21. Riders like uh, the number two Owen Taylor, number 007 Galo Zamorai, uh, the number eight of Jace Gaither Cole, number nine Levi Brace, number 10 King Clark, number 17 Louis Hawk, number 18 Emil em Emiliano Munoz, number 21 Rowdy Rabone, number 27 Kate Scott, number 30 Hudson Cohen, number 32 Luke Bush, number 34 Levi Ga Guys, uh, number 35 Rodrigo Jacar. Number 44, Cruz Schnicks, Sex Nadre. Number 46, Levi Letty, Indigo Spina Culp, the number 49, the 69 of Tate Brush, the number 96, Dylan Roke, number 99, Easton Ruffing, 101, Steel Leonard, number 123, Junior Gian Gian Giannetti, 144, Jared Tensner, Bryce Shalosky on the 218, the 221 of Hayho Ferrara, the number 322 of Parker Beckington, the number 521 of Dakota Lee, Collins Knuth is the 721, 771 is Brooks Linatham, the number 804, Hank Tix, number 870, Raven Roberts, number 888, Jacob Bush, 919, Wake Davis, and the 991 of Matthew Simino. Full rundown, good job, Rodney. The number 34 out in front leading the way, I think it's number three on the jersey. Levi Geis leading the charge out of Jordan, Minnesota on that FXR backed ride. Dropping down into the Gator Pit right here all by his lonesome. Finally got some players trying to catch up with the Mega. Where's everybody at? The chase is on right now. Mikey, as you say, working their way up out of the pit. And uh, Geis, boy, look at this. Got a good drop of the gate. Found some good lines on lap number one. Had that clear track, Mikey. Didn't have to fool with anybody. Had clean vision, man. He got to go to work. That's Parker Beckington, the 322. Cobra Moto Machine in the two spot. Uh, Jar Ferreria Jr. in the three position. Tate Brush in fourth. Matthew Simono in fifth place. Jared Tincher in sixth. Seventh place is the rough and rowdy Rob Jones. Levi Letty in the number eight spot. Checking in. Jace Gaffer Cole in ninth. And Levi Brace rounding out that top ten. Next time around, pick up some lap time, see what some gaps look like, see who's on the move. Looks like got a big battle right there as they work their way up over the gator back. Yeah, look at that. That is that battle for second, call it second and third, really, as uh, Tate Brush into the mix now. You know, they say corner for dough, jump for show. That's not the case on the Gator back. Not always. Let me no. tell you, that you jump for go up that baby. The payoff is great. It's huge. By going over that. It's huge. Yeah, look at the battle out front. Here we go. Levi Geist trying to run away and hide from the boys. Beckington, Ferraria, and Brush going to battle. Tate Brush always in a battle. Every time we say his name, the guy's in a battle. You know, it's the truth. Every time we it. say that guy's name, man, he's duking it out. Here they come, buzzing past the Gizmo Mods Tower, coming at us. Going to go by the announcing tower here in just a second. Levi Geist doing his thing out in front. Forgive us, Mikey. We were over here shoe shopping. Yeah, that's okay. You guys doing some Black Friday shopping yeah. for some MKS? I see you. MKS, that's I want, right. I want the blue and the white ones, and then I want both of these uh, skater shoes here. The I, I've got like. those too. I'm wearing, as a matter of fact, I'm yeah. wearing the uh, terrain I, right now, but I need that blue one to go with all my denim. There you go. I don't wear a lot of denim, but blue dickies. All right. <laughs> Guys, this time around, lap number two. Now we got some lap times. 152. Seven, 158.4, Parker Beckington, Laura Ferretta Jr. in that number three spot, 158.9. So pretty good gap there for Geis. He's really set the bar pretty high here with that 152 gap right now. 10.4 seconds after two laps is the gap. So 10.4 seconds, what we're looking at. So really set the bar pretty high. 
Wes Kane. What's up, man? Welcome to the booth. You know what's cracking out there. Ha. It's going to be good, man. Hey, we got after show pistachios. tonight. Yeah, Hannah, listen. Uh, uh, Hannah's already sent us. we got to quit talking about pistachios. She hears our phones ringing. Uh, we I think need it's because this mic focused. is so hot. Oh, yeah, dude. She, I'm loud. She's been honest today, man. Wes Kane's throwing his phone in a fit of rage. That was Wes, Hannah. That, that, that looked <laughs> almost as fast as Levi Geis out there. No, I just wanted to show you that my ringer's off. I'm a professional. Uh, my ringer's off. Uh, don't at me, bro. I'm I just don't know. saying, I, I, she, she might not call you out on that one, but we were in the trailer and we were getting the. Oh, so that limits that. So, yeah, okay, so okay. I'm just saying, right. you know, right. kind of impossible to hear my phone ringing when I'm in the trailer. So, you know. Oh, Lord. Gotcha. Many May. <laughs> Many Many May. And, and Wes Kane up here talking about their jitterbugs and ringtones. Yeah, I've got the old man from the jitterbug. Parker. Uh, my font's about three inches. <laughs> You're in denial. Go ahead and get the glasses and shrink that stuff down. Denial. Isn't that a river? Yeah. Yeah. It's close to the land. <laughs> yeah. All right, which here we go. Far, which is far from the sea. Levi Geis out there, Beckington. Yeah, Loretta. Levi, Levi on Racer Tickner. TV looking good. It's a Derek Tishner. Not Tishner. Not Hey, dang, that's going to be a hard act to follow. Exactly. You're following in Ronnie Tishner's footsteps. Ooh. Boy, you better look out. Big shoes to fill there. Even though they were size nine. Yeah. <laughs> well, Tickner, there you go, down there on the uh, from Greenville, North Carolina. Uh, Brooks, Innanen, and Cohen now. That's a cutoff top 12. Thought we might see uh, a little pickup. Second through fourth, fifth there, uh, but the last time around 152, so still right there for guys, but back to 159 now. Back to Parada Jr. and then uh, Tinder, two minutes. Uh, Rob Jones, uh, two minutes. Tate Rush, two minutes. So uh, this time 16.5, the gap, 16.5 seconds. How about that? Right, that's much. That's a little better. Am I blowing your ears out? Because I'm blowing my loud. ears out. Yeah, you're I don't know loud. if that's in the booth or not. Okay. We're working on it. I could whisper and it would deafen you. White flag out in this one. Levi Geist doing his thing. Man, that young man is just so talented. Just ridiculous. Beckington second. Jao Ferreira in a third. Jared Tincher fourth. Rowdy Rob Jones in the number five spot. Moving right along here for the 51cc 7 to 8 limited. Terrily. Division 2 is going to be coming up momentarily. Thank you, Mikey Waynes, for keeping me in check. I got you, brother. I know. And Division 2 is going to be a good one. Uh, checkers will fall out there. And it's going to be Geis taking the win. Beckington. Waiting for Beckington to jump through. Guys had a pretty good jump out there, running a 156. All right, Beckington now checks in. For Fiera Jr. coming through. Looking for him to check in as well. 17 second lead. He's got a little bit of. Man. Yeah, he's. The track has really came around. Really come around. And you know what? That little bit of rain, just like Supercross, they're going to work this thing tonight and wait until tomorrow. Uh, in my opinion. That, Tell me your opinion. That, that rain uh, with a little bit of work we did, the 30 minutes yes. we took, I mean, be quite honest with you, I think it really made the surface look awesome. Yeah, it's good. Perfect. All right, Beck Detail checks in. Jared Tincher finishing, Tincher. finished yeah, in Brush. third. Barbie, uh, Robbie Jones comes in. Letty, Levi Letty, Selmax, and the rest of them. Well, let's talk about what's on the gate. Division number two, race 21. Guys, if you're down in the staging area, come on, keep loading those gates down there. We're making making it happen here. Finn Hansen, Elias Hummond, Tino Tuckerwall is on the gate on this one. Tyler Atone, Deegan Keim, Riley Greenholz, Landry Acom Applecrombie, and Fitch. Yeah. Lorenzo Al, watch that number 53. Jacob Riley, Deegan Bartholomew, Chet Wall, Sophia Monitoris, Blake Lavanto, Cheyenne Hines, Deacon Stewart, Alan Tursky, Ryder Phillip, Harrison Vague, Ryder Innocent, Flynn Johnson, 
Gunner. Gunner Brown, Jason Howard, Gunner Lusk. Wow. A couple of Gunners out there. Husky Nolan, Kay Duplass, Lennon Glory, Chase Gleason, Tucker Chase. I got Chase Gleason, Tucker Chase, Joseph Lapria. Well, there's no way we'll mess that up. Caleb Matthias, Braxton Simpson, and Ryder Likens. They're rolling out there right now. Good battles all over the place. Battle out in front. Oh, three divisions here, guys. Oh, okay. I'm watching. Is that, yeah. Uh, that means what we take the top 12 out of these. Should take the top 12. Top I think 12. That's status quo. Status quo. On the agenda. Hey, we're moving right along. Mega what? We are moving right along, and right now they're moving right along on the track. Side by side action up front for the lead. How about our show tonight? Who do we got on there? On the Racer TV after show. Uh, whoever they are, we'll take Top it. secret right Whatever now. Whatever it is, top we'll, we'll secret. Get in there. But tune in, guys. I believe that starts at 6, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, it's going to be a fun-filled night. Somebody's going to be up there. Also got, uh, what, the on-track school prom tonight? Disco in the dirt. Disco in the dirt. Wow. Uh, from you guys what, seven make to nine? Through there? Always do. They have a little contest. Best I'm, dance moves. I'm going to assume DJ Judd will probably be cranking out the jams, maybe. I don't know. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not 100% on that. Uh, if anybody can jam it. <laughs> you know, cats and boots and cats and boots. Yeah, That's nice. Judd right there. You didn't know I could beatbox, did you, West Payne? Let me have some. <laughs> That's all I got, you know. I, 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 uh, I job shadowed in college. That's not true at all. Jet Rao <laughs> leading the <laughs> way. Uh, the 72 <laughs> Cobra Moto Machine Gunner Lusk in the number two spot. That's a 211. And there we go. Ryder Billick finally checking in. Cheyenne Hines in the number four position. Huxley Nolan in fifth. Ryder Likens in the sixth spot. Siler Autone, Autone in a seventh. Ryder Anderson in eighth place, ninth place. Declan Stewart and Jacob Riley rounding out the top ten here in 51cc 78 Limited Division 2. Uh, All right, here we go. All right, up from Jeff Cernick. Head on down there, guys. They just arrived. They've got Jet Lawrence goggles down there, guys. Ooh, get Nobody up on their hot. Guys, also MX Tire next to Dunlop. They've got 25 kits down there. You better get them while you can, guys. See Jeff Cernick, MX Tire. Got all kinds of things happening. 40%. Off MX pants, I believe, forty percent off, hundred dollars off of Bell helmets. Uh, man, just all kinds of crazy stuff. No need to wait till Black Friday. Yeah, beat the crowd. Go get it now. Yep, go see Jeff and the gang over there. They're going to hook you up. Going to get you everything you need for this week. And man, oh man, Mikey, I, I can't believe it. we're a month out from Christmas. Oh, don't remind me. I might need to go do some shopping today. As a matter of yeah, fact, as a matter here's of what fact. you do. I'm going to give you the tip, guys. Whoever you owe a present to, just flip them a $100 bill. They're going to be thankful and happy. You're going to be good. Just carry a pocket full of them. Well, I know what I'm getting from out. West this year. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's exciting. Pass them out. Exactly. Pass them out, dude. You can't lose. Gift what cards. are you going to do with yours, Mikey? I don't know. I think I'll probably give it to you, so then I look like a good guy. Awesome. Here you go. Happy or Merry yeah, Christmas. Take that <laughs> one and pass it around. You're a hero. <laughs> uh, hey, dude. Mikey gave me $100. Man, that guy must be loaded. I am. <laughs> I made just renting the money. I made seventy-five bucks on Christmas and dinner from Mikey. <laughs> oh boy, he he did. I did get a free dinner last night. Not mad about that. Thanks, I got Mega. three monsters for eleven dollars. I love the Ooh. guy. <laughs> <laughs> rider down, rider down, rider down. Right before the Gator Pit and the seventy-two Jet gonna check in now. Two laps completed. Gunner in the second place position. And it's and it, it, he told me on the it's podium Rao. it's not wow oh it's not it's wow wow yeah like um, Christopher Walken wow yeah that's him wow hey you're talking Owen to me Wilson. you're coming to my guy all wrong you're talking to me that's hey. De Niro I think that is De Niro <laughs> hey what's he say about your mother hey can your mother sew boom have her sew this. <laughs> That's what he said. Oh, my goodness. Remember oh that? Oh, my goodness. Can your mother suck? All right, back to wow out <laughs> front. Lost wow. Billick, Nolan, Anderson, Likens, Otto, Hines, Stewart, and Riley all up in the mix. You got Ryder, Anderson, fifth. Ryder, Likens, sixth. Zyler, Otto, 
in the number seven spot. Cheyenne Hines in the number eight position. Declan Stewart ninth and Jacob Riley rounding out that top 10. Moving, watching the number 72, a Jet Wow out in front. Leading the way, he's turning some fast lap times. He's got about a four second, three and a half second gap between him and Gunnar Lusk, who's also running a 204, but just a bit outside. Hey, three divisions here. We're taking the top 12 That's in the it. transfer. So if you're There's Alves, Lorenzo, there's my buddy, little yeah. Lorenzo Alves. If you're Lorenzo Alves, you got to get on your trusty steed. You got to rock. He's all the way from Massachusetts. His dad said, I brought the family here. I went back home and I worked, and I came back on Monday. That's grinding right there. Boy, so it's about Boy. travel. And this guy drives. He loads everybody up. He'll be in Texas. He did a lot of arena crosses this summer, the uh, kick arena cross. That guy was everywhere. Hey, and you know, uh, Wes, it's a mode. It's a state of mind. Yeah. Okay. I mean, this guy was everywhere. He was in Texas. He was in Oklahoma. And I'm like, are you serious? You're from Good Massachusetts? He goes, yeah, we just drove in. Him, the him. wife, the baby, two car seats. And the rider. He said, I'm headed back to work tomorrow at 7. <laughs> no, he didn't. He said, he came back. down here, got everybody set, set the camp up on, like, Thursday, went back home, came back here on Monday morning. Like, wow. That's Mom right. had to handle the fort. I actually started pushing a bike and staging for Supercross practice and first motos. Right on. Hey, they are core. They're core. That's our people right there. <laughs> they are soldiers of the road. White flag out, yep. Mikey. White flag is out. Jet Wow leading the way. Sub two minute lap time for him. If that's shocking anybody at home, if you've not noticed watching Racer TV, they do cut out a little bit of this track for the little guys. So yeah, they're not they're not like. I'm not saying it's not impressive. It is oh. given their track machine. You get it. I've Gunner Lusk in the two spot. Ryder Billick in third. Fourth place Huxley Nolan. Ryder Anison in fifth place. Ryder Likens in sixth. Seventh Tyler. Or excuse me, Zyler Auto. Cheyenne Hines in the eighth spot. Jacob Riley, ninth, tenth is Declan Stewart, eleventh Harrison Vagel, and Lorenzo Alves rounding out that top twelve for the transfer. Finn Johnson, you gotta make something happen here. Oh yeah, hey, and guess what? Another wave of fifty-one CC seven eight limited Let's on the gate, ready to attack so this man-made, natural-made battleground here. That division two. That's two on the okay. on the track. Awesome. We're gonna have three down in the gate. Good deal. So when you see these many divisions, little guys, Moto is doing very well and will continue doing well in the future. Absolutely. Local dealers are happy uh, selling gear, selling parts, keeping everybody involved. Local promoters uh, out there doing a great thing, getting the uh, proper opportunities and places for these kids to ride. And it, it's just a win-win for everybody. When the, when the small classes are doing good, Mikey, that, yeah. that's a great sign for everybody. I mean, yeah. And to your point, you think about – the time frame that we're in it's 2023 we're knocking on 2024 well what happened you know three four years ago we won't even say the word but we all know what happened in mm -hmm. 2020 and these are those age groups where dad goes hey i got some time i'm gonna go get the kid a p-dub at three or four yeah and by the way uh, pick myself up a new and, and, and factory factory as well. <laughs> you know when we were all panicked the motorcycling industry was panicked like what's going to happen in this situation they go oh what's going to happen we're not going to be able to get parts or bikes but we're going to sell out of everything hey, i'm not going to mention no names of one dad in particular took his son who was five years old and he says oh so and so already had has a had a hernia i'm like he's only 18. well we went to the races with my, my uncle, my cousin, and I took him to the dealer and took a 50 and knocked it down. I said if he could pick it up, he could, he could, I'd buy him the bike. Oh, Lord. And the kid got a hernia, he picked the bike up, and he's still racing. He, he's racing. But I looked at the dad, I'm like, really? That's beautiful. You got your five-year-old a hernia to prove that he wanted to ride the bike. Wow, you got you got to want I'm it. I'm not going to mention that, that name. You got to want it. I'm not going to mention that name, but he is racing. So who was it? Not, not that's, that's pretty insane. Just West. think about think about crazy dads and riders that are actually doing pretty good. That was a crazy dad. Yeah. I'm going to knock it on the ground, you pick it up and Santa will bring it uh, to me. Yeah, because no. no. that, that never came to my attention because for 30 years that was protocol with me and some parents, you know. And when are they big enough? Well, if they touch the ground, if they pick it up. <laughs> and we'd lay brand new CRF XR50s on their side. <laughs> you were promoting. I was promoting a You're hernia. With the yeah, doctor. Exactly. I'm like, oh, pulling the trigger over there. Those guys are airborne. Let's talk about Look at this. our riders out there. They're sending it. Just like Ricky Johnson in 1988. Sending it. Mickey Diamond. 88 was that comeback year. Had that broken nice. wrist, man. Hey, Mickey Diamond won here. The 125. Mickey Diamond. 
second year, as a matter of fact, uh, was an unknown on an open class Husqvarna. And what happened? National number 43. Roger DeCoster said, that guy might be able to ride a 125. They put him on an HRC factory 125 Honda, and he yeah. went back to back, yeah. 86 and 87 with the number one. The best one was the fail. He came over JMB. here, he got it done, and went back. He didn't hang out here for five years. Well, it took him an extra year because his teammate, Kudrowski, at round three, knocked him down and broke his wrist. <laughs> uh, the, You're on extended stay. Bell, yeah, Bell was uh, such a threat, and Kudrowski, you know, they were told to stay away from each other and that kind of thing. Uh, and sure enough, man, Kudrowski cleaned him out, broke his wrist, and it took an extra year for Bell to get it done. Well, here we go. These guys are getting it done right there. Andre Williams out there, Armando Gonzalez. Uh, you're watching him. Tix, Gaudier, Steele, Levi Meyer, Clark Mayo, Andrew Gonzalez, Patrick Pentru, Sateri, Holmes, Sweeney, Forrest, Donaldson, Likens, Beckham Smith, Emerson. Jones, Johnson, Wheeler, Hall, Tolan, Zink, Tarnow, Tolan, Rodriguez, Perry, Domp, Dill, and Bauer all make up the field. Division number three. And who's out front, Mikey? Hey, the 260, Absher Hall leading the way. Got a three and a half second lead over Shannon Tarnow, who checked in in the number two spot. Carter Holmes sitting in the third place. Beckham Smith back there in fourth. Tucker Tix in fifth place. Max Forrest sixth. Seventh is going to be Mason Wheeler. Ryan Cesar ready in the number eight spot. Ninth, Braxton Guthrie. Tenth is Amadio Gonzalez, Adam, and then it cuts off because the name is so long. We're here for it. Levi Meyer in the 11 spot. Dominic Steele rounding out the top 12 for the transfer. The man who needs to make something happen, Patrick Pastral. And James Knob, Jackson Jones, and Tolan all back there, and they're going to be fighting for that 12th spot. Good job out there. Absner Hall looking good out there. Tarno Holmes tips, and it's not Ryan Cincerello. It's so ready. <laughs> As good. we said, three divisions in this one, 12 from that each. 12. That's going to give us that 36 we're looking for. But what are we taking? And It'll we, be like the top two when we get down to the – Yep. Or top, only have one Ponce, yep. top four. Four. Get her That'll be what it'll be. A lot at stake there. There's so much Got at stake. Got the 51cc mini moms down here chewing on the fingernails, oh. bouncing up and down on the P dance. Got to go get pedicures when they're done and then broke all that, uh, all that hardener off. It off. Yeah, the acryl Nulled acrylics are gone. Gone. Exactly. You gone. Get, if you look on the other, by the way, if you are a young child uh, sitting on the fence, please get off the fence. Thank you. Um, hey, guys, off the fence in front of the announced hour. If you are on the he's fence. Look, he's looking for mom's fingernail, and we get it, but you got to get off the off fence. Off the fence, bud, in front of the announce tower. I need you off the fence. Please, dad, number 91, hashtag 91. Look to your right Tell and that pop that man. child off the fence. There you go. There hey. you go. 521's there you go. on 521's got it. Shout out to 521. Thank you, bud. Off the fence. Thank Stay you. Stay off the fence. Thanks, buddy. I mean, we just want you to, want you to be safe. Thank you. Five, 521 is Harris. Harris. Got you, brother. Appreciate you. Harris is good. He's good in my boat. It's that hashtag 91. we got to turn up that miracle ear. Yeah, see, uh, the kid, he was just looking for mom's fingernail, I'm telling you. Uh, Absher Hall doing his thing out in front. we got another lap completed here. Shannon Tarnow in the two spot. Carter Holmes in third. Beckham Smith fourth. Tucker Tix. And then there's Braxton Guthrie checking in in the number six spot. Mikey, there's a bit of real estate out there between them. But uh, all in all, the numbers, 153-5 for Hall, 153-4 last time for Tarnow. Still only a gap about three seconds, so not insurmountable at this point. Yeah, certainly within shot. And back in seventh, uh, checking in now, Mason Wheeler, Ryan Ciceretti in eighth, Max Forrest ninth, uh, Amadio Gonzalez in tenth, Levi Meyer back in 11th now. Levi's got to get moving. Got to get I mean, moving. He's in, he's in a qualifying he's in, spot, but, but they're not going to be happy back there. Right. He's got to really qualify with some dominance. So That's it. Get Tough. yourself moving, Levi. Dominic still in right now in the Rider number 12 down. spot. Uh-oh. Patrick less than a second back. On the way up the gator back, first step up there. Ryder down in the bottom. Didn't mean to step on you there, Mike. No, you're good. Bad, but uh, caught me by surprise. All right, here we go, guys. Absur Hall. Absur Hall, Tarnow, and Carter Holmes out there making it. Yellow flag going down in the pit. We'll pick up that rider. The looking on Racer TV. The 710 of Tarnow now, and Beckham Smith going at it at the bottom of the pit. Watch those two gladiators. Uh oh, Beckham Smith coming through there, fires out of the pit. 
Smith now going after Tarnow. Smith makes the pass on Tarnow and he sets his sight on Hall. Yeah, had a rider down up the climb there out of the Gator Pit, getting 10 to 2 right now. Looks like we're getting him back up on his feet. Beckham Smith out front. Yeah, we're going to make sure. Hey, safety first, guys. Always. Always. Yeah, Smith put a good run on right there. Hall able to defend. Not sure. It looked like Smith drifted a bit wide. Yes. Right now up over the Gators back. Got to watch that Gator back. I did have a pat siding Drabinsky. Oh, yeah. From Baja Bra. Right he is on, on Pat, Yeah. With the Zohan. The Zohan. He, they're in here. They're at large. They're in for the day. Look out. Ticks in that number four spot. He's putting in some good laps right now. Tucker Ticks. Glenn Burning, Maryland. And here we go. Watch him now <clears throat> as they rock and roll out there. There's Abzer Hall. You're watching him. And he's got company. That is, it looks like the 133 of Beckham Smith. Side by side. Smith now making, making something happen. He's, oh, he makes the pass. You watch on Racer TV. It's shaping. Oh, the end the twist. He's in the switchback. And it looks like Smith pull a koala bear move. Yeah. And man. takes over the point. We'll see him fire down in front of the announce tower. The 133. There he is, Beckham Smith. Man, that was a quick move right there. Wow. He comes all up I there. saw, yeah. He pulled the trigger, made it happen, done right We're there. Watching the shot from the back, and all you saw was that white helmet of Smith. Go choom, choom. Yeah. Wow. Great job. Check Checkers flag. go. Yep. Checker flag is out. Absher Hall, yep. Absher Hall rounding out in that number two position. Beckham Smith with the win. Shannon Tarnow going to bring home that third place. Well, Wes, I got to tell you, that was a good one. That was last turn. Okay, that, that happened quick right there for sure. Hey, they race every lap. They race to the finish. That's what they're No caught. question. That's exactly how they're trained. Bobby Regan will tell you, you win every lap. Every lap. Yep. Race. All right, 51 CC 46 Limited Division One. There he is, Alexander Robinson, Teague Brasso, Wyatt Bethany, Mickey Fullhart, Fluhart, Raleigh Gall, Kyler Key, Cole Colwell. It's Jeffrey Shalom, Carter Reniker, Jason Anderson, Jackson Anderson, not Jason Anderson, Bryson Smith, Daxon Sladovic, Jaylee Osola, J.C. Smith, Bryson Garris, Robert Fender, Wade Lloyd, Caden Wood, Kimmy Wheeler, Tucker Carpenter, Jet, Coderis, Brady Taylor, Cade, Swart, Baker, and Sailor James Meadows. Sailor. Sailor James. Remember Jacob Meadows. Sailor? I do remember Jacob Sailor. This old Jacob man would sell you anything. Come here, let me show you something. Old Scott Sailor. Oh, I yeah. got Seiko. Get some <laughs> Seiko here. Yeah, those were some good times. All right, here we go. They're on the gate. Hey, let's see what Levi Meyer did. Levi Meyer get in. Yes. Dominic Steele got in. Yep. Uh, Nob, Tolan Jones, you guys got to go to the LCQ, but should have a problem. We're going to take top four out of there. Yep. But Becca Smith takes the win. Hall, Tarnell takes color. So Reddy, Wheeler, Gonzalez, Pastru, Forrest, Meyer, and Steele. All right, two card is up with division number three. Hey, don't forget, SLR Rifle Works, they have raffle tickets still. I don't know when they're going to pull that. But I'm telling you, it is a treat if you are uh, the winner of that. You are going to be the envy of the property. Several of our buddies uh, popped on it, for sure. Several of our buddies uh, picked up some tickets. A couple guys bought two. Did you so get one? Not yet. Not yet. I might jump in there. I might just jump in there. Odds are looking pretty good right now. I mean, not bad at all. You, you never know if they're going to pull that bad boy. It could just be your Thanksgiving. Your oh, man. You're thankful for. Whew. Here we go. Dropping down in the pit. Gate is down. And they're going to hand salute that SLR Rifle Works billboard over there. And they are. They've got, hey, they've got that scope sided in. <laughs> they're lined up here, and they're headed to the Gators back. And that's a little guy there. I don't know who. I can't, I can't see the binoculars. Won't even get me down that far. Go ahead, little Dean. Have some pork ribs. There we go. Little Dean in the house. I might have to say, let's take a bet. Who who do you think is out front? 
Robinson, Reniker, Rice and Smith. What do you see, Meg? Really tough to see those numbers, I can he, tell you. Definitely. Here we go. Who's got a who's got a light? Lil Dean training, looking at the monitor. It's about two. They told you don't get close to the TV, Lil Dean. You're gonna hurt your eyes. Oh, number ah, 33. There Who is we it? go. Yep. There we go. Where is he? Now we've got it. 90, 93, Wes. I thought he said 33. Oh. <laughs> well, I got muffs on, so I hear him. Jeffrey Salkoff, Sterling, Illinois rider, out front. <laughs> Man, quit laughing at me, bro. I love it. Sal Salkoff looking good. Southoff. These little guys on it. Four to six limited, Division One, 51 CC competitors. And there's our guy right there. The 93 looks good. Who is in second? We're going to have the lowdown when they come out of that pit, though. You know that. For sure. Our live Absolutely. timing is on it. Oh, Ryder goes down. I believe our second place competitor goes down. Is that number 15? Riley Gall from Loveland, Ohio. Back on his trusty steed. And off he goes. Quick remount. Hey, his trusty steed refired with expertise as he rocketed himself down the gator pit. Her. Her. Hey, meanwhile, he leans into me with barbecue sandwich all over my, <laughs> dropping on my shoulder. Yeah, you've done that to Rodney with a pizza. Oh, gosh. Yeah, you've dropped pizza grease all over Rodney. I threw a rumor. slice of pizza out of no. this announce tower with a window open and hit Mike Picone in the back. And he just put on a brand new shirt. Man, when I think of some of the stuff we used to do, man, the Loretta's and different places. Wow. Wow. Here we go. Stop off out front. Blue Heart. Skodas. Taylor, Gall, Osceola, Bryson Smith doing a good job. Carpenter, Meadows. Meadows looks good. Swart Fager and Caden Wood. I wouldn't do it, but Caden Wood. And Carson Wood, too. Saxon, Slonovic. What do you see? You're peering. Yeah, I had to double check. Lost track of our leader there just for a second. Looking at Skidoris right now on the screen. Hey, real quick, Mike Brillinger, I believe is how you say it. Uh, we need you to come down to the base of the announcing tower here. Dad is looking for you. Mike Brillinger to the base of the announcing tower. You know what I thought was cool? My daughter's showing horses in the Netherlands, and her number is 260, and thought about Carson Wood out there uh, running that 260. I thought that was pretty cool. Here we go. What we got next, Wes? We got another division, 51 CC, 46 Limited. You can watch South off out there, Fluhart and Skodris. Here comes our leader right there. Leader, leader, leader. Come in, leader. Making something happen, rider number 93. Wow, making moves, just threading a needle out there, Mikey Wayne. Hey, looking good. How, he had a little checkup from the neck up right there before he went down into the gator pit. But, oh, doing well, he was. Oh, look out, little guy. A mistake there. right there. Little mistake. He waves. Hey. He goes, I'm okay. I'm good. Wait Don't a minute. Oh, poor little guy. Wait a minute. Oh, he's stuck. There he goes. Yeah. Like the hammer of Thor down there. He can't get it out of the ground. He's freaking out. Oh, boy. There goes somebody. They're running. Yeah. Turn around backwards. We got him. Mikey Wayne, that looks like you. It does. That, that looks like me bottle. after there was one bottle of bourbon left and some guy got to it before me. I just started to say, when you couldn't crack the seal on that bottle, <laughs> that's, that's, that's it. Look like. All right, here's another little rider down. That's the 731 ride. Want to get you back up on your feet and get going. So, Sapphire. Out there. Oh, wow. Hey, now you play the song, Slip Sliding Away. Yeah, look. They're, they're get, just sliding around out guys. there. They're, they're okay. I mean. Yeah, they're good. They're doing well out there. Safart, Fluhart, Gall, Taylor, Osceola, Smith, Skodris, Carpenter, Meadows, Swartfager. And there's the number five coming through. Well, I'm looking at our leader right there in the 93. Looks pretty good. 
That number five, Barrasso, working through. Hey, working there. He's headed to the Gizmo spotting tower, and then he makes it through the. That's right there. We saw Beckham Smith, whew, slippers and eel through that Ooh. switchback. That's a pretty good shot from the rear, too. You just see that is. Yep. move through there. Yep, I like it. And things happen rather quickly. Here he is about to buzz the tower. He wants to make a pass. Is the is the pattern closed? Megawatt for the 93. Negative. He's in there. Pattern is open. Yep, there he goes. And no, you don't have, he don't have to take the shot. He's below the hard deck. Right. He's in there. He's yeah, good. Exactly. He's going to be a 51cc 46 limited top gun by the end of the week before you know it. He he's, might. He's cleared for a final pass. There White he is. White flag is out. White flag. One more to go. Final pass. Hey, there you go. Stay below the hard deck, guy. You're good. Sathoff checking in, third lap completed, bringing out the white flag, as you heard. Flew hard, <laughs> tries to keep pace. He's got five seconds to make up on that last lap. Can he go get him? No bogeys in the way. No bogeys in the way. Wow, Fender in there, Smith. Brasio, Colwell, Bethoni, Lee, Carpenter, Garris, Wheeler, Wood, all up in there. Parents are happy. They're jumping for joy. One more to go. Thumbs up. Wendy Meyer looking, looking to see what the field has got out there. They're taking score. They're keeping notes. Oh, you see it back there at my camp. They're like all kinds of strategy. There's their chalkboard. There's game plans. An abacus. Everything. Yeah. Oh, Nick Meyer's down there. Got it going on. Got a big picture of his face in the toolbox. <laughs> Boxo toolbox. There you go. His face. And what do you think it says by the picture? I mean, it's. I would have no idea what it says. I'm still by messing my tools. Nice. Oh, his big well, face. That's, that's, yeah, I don't fair enough. Man, I, I got to sell them boxes myself, man. Love them. Uh, I wish I did. I've already Absolutely. Asked, I can't. I don't know. Yeah, what it well. I think there's a Black Friday special on those as well. I believe I saw, there is. I think Carmichael reposted. I believe there is. I like to get on the megawatt program myself. The megawatt program is pretty sick. If you want to know the truth about it, I think you can make the right call. If you need now it. there with some autograph stuff. And could you make the right call? Yeah, probably. I, yeah, I like it. Probably could. We could use it on our TV yep. show, Vanilla Ice Project. Set it up yep. in the garage, make it nice. And them guys at Box, so uh, you know they're they're good dudes that make a quality product. They got that close ratio ratchet. Oh. Okay, the wrenches don't work on the corners of the fastener. They work on the flats of the fastener, so they don't round things off. Screwdrivers with ground carbon tips, dude. I mean, it's just specialized tools like two-in-one actual wrenches. Something that I bike. could use on my race car? Uh, well, you know, it's a specialized moto box. But, yeah, they do make uh, kits for uh, carts and things like that. So it depends on what you do. They make Checkers out. Kits. We'll get back to that promo in just a minute. Southall, Blue Heart, Golf. I'm loving it. Taylor, Scudris, Smith. Wood, Garris, and Swaggerhart, and Wheeler all in the top 10. They're going. It's all good. We need 18. There, Brasso gets in. Jay Smith, Fender, Lee, Megawatt finding me the connection now I need for that. What I found out is David Eller will be here Friday. Is when David Eller will be here. Right. We'll uh, hang out with him definitely. Are we we'll oh, doing a show up. on Friday? Well, we'll have him up here in the tire for a fact, probably on the show, no doubt about it. I like David Eller. And, uh, yep, coming down to keep an eye on Heath Harrison and the boys. Got to keep an eye on that. Starts are questionable. The last couple days, and then the boss is going to drive the brig home. Oh. Yeah. Yep. Love that guy. All right, Deegan Mullen out there. He's on the gate. Deegan Mullen in 51 CC 46 Lemon in Division 2. It's going to be Deegan Mullen, Cameron Buckman, Clement Hobos. Boone Lloyd, Hudson Hinch. Where'd you Esteban go, little Dean? Yurella, Rivers Rice, Maverick Manzer, Colton Tubbs, Carson Fitch, Camden Finala, Michael Hall. How many Michael Halls have come through the sport? At least uh, three uh, that I know. We have Michael Hall again coming through. Ryan Williams, Ryder Drake, Isa Lyman, Jacob Heiler, Aspen Nolan, Rowdy Keelon. If that don't sum it up for you, we got two Rowdies? Yeah, Rowdy Keelon, Hudson Bacon, Preston Durbin, Colton Phillips, Easton Conway, Jerry Urbanowski, and Henry Mannel. Yeah, uh, Rowdy Pro Keelon name. comes from the uh, Kenny Keelon back in the day. Rode out. I think he won Brooksville 
Pro National, Keelan did. Or let it out or something back then. Another strong one there late, Henry Manley. Sounds like he should be working in a Ooh. steel forge. Yeah. He might be driving. related to Brian Manley. Driving. Yeah, it might I be, mean, we dude. we got to do some check on that. That was a bad dude right there, no question. Oh, boy. Henry Manley's out there driving railroad spikes by hand. You know, that's what it sounds like, something like that. Wow. Uh, one of my friends says, well, if you're not doing good in school, maybe you can uh, work on the railroad. That kid's GPA went right up. Right. I don't know. I mean, the railroad makes good money, though, right? I don't oh, know. absolutely. Yeah, I'm all, saying. Uh, all my buddies, railroad. all my buddies retired from railroad, living pretty good. So. Right, maybe I have to get in <laughs> there. Is it too late? I think I have uh, 20 years left of me. Can I get a 20-year deal going? You got 20 good ones. Yeah, I take it in. Listen, and right now you can't find good good labor help. So uh, I'd say you. Good labor help. I'm I'd, in. I'd say you and I are qualified for sure. I mean, I can get 20 out of me, and I I don't know. They only had to pay well, me for a year or two. You're hoping the gamble. for 20 more. I'm just hoping for like five more good years. I'll be happy. That's just a it. goal. I just keep going. Wow, I'm going to hit 40. That's a miracle. Wow. I can't believe it. Well, I'm 29, so we're good. <laughs> you are the most shot out 29 year old I've ever seen. <laughs> hey, I'm the world's <laughs> oldest teenager, bro. I love that. That's uh, young at heart. Uh, you know, as cliche as it sounds, there's some truth to that. All right, watch out for these riders now trying to dog pedal through there. South Heart, Blue Heart, Safford, Blue Heart, Gall, Taylor. And these guys are getting after it. Cameron Buckman looks yeah. good. Oh, Buckman getting her done out there. Buckman was on the podium yesterday. Kid's no slouch. I, I, you know what? There ain't a rider here right. that's come through that gate that is a slouch. Uh, they are all no, no, no. get it done. <laughs> Definitely had to come here with the mindset to get it done for sure. I mean, who's getting it done? The world's oldest teenager, Wes Kane. That's true. <laughs> hey. Uh, Deacon <laughs> Mullen sitting in the two spot. He's about eight seconds back. Cameron Buckman trying to check out the later bill up front. Michael Hall, as mentioned earlier, the number 87 sitting in third. Jerry Urbanowski sitting in fourth place. Fifth place is a 45. Colton Tubbs, boo, Lloyd, or, uh, in the sixth place position. Clemente Lobos in seventh. Eighth place is Ryder Drake. Rivers Rice ninth. Jacob Heiler in tenth place. How many divisions did we have in this one? Was it just the two? I think it's yeah, we got yeah, plus 25 on the gate next. So we're going to speed this thing up a little bit. And it's going to be, it's shaping up to be a dandy. It's a dandy. Oh, yeah. Track's looking beautiful out there. I noticed a lot of times we get a little faster. And of course, these uh, 50 CC machines are doing a cut version of the track, but they're still running about the same lap times as the A riders out there. <laughs> That's right. right. I'll be your Huckleberry. Here we go, guys. Looking good. Get out of the track right now. 51 CC 4 to 6 limited. We're watching these guys make their way through the cut course right here. And what we're peeking in on, it looks like the number 857 possibly or the 45 of Colton Tubbs. Here they come. We're looking at the number 12 machine of Boone Lloyd. Boone Lloyd's grandpa puts you right to work. Send you right to that concrete crew. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> he ain't playing. I went to a race up there at Lake Sugar Tree, and they peeked in my truck, and we were friends right away. They're like, oh, you poor concrete. You poor concrete. I knew a little, little bit, gray too. Holes. Yeah, they're up there. They got great gold going on up there. Oh, we might have a pass made right here. The number three slipping up and leaving the door open, but no, not going to happen. He grabs a handful of throttle, a fistful of momentum down the downhill. Handful of fist. Boom, boom. <laughs> if the right one don't get you, the left one will. <laughs> That's right. Knuckle dancing. There they go. Our leader, Cameron Buck, with about a 12-second lead now over Deegan Moore. And Michael Hall still in that third-place position. He rounds out your top three there. He's only about two and a half seconds back from Deegan Moore. He was putting the pressure on earlier in this lap by making a couple of mistakes. Going to fall two and a half seconds back. Boone Lloyd moving on up. That was Boone there on the number 12 machine that we were talking about earlier. Colton Tubbs falling back to the fifth spot. He'll still run out your top five, though. And then I'll tell you what, Tubbs, he must have had a little, little tip over the corner or something because he was quite a bit of time off of our leaders. Big shout out to Blue Groove Media. Listening back in Texas says, hey, it's uh, entertaining and informative. Got us listening that back there. So love to give those guys a shout out. If they're going to take the time to listen and uh, you got to holler at them. Let yeah, them know. I got a text earlier from uh, CJ Harris down at Pax Track. He's in a, a skid steer listening along and yeah, enjoying man, the racing. It's good. But right now, you're watching Buckman, Mullen. Megawatt's got something for me. Jordan Burns checking in with us. Jordan Burns from Moto Triple X says, hey. Hey, my guy. Mini Chrome out there. 
He's got him out there. Jordan Burns has got guys all over the place. Buckman, Mullen, Hall, Lloyd, Tubbs, Lobos, Drake, Urbanowski, Rice, Heiler, and Riley. Oh, Riley Keelon's in there. Oh, Rowdy Keelon. Come on now. Yeah. Rowdy. He's Rowdy. I don't know if he's Rowdy because his name's Rowdy or he's Rowdy because he is a Keelon. <laughs> he's probably rowdy both ways around because yeah. the Keelons can get rowdy. There's a herd of them. If you mess around, you get some. You get, hey, you know what I say? You're going to get what you ask for. Exactly, 100%. You, you mess around, you're going to get it. I saw Kenny Keelon last night, and he hasn't. He looks the same. He hasn't changed one bit. <laughs> same guy. Same guy. We've got our eyes here on the number three machine and the number 87 of Michael Hall. This is the battle we've been watching pretty much this whole moto now for the second, third place position. Well, I'm watching that white flag. Little Dean pop out. Yep, you guys got one more to go. We've got one more to go and a lot of road to hoe. Look at there, Mikey Hall, two seconds faster. That last lap through it, he is right behind the rear wheel of Diga Mullen. Only 0.6 seconds back as they cross the line, so keep your eyes on that one. And of course, like I said, we've seen Hall there with a uh, championship of the Supercross, so he's looking to continue this trend here in the motocross. Off to a pretty decent start up there in the top three, and the shot at Mullen may be a top two. Buckman checks up a little bit that last time around. I think he's feeling comfortable and making sure he's hitting his marks. Only ran a 214, only ran a 214. Yeah. All right, Buckman, Mullen, Hall, Lloyd, Tubbs. I think Hall's made the move. I think it's Hall now. Yeah. And that number two position, Mullen's yeah. fall back to number three. Michael Hall. All right, the nine, it looks like the 957 down in front of us. 857, Urbanowski tips over. Didn't lose a spot, back at it. That's what it's all about there. Oh, it goes down again. Is this the guy you're talking about you lost here? Little Urbanowski. Come on, bud. Urbanowski the third. Let's get it together. You're better than that. He's excited. He wants to go. Travis down there helping that little man out. Getting Old Travis going. Willis. Oh, yeah, he's everywhere. Been around forever. Freestyle extravaganza. <laughs> I'm going to jump this thing. Oh, yeah. Jump that bike in the pit. All right. Right off the wall. And they started doing backflips. He's like, oh, I'm out. I'm done. I think somebody should roll that thing up there, put a ramp, backflip it three or four times, and send it. Just send it. That's what we're all doing here at Gatorback Cycle Park <laughs> this week at Mini O's is sending it. Sending it here to the finish line in a bit. We'll have Cameron Buckman on the number seven machine. He'll be checking in with us and taking that checker flag here shortly. There goes the number seven by the tower now, doing a great job out there on his Cobra. And if I'm not mistaken, Cameron Buckman, he is out there on his Mitten Cycles Cobra. Also, yep. Scott Goggles, Reese the Next, Ryan on Power, FX Race, NPR2, all those guys helping him out. Of course, Mom and Dad. Check a flag flies for our winner. Buckman going to take it. Mullen, Hall, Lloyd, Tubbs in the top five. Race 25 out there, Junior plus 25. Brennan Malcher out there, Wilfredo Guzman. You know Wilfredo oh, Guzman. Oh, Wilfredo, yeah. His home used to be with Yoho over Eight there. City. Heath Harrison, Ladronio Segova. Cole McLean, Mark Denton, Lucas Scapinano, Thomas Scapino, Scapinero, Lucas Scapinero, Thomas Scapinero, Alicia Gago, Marvin Ellis, Gene Jones, Jeremy Parsons, Lachlan Bray, Jonathan Archibald, Mark Clark, Ryan Skibilba, Michael Carter, Blake Copeland, Robert Fitch, Nicholas Burgess, Hannah Hodges, Brooke Whipple, Mike Jones. Is that mad Mike Jones out there? There's no way. That no way. No way. I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> it would be nice if he was. I don't think Mike Jones is right push one five. Jeremy Walsh. Mike Jones has done his tour of duty. Matt Mike. I do not believe he is out there. We did a, no. a, a benefit for a buddy of mine a few a couple of years ago, and we ended up with a, a Mike Jones uh, jersey, full kit. And my buddy DQ said, I don't care what anybody bids on that. That's coming home with me. Yeah, for sure. And he got it. I mean, we do not. You don't get no better than that guy. You don't get. I can't remember what I got. That's a good. I'll text him and find out. Yeah. Yeah. That was a it was a hot ticket item. He wouldn't like we had stuff from like Roxon. He liked Tomac. We had some NASCAR NASCAR guys throw some stuff in as well. Nothing and, bigger. And my, bu Jones. my buddy, no, no, Mike Jones. I don't want none of that, man. That's he's like, Who? I want it. Who? Mike Jones. Who? Mike Jones. Who? Mike Jones. All right. That's it. Hey, guys. Here's CC46. Living the across the line here. Division number two. Cameron Buckman taking it away. Michael Hall did move into number two position. Dean Mullen in third. 
Boom. Boom. Going to the four spot, Boom. subs in the fifth spot, six spot, Clement Lobos behind Lobos, Ryder Drake in seventh, eighth spot, Jerry Urbanowski. Good job for him to bounce back. All right, here we go, Little Rice B. Dick, Tyler Rabbit, Keelan, Carson, <laughs> Bitch, Maverick, Manzer. Oh, here we go. Who's got the whole shot out there? It looks hey, like it is. I can it. remember calling that down before an intro these guys. Yeah, but you messed up because you said Mullins was in second and Hall and Bates. It's okay. It's all good. Boom. Oh, here we go. The Watch it now. This is your plus 25. It is the number 16 machine out there leading the way. Number 16. Wilfredo Guzman, that's our boy. Hey, that's your guy. Out of Dade City. Future MX, Hulls Drilling. No toil. Getting her done. Guzman. Hey, his parents just dropped him off at Dade City when he I was remember. like seven years old. And he lived with Randy Yoho. Here you go. Here's your new dad. Yep. Get in there. I remember like it was yesterday. Gosh. He wore those Hondas out, didn't he? Stevie <laughs> Roman going for it. You better watch out for Steve Roman. Yeah, Steve Roman, he's crafty out there. That's you will sure. get a scissor kick. A scissor. You got Edwards, Carson, Clouser, France, Chatfield, oh, Slane, Maynard, oh, man. Conway, Larnaway, Wolf, Godin, and Roman, Lawrence, Hughes, Henry, and Kehoe. Battle, battle, battle for the lead right and there. What about the Matthews? Halton. 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 Looks good. Here we go. It is still Stevie Roman out there leading the way. Looking good at number 731. Here comes Harrison, though. Harrison makes a crafty move right there to get around Wilfredo oh, Guzman. Yeah. Roman oh. not playing. Here comes Harrison, too. The crew is coming. Dude, that guy just got up quick. I'm not sure who that was, but, man, that That's guy Fitch. was on it. Watch Fitch out there to number 35. I think we got a race on our hands here, West, between Roman and Harrison. These guys are going to be going out the whole moto. And look out for your third place rider jumping up into the third uh, place. Suzuki is Corey Carson. There's a yellow going down in the pit. So we got a little bit of carnage down there. Ooh, medical. There is, that. is the 24. Heath Harrison makes a really good move on the Kawasaki rider. And there's your leader out there. Heath Harrison makes quick work and moves to the front. Out yeah. the gator pit he goes. Says, see, Roman, sit down. I'm going around here. Yeah, watch out. Roman's going to fire back at him. You better believe it. Corey Carson with a push down that third place position as well. He is trying to make his way around Roman. 281, Corey Carson sneaking up in there as well on that Suzuki. As you guys saw the pass and knocking on the door of Roman. Roman got to stop the bleeding. Absolutely. Got uh, that thing. Hey. Put a band-aid on it. Nah, he's got to turn it get out. He's applying pressure. That's it. But he can't go back. So he has Whoa. to go forward. Good little save right there by Roman. Thought he was coming off of that machine. He's on the outside, losing a little bit of time. Here comes Karsten. Well, the, look out for Wallstrom just uh, yep, behind him. Yep. Well, Harrison now made quick work because he don't want to be in that frying pan of a fracas back there. <laughs> Harrison, Roman, where is Fitch, Corey Carson out there? Wilstrom, Chatfield. And here they come. Here they come to make their way through the split lane right now. They're both taking the left side right there. So that left, left side must be the Honda line right now. But Carson, he is riding hard. He's riding aggressive. He really wants to try to make a move on Roman before this one is over to show Roman that he is a player here in the 1225 class. Yeah, here we go. Carson on the outside right there. And look who it is. Who is that? It's Mike Jones up in the tower. Who? Mike Jones. Mike Jones. Right here in the tower. <laughs> He's watching Steve Roman. That's yep. his his son-in-law. He's training him, grooming him. And actually, They're Roman training. was always at Arena Cross. He is better now than ever at 35. Harrison, too. Harrison's found his niche in these deck classes. Yeah, that's for sure. There's Harrison, Roman, Karsten. Fitch checking in fourth. Chatfield picking up a couple of positions up into fifth. Jeremy uh, Wallstrom, six. Michael France back to the seventh spot. Holtogger, France, Wallstrom look good. Hoggentogger, he's there in the eighth spot. Ninth spot, Michael Carter. And tenth spot is Kenny Henry. And that's your top ten right now as they run in this June 29 plus class. Looking on screen, Corey Carson, he's got an inside line here trying to thread the needle. Watch him go outside to inside right here to try to spare up underneath Roman as he does. I called that one for sure as he almost had a pass on Roman this last lap through to the sweeper, the gator tail as they call it. Oh, nice. Roman cuts him down, but look at there to the outside is Corey Carson taking his line away. He cuts down the inside right here to the rollers. Who's it going to be? They're side by side through the rollers. 
And into this tight right hander, I know that could have been out there on the track. That's a super tight right hander. Both of them throwing the back end around, doing a great job as Roman still stays in the second and keeping Corey Carson the third. But Corey Carson is hungry. He's out there battling for contingency money on this arm, Army Suzuki. And he is going to split the switch lane right here. Here we go. go. Love it. Go ahead. Oh, going to the right side. Lost both his legs right there. And that was a big mistake. I don't think that was a good idea to take that right side. As we've seen a lot before, he followed Roman through that left side. I think he probably should have done the same this time around. But taking shots, love to see it. Uh, Kevin Bailey whispered in the ear. He said, uh, I believe it's Carson's first race in, that, uh, in the junior 25, or first event, I should say, in the junior 25 plus. And stretching out and doing well with the boys. Ah, here we go. Harrison there, Roman, Carson, Fitch, Wolf, Chatfield, looking good, boys. Keep an eye on Denton. Guzman had the whole shot now back all the way to 16, 13. Conway, McLean. Looking good. Heath Harrison hanging out front, man. Laying it down. He had a 151 in lap two. He had a 153 in lap three. Roman Carson still going at it out there. You know who he is, Mikey? He's that guy so far out in front, the TV never catches him. That's it. <laughs> yeah, we, the drone can't fly fast enough. That's exactly. a problem. There's a headwind. <laughs> All right, again on screen watching Roman and Carson. Carson, man, he's, he's riding the track a little different than Roman trying to pick up with some good lines out there. It looks like he's definitely lost some ground. That mistake, I think, really cost him. But what do you think, Mike? You think he'll be able to bounce back? I think he's, he's got time. He's got time to make it happen. He's going to bounce back. He was too much in the fight. That was too exciting to watch for him not to get back in the fight. <laughs> if nothing else, hey, do it for the broadcast. Do it for the broadcast. And I'm going to give you guys a top 10 rundown, courtesy of Scott. We got our leader, Heath Harrison, Steve Roman, and second. Third spot is Corey Carson, fourth spot, Robert Fitch, Mitchell France in the fifth spot, Adam Chatfield in sixth, seventh is Justin Wolf, eighth, Jeremy Wallstrom, ninth, Kenny Henry, and your 10th place position is Matthew Hoggentyler. Love to see it, Heath Harrison done well so far. Here come the boys. Little dab there by the uh, 731 of Steve Roman as we now get the 24 of Heath Harrison on screen. It's almost like they heard me down there. <laughs> that is number 24 of Heath Harrison on his Phoenix Honda. And there's the second place rider, Steve Roman. Roman actually going a second faster this lap around. So look for Roman to try to reel in the hard charge of Heath Harrison. Oh, yellow flags out He's down, down there. I believe that might have been. Hoggatog with some issues or possibly Wilfredo Guzman as Guzman has dropped outside the top 10. It was Guzman with the issue as he finds himself in the 13th place position. Michael Clark going to move up to 12th, 11th, Michael Carter. Hoggatog in the 10th spot, 9th spot, Justin Wolf, 8th spot, just Jeremy Wallstrom, 7th spot, Kenny Henry, 6th spot, Adam Chatfield, Robert Fitch in 5th, 4th spot, Mitchell France, 3rd spot, Corey Carson, 2nd is Steve Roman, and of course our leader right now, you know who that is. Hey, H.H. Heath Harrison with the white flag out. Heath Harrison been pretty daggone sensational as Racer TV has been following the number 24 Phoenix Honda out there, hitting his marks, riding smooth, smooth as fast. It's all the cliches you want to use. Seen some great battling out of Roman and Carson. Mitchell France been on the move late in this one, making a charge. Been a good, good race here for the Junior 25 plus. Harrison loving that line right there as we saw, man, a lot of guys get carrying a great speed out of that turn. We saw Carson earlier, as you pointed out, Dean, trying to risk it, taking the other line, ended up being a little costly for him. Yeah, I did like that line that Harrison had. He went to that, that left side, that mm -hmm. left lane, but he hugged the wall right there, kind of like the inside of that uh, split lane. Nice little shot there. Nice little shot of Harrison out there, dragging that through those ruts, but Harrison fires through there, gets mm. a checker with vengeance. It's like, hey, that's my Phoenix Honda. Yeah. The boss is coming. I'm going to make sure he's happy. Yeah, the boss yeah. is on the way. There's Knuckles. Hey, good job. Heath Harris is pretty, pretty cool dude. Always yeah, smiling, too. He he's, will always risk it for the biscuit. Hey, man. You ever see that? Eat the biscuit. <laughs> Eat the biscuit. Yeah. It's yeah. creepy, man. It's yeah, creepy. It's wow. Weird. Yeah. 25. Got me thinking about Thanksgiving. Hey, there'll be some biscuits. 
All right, little Dean, let us know who's up there. 85, bring us home on that one. Oh, yeah, going across the line. Heath Harrison taking the win right there. A big win for him, getting a six second lead over Steve Roman. Roman going to finish up in second. Corey Carson in third. Four spot Mitchell France. This spot will be Robert Fitch, Adam Chatfield in sixth. Seven spot Jeremy Walsh. Eight spot Kenny Henry. Nine spot Justin Wolf. And ten spot running right your top ten. It's going to be Matthew Hoggentogler. Taking off the game right now, 85 CC, 9 to 13, division number one. Names like Gage Dunham, Kristen Pruitt, Drew Carr, Hunter Carlisle, Brady Landon, William Fisher, Quade Edwards, Gabriel Morales, Grady O'Connor, Matt McCauley, Bentley Murphy, Matt McKay, Levi James, Colt Martin, Justin Shuff, Nolan Humphrey, Jackson Dick, Colt Lackey, Gabriel Hongosh, Jace Seapree, Jace Cecchini, Trip Glasgow, Cash Anderson, Hayden Dupas, Jason LeBeau. Also, we got Jaden Cumbian out there, Antonio Antillon, Bryson Snellgrove, Emmett Baker, Steele Kelly, Sam O'Leary, Wyatt Grant, Cruz Martin, Cole St. Clair, Ryder Garrigo, Rocco Barone, Hudson Short, Andrew Johnson, and Sam Swapper. Swapper swapping it up out there. And here you go. Just gonna finish up this plus 25. And you can see these riders out there. Yeah, a lot more lines starting to get developed out there. As it's gotten deeper, it's gotten rougher. You see these guys taking the foot ruts out there. There they come. They're back by the road. Going to pick up our leaders. Let's see if we can get them on camera. Who is it out there leading the field? A good jump out there. I don't know, but I see our fourth place rider, Colt Martin. I would might say it's Trish and, uh, Trish and Pruitt. Probably if I had to gamble, if I was a gambler man, I would <laughs> say <are>. Pruitt is, <laughs> is laying the wood down right now. I think that's Pruitt in second place, actually, on the number seven machine. We'll see. Let's take a little gander. Coming through the sections, they're gonna be coming through the switchbacks, and they'll be buzzing the tower. And our SLR live drone rifle works here split back. Two, three lines in there wide. Well, if that's Pruitt in second, he's challenging. Let's see what happens. Yep. Need that. Double that. Triple that. And <laughs> let's see. Ups 95 Justin ride. Justin Shuff out there. I don't see Pruitt. There's Pruitt back and forth. Oh, wow. So, so. Shuff in the 64 machine, I believe, in second. That should be uh, Murphy, I believe. So, uh, it's over there. Oh, sorry. I was right on that. Nolan Murphy there. I up see the, the 47 in the mix as well. Yeah, Cole Martin come. firing up there, going for the lead. Pruitt, your boy, he's in the fourth place position. So it's Justin, Justin Schuff, Nolan Murphy, Colt Martin, Tristan Pruitt, Gage Dunham, Quade Edwards, Ryder Rigo, Hayden Dupas, Andrew Johnson, and Sam O'Leary in the 10th place position, rounding at your top 10. All right, here we go. Stay as she goes now. Schuff, Murphy, Martin. Pruitt now going to make some moves out yeah, there. I believe Pruitt's going to find his way up in the second right now and going to be challenging for the lead on Sh Justin Stubb. He does get around Nolan Murphy, but we see Colt Martin also putting some pressure on Murphy out there right now. Martin's no slouch. I saw O'Leary get a win earlier today. Let's see what he's got. Oh, clear. shuffle with the look over, and that's not who you want to see beside you. A full rear view mirror of Tristan Pruitt. Uh, Pruitt now it's moving real good. See him change those lines. He's not going to just stay settled in. Here he goes. Drops to the inside along the road. But our leader, Shuff, has got to start shuffling because here comes Tristan Pruitt. And Tristan Pruitt is going to do it. He's Man, all over him. That top five right there. Is Take the shot. The game here. He's over Take the, the shot. The shot. Here he goes. Taking the shot right now. He's yeah. side by side. Let's see what happens. They go into this split lane right here. Are they going to take a different option, or are they going to slam each other in the same line? No. I think Pruitt took the better line there. Pruitt to the right. Let's see what happens. Yep. Yep. A nice little, uh, well, catch me outside, and he did. And Pruitt now takes up the point when he buzzes the tower here. It's going to be Pruitt. And in 90, I believe, there's Murphy. So Pruitt's going to move up there. Martin's going to shuffle in. I got Shuff, Murphy, Martin. Here they go across the line. Your leader is Tristan Pruitt. Justin Shuff, he's going to fall back to the second spot. After that little move out there on that lap, Nolan Murphy, he's going to be in your third place position. Fourth spot is Cole Martin. Up to the fifth spot now is Gage Dunham. Watch out for Dunham. You know he's going to get up in this battle. Gage Dunham, he is the mayor of Colorado, the whole state. The whole state. He's got it covered. 
Tristan Pruitt doing his thing out in front. He was a rider we saw earlier today that was, oh yeah, good battle back here for the number three spot side by side. But Pruitt, we know from earlier today, a dangerous man when he's out in front with the clean air. Yeah. Gotta have that clean air. Makes that temperature drop at least 10 degrees. A little bit. Just a little bit. And Dunham, that was Dunham past the Murphy that we see it on the screen right there. So on, on cue. Ride. So it looks like Martin and Dunham have probably gotten around Murphy now as Murphy is trying to claw his way back inside. So Dunham now looks like he is putting his pressure on the 47 of Cole Martin. Dunham trying to cut up inside right there. And Martin felt it. He seen him hit the brakes, didn't let him cut under, almost took out Dunham's front wheel. But both these riders still up hard and charging. Your leader Cole Martin taking the outside around the hump after the gator tail right there, which seems to be a little bit of a better line. But Dunham is pushing hard now as they go through the rollers, making speed in those rollers. You see that? We sitting down and wheeling off the back of those things. He actually gained speed coming out of the inside. He had no need momentum. When you make momentum out of the rollers, your leader, it is still Tristan Pruitt looking to check out in this one. But watch out in seconds. Justin Schuff engaged Dunham in the third spot, trying to reel him in. Back to the fourth spot is Cole Martin. And I believe now in fifth we'll have Nolan Murphy on the number 64 machine. Division number one, 85, 913. Division number one. Division two loading in the gate. And then we'll pick it up with some uh, schoolboy two action. Heck yeah, be a good one. Pick it up. Good one on track right now. Tristan Pruitt checking in. Three laps completed now with 201. Slowing up a bit, but getting the job done out in front. Justin Schuff checks in in second. Gage Dunham, as you guys heard from Dean down there. Gage on the move up into the three spot around Colt Martin. Nolan Murphy falls back into the number five position. And in sixth spot, we got Craig Edwards. Seventh, Ryan Dorigo. Hayden Dupas in the eighth spot. Ninth spot, Sam O'Leary. And tenth spot is Brady Lander. Look at time this morning. I was like to check it up and see who's doing what out there, especially in the middle of the traffic. Ryder Drigo, man, he has been riding hard and riding solid all week. But he's found himself in seventh this motor right here. That just goes to show you what a start can do for you or not do for you. Looks like Cole Martin on the 47 machine. He might be uh, starting to reel in. The number five machine to Gage Dunham, just a little bit tight with that drag as West Kane likes to see. Mm -hmm. And that track is looking awesome right now. You see about seven or eight lines as they go through that sweeper. And that sweeper is a big, long sweeper. And when you get in that one of those grooves, one of those lines, you got to carry right. it all the way around. You got to stay in there. You ain't jumping out of that one. Uh -uh. And honestly, these guys haven't. Haven't let Pruitt slip up too much. He is still just about three seconds ahead. We got Justin Schuff. Justin Schuff got about three seconds on our third place rider, Gage Dunham. And it looks like possibly two seconds to Cole Martin. So he's got spread out a little bit, but I'll tell you what. Tell me. It's a long moto. Mistakes can be made, and if a mistake is made, these guys are right there to capitalize. You gotta think about that. There's only three seconds. How easy is it to make a three-second mistake? I make three-second mistakes every day. I, I'd say I at least double that. <laughs> By noon. By noon. <laughs> By noon. <laughs> Tristan Pruitt, he's mistake-free. My goodness. Uh, at least so far. Let's knock on wood. No announcer curse up here. You're doing well, Tristan. Keep it up. Ah, he was solid, solid. He had it. I mean, every other name at the award ceremony was Tristan Pruitt. Tristan Pruitt. Yeah. He, he, he sat up in front, so we didn't have more to walk. There you go. Out there, getting it done. That saves his energy. Yeah. The number five started to chip away at the number 55. Justin Schuff better pick it up because here comes number five, Gage Dunham. Dunham in your third spot, trying to catch that five, five, five. Or sorry, 55 machine. A lot of fives. A lot of fives out there. Five, five. I'll tell you who's going to get a five. That's Tristan Pruitt riding the ride the dreams are made of out there right now. Dreams are made of that. Give it to their top 10 rundown as they went through for lap number four. This is the white flag lap. One more to go for Tristan Pruitt, Justin Schuff, Gage Dunham, Colt Martin, Fire and Colin out of there, bro. Hayden Dubas, Ryder Rigo, Clay Edwards, and Cash Anderson. Next up, division number two. Going to be good. It's exciting as Pruitt out there in the rest of the field. This one here should also be a good one. Absolutely. 
going to be a lot of fun, a lot of great racing. Like we've seen a lot of great racing here. I'm sure we'll see the same thing in division number two as we see Tristan Pruitt on screen right now, going through this little rhythm section. In front of all his fans, I see him jumping at the fin fence line, cheering and screaming. Watch him as he jumps the Gizmo Tower. These guys are nearly jumping off the Gizmo Tower, cheering him on. Yay, let's go, Tristan. And here he comes around the tower. It's the number seven machine on his Husqvarna. Free Tristan Pruitt. Looks like Gage Dunham now has made a move into that second place position, so I missed that one. Has the 55, and Justin Shuff finds himself back in the third. Fourth place gonna be Colt Martin as they make their way through the finish line area. These top four riders got a little bit of a gap over our fifth place rider. But we should see Nolan Murphy come around and take that fifth place position away. There we go. We reset on Racer TV. You guys saw Pruitt come through for the win. Checkers out. Gage Dunham hangs on for second. Chef rounding out that top three. Colt Martin fourth. And rounding out the top five. I believe that will be the 64. No. Scratch that. Sam O'Leary, the 312 KTM, checks in. Rounding out the top five. We got more on deck, West Kane. I tell you, Samuel Hawks on the gate, ready to go in division number two, 85 CC 913. Ryder Rent, Blake Cross, Braden Dorbell, Cooper Johnson, Emmett Johnson, Nolan Ford, Dylan Richard, Braxton Becker, Owen Pomeroy, Tygo Gross, Uriah Messersmith, Logan Ford, Hudson Vagel, Nicholas Guzman, Braxton Mays, Francisco Capelli, Anthony Vaselli, Max Lasco, Daniel Lane, Brantley, Bridal, Sawyer Geek, Chase Datchel, Brady Olson, Britton Creeplo, Miguel Bohr, Brock Lamb, Owen Stoddard, Riker K, Adam Graham, Colton Oldenberger, Chase Morgan, Parker Noez, Blake Wills, Weston Chris, Blake Lasky, Ryder Davis, Reed Cone, and Caleb Likens. Some heavy hitters out there. Decent battle up front hey, with your front three. There's heavy hitters in all over the place. Is, this is, <laughs> you Chase Dashiell, that's the man, the 196 machine leading out the 44. I believe that's Logan Ford in second. Nolan, isn't it? Nolan's in that. Yeah, Nolan Ford. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, yeah, there yeah. is Logan Nolan's Ford here, but that, that is Nolan Ford. Yeah, yeah Nolan, Nolan's in that 7-3 diesel. Deleted. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> going, going. Going the distance. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Hawk looks good. Cooper Johnson, let's get a look at him. Watching very closely as riders go to and fro along the roadside. Hey, they need some roadside assist out there. Free wide. Can they make it happen? Absolutely. They call AAA. They shoo him right through there. And it looks like Nolan Ford got the assist megawatt and he moves to the front of the field. Uh, Green light ha, ha, ha. go. A round of applause by Megawatt there. What's that? Crazy Carl. Oh, we'll crazy Carl. He's got a bandana on this morning. He's ready to go. That's dangerous. He sleeps with that thing on. Yeah, he knew what happened over there at Supercross when he wasn't wearing the bandana, so he's not going to take the thing off anymore. He's got that bandana with Don't a wash it. Pay on it. <laughs> Don't wash it. Hair too pay. All right, with, with, it looks like Ford now in the lead, making that move on the open last hatch. Going back to the third place position. All right, it's gonna be Ford. Watch Ford when he fires that up hit. He sees that green flag. And that means go Ford. Brady Olsen looks good. Dashiell, Sawyer Geek, Braxton Mez, Samuel Hawk, Case Morgan, Cooper Johnson, Hudson Bagel, Francisco Capetti, Blake Risky, and Max Lesko, Blake Frost, Tiger Gross, Braxton Wills, Logan Ford, Nicholas Guzman. Ren, you need to be in the top 18 to transfer in. So Ren and Guzman on the good side. On the side that needs to make a move is Priscilla and Pomeroy need to like get up in there. So somebody is gonna lose that battle of transferring and have to go to the LCQ. Yeah, that's what's all about that transfer battle right there. Well, you got your you got your leaders out there, your top three, you're keeping an eye on them, but there's also some action going on all the way through the field. But 17, 18, 19, and 20 is uh, where, you know, things could get harder or easier for you for the rest of the, the week. You want to transfer in, settle in, and have a good time. 
I'm watching a battle on screen right now. It's Chase Dash. Oh, Sawyer, Sorry, geek. these guys are getting into it right now through that sweeper. Ooh. Oh, dab Ooh. there for Chase Dash. Yo. Gonna make that mistake, but still try to make some crafty maneuvers to stay in front of the 18 of Sawyer Geek. Dash Hill now, I'm gonna give him a shout out. Been going a lot of these amateur nationals, and Dash Hill has always found his way up on the podium. And that's confidence that you build when you come to an event like this. You're used to being up there. You know what it means to be on that box. And a lot of these kids, like little Levi Meyer, he's like, I gotta get on the box. It doesn't matter, and he's a little dude. And he's on that e-bike, and they're already like, I gotta get on the box. Nothing matters. But me getting on the box and and I'm sure that's what all 40 of them want but uh it's start pretty small right get a little taste right. of it and then you crave it Ford. side by side right now watch him guys I'm sorry there's a good battle on the track right yeah. now get him Dash Hill tries to get back around square geek he might have the pass made as they drop it in the pit before the finish line let's see here oh, yes, Dash Hill look at that. Him down. that was a slide move that was a good move right there that momentum he had going to the corner was amazing. Here come our leaders checking in with us. Nolan Ford, still your leader. Brady Olson in second. Chase Dashiell, he's back to the third spot. Swear Geek and Forrest back to uh -huh. the fifth spot, sixth spot, up to sixth spot. Should I say? Chase Morgan. Chase Morgan's going to drop Cooper Johnson. Or Cooper Johnson moving to seventh. Samuel Hawksman's going to drop back to the eighth spot. Nice spot, Hudson Vigeli. And then we got Blake Rayeski in the tenth spot. And that's your top ten right now in the Super Bowl. 85 CC, 9 to 13, Division number two. And the battle's still going on for that 18 transfer spot. Priscilla, Pomeroy, Wren, and Guzman. You know, Guzman and Wren, they're right there. They got to make something happen. Watching Braxton Meese right now back in the five spot on that Husqvarna going to work on Sawyer Geek. And, okay, that was not a rider that went down. Thought it was. Ow! Scared me to death. Ooh, you scared me there. That was close. That was the leader. Okay, then that was Nolan Ford. I do was just out of sight. So Ford goes down. New leader, leader. Come in, leader. Well, Thank you, Griff, right on now. catching that. Wow. So Brady Olson, Chase Dashiell, Sawyer Geek, Braxton Meese. Making something happen out there. Hey, you're never safe. Never safe. Out by the road, here comes your new leader. Dashiell looking to make something happen. And that looks like Olson at 241. Dashiell's going to be close with, with Geek. Brandon Maz. Tace Morgan is a soldier. He will not give up until that checker flies. Grind it out, baby. Grind it out. These are your mini warriors right here. Mini soldiers of fortune, mercenaries in their own right. They're doing it out there. And like you're talking about Tace Morgan, I call him Tiny Might Mighty. He's just a little guy, but Tiny he manhandles that 85cc machine. Tiny Mighty. Ooh. Oh, that battle's getting close for the two spot around the outside. Oh, look out! Down into the Gator Pit they go. We're gonna check in here with the third lap completed. Here he comes, your leader's gonna fire out of there. Olsen, Dashiell, Mez, Deep, Morgan, Tiny Mighty. Nolan Ford going 7.3 Nolan Ford. Yeah, Nolan Ford going from first back to the number six spot. Yeah. We'll see if he can regroup, maybe click off a few positions here. He's still he's still in the spot for sure. Where do you want to be? But a sweet little win would have been nice, you know? To cap off your day. Definitely no doubt about that. And back in the seven spot, Cooper Johnson trying to make some moves out there in front of Hudson Vigeli. Samuel Hawk in the ninth spot, Blake Rieski in the tenth spot. And then we got Tiago Gross, Lasco, Capetti, Frost, Messersmith, Wills, and this is what West Kane likes to see. It's Wren, Guzman, and Logan Ford. He's actually gonna fall outside a transfer position. And Anthony Piccelli gonna move up now into that 20th place spot and try to make a run up for a qualifying position. Hey, you gotta make a run at it right now. Uh, you know, it's a lot of extra work to do those LCQs and then all of a sudden turn it around, get ready for your main. You ride where other riders are resting. You are you, you you're trying to get back in there, you know? Yeah, I mean some people like the extra track time too You know what I'm saying get to go to the constellation race get some more time on the track <laughs> That ain't having that. <laughs> He's like you rest get in. I don't need to be doing triple the work Braxton, I believe picking up another spot right there on Chase Dashiell So he moves into the two spot Brady Olsen still out in front leading the way Dashiell trying to answer back and did that's what i get for looking away for a split second so hey a little back and forth though they're dancing we're here for it and they're making their way here in front of the tower now you can hear those little two-stroke engines roaring 
It looks like we might have a pass being made right there. Geek might have moved up. We'll have to see what happens now as they make their way across the line here. Get the white flag. One more to go for our leader, leader, leader. Give it up for the number 241 machine of Brady Olsen, who is leading this thing out and looking really good out in front. Braxton Meese going to move up in the second. Sawyer Geek in the third. Chase Dashiell falling back to the fourth spot. Chase Morgan, he's in the fifth spot. Sixth spot, Nolan Ford. We're looking for our seventh place position. There he is, number 40, Cooper Johnson. The 100 machine, of Hudson Vigeli, he's going to be in the eighth place position. And your ninth slide, it's going to be Sammy Hawk. So Hawk's still holding on to a tenth place. We're looking for that rider to make his way through the finish line area. Finishing or in tenth right now is Thiago Gross. So Gross going to move up. And Blake Frost moved up as well. So Rayeski having some issues out there. He's going to fall almost outside. Or he's going to fall outside the top ten. As Matt Velasco comes through in the 12th spot. Francisco, Francisco Capetti, he's in the 13th place position. Up to 14th now is Uriah Messersmith. So Messersmith ain't messing around. He's up to 14th, 15th rider in. Blake, Brayton Wills, he's in the 16th spot. 17th is Nicholas Guzman. And 18th is Logan Ford. So tough Blake for Rayeski. He's going to fall out of a transfer position. And Reed Cohn, he's going to move up. He's just outside the bubble. He's trying to make some moves out there on the track right now. Well, Brady Olsen under a little bit of fire right there by Braxton, but uh, Brady Olsen finding another gear, waking it up a little bit. Ooh, that was close. Good save right there by Braxton. Keeping it on two wheels. Goes back to work on Olsen. Man, you're right, Mikey. This race has been a great one for sure. There's been some lead changes, some positions inside the top three that have been shuffled up and shuffled around. But our leader, I've got to, I got to give it up to him, the 241 Brady Olsen. He means business. And it shows right now as he leads it and trying to take it down to the checkered flag. Almost there, down into the Gator Pit they go. Olsen just got to keep it on two wheels, ride clean and bring it home for the checkered flag right here. Riders looking ahead as they see the yellow flag. That rider down to the outside of the track. He's not going to be so much of a problem. Just trying to get his lap back, I guess. <laughs> Race up the hill. Yeah, big man right there. He's yeah, bumping. feeling He's bumping. that one. He should, too. I mean, that's a good for Brady Olsen. That could be a game changer, as Wes Cain likes to call him. Braxton Meese going to finish up second. Sawyer Geek going to finish up in the third spot. Chase Morgan, he's going to slide up in a four. Chase Dash He's going to fall all the way back to fifth. Cooper Johnson going to move up to sixth. Seventh place position is Nolan Ford. So awesome ride for Nolan Ford to keep it up there. In a position where he qualifies, I know he was up in the front of that thing, had some problems, had some more problems, ended up seventh, so that was a pretty solid ride, I'd say. Hudson Vigeli going to finish up in the eighth spot. Ninth spot, Samuel Hawk. And tenth spot, running out your top ten out there on the number. This is going to be the number 74 machine of Tiago Gross. It is the number 74 coming to check it in with us. So awesome ride for Tiago right there to put it inside the top ten. What's out there? But you're getting ready to go on the track right now, guys. Motor. More motorcycles, it. more of them, just more of them. Actually, it's Schoolboy 212 to 17 BC. It's Division One of Two getting ready to roll next. We got uh, the number one of Aiden Biggs, the number five of Liam Bennett, the 11 of Connor Rosiak, the number 12, Ian Keller, the 13, Drayton Smith, number 14, Braden Ede, number 17, Juan Felipe Garcia Martin, number 18, Landon Gordon, number 24, Braden Campbell, the number 40, Caden Dundee, number 42, Matthew Stecker, number 59, Baylor McKellar, number 62, is Clark Robbins, number 72, Gavin Betts, number 79, Max Shane, number 95, Adler Cottle, number 108, Dylan Sullivan, number 109, Aiden Bailey, number 111, Sean Keller, the 113, Kyle Kai Gentry, 136 is uh, Jonas Allo, Peter Parenti on the 138, Kate Miller, the 156, Gage Furton, the 162, Clayton Stockstill, 182. Uh, 220, Kevin Bond, 221, Jonathan Guy gets the 361, Dagan Strickland. Then it's uh, 401, Lot Van Trunen. 451 is uh, Ryder Thompson, Luke Bowser on the 462, 492, Landon Harks, 497, Matty O'Klein, Clay Kalen, Joseph Shipley, Nathan Atkins, Braden Carpenter, Ryder Malinowski, and Carson Manquist. We've got a host of who's who out here in this one, guys. Speaking of who's who, we see a KTM rider go down there in the pit on the opening lap, and I believe it might have been the number 462 machine of Fowler, so a tough break there for Luke Fowler, but look to see him come through the pack, through this one quickly. We're watching the number 18 machine on screen right now. Landon Gordon leading the way, Caden Dundee in second, but here comes Landon Hart and his Yamaha. He's going to get up the inside right here and make a move on Dundee, so Dundee's going to slip back to that third-place position right now. 
making their way through the gators here. Dudley with a good inside line right here. Hart's trying to thread the needle on the outside to make it happen. Has a little dab going up that little anthill into the roller section. But he definitely uh, recovers from that one nicely and sets his sights on our leader, who is an array team machine, Landon Gordon. There's the top three right there. As you can see him on that SLR drone cam. That live drone coverage, courtesy of SLR Rifle Works. It looked like each rider right there in your top three electing to take that same line through there. They're going to buzz past us. There they go. The 18 out in front. Down into the Gator Pit they go. 92 behind them in the two spot. Goes out wide. Tries to get a good drive down into that Gator Pit. Oh, and he does. Be just about side by side right here. Got us a dog fight out in front between Gordon and Hartz. It's going to be a good ride here. I know Hartz didn't have the best ride on the Supercross track, but I knew things would change even over the outdoors. Well, all I know is I should have named my kid Landon. They seem to be the fastest ones on the racetrack. The Landon seem to find each other on the racetrack here today. As uh, once again, Hartz and Gordon going at it. Hartz is closing in as we head up over the back of the gator now actually the head of the gator now onto the back and this is getting tighter and tighter as we get ready to make this hard left hander at the top of the hill and drop down could get exciting as we head out back hearts hearts tucks in right behind him right there rodney but prior he's really working the track different line choices for him keeping his eye on gordon in front of him kind of feeling him out what are you doing gordon and where can i find some opportunity got it right here a little dab right there with the right foot looks back and says what the heck was that yeah, that wasn't a little that was a big dab. that was a big and shoulder <laughs> that's it he said what the heck was that i just ran over all right now we're watching as they make way back into this roller section oh off the wow. track excursion get back on quickly though i like that that's yeah good. he had a really good line going if he hadn't gone off track he had made up a lot of time coming down that uh, portion of the track now He's looking uh, at possible company coming back from Kate Dudney. I saw that green fender starting to yes. move back in there as well. So Dudney not out of this fight either. Hart's got to got to regroup a little bit, come back to his breath, breathe a little bit. You're right there with Gordon. Don't let him get away from you. Still in his sights, as he seems to have it sorted out now. Going back to work. Watchmen now as they make their way in front of the tower. Our leader is still the number 18, Monster Energy Pro Circuit Kawasaki rider, Landon Gordon. Landon Hart's behind him. He's on that EBR Yamaha. And then we got another Monster Energy Kawasaki rider in the number 40 of Caden Dudney, Ryder right? Malinowski. He is there in a fourth place position, looking to make some moves before this one's over. And the fifth place position, it looks like the number 72 machine at Gavin Betts. It is the number 72 at Gavin Betts, put in a good ride out there. As we're watching Landon Hartz now trying to go back to work after those mistakes now lap and reel in Landon Gordon. I'll tell you, uh, even with the mistakes that he made heading into that back section over there on the uh, high freeway back there, he really didn't lose a whole lot of time. Uh, a couple of little ones, though. Uh, this is where he made up time last time. Let's see. Uh, just before <laughs> just before he lost time he was making up that time I guess we could say but we'll see what happens on the backside this time yeah he was rolling around here you're, you're absolutely right little few mistakes but hey that's what we love about the outdoor side you make that little mistake you've got some time to make up and get back in the fight he's got to be careful though as you guys have mentioned Dudley's right there he wants in the conversation he backs out just a little bit here comes Hartz and loving that outside line. Yeah, he's got a great line down through there. That time he hits it just right. He doesn't get uh, veered off the track, so we'll see if that's uh, going to help him in his endeavors and trying to reel in the 18 machine. But Gordon really seems to have found uh, a, a real line this time around. He doesn't uh, seem to be uh, chipping away at that lead so much. A 152 last time around for uh, Landon Gordon, and rightfully so. Hearts drops back to the 153, which was less than a second actually total of eight tenths of a second but those two little issues that he had that was monumental you can see and it's starting to pay off now for Landon Gordon now as we uh, reach the end of another lap lap number three however challenge is about to be remounted I think uh, revigoration may be in Landon Hart's mind as they cross the finish line stripe this time there they go another lap completed that is lap number three completed gordon still in control of this one turner to 152.064 landon hearts of 152.754 puts him uh, 1.8 seconds back kate dudney a second back from him 
Yeah, closer to him than he is to, uh, to Gordon. So now it's about to become a defensive ride for Landon Hartz rather than an offensive ride, which we've been watching through the first uh, three laps. Now as we head into lap number four, tides seem to be turning just a little bit. Yeah, I agree with you on that one, Rodney. As we see Kate Dudney, he has a fire lit. He is ready to go and pounce on the 492 of hearts and i'm watching the ride styles right now Lana gordon is really smooth he's calm he's collected doesn't really like ride too hard hearts he's out there grinding and pushing through it and trying to catch and make a little more mistakes in the process and it has cost him out here doesn't he right there rolling up on that rear fender now of hearts as we head into the back section now this is where dividends could have been paid by hearts the last couple of laps to see if he can open it back up over Dudney. He changes his lineup to the sweep, which is pretty interesting right there. So he's been taking that outside line that you guys like so much and seen come together for him lap after lap. So it's weird to see a little mid-moto line change like that. Well, you got things happening behind you. You've got to switch it up a little bit. Something's not happening right somewhere. So try and what he can to keep that uh, gap as far as possible between he and Dudney all the while trying to shrink the gap ahead of him, which seems to be widening with each turn of the uh, wheel here. Gordon, a 152.064, a 152.754 last time around for Hearts and a 152.238, so about a half second faster was Dudney last time. And maybe close to that again this time, we're gonna see likely this next lap around, lap number five could get pretty heated for this second place position. Yeah, I feel like Dudney's been back there doing his homework and starting to reel him in now. Dudney's looking poised and ready to take a shot right here. Meanwhile, if you're Gordon, hey, run away, hide, have at it, boys. Do your thing behind me. Gordon been consistent this whole race, still in that 152 mark, just shy of a 153, but it's getting it done. Show some love to some of the guys outside of the heated battle in the top three. Ryder Malinowski in the number four spot, Gavin Betts in fifth, Ryder Thompson sixth. Adler Hoddle in the number seven spot. Jonathan gets eighth, ninth place. Braden Carpenter and rounding out your top ten. Joseph Shipley. Thank you for that top ten rundown there, Mikey. As on screen we were watching, Dudney still trying to push and shove and catch up to the rear wheel of Landon Hartz. But Hartz, man, he's done a great job of answering back. So far, so good. Head back out to the backside. Dudney looks like he might be closing up just a little bit. He's getting a little more aggressive here as the, the moto wears on. I like that way inside line he had right there. Yeah. Went up into the gator tail. And you see Hart's changing his line again. He went yep. from the outside to the yeah. Now he's way to the inside, playing defensive for sure. Oh, he's feeling the pressure. I think he's given up on the maybe trying to track down Gordon at this point and just trying to keep Dudney at bay. Yeah, and he's done a good job, Rodney. I mean, every time we mention Dutton, he's on that rear fender. It's like he hard stretches it back out. So, you know, he feels him, he hears him, whatever the case is. He's done a good job of keeping him at bay. Four laps into it. I believe we're getting the white flag next time the leader checks in. Now, if you wonder, this is the closest battle through our top ten right now. Uh, most uh, we're looking at ten and three yeah. and five and uh, so seconds. The next closest battle we would have is all the way back in 12th place. Baylor McKelly and Joseph Shipley battling for 11th and 12th place. Again, the top 18 do transfer in this one. As we wrap up lap number five, white flag is out. We'll give you an idea of what you can look to see as we'll keep that eye on the battle there for the number two spot with Hartz and Dudley right now. Gordon through uh, with five laps complete and now a 4.8 second lead over Landon Hartz. Caden Dudney about 1.4 seconds back behind Hartz in that number three spot. Ryder Malininski in the number four spot. Gavin Betts in fifth. Ryder Thompson in sixth. Adler Cottle is seventh. Jonathan Getz in eighth. Brayton Carpenter in ninth. Luke Fowler rounds out your top ten aboard the 462. Then it's Joseph Shipley running in the number 11 spot. Baylor McKellar in 12th. Kai Gentry is 13th. Clayton Stockseal in 14th. Kevin Bond in 15th. Connor Rosiak is 16th. Liam Bennett in 17th. And Sean Kelleher rounding out your top 18. That is uh, the rundown heading into the final lap here of the Schoolboy 2, 12 to 17 BC Division 1. That's so, tight back up. Absolutely tight back up right there. It's both rides going away inside line and cut. Dudney trying to change his line right there. It almost yep. cost him. Well, I think uh, Wes Kane asked the question earlier today when the white flag come out. Is that a flag for surrender 
And I said, uh, no, it's not as a flag to put the hammer down. Is what it means. It is. Let's go fight in our world. Yeah. It's time to go fight. That's what Dudley's doing. I love the push by him here on this last lap. Looks like he's maybe not going to quite get there, but uh, camera changes back to Gordon out in front, who's been pretty stellar. Once he grabbed that lead, really yeah. didn't look back and made it his race. There was a couple moments it looked like that uh, Hearts might be able to put some pressure on, but uh, that waned quickly after that second lap for sure. Thank the tides, like I said, changed a, uh, a lot. It. There you go. Checkered flag flies, a fist in the air, and taking first place, Landon Gordon will finish and get the job done. Stoked on that one, and rightfully so. Absolutely. Hearts checks in in the two spot. Dudney finishes up in the top three. Yeah, I seen that towards the end. Dudney, he finally settled that third spot. He was okay with it. He rode a great race to that monster in Kawasaki. To beat out riders like Ryder Malinowski, who's going to finish up in the fourth spot. This spot is going to be the 72 machine of Gavin Detz. Finishing up in sixth, the 451 of Ryder Thompson. So Thompson put in a great ride out there. He's out of Bainbridge, Georgia. And in our seventh place position, is going to be number 95, Adler Cottle. Doing a great job out there on that Kawasaki as well. The 221 machine, a little number change for him. It's going to be Jonathan Getz. Getz will finish up in your eighth place position. Looking to see if Luke Fowler makes it past this is over. Yes, Luke Fowler will take that ninth place position. Ten spot, it will go to Braden Carpenter. And going on the track right now, race number 29. Schoolboy 2, division number 2. Names like Michael Nussbaum, Bobby Gravel, Tyler Fisher. Get eyes on the whole, whole shot out there. All right, also out there behind Bobby Grau, Tyler Fisher, Alistair Christian Merman, Flynn Wants, Dylan McDonald, Luke Daniels, Michael Cole, Victor Fazio, Carter Malcolm, Jaden Searles, Cody Bryce, Miguel Rojas, Bobby Martinkovich, Blaine Kessner, Jose Navada, Kyler Rahm, Jordan Rimpro, Owen Koble, Mitch Pierce, Jackson Driscoll, Hayes Edwards, Lucas Steelman, Chase Lawton, Keops Nager, Kiamo Flo, Kate Johnson, Pedro Conk, Matthew Perro, Cole Forbes, Christian Wallace, William McCurr, Nolan Riley, Will Kanegar, Lana Gibson. Kanegar. Kanegar. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I remember that one. Kanegar. My apologies. Reese Wheaton, Tyler Watson, Blake Thomas, and Jonathan Yelton. They're all out there on the track right now. There's Looking some dunk twisters in there. There what? Oh, 100 <laughs> Yeah, one of the, that one, Keops Neger. <laughs> Piamo <laughs> Flow something other. I, I don't know. That's a, that's a name and a half. And actually, that's about three names in one, I believe. As uh, we are near the completion of lap number one here over the Gizmo Mods tabletop, the hard right hander there down by the hooked on cue barbecue stand as well. And in front of the announcers tower, it is the 107 Jordan Renfro on a uh, Lake Park. Uh, out of Lake Park, Georgia. Did I read that right, man? I mean, I know this kid is uh, fast, and he hasn't had the, the the luck of the draw, so to speak. But man, he must have gotten out of the gate uh, like lightning on that one. And it is Renfro out front. It is Landon Gibson, the 723 from Peach Seach, Peach Tree City, Georgia, and the number two spot. Cole Forbes in third. Owen Koval is fourth. Christian Merman in fifth. It is Carter Malcolm in sixth. And Reese Wheaton, Hayes Edwards, Nolan Riley, and Chase Lawton rounding out the top ten. Bobby Gravel, Jonathan Yelton, Kate Johnson, 13th. Uh, Christian Wallace is 14th. Flynn Watson, 15th. William McCure is 16th. Vittorio Fazio in 17th. Jaden Searles rounds out the 18th transfer spot. And then Matt Peer Mitch Pierce just outside the bubble right now as we check back up front. Man, I tell you, Renfro has really put down the, a pretty good start out here, no doubt about it. But uh, yeah. he's got company coming in, in, in Landon Gibson right there, right off the start. There was only about three seconds separating them. What's taking place now, Mikey? Matt Renfro, I think, is checking out the later bill. I mean, he's already, I think, thinking about his next moto at this point. I hope not, but <laughs> he has got a strong early lead. He was watching the battle there. I believe it was Merman, uh, Christian Merman and Owen Koval, if I'm not mistaken. Battling back and forth here. I think that's what we've got right there on the SLR Rifle Works live drone. There you go. You see that way that drop down in <laughs> Made me nervous. He was in control. And that is Owen Koval, 124. That's 24 on the jersey. And Christian Merman. 
Merman holding them off right there. And that is a battle for the fourth place position. I believe Forbes, Cole Forbes up in the three spot, Landon Gibson second, Renfro out in front. And now it is Landon Gibson starting to reel in at Jordan Renfro just a little bit. Now here's what I, I got to say. I'm sure that there's a lot of people who says, finally, finally. And this may be a switch flipper for this kid, man. I mean, a start like this and a ride like this. And, you know, Renfro spent a lot of the last few seasons injured at a lot of these big majors and national events and things like that. And has never really uh, honestly had a chance to show, I think, maybe some of the, the true colors that he can fly out there. And we're witnessing those right now. Uh, Renfro out front of Gibson there. The uh, gap now at 3.1 seconds. And he only lost a tenth of a second, Mikey. It was only a tenth of a second difference so he's he's running running the speeds right now and uh, this is exciting to see if he's going to be able to keep this pace and this is some place that like I said this is going to be a great boost of confidence for Jordan Renfro we may be seeing a whole new look and saying this name a lot more up front in the future I know he's going to like that so why not let's do it for him you know <laughs> Landon Gibson trying to keep pace gotta give a shout out to the buddy Cole Forbes former uh, I mentioned I heard you mention it yesterday Rodney uh, or maybe the day before, but former uh, youth overall champion in GNCC on the yep. off-road side. As we see becoming more and more common, guys in the woods like in some moto, and the moto guys like in some woods, and they're learning that, hey, both disciplines can be applicable to the other one. Absolutely. I, I think they actually help each other out in so many ways. I agree with you on that. It's just a matter of are you scared to jump or are you scared of trees? So you just settle <laughs> on one or the other. Find that happy medium. Oh, there's GP. That's what I said. <laughs> GP. There you go. On screen now we're watching the 24 at Coble and the number 145 at Hayes Edwards starting to do a little battle out there. Well, that's for that top five position. Renford dropping back down into the gator pit. Now it is starting to tighten up a little bit this time around after we near three laps complete, but Renfro still out in the front position. We've got a blue flag already waving as one uh, husk mounted, husk barn mounted pilot having some uh, troubles, it looks like, through the first couple of laps. We're still traversing out here as we check in. It is a 155.3 and a 153.9. So Renfro did slow down a little bit. The gap now cut down to a 1.7. Uh, some of that could be attributed to the lap rider, but not all of it because we saw a lot of that real estate shrunken up before we got to that point. Lane and Gibson putting in the work out there, fellas. He turned a 153.9, as you mentioned. He's a second and a half back, and you can see him charging on Renfro now as Renfro slowed up by a couple of seconds and uh, can't afford to do that right now with the pace that Gibson is running. Absolutely yeah, not. Gibson's definitely coming. I do like seeing Rimfer out there leading out. You know, this guy, when he's growing up at 65, 85, there's been a lot of time working with him down in Orlando when he used to live down there. So it's really good for me to see him go out there and do so well. I know his mom, a big part of the uh, on track schools, and uh, she's uh, a great. Uh, 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 educator and ambassador of the sport he's a great ambassador of, uh, of of the school and of the sport both and uh, of course uh, to see uh, this th this is kind of pers personally gratifying to see this great great ride out of him for for me as well because i know how mama's got to be feeling right now watching this one unfold speaking of on track is it disco tonight it tonight is disco night disco in the dirt disco in the dirt West Kane will be there dressed up like Elvis. I don't know if John Travolta probably. Oh, Travolta yeah. at work. All right, a little line change right there through the split lane. It's still Jordan Renfro, and just behind him is the 723 machine. That is Landon Gibson, the 723 Husker Vana, doing a great job of reeling in and staying just behind. The number 107 of Jordan Rimpro. I got to hand it to Landon Gibson. He hasn't gotten that sense of urgency. You haven't seen him really get crazy and, and really start to push. Yeah. He, he's just letting the race come to him. Rimpro consistently at that 155 mark. Uh, get, uh, uh, Rimpro, rather, 155. Gibson in the 154. He slowed down a little bit, but he's still right there at a second. So he, he gains a little bit. And I think he's just kind of eyeballing, maybe studying the situation a little bit and seeing what Renfro will do with the pressure being applied or starting to be applied now. We've seen it several times today, Rodney, the, the amount of guys out there that have been in that, uh, the catbird seat, if you will, and they're patient back there, chilling, Ooh, here taking comes. notes, and then they make moves like this where, yep. hey, I'm going to show you the front wheel, and hey. we're going to go toe-to-toe. We'll try to get up the inside right there. Good job by Renfro to close the door. 
Boy, I tell you, Lin Landon Gibson is now trying to pull the trigger on this one. He has been laying in wait for far too long as we head out the back section now. He's got a great line coming up, but man, Renfro fires right back with a fistful of throttle. Let's see what happens down the Sky Highway across this Gator's tail. You see Gibson that really starting to change his lines and ride the whole racetrack. He's all over the place, and Renfro just taking it with his one line right now, and that's what he needs to do if he has any chance of staying in front of the 723 of Landon Gibson. Focus on the race ahead of you. Race forward. Don't try to block the guy behind you because you might slip up. Oh, there it is. A little slip up right there. Spoke too soon. The announcer's curse right there as Gibson makes his way around the outside of Renfro. Renfro going to fall back to number two position. So Landon Gibson, patience paying off. About four and a half laps in before he finally able to make his move. Now let's see what he can do out in front with the lead as Renfro tries to reset and get back in it. Cole Forbes now in that number three spot. He's 11 and a half seconds back as uh, Renfro and Gibson really laying down some laps out there, those first four laps, and even the, well, the first five laps here, even as we see uh, the 723 now checking in for a white flag. And what a ride for Landon Gibson. What a ride for Jordan Renfro now. The 107, like I said, this could be the, the ride that might be uh, the, the switch flipper for him. You know, it only takes that one bit of confidence sometimes to, to put those riders at the level that they need to be at and know that they, now that he's got the starts down and now that he knows he can run that pace up front, it's a whole different ball game in the mind of Jordan Renfro moving forward. Absolutely, Rodney, as we watch him go through this time through, Landon Gibson, your leader, Jordan Renfro in second, Cole Forbes in the third spot. Up to fourth, Hayes Edwards, fifth spot, Christian Merman, sixth spot, Reese Wheaton, seventh spot, Kate Johnson, eighth spot, Chase Lawton, ninth spot, Owen Cavell. And your tenth place position is Carter so, Malcolm. Chris. We're getting out of the racetrack right now, Schoolboy 2, 12 to 17, BC. This is race yeah. number 29. Getting ready to take off on the track. Race number 30, senior 45 plus. Then down to the starting line, we'll have 65 CC, 10 11 limited. Division number one and division number two. You guys are going to be down the stage here as well. I was talking to the wizard from the Wizard of Oz. Yeah, That's I what know. that was. I know. It, what was funny was you ducked your head, you cupped your head, and then you, you answered know. it. And I'm like, it's Mikey, Wednesday. they can still hear they, you. They can still hear you. <laughs> you know, I don't know. <laughs> Dean kind of looks over like, what are you doing? <laughs> we got it dialed now. <laughs> Uh, but yes, we think you are correct, uh, uh, Griffin, if you're wondering. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Landon Gibson, Jordan Renfro, this is the way we're going to see this one go, it looks like. And uh, what a uh, what a grand uh, race it has been for these guys, man, I tell you. Uh, I, again, that particular battle right there, that one kind of, uh, I think, may have opened up uh, some doors for some people. I'm pretty excited about what the future may hold after this one as the checkers are out now and that's the way it will finish with gibson and renfro uh forbes again running about 15 seconds back in that number three spot edwards merman wheaton johnson lawton Koval, malcolm bobby graffle Jaden searles flynn watts also jonathan yelton william mccure christian wallace vittorio fazio and tyler watson those are your unofficial top 18 and as we go next to our senior 45 plus class we've got riders like james dobbs uh, hendrick alberts mike brown larry bank lee troy trot uh, mike hodges gabriel gabriel catala charles hawk francesco rosario barry karsten jason harrell brett white ashley tulski kyle boy joe busker jeremy mendez john gruy keith goyette Jason Dedick, Gabe Fernandez, Christopher Opplinger, Mark Powers, Brian Cordauer, Tony Lang, Gabe Bernardo, Jose Jr., Steve Nagy, Michael Wrigley, Doug Blanchard, Jess Burgess, Fabio Zucavia, uh, Greg Frenchy Paymart, James Max, also uh, James or John Meyer, Richard Todd, Michael Keller, Ter Tressa Rao, uh, Jeff Payton, Gage, or excuse me, Greg Simmons. Then it's uh, Robert Zelenke, Michael Bear, and Galen Dixon. Well, I'll tell you who's out front, Rodney. Downtown Mike Brown pulls the trigger on that Mun Racing KTM. I got to tell you, I'm completely surprised by that. Yeah. Well, he had some issues at Supercross, and he said, hey, I'm going to bounce back. So Brown is, you know, you knew Mike Brown. His, his legacy is what it is. He wrote it. 
He starred in it. We've all seen that movie and, uh, <laughs> multiple times. Yep. Blockbuster had it. The Red Box has it. The history books have it. So Mike Brown out there looking good out by the road, putting it down. Keep it on that guy, Mike Brown. We'll see who's going to be able to contend with him a little bit. What do you see out there, Rodney? I see Brown. I see Brown. I see lots of Brown, actually. Yeah. The, you know, the, the, I don't. There's Gruy. Gruy looks good checking in with us. Yeah, you know, we, we talked about that. You know, we we noted earlier this week that Gruy making the switch to the uh, KTM. And, and obviously, man, I mean, it just like, I mean, put a motorcycle under that man. I think he's going to ride the wheels off of it regardless. And that's exactly what he's doing here, doing a great job uh, opening up here with uh, the Babbitt's online uh, KTM ride that he's got going on there. Yeah, he's still out there with uh, Babbitt's. You know, Eddie Babbitt's taking care of him. Mm -hmm. That online store they have is incredible. Uh, Blue Guru Media checking in again with us out there in Texas. Big shout out. It's Finchy now back in the number three spot. Uh, Rick Paymart trying to make that move. It looks like on Gruy. He's not far off pace, but it's going to be tough to make that move. And another thing to point out, Paymart has really, I mean, he's always been kind of that guy that's been there, but now he's starting to be the guy that's starting to be in there. They're he's in there. Yeah, he, he's starting to really inch up towards the front of the pack and, in be, the mix. Yes. And, and be a major contender in these. And I think this is tip of the iceberg. We kind of recognize that maybe the last season, over the last season, but man, this season, he's starting out on fire. And right there it is. He's blazing right now. Well, could it be that maybe Rui's just not totally comfortable with that bike? But it gives confidence so. to, to, to Frenchie. Oh, Frenchie's actually knocking on the door. <laughs> Are you going to tell me he's going to pass John Gruy? Whoa, oh, Frenchie. Wow. I, I don't think it has any. I think it has to do with the sheer just. Uh, uh, Self-fortitude. Yeah, absolutely. Frenchie has really risen to the occasion, and I say that because I've seen him doing it on a Supercross track against not only John Gruy but other riders out there, and he's been consistently running up front and challenging like this wow. uh, the entire week. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I think he's going to be one to watch in these senior classes out here. There he is out there. He tried to put the move on Gruy. Gruy's like, no way. I'm going to capitalize on this. They made a little contact. I'm glad Frenchie did not. Have a real bad miscue right there. Not a good spot where you want it to happen. No. But uh, it's always good. We're walking by Vendor's Rose over there with the MKS shoes. And uh, he's always saying something funny when you're walking by. So. <laughs> Got to have him. Got to have guys like that in our sport. But it's Brown out front. Downtown Mike Brown looks good. Gruy, Palmar, Max, Gerardo, Carson, Hodges, Buzzkirk. Goyo, Fernandez, and Keller roll up your top ten. Well, Paymart losing a little bit of time after that uh, little mishap out there. We'll see what the gap has opened up to. But uh, look, already as much as the, the gap was, Richie's already started to reel it back in. Man, he is back on it again. Even after the mistakes there on that lap, uh, Brown is through. Here comes Gruy now. And I'll tell you, I right. thought we were going to see Paymart a little further back than that. But as we no. check in, it was 1.4 seconds last time. And even after that, look, he's even closer this time. Even after the mistakes, 1.1 seconds. So who am I to be d uh, judging out here? Hey, right? we're gonna let it, you know what? The best thing to do is let it unfold. Mike Brown's already been, uh, in down by City Hall in Newberry. Yeah. Here is uh, Gruy and Palmer are down. Uh, the Frenchie are down at the bottom of the pit. Mike Brown's already headed out by the road. Yeah. Well, I mean. <laughs> How do you get better? I don't know. I, I mean, well, I guess it's just, it's just like driving dedication. Yeah. Some of us just can drive something, and we've driven it so long. They've never really been off the bike. Mike Brown's probably been on a motorcycle as old as he his age, and I mean he's he, 51 years old, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And so he's been on the bike probably at for least at least 48 years, 49 or 47 I, years. I would say. Yeah. I would say I probably riding. as an infant, he was sitting on the gas tank of somebody on, on his dad's bike or somebody's bike. I'm sure I mean, <laughs> he, he got the love pretty early. He's never had a break and he just keeps grinding and grinding and grinding. And he's he's hey, he's doing great. That's his job. That's what he's born here to do. Train riders, make a mark in his motocross history resume book and then continue hitting these amateur races, gobbling up that consistency money and bonuses and so forth. You know, when Mike Brown comes up and wants to ride one of your bikes, you got to sign him something. <laughs> you, know, cause you know, he's going to the front. He Absolutely. has clout. 
Absolutely. Brown down the end of the gator pit now as he makes that hard right hand turn and now heads towards the uh, completion of another lap. That's lap three in the history books for him. Yep. Meanwhile, the battle back to the number two spot, John Gruy, that number 70 KTM ride was uh, leading the 444 of Greg Paymart. And there is uh, Paymart going by, I see. Did I miss uh, Gruy going by in that yeah, mix of riders? Yeah, by, Gruy's in the bottom of the pit now. Yeah, mix of riders. There's a gaggle of riders of lap traffic no there. gaggle of geese, it's a gaggle of riders. And if you don't know what gaggle means, it means a bunch of them. A bunch of them. Well, they both got through the lap traffic and now free uh, air between the first, or excuse me, the second and third place rides for the most part. I'm sure Gruy is uh, scratching his head on a little bit saying, I've never had to really push this hard to stay ahead of Paymart like this. <laughs> and and Gruy normally is a control like, hey, I'm going after Mike Brown. Well, there they are on top of the Gator back, you know. So a couple of notables back there, John Meyer back there, Keller, Raw, Jose Jr., Michael Bear. And Galen Dixon, baby Galen Dixon. Little baby Galen. Never changed. He's the same guy. Brown does not sit down. <laughs> Brown's seat, Brown's, Mike Brown's seat, he'll tell you, is for luxury. Very sat down. It's what, oh, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Only because he, probably because the, the condition of the well, course warrant. He's got to know when to rest. You got to know when to just like, okay, I'm going to get a rest. Look at him. There he is. I'm standing up. My bike's not dirty. How many times do you think he's washed his bike this week? Probably hasn't had to. <laughs> no, he's got guys back there doing it, Rodney. <laughs> but um, but um, hasn't Mike had Brown to. Brown is not washing his own bike. All right, here we go. Brown, Rui, Palmer, Carson, Grotto, top five. Mike Brown drops into the gate of textbook move there. And Mike Brown powers his way out, watching fire out of that pit. Just like here in a 1997 Pro National, Mike Brown. Who was he riding for back then? Go through the books. He was here. Who was he riding Probably for? Probably a Honda. I think he had a Honda deal before he ended up with Mitch. I think he rode for the Honda Troy. Megawatt. For that the may be it, yeah. yeah. Mike Brown was a Honda guy. Plano Honda, no, Yamaha. I believe it was a Manchester Honda ride. And then all of a sudden he ended up on Mitch, his team, and then boom. Mike Brown's a bad dude. You know, oddly too, you know, Mike Brown grew up in an era where, you know, once you raced and once you got past the age of like 22, it seemed like uh, your, your career for the most part was done. Right. And, and it's amazing the longevity of his career. He was one of those riders that was able to, to overcome that stigmatism. Him and John Dow. Yeah, both of them. Definitely different of a different cut 30 was was no i'm not retiring i'm just in my prime right you know hire me i'll get on the box and you know that's been a trend that we've been seeing a, a lot you know like i said you know i've made this mention before 16 to 21 but you know if at 21 after 21 you were pretty much done you were washed up and you know there's so much that i think uh, uh can can definitely uh, be accredited to that and that is the science of motocross you know uh, from everything from the bikes themselves the suspension and of course medical technology and most importantly uh, hydration or not hydration but nutrition and also uh, physical uh, workouts you, you know what you're supposed to do you know the heart rates you know what muscle core groups and stuff to be working on and things like that it's a science that has really helped I, I think the longevity of, of so many careers. So now you're seeing riders instead of peaking out, you, you're seeing some that are peaking out in their late teens or in early 20s, but some of them maybe not start peaking till their mid 20s. And like right. you said, even into 30 at these days. Well, they change it. It used to be well, like when Robbie Renard come through at 16, here I go. Yeah. That's a very small exception. Now they're saying 19 and 20, you need to be there. But I think that's changed. They do testing. They have to pass a physical test to see what kind of body you, you, your endurance is. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of more science there. You might have all the speed in the world, but if you don't have, if you can't go 30, if you can't do like Jet Lawrence or some of them, or have the craft that they might say, they'll pass on and go to somebody else. Absolutely. You know, it, it, there's, these schools are like universities. Somebody's coming out next. <laughs> and they can grab you, 
try you out. And if he ain't no good, it's on to the next That's guy. That's a good analogy when you take a look at it. Each one of these uh, uh, training schools or, or training facilities are kind of like a, a university. I mean, and you're graduating into the professional ranks of the can, NFL or whatever the well, case may well be. Well, now, like Team Star does, they're starting that probation period where they take you on and they give you some good equipment. Like they did Daps, like they did Romano. And they see what you got. They train you. They grind you. They got towers up there now. And they start testing the waters with you. And, and the progression is what they're looking for. They're mm -hmm. looking for progression. You have to be able to progress with what they're giving you. You know, and some guys can't do it. Like mm -hmm. that program up there is a meat grinder, and it's not cut out. You could say we're doing a casting call for a star ride, and 100 guys is going to show up. By the end of the week, half of them has gone. By the next week, 25 more are gone. And then you're going to be down to like two or three. But they all want to get in there. But can you survive the grind? <laughs> and they will get you at the goat farm. Five laps down on this one. White flag is out. Mike Brown traversing the course for the final time. And John Gruy in the number two spot. Gregory Paymar is third. Barry Karsten in fourth. Gabe Godardo in the number five spot. James Max in sixth. Joe Buskirk in seventh. Galen Dixon now in eighth. Keith, Keith Goyette in ninth. Mike Hodges rounds out your top ten. We'll go for the top uh, 20 now. Uh, Gabe Fernandez in 11th. Christopher Oblinger in 12th. Jeffrey Pape in 13th. Mark Powers is 14th. Michael Blair in 15th. John Meyer is 16th. Michael Keller 17th. Tressa Rao is 18th. Jose Jr. is uh, 19th. And Ashley Tulski rounds out the top 20 in the senior 45 plus class after five. Checkers are actually out now for Mike Brown. And this one is in the history books, at least for the number three. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do it. That's going to get us back into 65, 10, 11. Brown, Drury, Palmer. Yep. And a lot of guys coming in there. There's Jose Jr., James Nagy, Raw, Teresa Raw out there riding. Her little guy, he's out here racing. Roo, roo. Yep. Hey, you know, Minton Cycle is a Cobra Elite dealer that specializes in AMA legal Minton Motors, exceptional track site service, and great customer service. They bring all of their years of experience, Cobra parts on, on hand, and everything you'll need to stay out front. Minton Cycle Cobra, 20 years strong. And thanks also to MKS Moto Kicks. If you want some cool shoes that can hold up to the moto lifestyle, MKS offers extra protection with Soul Pro Tech removable inserts and so much more. Stop down and find out about them and find out how you can find save more on the MKS Black Friday sale up to 30% off all MKS products. And the sun is out. There it is. That's the sun, sun is shot. out. We had overcast. We had the rain. We've overcome that. We got the track in tip-top shape. And now the sun's out. Perfect time for it to come out. Yeah, that's great. It's the end of the day. I saw. A I see the hoodies out there. I see some of the jackets. And uh, the sun is out, which is going to make. Oh, turn around, Rodney. Oh. <laughs> Put that right over here. Put that, yeah. You put it over on that side with Buddy All and right. guys, and we, so we will not get one piece of it. Oh, is, that, that, is that hot rod pizza or? Classics. Yeah. That stone-fired, oven-fired pizza. Gosh, this has got to be my favorite pizza. Hey. <laughs> Thanks, guy. Thanks for the pizza. Yeah, he, he just gave it to the wrong two dudes because they're going to be any announcing taking place. Ah, we'll get it. Man, that smells so good, too. All right. Land I'll, it. I'll get them. Go ahead. You, you go ahead and eat. I'll grab these. And uh, we'll go ahead and run down your starting lineup for the 65cc 10 and 11. This will be Division 1 of 2. And it is Landon Lee, Gage Shivarani, Jet Overstreet, Aiden Steffen, Austin Keller, Eden Steinbrecher, David Kuto. Brody Bircher, Christian Tursky, Grayson Dempsey, Enrique Rodriguez, Addison Boy, Easton Kirby, Race Madison, also Tyler uh, Snaznik, uh, Austin Fraley, Jackson Wright, Jake and Johnson, Micah Lastovic. Uh, we've got Gavin Reynolds, Thomas Vergara, uh, Evan Frost, Lionel Montano, also uh, Carter Hildebrand, Jeremiah Martinez, uh, Nicholas Muir, Brantley Shod, it is Mason Murdy, Aloha Fago, Martin uh, Cir Cirulis, and Isabella Likens all out here on the track with us. The 65, 10 and 11 uh, division number one. This is the limited class of the 10 and 11 year olds as they make their way down in front of the announcer's tower. Now we'll try to sort these youngsters out. 
And it is the 7-5-1 out front of the 24. That is Martin uh, Cyrillis out front uh, of uh, Eden Steinbrecher here to open things up as they drop down into the Gator Pit and the hard right-hand turn as they get the drive out of the Gator Pit. It's nearly side-by-side side as they reach this uh, part of the racetrack now. And wow, Martin Cyrillis feeling the pressure from Eden Steinbrecher now. He's an in, uh, where's that at? Overseas at Garclay, uh, Garcolny. I'm not sure what uh, country that's from, but uh, he's definitely an international rider that is here with us. Uh, Martin Cyrillis here, uh, MX Modules, uh, LAMSF, and Lot Trading are some of the uh, folks that are bringing him. Stan Steinbrecher, uh, again, putting the pressure on. Uh, Easton Kirby uh, now in third. Evan Frost fourth. Mason Murdy in fifth. Uh, Landon Lee in sixth. Gavin Reynolds in seventh. Tyler Stanzik in eighth. Jed Overstreet in ninth. Grayson Dempsey in tenth. Again, the top 18 are going to be the ones that transfer, but as we watch uh, up front here, we can see, I believe, that uh, Steinbrecher has made that uh, move into the number one spot. Oh, yeah. Steinbrecher out there now trying to... He's got to get away from him. That's that rider. I believe it's... Uh, from Europe that Mike Burkeen was talking about the brothers. Oh, yeah, it's really, I remember I the think it's Lafayette day. or somewhere. But hey, they said when he gets outdoors, it's gonna be good. So you've got Steinbrecher, Curlis, Kirby, Frost, Murdy, Lee, Reynolds, Stancic, Overstreet, and Dipsy. And you know who's out front, the number 24 ride MX tire machine. I call him the old man, Adrian Steinbrecher. Steinbrecher now really capitalized on a good start now. Serlis looked like he had a good run, but Steinbrecher had another plan. He pulled that trigger. <laughs> Boom. Let me get out front and run away and hide. Here they come watching on Racer TV. <clears throat> you know where Steinbrecher goes? He's not dipping down in those ruts. Outside line. These guys are watching on TV back at the camp so you can actually kind of see what's what to expect out there you know yeah uh, and, and speaking of which you know there are some pretty deep ruts out there we I've seen some of the big bikes we were watching a race out there dropping off uh, into the, the back section back there it's uh, it's pretty gnarly back there man <laughs> getting deep when I say 20 miles of bad road you weren't kid brother <laughs> they're going down 20 miles of bad road like Jeff Cernick and the lazy boy they're going to get it done. Have you ever seen Jeff Cernick at a $2 buffet? No. Well, you better be ready. <laughs> Things are happening in that Steinbrecher right now. Steinbrecher, Serlis, Kirby, Frost, Lee. Hey, that's a great shot there. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, whoa, Cameron's going to speed up and catch that guy. Look. Racer Edge crew, second to none. These guys are the best in the business. They have got a mobile production unit over there, and they are getting it done. Hats off to our good friends over there, Griff Cotter and the rest of the bunch in there. Every one of you are unsung heroes of this production. Judd, I don't know if this guy's allowed to be in the tower and need security. Big John, <laughs> he's about you're about to get whoop. Looks like. <laughs> hey, oh man, <laughs> when. Got Pat up here from the Baja Brawl. You need to put him in charge of nighttime activities. <laughs> when it'll never be the same. <laughs> Love Pat. Pat, good to see you up here. High five, my brother from another mother. Right. Always a pleasure to be here at Greenos, bro. Hey, we're good. Thanksgiving, everybody. All right, if you know Pat, he got it in there, and that goes up. Everybody listen on Racer TV. You know, if you've never been to Ball Hall Brawl, you need to make it. It's after Loretta's, the month after Labor Day weekend, and well, it is a good one. I have that thing they call vacation these days. I might be able to take a vacation, come up and check that one yeah, out. Yeah, you can be come a lot up of here, Rodney. It's like Woodstock on wheels. Oh, huh, Pat. Woodstock on wheels. Pat never ages. I, so I've bad. heard so much about it. I've got to go at least spend one day there and watch what happens no, there. You one need night. To spend Spend three days. There. Three days. I might be able to take three days. It's to come a life-changing experience. Get a tent and a sleeping bag and just come up there and rough it up, man. Nah, you just come in there with us, man. Hey, Steinbrecher, Serlis, Kirby, Frost, 
You may never survive that one. <laughs> you ain't seen. You gotta be in shape. You, see, uh, you, see, you gotta understand. I've gone back into my porterhouse mode, and porterhouse is a whole different person than this Rodney Tomlin guy you know who at the races. When you get a Bob Ross like a dish rag. They just pat squeezes every inch of life out of you for hey, four days. I, it's a great time. You just gotta you gotta be geared up. I got a lot of inches to give, man. Come on, baby. <laughs> I would love to see Rodney up there at the Baja Bra. Huh, Pat? It's a good one. It's a good one up there. Love that guy. Steinbrecher, Kirby. Kirby now moves up in there. Yeah. Kirby, Sterlitz, Frost, Lee, Murdy, Bercher, Stanzik, Overstreet, and Gavin Reynolds. I see uh, 214 for Steinbrecher, 215 for Kirby, a 217 and a half for Cyrillus. I, you got to wonder, did he make a mistake? I, I know we had our attention diverted for just a moment, but or, or did he just, uh, is the pace, uh, is he, that's where he settled in. We'll find out, I'm sure, in the next coming laps. We've got three laps down on this first division and uh, definitely a uh, rather seated one. Of course, both would be whenever you yeah. take into consideration the talent pool again in the 65 see well all the classes here well you know when the mini o's dates go out it's a call to everybody and it's a call to <laughs> all soldiers of all disciplines and talent and, and you got and you better jump quick because man yeah. the, the way things are you know there's many people who are coming to classes, classes filling up get full they do and uh that that's a testament again you know organizer of the year i don't know if you folks heard about that we yeah. talked about that earlier today but uh, mike burkeen uh, presented uh, uh, Gatorback Cycle Park and the Kern family for uh, all their dedication and hard work organizers of the year for 2022 and of course uh, they got that plaque there last evening well deserved and, 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 and rightfully so probably for years consecutively they may deserve it sometimes too and hey, especially I'm after this year <laughs> all this all the obstacles that they've had to uh, overcome but they you know the one thing to say about that this place has overcome over the last decade alone has overcome so many obstacles yeah. for it to still be where it is right now i mean yeah. at one point everything was taken away there was nothing on this property at one point yeah. but just a few hills of dirt that was the, I where mean, the track tower was, was almost dismantled absolutely and uh, thanks to the city of newberry uh you know things changed and turned around and we had the uh, great opportunity we, to be able to we actually have a historical landmark we're at a historical landmark. it right is here. that too. think about it the city of newberry this is the most hollowed ground a uh, historical landmark for so many years, dating back 52 years. Absolutely. Do the math. Come on, let's go. Absolutely. All right, Steinbrecher looking good. He's going to get that white flag. One more to go. Steinbrecher, Kirby, Curlis, Frost, Lee, Bercher, Murdy, Stanzik, Overstreet, Matt Reynolds. You know, there you go, Bear Dog. What are we going to do when? Leader goes down, Steinbrecher. Steinbrecher, the Gremlins has reached up. Let's look at Steinbrecher back up on his machine. But is it enough? Did Kirby get around him? Leader went down. Let's see if that's going to change the running order. Well, oh, it looks like it does. Kirby now might have the lead. And that was the white flag. So if you're Steinbrecher, you got to go. It's go time. There he is out by the road. And I don't even know if he knows. You know, look, that's 20 miles of bad road out there, but let's see how far the deficit is. Steinbrecher comes into view. There's your leader now. And if you're his dad, his pop, his kit pit crew, you're like, go. We <laughs> want this win. Oh, I see Steinbrecher back there. If uh, Kirby stays up, he may be able to hold on. And Kirby's looking, saying, hey, Aiden went down. I got to make the best of it. So... Tough break, but Steinbrecher's be in a good spot. He'll be in a good spot for the qualifying and for the main event going in. It's division number one. Here he is. Kirby. About to come by and buzz the announce tower. There's Kirby. One more to go. We're looking for Steinbrecher to be coming around. And there is Aiden in the number two spot. Oh, our third place rider. Surlis might have had a little miscue going in there, but we'll check them out when they come through the stripe. Checkers about to fall. Checkers fall. And it's going to be Kirby, Steinbrecher, Frost, Cureless. Yeah, Cureless had an issue. Frost got around him. Lee looking for Bircher. 
Serlis, Landon Lee gets around. Bercher. Murdy. Satanzik. Overstreet. Matson coming in. What's next? Oh, I got it, Mark. I'll get it. Division Go number ahead. two. No, I got I it. Enjoy your piece. Yeah, we're good. No checkers on the leaders. Is that what you well, said? Well, what happened? He missed them. Yeah. But that's it. Yeah. So I mean, he's, he's not. He's he's still going. <laughs> I think so. I don't know. He might be off. I no, saw he's, that. he's still out there. <laughs> he's still going. Yeah, it's okay. Yep. We're going to get this going. He missed them, but he gave Steinbrecher. He didn't know there was a miscue. But uh, we got Ross Anderson, Carson Sebastian, Frankus, the brother, <laughs> Patrick Sergis, James Gleason. Yeah, don't let these guys go. They know he's going to come around and be okay. Uh, Artemar Morea, Tucker Choet, Chance Ober, Connor Feather, Luke Rogue, Casey Riley, Jake Wheeler, Bryson Woodman, Bryson Dijon, Austin Bolts, Brennan Ballinger, Joey Vicari, Indy McKitty, Wilfredo Martinez, Zion Berchold, Batista Loretta, Maximo Ramirez, Colt Whitaker, Kellen Drone, Revin Latimer, Dante Faisano, Tucker Danto, Brasso, Renega, Gorilla, and Gray. Here we go, division number two. Next up, that's race 32. Race 33, you're loading in the gate. That'll be mini senior one, 12 14. I believe we have two divisions there. And then we'll be calling race 35 up there, Rodney. And that'll be 79 65 division one. And we're motoring right along. Let's get that. We got about three inches of paper to get through. And we're only, we got about an inch and a half left to go. Right. <laughs> That's how I gauge how long we're going to be here. <laughs> the and then you get another stack, and it's going to be full of concies. Yep. Uh, we've got three divisions, by the way. It was 65, 7, and 9 limited. Woo! Yeah. It was just like what we saw over in the Supercross. So I know we had like 113 entries or something crazy like that. So. Maybe 120 some inches. I can't recall just exactly, but there was enough to make you say, "Wow, wow, no. wow!" All right, ready to go next. Did you say this is uh, Division Two getting ready to drop the gate on this one? Oh, they already dropped the gate. We're, oh, this one's gone. Yeah, they're gone. We've got uh, Mini Senior One loading the gate right now. Here comes your leaders now. I guess if I just look at that monitor above your head there. Hey, it's been there. They just put it up, Rodney. <laughs> no, it's been there all day. <laughs> no, just, it's been there. My big head has probably been in the way. I just got to turn this way. The track's that way. The monitor's this way. So Hey, we're working hard. Normally, the monitor would be in front of us, but then again, I, I'd rather have it up there. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Well, here we go. Division number two, we're going to watch these guys as they come through. Our winner comes through ahead of these guys because he's got an extra lap. <laughs> but it's Joey Vicari, Carter Gray, Connor Feather, Colt Whitaker, Luke Roach, Chance Olberg, Tucker Cho, Jake Wheeler, Patrice Cirillus, Bryson Woodman, Zeon Berchold. Here they come. And they are motor along there. There's uh, DeJong, Bolts, Riley, Artervia making it through. Old man Steinbrecher down there checking his phone. Happy birthday, dude. You look like you're 29, man. Good job. I know. I know. You look good, boss. All right, Vicari, Gray, Feather, Whitaker, and Roach. We're going to watch him come through. Steady as she goes now for your leader. Hey, MPS Black Friday sale. You got to get over there. A lot of these vendors are going to have Black Friday, guys. You go by there. You walk down Vendors Road. They're going to be letting you know. Come stop in. Shake a hand. Most of these guys do not want to take it back. It's the end of the year. They want to get rid of it. We got new inventory coming, just like Jeff Cerny. Go over and see Jeff Cernick, MX Tire, even Dunlop, Rob Fox. Hey, what do you got? Craig Fox, EMT. What do you got that you don't want to take home? Go to Def Defiance. He'll suit you up. You got prom night tonight? Anything that you want to wear over there at the pavilion for prom, they got it right here at the track. 
Bear Dog in the house. Rubber check race at Pamela and Paul's. <laughs> you did it all, man. Oh, Buddy was there. You had Buddy. Who else you have? Jessamine. You had Jessamine. You had Buddy. Who else? Dristol. You had uh, Dostal. Was Dostal? Yeah, rookie. Yeah. Oh, I know it was the time. You, you were running. You saw Pat. I know. There's only one Pat. One Pat in the Zohan. Yeah, two minutes after we're going, the pizza shows up. Absolutely. Jump no, in. It's still warm, man. You, it, we just came here a few minutes ago. Whoa. Yeah, we've got, so we've got the, the hot down, rock pizza. Up. We've got uh, hooked on Q barbecue today, man. We've been taken care of. Good stuff. I don't even know what to say. The service is second to none. Vicari Gray, Feather, Olberg, Roach, Whitaker, Solaris up there, Woodman, Wheeler, Bertrand, Chud, and DeJong in the top 12. Top 18 transfer, Bolch, going to come in with Riley, Astero, McKinney, Donato, and Drone. It is good right now. Good in the hood. The Zohan. All right, Donato. Vicari. And I'm watching Vicari out there running a 218. There's Carter Gray, 220. Feather made a big statement over there on the podium. Looking good. Vicari, Gray, Feather, one, two, and three. They're giving away that bike tomorrow at on track school. They've got the Deegan replica and they are auctioning that bad boy off. man. Disco in the dirt. There's always a disco in the dirt somewhere up here at Gatorback. I can disco anywhere, man. Hey, <laughs> if these, hey, hey, if the dirt could talk, <laughs> we'll leave that dog lay right where it's at, right on that front porch, Rodney. I, I saw your son, and I said, uh, I think it was Judd. I said, Judd, you think he looks, do you think Rodney ran about looking like that when he was his age? <laughs> and he looked at me and he goes, yeah, that's Rodney when he was like 15. And I go, I, 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 I think it's great. I can see the image. You know, when you've come a long way with your children, Rodney, you've done a great job. You've uh, had your hand full I spent some there. time as a single daddy, you know, yeah. dragging my kids all across the country yeah. for years and years, you know, all by myself. It That's was, why uh, they make Happy Meals, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Roll through there and you <laughs> pop one in the back seat. They, 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 look like I got, they look like Flipper trying to get that bait you throw it off the dock, man. They're in there getting that stuff. More nuggets and french fries ground into the floorboard of my... <laughs> hey, you know what? <laughs> you you did a great job. Your son is with you right now. And I'm uh, very proud of you, Rodney. You've done a lot, man. You're inspirational a lot. Well, thank you. I You've, appreciate it. Uh, me and you stay in touch. Uh-oh. All right, tough break for Is that, that was him? Yeah. Bakari's down. Carter Gray looking good out there. So, Gray, Rodney, I'll get back with you in a minute. We got action on the track. Here we go. So, Bakari's down. Gray's your new leader. Change into the guard. Same thing with Steinbrecher, you know? We're looking for Carter Gray to pop through there and trigger the timing. They'll come through. Tough break, man. Vicari. Hey, it's Joe Vicari. Coming through. Where's a little Jimmy Gleason out there somewhere? Jimmy Gleason from New Jersey. All right, Vicari. There's what? Sebastian McKitty, Vernon McKitty. You know him. Out of Texas. Bakari, Bakari, top 18 transfer. His old man Tom Gleason looking around. He's well, I tell to, you, tell watch, me. watching Carter Gray or here, man, this kid has got some style about him, man. I've never really had a chance to watch him get out front and ride like this, but uh, he's got a, he's got a nice style about him, and he's got some. He's riding with a great. Uh, 
head of confidence right now yeah. as well, and rightfully so, out front of this uh, second division of 65 CC 10 and 11 year olds. And talking about switch flippers, this might be another one of those where we get a chance to see. Now, Carter, you know, I mean, he's always been a front runner, but man, he just looks even smoother today than normal, I think. Hey, I'm going to give that kid some credit. He was at Baja Brawl, he won a bunch of races up there. The kid rolls his resume right out of the mechanic backpack. He goes, here, Wes Kane, take this, see what you think. Shot me. <laughs> oh, yeah. I made calls for him. I made calls. He's on a lot of he's on a lot of radar screens right there, old Carter Gray. And I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. Like, hey, this for you, Wes Kane. You didn't give me a cookie, you didn't give me a soda, give me his resume. Find me a job. And Carter Gray, you are gonna get a job. Somebody's gonna hook somebody's gonna get you. Carter Gray, Feather over Connor Feather too. On fire over Macari, every one of these guys. On who's who, and like they said, on any Sunday, anybody can do it. Get it done. There's Drone. You got uh, Regina Donato back in 1718, but Carson Sebastian might want to get up in there. Wheeler, Drone, Riley, Sebastian, Jimmy Gleason in there, Jeff Cernick. <laughs> Cernick. Sorry, Jeff just Cernick's on that Mike Duclos low road. Uh, just just outside the bubble, though, in 19th. For yeah. Sure. yeah. Oh, God. He's in there, dude. <laughs> I'm for all these kids, man. They're out there enjoying life riding their dirt bike. Absolutely. But Gray right there was able to capitalize on a miscue by Joey Vicari. Vicari lost three spots, Rodney. So uh, that's going to set him back. White flag is out. I don't know if Vicari can get up there enough to make a difference in his gate pick position, but we'll see. Here we go. Steady as she goes now. Leader, leader, leader. Donato coming in. Bolts. All right, keep an eye on that guy out there. Colt Whitaker, DeJong, Choke, Woodman, Birchold. And White flag still out. John Cuso, welcome to the party. Looking good. Scouting, looking around. I need to give him Carter Gray's resume. Get him in there, John Cuso. Sign that guy. Get a bonus. All right, Carter Gray's going to take that checker. Takes the checker feather. Ficari rolls back up the third. He was fourth or fifth there with a the miscue. He's going to take it in the top three. Good job by him. Ober going to finish fourth. Roach looks like he's going to bring it in. Whitaker. And a good shout out for these competitors out there. We got more, more coming your way. Absolutely. As our top 18 check in in the 65cc, 10 11 year olds. Uh, we got uh, one of our. Uh, we got Race Tech uh, bringing you race number 33, yeah. the Mini Senior 1, 12 to 14. Race Tech, the world's largest aftermarket motorcycle suspension modification company. Race Tech Gold Valves provide a plush feel with drastically improved bottom resistance and increased traction. All Race Tech products are 100% guaranteed and made in the USA. Race Tech is an industry leader in engine machining services, including CNC porting, valve jobs, custom Vortex ECU mapping, and more. How good are Racetech engines? Many factory teams in the motorcycle industry use Racetech for their engine services. Many Senior 1, 12 to 14, Division 1 getting set to take off, and they include the riders of the 125 of Marcus Trujillo, also Max Lasco on the 133, the 196 Dace Dacio, Jaden Cumberland, also Gabe Park, Emmett Baker, Miguel Boer, Joel Newcomb, Bruce Martin, Braden Blake, Christopher Henshaw, Diesel Watts, Blake Rieski, Sam Swapper, also Gage Dunn, Tristan Pruitt, Blake Mara, Carson Adams, Talon Staggs, Alberto Antillon, Nicholas Siegel, Jackson McCarty, Blake Fort Frost, Bentley Murphy, Kane Bulacina, Christian Humphrey, Aiden Henley, Cash Anderson, Logan Ford, Brady Rodecker, Tanner Dorman, Gabe Hungak, and Caleb Kaminsky. Looks like a Yamaha rider out front. Looks like a Yamaha rider. Could have been an EBR rider with a good snap out of the gate. Pick him up when he comes through here. Look on the prompter. Hey, shuffle back to second now. Look how rough it is out there, Rodney. Wow. 
Wow. Man, I tell you, a good look at the course and its lines and how it has developed over the course of this day itself. Position jock in ch uh, changes in positions all the way. Now just had a pass for, I believe that was for third in the second, and now maybe another pass or a challenge for the lead all as right. we yep. make our way off the tail back there. Yeah, our Yamaha riders starting to feel the pressure there as they come out of that long short shoot. Oh, Yamaha rider, I did get past there. So we got our eyes peeled, Rodney, on who's going to be the guy out front. Could be Morberg. So I believe this is the battle for second that we're watching here yes, right sir. now unfold. So, uh, wow, your leader is slamming off the walls he up there. He's making it happen. We're going to when he comes through here. He'll run through that clicker and we'll get you a proper race format here with uh, who's out front. I can't see the number right now. 125 quite possibly. Division number two in the gate, but division one, many senior one, 12 14. One lap down, Bolasina, Staggs, Trujillo, Gates, Dunham, Christian Humphrey, Jackson McCarty, Tristan Pruitt, Carson Adams in the eighth place position, Chase Dacio in ninth, Tanner Dorman in tenth. We got Aiden Henley in 11th, Cash Anderson in 12th. Blake Rieski, 13th, Blake Frost in 14th, Blake Mara in 15th, Max Lasko in 16th, Gabe Hongak is 17th, and Gabe Clark rounds out the 18th and final transfer spot after that first lap of racing here, the Mini Senior 1, 12 to 14. Again, this is Division 1 of 2, so once again, top 18 will be transferring here in this uh, particular division here. Bolasina, Staggs, Trujillo, Trujillo, your top three, but ooh, it is tightening up and all the way back through the pack. Back, it looks like we got a battle going on for fifth place right now, and we've got riders moving up through that pack. Is that Trujillo? Maybe now trying to pass up into a third. Let's see here. Oh, riders now making their way down into the Gator Pit, getting it all sorted out. Things have really tightened up up front here. Number seven, Tristan Pruitt may make it some major gains on this lap. Let's see how far he's been able to, to move up from seventh place on lap number one. It is Tristan Talon Staggs into the number one spot around Bowl of Cena. Dunham is now up to third. Tristan Pruitt is your fourth place right. Trujillo dropping back uh, to the sixth place position. Meanwhile, Jackson McCarty moves into fifth. So it's Tal uh, Staggs, Bolasina, Dunham, uh, Pruitt, and McCarty are top five. Trujillo in the number six spot. Carson Adams in seventh. Chase Dacio in eighth. Christian Humphrey in ninth. Tanner Dorman in tenth. Aiden Henley in eleventh. Cash Anderson is twelfth. Uh, Blake Rieski in 13th, Max Lasko in 14th, and 15th is uh, Brody Rodecker, 16th Blake Frost, 17th is uh, Emmett Baker, and 18th, your final transfer spot will be uh, Blake Mara, uh, and that is uh, after lap number two, again, Race Tech suspension uh, sponsored race going on on the racetrack right now, and another smoker, if you will, as these guys are heating it up out there. And it is far, far from over. Whoa! Did we just see one of our front runners? Maybe that was Gage Dunn swapping out there a little bit. Don't know if he went down or not. The, the, the shot changed real quick. He didn't see any yellow flag, so that's maybe just a little swap out there for the number five. But picking back up now. And uh, we still have the 21 of Staggs trying to hold down point. Bolasina Dunham. Pruitt, though, on the move, has been for the last couple of laps and expect to see that that's 
what he's going to continue to do is try to be on that move. As we watch that battle unfold right there, Rodney, between wow. Bolasina and Staggs. How many times have we mentioned these guys' names in a battle this week? Uh, Staggs, Bolasina, Gage Dunham, Tristan Pruitt. It's been beautiful to watch. <laughs> I mean, it's been awesome. Uh, Rodney and Westbrook uh, announced a minute ago, you know, we, we listened to that mm -hmm. uh, name, list of names. And we thought, man, oh, man, how, how good is this? Just repetitive. We get to good uh, racing over and over again, the same kids in multiple classes. Yep. I love it. Staggs, Bolasina one and two as uh, Staggs does the checkup from the neck up going over the finish line jump there. Dunham still, I believe, back in third. We'll double check that. Yes, and Tristan Pruitt in fourth, moving up uh, Trujillo and Adams into the four and five spots. But uh, the battle in all eyes right now on this uh, war that is waging for the first place position. Meanwhile, we've got battles all over our top ten right now. Man, Rodney, watching those guys drop down in the gate pit, doing it. Uh justice as far as how choppy it is getting down there love to see it creating some good racing out in front okay. Pruitt under fire I was getting ready to say I was looking for that battle Pruitt was pushing on Gage Dunham and there he makes yep. that pass yeah he put some pressure on him just ran him wide in that corner Rodney was able to get by I believe he was getting held up a little by Dunham. He was getting yeah. frustrated by that, kind of kind of pushed the issue just a bit. A lap and a half or so, I think, that he was really pushing that and trying to get by. Yeah. We got one down. I don't know if that was one of our leaders. Don't think so. As there, these are the guys out front that we're watching right now. So, Staggs, Bolasina, Dunham, Pruitt, and uh, there's Pruitt now. Your third place right there is the second place rider just ahead of him now. The 44 machine, I believe, of Kane Bolasina. Pruitt's found some good lines. You know, yeah, he's got he around Dunham. I, I, to be honest with you, when I look at his last time, I think that uh, messing around with Dunham kind of slowed him down just a bit. He has definitely found some extra speed. Where Staggs at? Staggs was about a three quarters of a second ahead of uh, Bolasina there. And I'm not seeing him just ahead just yet. So we I'm may have a new leader actually I right now. So was, was that stack then that was our rider that went down? I think it might have been, yeah, yeah. yeah. Been. Must have been, let's put it that way. Yeah, because uh, I don't see him coming out of the pit now as we wrap up lap number four. Must have been off our Kate, uh, camera shot. There is Kate Bolasina. Uh, there is Tristan Pruitt, Gage Dunham, one, two, and three. So yes, uh, that was stacks that we saw slip off the uh, Track there it looked like so uh, big changes to Hio and Adams now fourth and fifth stacks continues to fall back through the pack now. Hey guys, we're talking about uh, Pruitt trying to get around Dunham in the lap time. Once he got around Dunham, he dropped three seconds. 202. Wow. He was running a 205. He found a 202 after he got around Dunham. And he's only one second behind Bolasina. So how about it? Or, or was, was only was a second. Say, a <laughs> second or less now. <laughs> Pruitt's uh, got him in the crosshairs. Bolasina, you got to run, buddy. Yeah, as I turn my attention back to the uh, Racer TV monitor, Pruitt is, well, I thought he had a line on him there coming into the Gator's tail, and he still might coming on. To, yep, here wow. it is. Mm. Bolasina got to be fighting that urge to look over to his left at him right there, staying in his line and trying to keep pace. Pruitt gonna make it stick. Did you find yourself wanting to hold your breath there? A little <laughs> bit. <laughs> oh, big mistake. Bolasina made a big mistake right there after Tripp made the move. Oh, Ooh, there they go. A oh, son mistake. of a gun. Yeah, ran right into that corner marker right there. Uh, Mikey, to your credit, when you said he's doing everything he could not to look over, and those ruts you weren't about to look over. No, absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> absolutely <laughs> not. Yeah, that wasn't gonna happen. Man, big break for Pruitt now. He doesn't have that pressure to be applied to him, so he's got the big break back to now. Second place, Dunham and uh, Trujillo should be moving up, and, and likely Adams and, and Dashio as well. We'll see what, uh, how many, and who does have that chance to move up as uh, Pruitt makes his way into the uh, 
Well, that was lap number. Well, we're getting ready white to wrap flag. up. Yeah, wrap yes. up lap number five right there. So white flag lap making his way into the final lap of racing. Pruitt checking in as your new leader. And that guy's the epitome of race every lap. He's there you go. Win every lap, okay? And if he doesn't, he wants to win the next lap, the next lap. Every moto we watch this kid in, uh, I don't believe that there's been a whole shot and runaway win. I don't think for him. I think he's had to put himself in that. He's position. had to work every time I've seen him. Yeah, on the track. he's had yeah. to put himself in that position and Rodney when he's in that position he makes it happen absolutely I mean he really does so Gage Dunham in the number two spot Kane Bolasina in third Marcus Trujillo in fourth it is uh, Carson Adams in fifth in sixth is Chase Dashio seventh is Tanner Dorman Aiden Henley in eighth Christian Humphrey in ninth and Cash Anderson rounding out your top ten let's check a little further back to see what our Qualifiers are looking like here on this final lap. Uh, Cash Anderson, as we said, in 10th. Talon Staggs in 11th. Brody Rodiker is 12th. Blake Rayeski looking for 13th. Max Lasco, Emmett Baker, Cruz Martin, Blake Myra, and Gabe Clark should be those uh, top 18 riders heading into the final lap here of the Mini Senior 1, 12 to 14, Division 1, race 33, if you're counting. Race 34 coming up here in just a moment is going to be. Uh, Mini Senior 1, 12 to 14, Division 2, race 35, the 65, 7 to 9, Limited Division 1. In staging and on deck next, uh, followed by Limited 2, Division 2 of the 65, CC 7 to 9, which is race number 36. 34 on track, 35 on the gate, 36 in stage. Mm. 37 is back there somewhere, too. Yeah, no, no word yet. I've gotten a few texts as well. Hey, how late are we? How far are we going down? We're the line? racing until we're, we're racing until we, we stop racing. Until we're not. <laughs> that's the answer. Yeah. We know right now. Okay, that's that's what we're clear on. So as soon as we know that info, guys, that we will let you know, um, and we'll get the word out to you. <clears throat> Checkered flag out. Tristan Pruitt. Man, we have seen him do some sensational things here this week. <laughs> Another win for him. Kane Bolasina hangs on for the two spot. Good rebound by Bolasina. A little, little gnarly get off there. Regroups, able to finish in the two spot. Gage Dunham finishes third. Carson Adams last lap pass into the four spot. And Marcus Truyo rounds out that top five. Mini Senior One Division Two gonna be coming up next. Wait on the rest of the pack to check in here. Chase Dashiell, six. Aiden Henley, seventh. Eighth place going to be Christian Humphrey. Looking for the 94. Is it going to be Tanner Dorman or is it going to be Cash Anderson, the 55 KTM? It'll be Talon Staggs. Neither. How about the gas gas ride of Talon Staggs? There's Tanner Dorman rounding up the top 10. I love how we do the combined scoring out here. Yes. I do. I love it. You, you got three guys that were up front. I had to face. No, I had to face. Well, the lap time will tell that. But not one time when everybody gets on that track is it going to be the same as it was the last time. And you're not going to have all those guys on a gate run. So, so many right. factors. Are, yeah, I won my heat. I won my heat. I won my Well, good. We got three first. Who's going to get the final one? That's exactly right. <laughs> you know that? that might have been Mela Herrick out in front. The 19 went a little wide on the outside right here. But race number 34 underway. Good battle out front side by side. Cooper Johnson, Colby Lazar, Brady Landon. Uh, Quade Edwards, the 19 of Mela Herrick, the 22 of Jace Wolf, 27 of Levi Hoxton, 31 of Steele Kelly, the 40 of Jeremy Strider, the 53 of Jack Davia, 59 of Stody Hudman, the 77 of Davis Daniels, the number 100 of Landon Walters, the 111 of Sebastian Gabriel Velasquez, and then it cuts off. But he's from St. Cloud, Florida, and he's on a KTM. I got you, buddy. 124 of Austin Gore. 128 of Francesco Capetti, Anthony Pasilla, the 131, the 191 of Austin Candom, the 199 of Jacob Huck, the 214 of Ryer Stesic, uh, the 224 of Ethan Pagnini, the 241 of Brady Olson, seeing some great things out of him, the 250 of Leon Gomez Cortade, Francisco Perez on the 273, Carlos Borja, the 292, the 327 of Wyatt Grant, Max Giberson, as well as Colden Olenberger, Cameron Nichols, Wiley Rives, Rocco Baroon, Colt Lackey in the 955 of Andrew Johnson. Rolling out in front. 
Yeah, Mikey rolling into the uh, rear section of the track right now. Here we come back along the fans and along the rail. Looks like we got a real battle right now. That's going to be uh, Colby Lasar and uh, Austin Camden. All of those guys get together. No. Lasar still on two wheels as they work their way through. He's trying to put the charge on right now. That also looks like it may be. Daniels, no. Well, here they come right in front of us, Mikey. Ryder Palmer, the 22, out in front with a pretty decent lead right now. And that is Lasar. He Let's did see. make the sorry <laughs> on Camden. Go ahead. One. No, Jace Wolf. <laughs> Jace Wolf, 22. I had the there right number. Go. Wrong rider. Different gotcha. class. Gotcha. Mini yeah. senior one. Yep. Yeah. Jace Wolf leading it. Colby Lasar in the two spot. Austin Camden third. Cooper Johnson fourth. Fifth place is the 241 of Brady Olson. Landon Walters in sixth. Seventh place is the number 15 of Quade Edwards. Davis Daniels in the number eight spot. Number 199 of Jacob Hawk in ninth. Leon Gomez Cortade. Rounding out the top 10, Colt Lackey of 10, excuse me, 11, and Francesco Copetti in the number 12 spot. Mikey, going to be interesting. Now we'll get some lap times next time around. Compare these to the previous class there. See exactly where these guys stack up. Again, these multiple divisions. So exciting to me because it's it, it, going to be a face-off here in that final moto. Yeah, like it's like, going to be a showdown. It's exactly like you were saying, hey, the lap time's only going to tell you so much. You're in one of these divisions. you got to think about yep. the competition you're out there with. Are you pushing hard? Are you are you comfortable at your race pace? Whatever, what have you. Uh, so I love, love the format here on the, uh, the outdoor side. Mini Senior 1, 12 to 14, coming back at us, Mike. Here they come through the chicane down there. Starting to really thin out just a bit, but that battle, it looks like third, fourth, and fifth place. Man, that thing's starting to tighten up. Yeah, it is. Jace Wolf. He's the lone wolf out front. Oh, that was low-hanging fruit. Oh, that, 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 that was, was terrible, dude. Fruit. Uh, I tried. That was too cliche. <laughs> Way too cliche. But he's doing well. Hey, credit where credit's due. Go get him, Wolfie. Cool. Somewhere, somewhere Mike Craig's howling right now. <laughs> Love it. it. Dips down in the gator pit. Hey, Colby Lasar, he's inching his way toward him. It was about just shy of a four-second gap from first to second after lap number one. Let's see what it is after two. And going to be interesting. <laughs> Excuse me. Interesting to see how it's uh, playing out on lap times as well. Austin Camden, Cooper Johnson. Back there in third and fourth after one. After two, though, it is Johnson, the number four machine, getting around into the three spot. Mike, looks like a gap is about the same, 4.33. Yeah. Uh, lap time, 205.7 to 206.2, so exactly half a second difference on that lap time. Brady Olson still in fifth. Davis Daniels up into the sixth spot. Quade Edwards, seventh. Eighth place going to be Landon Walters. Jacob Huck in ninth and Colt Lackey. Uh, drops a position back into the number 10 spot now. Watch a cannon right now on our monitor trying to put a charge on, trying to catch up to that number four of Johnson. Wants to throw out a rope and get a toe right now. Camden working inside, outside. Mm -hmm. A little bit of uh, maneuvering right there. Doesn't want to follow Mike, doesn't want to get caught behind. Follow into a trap. Starting to see some of those uh, braking bumps, acceleration bumps, getting a little choppy in there. You might notice how they're angled. They're like yes. waves coming down. The, the reason for that is the inside is shorter than the outside. So that kind of falls like a waterfall, the wave. Perfect. It, it, it's really crazy. This time of day always it did it on, does it on the Supercross side as well, but you start to really start seeing the amount of lines that have developed throughout the day as the sun hits it just right. Kind of puts it. it in perspective. Love yep. to see that. I love it. Always some of the best pictures in Racer X that you see, you know, right in that transition yeah. light, you know, the evening. That right there is a good example. Wow. Just gnarly. Huh. No, no, no room to pass. Right. No good lines. Well, it looked Forget like about, about 17 it. of them to me right there. <laughs> At least. Wow. At least. And Mike, that's... Mikey, that's just where the experience and, and, and everything comes in because which one of them has a hook in it? Yeah, which for sure. Which one of them has a hump in the middle? You know, did, did you use that one the last time around? Was it getting beat? 
Uh, the reason there's so many ruts there is ruts go bad. That's true. So you make a new one. That's the reason yeah. there's so many ruts there. Which one did I use last lap? Hey, that's you the know, other seriously, question. You know? Look going down the end of the gator pit. Mm -hmm. Look at the entrance of that thing, Mike. It's sketchy. Unbelievable. And watch a couple Watch a couple of these little bikes kick right there. There's a good, good example. Perfect example. There is a nasty, nasty kick or break and bump right there at the entrance. Now everybody's going almost up on the hill to go around it on that inside line. Now we're seeing some tight racing begin to develop. Jace Wolf, Lassar, Cooper Johnson, Austin Camden, Brady Olson, Davis Daniels. That is your top six. Quade Edwards in seventh, eighth place. Landon Walters, Jacob Hupp, ninth, and Colt Lackey rounding out the top ten. Had a good battle on screen a moment ago. Some of these guys starting to reel each other in as we're into the nitty gritty, about three and a half into it. Yeah, getting a little later into the moto. Wow, you know, these guys keep getting the feet drunk off the peg. Oh, for sure. And it's been a different rider each time around. It's not like, you know, a repeat thing. There's those ruts we were talking about a little earlier. Man, when you look at that drone coverage from one side of the track, you have to just pick a line and get in it. Look all the way to the end of the straightaway. Don't look down. Mikey, I gotta say, when you take a look at some of these takeoffs and you're starting to get this light transition, man, you wanna be very careful of your line choice when you're on takeoff. Yeah, I can't believe what perspective, and it, with each lap now, we're starting to lose a little bit of sunlight here. It's just, it becomes more and more prominent to the viewer. Jace Walsh checked in now, four laps completed. Well on his way. Last time around, he had a five and a half second gap over Colby. As we see Jace Wolf on Racer TV, let's watch his riding style. I have a feeling Megawatt's going to be a fan. Oh, <laughs> no question about that. Take a look. Transitions right there. Gets to the front of the seat. Actually stays right in the middle about like he should. Gets planted right on the pegs, riding on the balls of his feet instead of the arches. Look how he controls the bike with the lower body. Good flow. Man, absolutely. Real good. And his helmet doesn't move, Mikey. It's like it's on a, what is that called, a Kimball? Gimbal? <laughs> Gimbal. There we go. Kimball, I think, is an actress. Uh, but yeah, again, take a look at the helmet. No movement whatsoever. Most of the control done with the lower body. Very centered on the bike. That's very, very important, but not easy to do yeah. when you're on a track as rough as this. Got a rider down right there. Wolf does a good job around the outside. Keeping her on two wheels. Lassar in second, Cooper Johnson third, fourth place, Austin Camden, Brady Olson rounding out the top five, Davis Daniels sixth, Landon Walters seventh, Jacob Huck eighth, ninth is Quade Edwards and Colt Lackey tenth. Boy. Wolf coming uh, back at us right now. Go ahead, Mikey. Sorry. No, I was just going to say, I mean, it's it, there's some tight racing out there, but we've just not been able to. It's pretty well stayed the same the last couple of laps. Nobody's taken that yeah, shot yet. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, nobody's pulled the trigger. Seems like uh, several guys are setting each other up, mm -hmm. <laughs> but nobody's stepped up yet. Everybody's waiting for that dramatic white flag last lap pass. Well, so are we. As and we are too, yeah, yes. Yeah, we're looking forward to that as well, Mikey, so. Bring it on, boys. Hopefully if that white flag does appear, we're going to get that battle you're talking about. Jace Wolf said, I'm just looking to pass more lap traffic here. Where's that white flag? There it is. You talk there about, he goes. You talk about the lap traffic and uh, the way he's able to pick through them. When you've got that pace going, you've got that flow going pretty easy. Uh, you worry about the first guy through, but when you when there's that much quicker, not much of a problem. So again, white flag is out. Chase Wolf trying to check out the Laterville, enjoying a 15 second lead. Uh, after four, after five, it's going to be 20. Goodness gracious. Mama, there goes that man, Jace Wolf, doing his thing. See, I use the cliche of the lone wolf, but uh, he, I put it in the universe, and he has uh, manifested that and made it happen. Yeah. <laughs> so he has made it happen. Somebody, Jace Wolf, you need a lone wolf number 22 T-shirt. I'll only accept 15% of all sales. Chaz Michael Michael, the lone wolf. <laughs> 
Lassar, Johnson, Camden, Olsen, Daniels, Walters. There's some, some moves. Quade Edwards picking up a spot, getting around Jacob Huck. Did he make it happen? He finally makes it happen up into the number eight spot. So Huck falls back to ninth, tenth, going to be Colt Lackey. That was, that was pretty much a hit that lap. Let's see if it changes up here before the checkered flag. All eyes on that man out front, the 22. Olsen ran a good bit quicker than the guys behind him last time around, about two seconds quicker. The gap was four seconds, so it's going to be tough to overcome that as we watch for Wolf to come back to the infield here, work his way down into the pit. But 204 for Jace Wolf, 209 Lassar, 209 Johnson. You kind of see a pattern there as we get back to Olsen. Then it's 212, 215, 213. So uh, that move we were looking for, Mike, nobody's really close enough, you know. Right. They, they had each other in sight, but you got to be on the rear fender to make that move, and nobody really got to that point. So that, uh, that 204 by Jace Wolf, extremely impressed with the number 22 machine. Checkered flag is out now, Mikey. Going to put that one to bed. Disco in the dirt tonight, 7 o'clock. Over at the pavilion, preparations being right, made right now. DJ Judd will take care of the tunes on track school, of course. You do not have to be a student to enjoy Disco in the dirt. Of course, big things tomorrow. Going to give away a bike at 6 o'clock, the on track team. Looking forward to that. Yeah, very cool. Good stuff going on tonight. Kids are going to have some fun. Disco in the dirt, be partying, I'm sure there'll be dance contests. Andrea leave, the whole crew gonna be down there. I throw down a sick moonwalk. I believe that. I mean, I throw down. Can you hit the gritty? Yeah. A tidy. I, I got it, son. I believe you. Do crip walk? That's not a problem. Hey, I got I'm it, in dude. on that. Me and Ice T, we can make that thing down. <laughs> checkered, no problem. checkered flag out. Jace Wolf hangs on. Colby Lazar second. Cooper Johnson third. Fourth, Austin Camden. Brady Olson fifth. Sixth place is going to be Davis Daniels. Landon Walters finishes seventh. Quaid Edwards eighth. Ninth place is going to be Jacob Huck. Huck Francesco Copetti rounds out the top ten. Race 35 coming up next. 65 CC 7 and 9 limited buzz buzz. There they go. Shocking for position and the VP Racing Fuels whole shot. And the riders we got out there on. Oh, go ahead, Mega. Looks like oh, here uh, you go, here you go. 72 possibly. Mm. Look like that was on his jersey. We'll have to see. Sorry about that. Mike thought sure we had the right ID right there. Don't even see 72 on the list. To be quite honest with you. Here they come back toward the camera. Let's see exactly. That does say 72, Mikey. And that second position was either 25 or 75, number three in the third spot. Gotta keep your head on a swivel. Yeah, 65, seven to nine limited. Division one, two divisions in this one. I believe just the two. We've had some three, no, 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 no. There is three divisions in wow. this one. So we'll be taking the top 12 out of this one, Megawatt. So some added pressure for these guys to perform. Andre Williams, Finn Hansen, Owen Taylor, JC Ray Jones, Sebastian Sherrills, Mason Giles, Harrison uh, Vagul. Carter Pilgrim, Ryder Palmer, Jace Owen, Nolan Cobb, Nico Verhoven, the 27, Cade Scott, Levi Geist, the 34, heavy hitter out there, Parker LeBeau, Ryan C. Ceretti, Tate Brush, Bill Cassidy, Nick DeJong, Addison Likens, Lorenzo Rican, Benjamin Bonick, as well as Beckham Smith, Ryder Anderson, Emiliano Munez, Munoz, Braxton O'Brien, Rayson Kyler, Absher Hall, the 317 of Donald Harper, Bruno Rossani, Parker Beckington, Joseph Lacapra, Cannon Zab Zabinick, Ryder Davis, Weston Otto, Jace Wolf, Brooks, Lillian, Chance Jackson, and Ryder Likens. 
Check it in, one lap completed. So this guy's again? It is, it is. <laughs> Beckham, <guys> S again? <laughs> Beckham Smith said, yes, Megawa, it is me, and I am leading the rider out of Canyon, Texas, on that Orange Brigade machine. Nico Verhoeven checking in number two spot. Mikey Kins and Borjuk in the number three ride. Weston Auto making his presence known as he cruises into the four slot. Levi Geis drifts into the number five position. The six held down by Nolan Cobb. Seventh spot belongs to Nick DeJong, while eighth position is Racing Kyler. Coming through on the ninth click, that's Carter Pilgrim. And turning through on the top ten, that's going to be Parker Beckman. Mikey, three divisions, as you said, so 12 riders from each one will be taken. Going to keep an eye on some lap times. You're trying to get us straightened out over there yeah. and make sure that we do stay on track. We've got a few extra lines on here crossed out, so I made a note. So uh, any slip to the tongue, believe me, are totally in unintentional. We do our very best to keep you guys informed because uh, we, <laughs> we have to be informed on who's in staging, right. who's on the line, who's on the track. So... Uh, any confusion, any slips here and there, we do apologize for. Uh, bottom line is, it's our job, it's our duty to bring you the most accurate Amen. information we can. Amen. So, with that being said, 65 CC 7 to 9 limited on the track. Three divisions. Division one, yeah, division one division of two of one. three. So, if you don't hear your rider, Nana, Pat Paul, if you're at home watching and you said, I didn't hear little Johnny Sprocket, don't worry. Probably in Division 2 or Division 3. Don't panic. Yeah, we don't want mayhem. Be okay. We don't want mayhem. Yeah, we don't need mayhem. Beckham Smith leading it out in front. Nico Verhoeven, Cannon, Weston Auto, Levi Geis. Your top five when they checked in with one. It's still Beckham Smith out in front. Nico in the two spot, little separation between them and a lot of separation between second and third right now. There he is. Man, Mikey, nobody would have ever thought our track would look like this. And a gnarly crash there for a third place rider. Back on the machine, not phased. He said, that's fine. Get kit. back up, kick it and go. Kit made out of silly putty. That was beautiful. <laughs> he just bounced right back <laughs> up, dude. They're mostly cartilage at that age. That's yeah, it's a benefit close. of being seven to nine <laughs> class. Uh, that's a young ligament you're looking at right there. <laughs> so that's our fresh knee. Weston Auto checks in. So that was Cannon, the five by five, I believe, uh, that went down there. Or may have been Nolan Cobb, actually. Was it now, Cobb? That, now that yeah, I'm looking at it, I think it might have been Nolan Cobb. Cannon had some troubles as well, but I think that was earlier. So now, new order. Beckham Smith, he's still out front. Nico still in second. Weston Otto third. Levi Guys fourth. Carter Pilgrim fifth. Nolan Cobb in the sixth spot with Rayson Kyler in seventh. Parker Beckington back in the number eight spot. Absher Hall ninth. And Nick DeJong rounding out your top ten. Last time around, Mike, only 2.8 seconds. So that's still a tight race. Okay, that's not a big gap out front by any means. A small mistake outside here that turns into a big mistake. Listen, you've got a little more room to work, but when you're picking yourself up out of these ruts or you're picking yourself up out of these holes, it normally takes a little longer to get remounted than a slide out in the corner. Had a rider down there. I don't think that was Nico. He's getting some help. Yeah, Verhoeven actually quicker than your leader last time around. Uh, Beckham Smith turned to 221.3. It was a 220.0, so 1.3 seconds quicker was your second place rider, Verhoeven. Following Verhoeven on racertv.com, the 26 KTM. Look how he meets the bike, Mike. He lets the bike come oh, up. He yeah. really uses his legs as that extra suspension, which you should. But he really lets the bike come up and meet him, and then he makes the adjustments. Like an old Wiley veteran out there. No, much better than an old Wiley veteran. <laughs> he's, he's, he's not <laughs> developed all the bad habits. Yeah, yet, right? yeah, much better than an old Wiley veteran, for sure. I've had enough of sitting in that little chair. I'm, I'm, I keep. I have to look up to you. I got to look up to Wes. I mean, figuratively and literally, it's well, too much. Thank you, Mike. I, it's too I, much. I appreciate that. <laughs> I respect you, Rodney. Too, buddy. 
Oh, Dino. Beckham Smith in control. Nico in the two spot. Man, Beckham is scooting right now. He's got a 10 and a half second lead over Nico here, Hoven. Weston Otto's checked in in the three position now. The 721, it's Nolan Cobb making moves out there on the 25, number 25, Gas Gas. Levi Geis checks in. He loses a position. He got passed by Cobb that last time around. Following uh, Smith, Beckham Smith out in front. It's number three on the jersey, 133 in scoring and on the machine. Mikey, he is over that crossbar. Heck yeah. Okay, I mean, the, ch the chin bar of his helmet is out over that front fender. His elbows are up. He has got that front end planted, man. I love it. Uh, Look at him. I mean, he walking just, through the traffic. Yes, just, he, sorry, fellas. Pardon me coming through. Methodically just worked his way through about four lappers right there. Wow. With no issues. Maybe not the line he wanted, but it was a line that worked. All three of them were floundering. Feet off the yeah. pegs, bars swapping and that kind of thing, and he walked through them like they weren't even there. A nice little bend in the back, too. I can't stand up about his style. That, that guy's moving right. Look at him coming around. <laughs> he, he gained a megawatt fan I, here. I love it, dude. This guy's part of the uh, Moto Mercenaries now. I love it. This guy's a hired gun. Uh, he fits the bill. The resume qualifies. We'll have to talk to him uh, a little closer. I've heard him on the uh, mm -hmm. podium. podium. We'll have to talk to see if he's got enough attitude or not. <laughs> That's true. You gotta be gotta be sharp on the bike, in the mind. Maybe a little crazy. <laughs> you know, that's Megan's type. Never hurts to have a chromosome off. That's it, dude. So Smith checking in one more time. Look, set uh, three in the books now. White flag is out. Again, top 12 transfer three divisions here. 65, 7, and 9 limited division number one on the track. Division number two on the starting line. Division number three in state. Yes. Three divisions in this 65 one. cc, seven to nine. Yep. Limited. 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 Sometimes I am. <laughs> Sometimes yeah, I am I a am. lot. I am a lot. Oh, gosh. Hey, we're knocking on the door of Thanksgiving. How about that? We are, you know, and uh, I tell you what, I hope everybody out there is as thankful as I am because I love this stuff. Yeah, Mikey, we have said it every single night. It, it is so fun. We are so glad to be here. Uh, we're grateful to Win and Kim for allowing us to come down and do this. And um, everybody here today has a lot to be thankful for just for the fact that we're here. Yeah, let alone, sure. let alone the fact that we're healthy, let alone the fact that uh, we live in the United States of America, let alone, Amen. Let alone uh, the freedoms that we still have. we we got to still have. be thankful uh, for right here this evening, you know, before we ever get to Thanksgiving. Yeah. Hey, man, Mega. We'll talk more about thankfulness tomorrow, I we guarantee We sure will, it. man. You better believe it, Tim. As we look out across the valley right now, Mikey, vision be going to become yeah. critical here in just a moment. Uh, Triple J, I bet he built a bunch of goggles down there today at Scott. And I'll bet uh, I'll bet he built a lot of different Come lenses down there. Things starting to uh, get some shadows on each end of the track now. And then when you drop into the pit, going to lose uh, total sunlight. So basically, uh, as we move from one end of the track to the other, the transitions are there. And that's going to be a big difference as we move through the final motos here of the afternoon. Yeah, white flag out, 65cc, 7 to 9 limited. First to three of this division. So we'll be taking the top 12. And Griff, if you want to hit us with that again. Oh, copy, copy. Thank you, buddy. So Beckham Smith on the move out in front, leading the way. Nico Verhoeven in the two spot. Weston Otto third. Fourth place going to be Nolan Cobb. Levi Geis in the number five spot with Carter Pilgrim sixth. Seventh is Parker Beckington with Racing Kyler eighth. Ninth place is Nick DeJong. Benjamin Bonick in tenth place. Absher Hall in the number 11 spot. And Cannon Zabinick. Uh, some struggles in this one, but he's right there where he needs to be. He's in the 12 spot. Maybe not where he wants to be, but he's in for now. Ooh, getting down to it. Checkered flag flies. See how it shapes up. Bruner Rossani outside of that top 12 and 13th on the outside looking in right now may have to go to the LCQ. 
Hey, folks, coming up next is going to be our 65cc 709 Limited Division number two and megawatt. You know what this race is? This is a race tech race. That's right, race Love tech. It. The world's largest aftermarket motorcycle suspension modification company, Race Tech Gold Valves, provide a plug feel with drastically improved bottoming resistance and increased traction. All Race Tech products, here's my favorite part. I've told you this before, Megawatt. They're 100% guaranteed. That's cool, but not my favorite part. Here it is, made in the USA. And I tell you right now, Paul Feed would have it no other way. Yeah. Single-handedly changed the suspension business with the Race Tech Gold Belt. Absolutely. They're an industry leader in engine machining services, including CNC porting, valve jobs, custom vortex, ECU mapping, and more. How good are Race Tech engines? Well, look around. Factory teams are using them throughout the motorcycling industry. Uh, they trust Race Tech for their engine services. Who have we got out there, Megawatt? Mikey, we got Bentley Mart, Jaden Smart, Aiden Held, Zachary Gordon, Braxton Gother, Chandler Powell, Dominic Steele, Hudson Cohen, Lucas Bush, Easton Grant, Bryce Williams, E.J. Dutton, Eli Harry, Carter Holmes, Braden Vandergrift, Levi Brace, Ryder Hill, Cheyenne Hines, Will Silver, Gavin Wilsey, Logan Lustig, Brandon, Brandon uh, Paxton, Jax Baker, Gunnar Lust, Huxley, Nolan, James Wood, Heider Matos, Tucker Tix, Trayson Walters, Frankie Fazio, Jason Weiss, Reese Max, Waylon Berthotti, Logan Albright, Jacob Fisher, Raylan Seagraves, Lexi Gower, Trip Lloyd, and Leopoldo Gonzalez, and Son Wald Del Rico. And that's going to be our lineup for 65cc 7 to 9 Limited, division number two. Division number two will take the top 12 because there are three divisions in the 65cc 7 to 9 Limited. I love it. This is where the odds start coming together. We're going to have three different winners. Yeah. Three different second place guys mm -hmm. and three different third place guys. I'm well, the guy. Every guy thinks yeah. I'm the guy. I, I didn't get a start. If I'd have got in there and the sun was going down, I had the wrong lens and he wasn't in my division. If he'd have been in this division, we got yeah. The track was a little different. Uh, we're gonna have we're gonna have a dozen guys that have that belief in their head. Yeah. For that second moto, and I can't wait, Mikey. I love it. Woulda, coulda, shoulda, what if? Oh, yeah, I love it. We're absolutely, here for it. absolutely. Well, bench racing never hurt anybody. Mega One, I've been doing it every single evening. Whew. We've been talking about this year, last year, 30 years ago. You know it, man. <laughs> you have. I listen and I take notes. Ah, ha, 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 ha. But I'm about that. I heard you guys talking about it earlier as we keep our eyes on the battles out here in our Race Tech Future Race here. But, uh, you know, that's always one of my favorite things. We're here making memories in history, but, you know, it's up to guys like you, Mega, that, you know, and, and I'm not joking, that have been around for a while. You've seen that history. And to tell the next generation, and one day it's going to be my job, it's going to be Dean's job yes, to, to tell those yes. stories of, hey, back yes. in 2020, 2019, 2018, and hey, back in the 80s, this is what was oh, happening. Man. I wasn't there, but yep. I've heard the stories. I felt like I was there. I didn't call it. <laughs> Griff said you called <laughs> No, and, and you know what? Um, what? There's a saying. Facts I are think, facts, though, man. Right? I, I can't deny it. In the, in the, there's a military saying, and I'll, and I'll butcher it, forgive me, but it's something that along the lines of, you know, fear the, the gray-headed old man in a world where men are meant to die young. Uh, <laughs> well, racing is not quite to the degree of that being truthful, but there is some truth to that. Uh, we, we're thankful to have our gray-headed old guys, if you will, <laughs> because you, you're one what uh, paved the way for, for us and uh, what paves the way for youngsters like these guys on the track. And the backside is uh, you, Dean, uh, so many guys, Jackson Burrell, yeah. uh, Zach, Zach Heron. Yeah, so many guys. Listen, I don't mind sharing with you guys because you're receptive. Mm -hmm. You don't make a joke of it. No. Uh, no. You know, uh, you don't, oh, yeah, antique wooden wheels on right. those bikes back then. Again. As Bud Man and I said today, Casey third, Cochran went out and third one and said, holy crap. Third you know. works Husky 50. Mm -hmm. Okay, without the Bud Man. Right. Yep. Period. Yeah. All right, that, and we're not, hey. we're not going to let that be <laughs> forgotten, you know. I, 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 I take it very serious uh, who, we, who we're in the booth with and how we deliver this stuff. But 
just as we talk about past athletes in any sport or past politicians on how we got to <laughs> where we're at. Okay, for the better or worse. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and you know what? We've had some bad times uh, along through our game. We've had some, uh, you know, yeah. dark days here and there. And we talk about them. We keep the history alive. That's why we're better each and every year. That's why the bikes are better. The yep. kids are faster. That's it. Speaking of fast kids, we talked about this on the Supercross side. Jaden Smart, uh, he is 10 years old now, and he's been having this kind of success for the last 12 years. Um, he's just been sensational, and I think he's won. Uh, you know, hopefully he stays on that path right here that he's on right now, and you just kind of hope everything comes together for him or continues to come together for him. Uh, leading the way right now, he had about a uh, second, uh, a little more than that gap after one. Gavin Welsian in the two spot, Lustin Lo Lust Lustwig, Logan Lustig, it's getting late, uh, sitting in fourth place, third place, my goodness, Eli Herrick in fourth, Jax Baker rounding out the top five, Braxton Gother is in sixth place, seventh place is Heater Matos, uh, Raylan Seagraves in eighth, ninth is EJ Dutton, and Carter Holmes in tenth place, Sun even playing tricks on me on my scoring monitor now. Wow, that one looks good though. Well, Mikey, up front, California versus Florida versus Illinois. Colorado comes into the mix as well right there. So, hey, East Coast, Coast, West Coast, Midwest. You know it. Throwing down right here in the pit. Wonderful to see that little bit of sunlight just come out this evening. Uh, make all the difference in the world in everybody's attitude. The track didn't need it in the least bit. The no, track did no. in great condition. Didn't need a little bit of sunlight. Didn't make a difference there. But what it's uh, done is I, I think it's just been a little more bigger with everybody here this evening and uh, encouraging everybody to get out to that on-track school. <laughs> just go in the dirt. Coming just go in the dirt. Clock. Bud Man's going to bust out the Dougie. He's going to come over and show us some good moves. Maybe the cabbage patch. Last time, Jake was marked 18.2. The gap was 3.9 seconds. And uh, 220 for Gavin Wells, 226 Logan Lustig, 228. The numbers just go up from there. So definitely there's been a separation by speed. 218, Jaden Smart, 220. Wells, Lustig, 226. Even got the birds out in active flying. The sun's got them up out of the pond there this evening. Quack, quack. See them. He's got to head south. Well, he's already south for the winter. He is. Yeah, he's, he's already here. Unless he's, Hello, unless he's going to Rainbow Key or Key West. It could be. Not, not, not going much further south. Of course, Division Three coming up next. 65cc, 7-9 limited. Division Two on the track. 69cc, 7-9 limited. Division number three on the starting line. Just about 20 minutes to five right now. Forecast looking good the next couple days, Mikey. Of course, tomorrow, Thanksgiving. Got a lot to be thankful for, a lot to talk about tomorrow. And a lot to eat. Oh, we'll see. Let's eat. We'll see. Got no doubt. Jaden Smart leading the way here. 65 CC, 7 to 9 limited. Gavin Wellesian trying to keep pace. Logan Lustig, third. There he is, still third. Checks in, third lap completed. And again, top 12 will advance in this one. The guy's got to get on the move. Lexi Gower, the 922 Gas Gas back there in 13. Chandler Powell, 14. Frankie Fazio in 15th, all with a chance. But on the outside looking in after three or after two for them. And those guys you just mentioned, they're all within a half a second yes, they of are. each other. Man, that. Mike, it's so hard to make something happen when you're running the same speed. It's Scary. so hard to make something happen, buddy. Fazio, that guy, you know what? He's another one of them cats. Every time we've said his name, he's been right there in a battle. Mm -hmm. He's just another one of them guys. It's just, he's fought his way through the week so far. Can we talk about, you know, situations like that is uh, maybe you, you show up here at Minio's and you're you're that bubble rider uh, at, at, in the seven to nine class. And you're like, man, I'm, not, I'm just not quite at that national top 10 level 
yet. Right. But dad's going to take you back to work, your, your buddies, your training facility, wh wherever you're training, and say, hey, you did well. Here's what we can work on. It's only up from here. We can only get better. There are some teachable things, some fixable things. Uh, so there's somewhere to go. Everybody's got a story out here. And maybe it was, I just want to make the main. I don't want to go to an LCQ or I just wanted to show up and race and have fun. Whatever the story is, uh, we're glad you're here. And, and maybe that's uh, some of those stories for those guys back in 13, 14, 15 right now. No doubt. You know, and I, and I like how you said that, you know, hey, we're going to go back and look at this. And that's true for everybody unless you're Nick Way. True. <laughs> <laughs> we learned that this week, yes. Megan, yeah. I learned that the hard way. So pumped to go over. Hey, see, kid, you, you know. did well. <laughs> Dad's just glaring at you. <laughs> now, you and I see things differently. Pumped to see Vincent, you know, and, and he did, man. He rode well. He, he he had great position. He had some good line choices, which Nick will probably disagree with. <laughs> hey, Megan, don't be giving my kid any advice. <laughs> he said I was a little more critical of his yeah. performance. Oh, I love it. Love Nick Way. We go back a long time. You know what, though? One of these days, I'm going to turn one of my CR60s over. There, there you go. One of these days. And Mega, I can, I'll vouch for him uh, in Nick's defense because I heard <laughs> Mega on the phone with his wife, Chrissy, talking about Hannah having such a good game. And he said, well, how many shots did she take? She had 11 points. And Mega said, how many shots did she take? Yeah, you know, it's one thing, the shots she made, but how many did she miss? That's right. You know, well, great. We had good numbers. Were, were we a ball hog? Did we did we gun up everything? <laughs> did, we, did we cannon everything that right. came to us? No, absolutely not. So there you go. That's what I expect. <laughs> and you can learn something from both, right? You learn absolutely. stuff about the way races you win, the races you podium, and you learn something in the races. Hey, I was outside of the top ten. I had a DNF, whatever. There's always uh, something to learn out there. You got that right. White flag yeah. out. Jaden Smart on another planet. But still only a two-second gap right now. It was a four-second yeah. gap. Uh, when we take a look, lap time's identical last time around, but also no running low on time. Sure. Don't want to take any chances. Or did uh, Welzine just pick it up that much? Yeah, uh, it's going to be tough to say because that could go either way. Yeah, Gavin's no slouch, that's for no. sure. Uh, he's not there by mistake. No. Turner. Taking a look at Smart on the camera right now, uh, Welzine should be just in the camera view right behind him. Look at this guy, dude. Did you see that elbow up, up and the gas on? Kid's got style. Look at the changeover right there. He said, okay, we got lap traffic going left. Let me cut back to the right. I'll take this line. That's okay. You know, Mikey, little things people people make such big mistakes with. You, you don't grip a motorcycle like this. Sure. I'll probably okay. You lay your hand on it sideways. That way, almost like you're turning a doorknob when you twist the throttle. Little things like that you can see in smart. And when you add all those little things together, when you put them all together, that's exactly, exactly the things that put you up front. Yep, that's exactly it. And Jaden Smart getting it done. Checkered flag flies. Bang, there he is. The number four of Jaden Smart getting the job done. Well done, young man. Finishes in first place for division number two of the 65cc 709 limited. Gavin will hang on to the number two spot, finishing just behind him as we reset the deck here. And race 37 going to be your 65cc 7 to 9 limited, division number three. Locked and loaded down on the gate, waiting for that gate drop. Highlight some of our finishers here, and then we'll give you a rundown of the riders. We're going to see. Now we're still waiting on everybody to check in. Let's give you a rundown here. We'll jump back into that one. Tanner Bruckman, uh, Gallo, Zammerbride, Stephen Green, the 44 of Jarrett Tincher, the 52 of John Everett Pastrau, the 55 of Jacob Riley, the 64 of Jack Sipes, the 72 of Jet. Wow. It was wow, Jet Wow. Yeah, jet, wow. jet Wow, I had to think about it. Uh, the 077 of Braxton Roth, the 89 of Easton Ruffing, the 99 of Jax Keller, the 101 of Steel Leonard, 103 of Jojo Caliendo, the 111 of Martin Ospina, the 125 of Micah Nix, the 126 of Tate Moano, 189 of Noah Gillis, the 190 of Brim Brockmuller, 198 of Forrest McPherson, 218 of Bryce Shalosky, the 220 of Cameron Berry, the 221 of Jao Ferreira Jr., the 222 of Jorge Herrera, the 223 of Hunter Clayton, the 295 of Carson Ballinger, the 301 of Braden Junk, the 312 of Caitlin Pugh, the 344 of Easton Morgan, the 403 of Caitlin Wheaton, the 469 of Levi Letty, 
484, a Thor Thrasher. Tell me that's not a strong moto name. 508, a Steel Henderson, the 674, Aaron Anderson Waddell. 804, a Hank Tix, the 805 of Chandler Perry. 818 of Cade Rock, the 900 of Joey Carcapa. The 981 of Easton Luttrell and the 991 of Matthew Simono. And that is your starting gate here for 65cc, 7 and 9 limited, Division 3. Mikey, I tried to get that ID. I just cannot get those little numbers even on the screen here. Got no numbers or black numbers on a red background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I think he's got the number two in the back of the jersey. I, I it may have been so. a, may have been a seven. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know, Mega. I don't know. We're getting the gate loaded down there. That's race 38, 450C Limited coming up after this one. I do know that that's John Everett Pastro making a move right now, trying to make something happen that could possibly uh, be Tanner Buckman up there. Shows Tanner on a KTM. It looks like a gas gas. Oh, wow. Now look oh, at this. Oh, two for. <laughs> two. <laughs> Going for a two for right there. Uh, While we wait on this one to develop, let me give you the top 12 real fast out of that 65, 79 limited division two. Smart, Wellsian, uh, Logan Lustig, Eli Herrick, Jax Baker, uh, Heater Matos in the sixth spot, Tucker Nix, or Tucker Tix, excuse me, in the seventh position, Chandler Powell with an eighth place finish, EJ Dutton ninth, Braden Vandergriff finished tenth, James Wood will finish in 11th place, and Carter Holmes rounding out your top 12. Moving on. Division three on the track, top 12 will advance. The rest of the riders will have to go to the LCQ where we'll end up taking the top four. Down into the Gator Pit we go with our leaders out in front, six, seven, four. Anderson Waddell out in front. Little dab right there, all good though. Checks in, one lap completed. You know, it, Waddell made that move from the Gator's tail. <laughs> to that little uh, rough section over there and look at the gap he's opened up that quick oh mercy yes he has and mike look at our drone shot holy cow you can't even count the lines no you can't that's even count the ruts now as far as good ones there's three but yes. what three what three are the good ones that's a good that's point that's the yeah. tricky part a track looking like a pair of corduroy pants out there wow it used to say, like, you'd have to explain what corduroy pants are to kids, and, and now they're popular again. They're back. They're back. Baby. Weird. Everything comes back around. Same ones I wore in 76, dude. Cool I bought again. the corduroy uh, hat from Pro you Circuit did. down there. Heck yeah. Absolutely. Steve, Stephen Green Jr. sitting in the two spot. John Everett uh, Pastrow in the number three position. Forrest McPherson fourth. Fifth place is Carson Ballinger. Thor Thrasher in the sixth spot. That is a strong name, dude. I love it. Uh, Brim Brockmuller. In the number, set, number seven spot, Jax Keller in eighth. Ninth place is Jao Ferraria Jr. Tenth is Jorge Herrera and Levi Letty, 11th with Martin Ospina. Rounding out your top 12 that would advance, Mike and Nix, the man that's got to make something happen, is second and a half back from that 12 spot. Yeah, John Everett Pastro still trying to work on it in that number three position. He's putting in some good laps back there. Just can't, well, now he's starting to do it. As soon as I say it, starting to close that real estate up just a bit, Mikey and might be learning something from Green just ahead of him. He's got the note, the clipboard out, the notepad, the pencil. Around the outside he goes, tries to carry some speed. Actually gave up a little bit of speed. A little bit, you yes know, he did. When you carry that momentum, you really have to pick it up and notch around that outside, Mike, and if not, it's just a long way around. A long way around. A little surprised he didn't go to the outside just to, or go to the inside just to shake it up a bit, just to give it a try. But again, right now with the shadows changing up, easier to follow that body than look for a good line. Yeah, for sure. Easier to follow that That's helmet it. in front of you. Not mad at him. Play it, we'll follow the leader. Oh, oh there down. it is. Quick to get back on it. Good. Cost him. Oh, wow. Trying to get that spot right back. 
Pass row in that number two spot. Waddell checking in and gone. And look at this. Green having none of it. Green fell over right at the bottom of the Gator pit. Gave up that number two spot. He is on the attack, Mikey. Yeah, Green going back to work right there. Love to see it. Behind him checking in Forrest McPherson in fourth place. As we're watching the battle unfold on Racer TV through the SLR Rifle Works live drone. That is Green on the gas gas machine. He had the right thought, Mike. He yes, he did. I saw that. But he had to climb. He climbed the edge of that rut, and it just took his momentum right away from him. Now look at this. All of a sudden, gives up another four or five bike lengths. So John Everett in front of him in the two spot on the Husqvarna, as Green goes back to work. He had the little bobble just before going down into the Gator Pit before the finish, and it's trying to rebound since. And he's doing it. Look at this. I mean, he has cut back <laughs> into that gap, Mikey. All the time, Waddell out front running his. Whoa! Ooh, and gets a, a mistake right there. Look at By that. John Everett. Yeah, John Everett Pastro runs in almost. Oh, oh man, and Green no. goes down. All that effort has to go back. This is the second time Green's hit the deck. Going man. down into the Gator Pit, he got back up. Chase Pastro down again. Something tells me. Green's going to come at it with a vengeance right yeah, now. He's, Some he's, tells me he's not happy. He's angry. Yes. He's angry. He's still got time. We're two laps into it. Almost finished with the third. Anderson Waddell. He's ripping out in front. Last time around after two, he had an 11-second lead. Going to be more than that now after three for the 674. Yeah, those gaps grow pretty big when you're seven seconds quicker a lap. Yes, sir. Do what I can. Yep. Try to get some things lined up for this evening. Anderson Waddell, meanwhile, leading the 65cc 7 to 11 limited. And watching John Everett on Racer TV right here. Up through the finish line area, Anderson Waddell still leading 231 on the lap time. He's checked up a little bit, but that lead's still just under 11 seconds at 10.8. Stephen Green still in the three spot after a couple little mistakes. Only lost one position, now seven seconds back. Let's see where Forrest McPherson checks in. No, it's going to be Carson Ballinger, the 295 KTM with a 237. That's 14 seconds back. So we've seen some pretty big separation here late in this one after three. Forrest McPherson finally checking in. Jal Ferreira Jr. up into the number six spot on his gas gas. Gets around Thor Thrasher, who is now back in the number seven spot. Did you see the style up over that? Are you kidding me? Yeah, beautiful. I mean, that looked like full-size <laughs> freestyle right there. It was Incredible. Partying while the sun tries to trickle away here on a Wednesday evening. Man. Super fine conditions right now. Everything you want to see out of a track. We've got our elevation change, got your ruts, got your bumps, got some shadows. Uh, everything you want to see, Mikey. Yeah, this is certainly putting it in perspective. Just the amount of line choices out there. Some good choices, some bad choices. Like oh, there was a bad choice right there. Yep, Little guy goes down. And uh, John Everett liking that outside line. And smoothest. Yeah, the tendency is, Mikey, you know, further into the day, longer into the moto, you're, you're going to ride those fringes. You're going to find those edges uh, to be the smoothest, smoother. to be the quickest. And sometimes everybody else does that too. So then the edge yeah, really goes exactly to crap. Exactly it, yeah. The edge goes to crap and then you have to start <laughs> searching again. Time to embrace the suck, if you will. So, John Everett going to work. He's in the two spot. Anderson Waddell, the 674, up in the number one position. Getting down to the nitty gritty here for our 65, seven to nine limited. This is our third of three divisions. So we'll take the top 12 out of this one. Coming up next is gonna be your 450C limited. That's gonna be race number 38 on the day. And race number 39 is 450B Limited Division number one. We are still going, folks. 
on a Wednesday evening. Making it happen. Just a reminder at home, uh, hopefully you're falling out the turkey if you haven't already. Uh, maybe uh, swing by Waffle House tomorrow. I don't know what to tell you. You gotta be prepared. Smothered and covered for you and I, buddy. Amen. We'll go see our guy. He'll have them smothered and covered oh, for us. He'll have them lined out. There won't be no carrying on at our Waffle House. I'll promise you that. No, no, no. Nah, he, you, you'll be on your best behavior. you get lined out or no hash browns for you. Amen. And if not, we'll take Dom with us. Oh, so handle listen, it. listen. The last thing we need is disrespected at Waffle House with Dom. With Dom. Well, he's a okay, human. He's a human pit bull. Wrecking ball. All right, folks, sounds like we, uh, we're getting her going here. Uh, wrapping up the 65cc 7 to 9 Limited. Uh, for those wondering, how low can you go? <laughs> or how far can we go? How about that? Uh, race number yeah, 40. You, you made us kind of sound kind it of was a stretch. There. How low can you go? Uh, you we know. can go pretty low, I promise you. Uh, <laughs> how late will we go tonight? Uh, what we are getting right now, or being told right now, is we will go through race number 40. That is the 450B Limited Division number two. Again, race number 40 on the day will be 450B Limited Division number two. Checkered flag flies. It is going to be Anderson Waddell coming in for a first place finish. Sensational ride by him. Last time he was around, he had a 16 and a half second lead. John Everett in that two spot. See if he can hang on to it. Race 38. All right, they're they're discussing. All right, hang on one second, folks. Okay. All right, update, update, folks. So wondered about that. So because it's race number 39, now I'm gonna wait until those guys roll off of the uh, the start line so you can hear me a little better down there. Uh, because race number 39 and race number 40 are 450B limited division number one and division number two, uh, when Kern said, hey, we're gonna make the executive decision, uh, we wanna make sure we can get both of those in. Don't think we can. So last race, on the track is going to be race number 38, your 450C Limited. Again, last race of the day, just took off the starting gate. That is your 450C Limited. So we will pick up tomorrow with the 450B Limited, division number one, and 450B, division number two, tomorrow morning. That'd be 39 and 40 tomorrow morning. There you go. Wind Kern getting the message down there to staging now. So again, one more time for those in the back so there's no confusion. Race number 39 will be our first race of the day tomorrow morning. The 450B Limited Division number one. Out there on the racetrack last, uh, right now, our last race of the day, 450C Limited, James Kraft, Mason Greffer, Brett Ferry, Joel Solomon, Brennan Rodecker, Kyle Palaglios, Chase Egelwitz, Leandro Segovia, Ryder Wallen, 
Cody Munch, Lucas Scopiano. This is it. This is it, baby. This is it. And of course, I step in right at the right time. Oh, wow. Welcome, welcome back, Rod. No, no, no. <laughs> you know, well, I, I think we, we probably could have gotten in race 39, which was the 450B limited division one. But when said, hey, it's two divisions. Right. I don't want to split that up. Do one in the evening, one in the morning. Let's save it for tomorrow. Absolutely. I, I was out looking and never did make it to MKS. I went to go get my moto oh. kicks. And I ran into so many great people out in the midway that I just spent my time talking yeah. with folks. I thought, I better get back up there before the day closes out. But here we go. Kyle Paleologos out in front. Chase Eichelwitz. Eichelwitz. Eichelwitz, thank you. Uh, he's in the number two spot. Michael Thompson in third. Blake Thomas in fourth place. Fifth place is Eric Gerke. River Slavin in the sixth spot. Thomas. Scopinaro in seventh, Ryder Vitro in the number eight spot. Ninth place is Brett Ferry and David Canfield rounding out the top ten. Paleologo stretching it out, out in front. Good battle for the two spot. I assume we're, we're probably, that's just, no, this is one class. So yep, they're just all, the one. Yeah. Just the one. Limited. Yeah, so everybody goes. So this is Moto One, hands down. All the way, all the way back to uh, position number 42. Brendan Rodecker, that's a name uh, I kind of recall seeing. Uh, he's back in the number 13 spot. I vaguely remember him being more of a top 10 guy. Let's see if that's the case or not here. Paley and Logos having uh, a fairly strong Supercross uh, season here at Gatorback uh, for the Thor Minios this year. So picks up where he's left off. Same thing with the Aglo, uh, Aglinowitz as well. Uh, he showed some really great things on the, motor, uh, on the Supercross track, but getting off to a really strong start out here in the moto track too. Let's we'll see if he can stretch his legs like, you know, uh, for whatever reason, a lot of folks really seem to enjoy these conditions maybe more so over the supercross a little more room to stretch your legs well, out i, I you was going to say I, I know why <laughs> it's, yeah. a lot, it's a lot of action and i mean same time i mean this might be a little similar to your training facility whereas right. hey, i don't have a supercross track uh to practice on all the time so i'm not quite as comfortable and you know interestingly there are those that excel maybe more on the supercross style tracks while others are are more of the longer haul kind of ride. More, more the outdoorsy type. Right. You you know. Know. Take it outside. Paley Lacos leading the way at 2.075 for him. Blake Thomas in the two spot. Chase Glenowitz. I get it right, Rodney? I think so. I'm getting closer at least. I'm in the ballpark. We're, we're close, I think. Nice. Yeah. I got an RBI. It's not a home run yet. <laughs> Eric Gerke in fourth. And Michael Thompson rounding out the top five. River Slavin in sixth. Ryder Vitro, seventh, eighth place. Thomas. Scopinardo, David Canfield ninth, and Brennan Rodecker rounding out your top ten. Well, there he is up from 13th, and we'll see how things uh, go for him. A 2.15 lap time again. He was in amongst some traffic, a little faster than the guys around him, but uh, not carrying the speed as Paleologos, and now Blake Thomas in second, and Glenowicz now in that number three position. Glenowicz a 2.10, and he may be having trouble coming in from Eric Gerke here pretty soon as well, a second and a half back if he doesn't pick that pace back up. Thomas, by the way, turning at 2.074, just a smidge faster than Paley and Logos, but that uh, number 19 machine enjoying about a five and a half second lead heading into lap number three. Yeah, just in two and a, about two and a half laps into it. So a stellar start for him. We got a rider down. I believe just past the finish line area. Can't see it, not quite in sight. But I do see the Red Cross flag at the finish line. Nick Linowitz, as we watch from our SLR live drone, we see that uh, he's still within the hunt of this. Second place battle now as we head down in front of the Gizmo Mods tabletop and soon to be here in front of our Yamaha announcer's tower. I had a great conversation yesterday, uh, Megawatt and uh, Wes Kane with uh, Donnie Luce of Yamaha, speaking in, again of the nice, luxurious accommodations that we have here, thanks to those great folks. 
Yeah. Glenowitz not really losing. Uh, well, yeah, he did lose time. He did. That's Gerke that yep. got around him there. I thought he was still trying to chase down Thomas, but there's Gerke. Yeah, the 7-11 able to make the pass. I got some clear real estate in front of him. I'm going to get me some, new, if nothing else, some new readers tonight. I'm going to up my prescription <laughs> here one way or the other. I have had a horrible time picking out some of these numbers. Well, and you're at a fence, Rodney. The sun is playing tricks on us as well. Well, I'll jump in there for My you. eyes are old. I appreciate you trying, man. If we, we just, what we need in here is a 70-inch <laughs> television. There you go. And that would help. I, that, that's it would, I would, then we wouldn't be able to see out through, like, three of these windows, Honestly, but we'll take it. That's the reason I retired from GNCC. I can't see a <laughs> I dang thing. I couldn't see a dang thing in GNCC, so I was like, oh, wait a minute. I never could anyway, so what difference does it make, right? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, a little dab right there by the 7-Eleven of Gurky. No problem. Right back into it. Throttle out when in doubt. You know, this is a good gauge. Again, you know, we are, I, I guess you could say, and, and a lot of these riders may be getting ready to actually move up into the B classes as well. Uh, but these, the, this race in uh, particular is a good gauge for these riders to, to check on a couple of things, you know, heading in to the 2024 season. Uh, where do they stack up against some of the faster riders in the class A that they're racing in now that will be likely moving up with them into the other classes? And then what do I need to work on? Is my fitness yeah. all right? Is it, uh, you know, is it the machine itself? You know, uh, I'm doing fine, but maybe we need to, to change a few settings in suspension or, or dial in the, you know, the, the jetting or the power band, whatever, a little bit differently, however. You know, I mean, there's a lot of things that you can use this race for as well as successes. Whoa, and Glenowitz, man, he was trying to get a good drive down into that gator pit, and that front wheel just washed out as he went high on that wall. Back up. <laughs> Machine comes down on him. He said, no problem. I'll do a little bench <laughs> press right here. Back to work. Handlebars look okay. Gets that machine fired back up, and he's going. Four laps in, white flags out. Paleologos out in front. Blake Thomas in the two wow. spot. Eric Gerke in third. And he has pulled up right there. Let's watch him. Uh, and uh, Chase did not lose a position, Rodney. Really? Lost time. Wow. You got. Well, he didn't, did he? Man, they no. have, he's only a, well, he's a six tenths of a second ahead of now fifth place, right? But uh, this battle up front has gotten really heated with Thomas and Paleologos now. And it may be about to change in the lead pretty quickly here. Let's see what Ooh, happens up as the we drop inside. down on the Gators' tail. The Scott Highway, no shortcuts here, my friends, and I think we've got a new leader. Yeah, Paleologos trying to find a little speed on that outside, maybe a little smoother line this late in the day, but does not pay not off. There. Not there. Blake Thomas, that's a risk it for the biscuit right there, Rodney, and it pays off for him. Huge dividends. Out to the front, a Moto One win, making a statement as well here in the uh, closing moments of this race. I believe this may be the uh, white flag lap, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so correct. Racing to checkers, and what better time to strike than on this final lap with Blake Thomas? And man, you can tell all the work he's been putting in, and it's paying off. And it's going to be interesting to see what the future holds for the number. 883 KTM rider. Yeah, did a, did a great job working. Uh, he was patient back here behind the number 19 and able to bring it in and make it happen. There it goes. Checkered flag flies. Brought to you for, by. Go ahead. I was just going to say Blake Thomas brought to you by Brisbane Refrigerated Trucking, Jed Parson Motorsports, also Guts, Tamer, Anchor Tape Company, Total Generators, and Raw Metal Core. Man, that's pretty cool. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm sure he's got some uh, some support from some of the manufacturers, but that right there, that's good. Uh, that's good support right there from Blake Thomas, and you see why. If he don't have support from the manufacturers, <laughs> he's going to be picking it up. He is a novice class rider, so I can see I can see things turned around for him after this week. Kyle Paley logo swings on for the number two spot. Uh, 14 second gap back to third. That's why Ingl uh, Glenowitz only lost one uh, one position Man. there. Uh, Gerke is uh, fi well, actually, uh, Gerke finishes third. Uh, Glenowitz finishes in the number four spot with a two and a half second lead over Re River Slavin. 
Linus Ryder Vitro in sixth. David Canfield in seventh. Eighth will be Michael Thompson dropping a position or so there. Brennan Rodecker had moved up to ninth but has dropped at least one position. Thomas uh, Scapinero Scop uh, uh, getting around Rodecker, holding on to a top ten right there. Then it's Adrian Hay, Cole Martin, Lucas Scopinero, uh, Brett Ferry, Deglin uh, Carmody, uh, Zachary Flanders, Logan Rayleigh, uh, Ryder Whalen, Sawyer McDaniel, and rounding out in the top 20, I believe, will be Lane Kestner. Again, those uh, results unofficial. Our riders checking in right now. And uh, mm, what a sight, Rodney Tomlin. Absolutely. What a beautiful sight. And again, at the uh, size and magnitude of what uh, Gatorback Cycle Park and this 52nd annual Thor Minios is all about. And that looks like that's going to do it. Race 38, the 450C limited in the history books. Again, for tomorrow morning we'll pick things back up with uh, race number 39, the 450B division number one. That's the 450B limited, race number 39. So check that out on your race docket. We'll begin with site laps first thing tomorrow morning at uh, 7 a.m. Promptly first calls at 6.45 a.m. And, of course, uh, uh, as we wind down this race day, Mikey, a great day indeed. A special thanks to all of the great uh, sponsors that have made it all possible, including our friends at uh, Thor uh, and uh, Parks Unlimited. This is the 52nd annual running of the Thor. Minios presented by Pro Circuit. And, of course, a special thanks to uh, Dunlop Motorcycle Tires for presenting to you the live coverage from RacerTV.com. Also, thanks to VP Racing Fuel, Scott USA, and our friends at FMF, the Fly Machine Factory of Southern California. A salute and thanks as well to our friends at the American Motorcyclists Association, the sanctioning body of this great majors event, and all of our manufacturers and everyone here that has chosen to be a part of this uh, 52nd annual running of the Thor Minios by Pro Circuit. On behalf of Mikey Waynes, Megawatt Matt Watson, Wes Kane, and Dean Diaz, I'm Rodney Tomlin saying good day, everyone.